heat. While temperatures swing from a chilling 15 to a scorching 134 degrees, it's a land shaped by seismic forces, prone to earthquakes and rumbling with tales of the Earth's raw power. With less than two inches of rain yearly, it stands as one of the planet's most formidable climates, a testament to nature's stark beauty and relentless challenge. For nearly 60 years, men and women from every walk of life and background have converged on this desolate and unforgiving terrain to challenge themselves and one another in what has become one of the longest standing and most esteemed motorsport events in the world. The BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. The Mint 400 race course spans over 100 miles. It starts at the California-Nevada border in Prim, behind Buffalo Bill's Hotel and Casino, and winds its way out into the lonely and desolate McCullough Mountains. The course is a nightmarish path of thick silt, crushing stone, jagged cactus, and massive ruts. And there are only two remote pits for teams to repair their vehicles while racing. Most of the racers will attempt four treacherous laps, making up 400 punishing miles of racing, but less than half of them will finish. There is no place to rest. There is no time to relax. It's game on, from start to finish. And if that wasn't tough enough, the course degrades heavily as the day wears on, making just finishing the race a heroic effort. This year, over 450 race teams in over 60 classes have journeyed to Sin City to put themselves and their vehicles to the ultimate test in front of a crowd of over 25,000 spectators, all hoping to immortalize their names in the off-road history books. This is the Great American Off-Road Race. This is the BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. Good morning and welcome. This is the 2024 Be of Goodridge Mint 400. Based just outside of Sin City, Las Vegas, the Mint 400 has a history that stretches back through the decades. And you join us for the next episode, and it starts right now. And today's schedule, just check this out. We've got so much action going on here today. At 10.05, we start with the grid walk, where we get to see all the runners and riders for the unlimited race. Then at 10.15 is the opening ceremonies. Then at 10.45 is the unlimited race start, and we get to see all of our heroes taking to the course. Our first expected finishers are around about 5.30 p.m., and we can't wait to get that party started. But there is so much going on here, and so much to see. I'm Jim Marsden, and joining me in the booth, I've got three, three absolute legends of our sport. Next to me is Bob Bauer, then we have Jim Beaver, and of course, the one and only Ricky Johnson. Gentlemen, welcome to the Mint 400. It is awesome. Everything, the gods are smiling upon us. We've seen rain. We got a little bit of wind yesterday. The limited race was unbelievable. We had a dice all the way to the end. We want to congratulate Ronnie Anderson in that Polaris. He was able to bring it to the finish line, beat all the Class 10s, and everybody in his class. The racing is going to be phenomenal. The weather's even better today, a little bit warmer, but a slight breeze. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Bob, yes. you've been talking to some of the drivers that are out right. there are lining up already. What are they thinking at this moment? We're only, you know, less than an hour away from the start of this race. Well, you know... Depends on their re re requirements. Some of them have to think of the sponsors, but most of them are thinking about themselves. It's really difficult to think of anything other than now what's going to happen in the first 10 minutes to 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And all the time you're telling yourself, don't let me mess this up. Got to get off. Got to go. Absolutely. Now, Jim, you've raced out here many times before. But what are they going to be doing on that first lap? Well, I think the good news here is the racing conditions are absolutely perfect. Like we saw yesterday, I mean, very little dust. We had a little bit of a breeze that was blowing a lot of the dust off the course. And, uh, man, I got to tell you, that first lap, it is going to be a banger. I think we're going to see the best in the business doing battle out here. And I predict a lightning fast first lap. Fantastic. Now, it's uh, not only the four of us. We've also got Tiffany Stone, who's down there on grid side. And Tiffany, well, what have you got for us? 
Thanks, guys. I am so glad to be back yet another day here at the Mint 400. The weather is beautiful and perfect. We do have a little bit more wind than we seen yesterday, so the top front guys should have clean, perfect air. Now, I got a chance to talk to some of the drivers. They're looking forward to this. They know that this race is all about attrition. They know that you can lose this in the first lap, but really where you're going to make up the time is the third and fourth lap. Now, we are going to go do our grid walk very soon. I'm going to have a chance to talk to some more of our drivers and see what their game plan is for today and what their thought processes are. Stay tuned with me. I'll be right back. See you guys soon. Thank you, Tiffany. So good to hear from Tiffany. And just look at this, gentlemen. One of the things that makes the Mint 400 so special is the fact that we get the grid walk for the unlimited classes and the public and the VIPs. They get to get in there and have a look at these incredible motor cars. And these cars are something very special, aren't they, Ricky? And we have a, we have a variety. We have the unlimited trucks, which is whatever you want to run. Big, big block motors, five... Uh, speed transmissions, uh, sequential shift, paddle shift, as well as all-wheel drive. So we have the uh, unlimited all-wheel drive, and we also have the all-wheel um, unlimited spec, which is everything the same except they have a, a, a sealed up LS3 motor. They have everything with the, they have the 40 inch tires, the big shocks, the bypass shocks. So it is it is gonna be a very, very tight race in the unlimited spec. That's the race that we, I, we wanna watch all of them, but that one, there's anybody can win. Yeah, and let's just talk a little bit about qualifying yesterday because we got some big guns here. We got some yeah. big names. We got BJ Ballistic Baldwin. We've got Rob McCachron, possibly the greatest off-road race of all time. Ryan Arciero, a man who's fast out of the gate. But hold on a minute. Nobody told Nick Whetstone about this exactly. because Nick Whetstone, straight out of Australia, he's turned up here and he's put it on the front row of the grid. That's something very special. Well, really proud of him. When I, were, I, I actually, I'm going to brag about this for a moment. I did work with Nick a while back, you know, all the way in March of 22, and watching how he's developed, he, he's got a brand new geyser, uh, Gen, 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 6 Gen 6, with a Dugan Big Block, with a Fortin five-speed transmission and he put it down yesterday in fact we were watching and all of a sudden i'm like wait a minute he's on the top spot so nick did an unbelievable job but that comes with pressure look who's right behind you ryan arciero rob mccachran harley latner you got all these big guns hunting him down so we'll see how he does absolutely but there's another person who qualified first in his class and that is carl jergerson in the unlimited spec class and tiffany's with him down on the grid right now Kyle Jurgensen, Kyle, you are no stranger to the Mint 400 and what it takes to win. You are a winner in 2022. Had a great run at Parker in this brand new truck. Walk me through what you think today is going to entail. Well, um, we did the pre-run yesterday and the track is already rough. So I think that today is going to be an attrition day. As much as we want to go out and push hard, I think it's going to be an attrition day. Uh, the team here, uh, Camberg Magnaflow, um, they've been kicking ass for the last couple months, making some good upgrades. So now it's my turn. You know, they've done their work, and uh, this is where I have to hold up my end of the deal. And um, you know, Sean and I are feeling healthy, and trucks fast. We qualified first. I think we'll have a good day. Well, and talking about that, everybody wants clean air, you being out there, but the wind has really, really picked up this morning. That's going to give you a little bit more advantage to ensure the clean air. How crucial is it for the back of the pack to have not as clean air as you? Yeah, that's kind of a tricky situation there. Like, we want the wind because we have to go through all these Class 1 cars and the Unlimiteds being a spec truck. But, you know, being first, you don't necessarily want your competitors behind you to have clean, clean air. So it's a love-hate with the wind. <laughs> Awesome. Well, best of luck. Hopefully you can get a repeat of what we've seen in 2022. Back to you guys. Thank you, Tiffany. Now, looking at Carl Jurgensen, he has a smile. He never smiles. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and he's trimmed his beard down a little bit. He's streamlined. He's ready for this. And, and let's be honest, he really wants to show what he can do because we've seen him racing, obviously, um, in the 6100s when it was on the 37-inch tires that we saw him move up into the unlimited trucks in two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, be hugely successful in those classes. And now he's back home to roost with Camberg. Something that really impressed me with what he just did. He took responsibility for his part on the team. Yeah. It wasn't just him. It was everybody. Now i got to do my part. And, you know, that's what comes to roost in your brain when you're sitting on that yeah. grid waiting. It, now it's up to me, and only I can mess this up. Oh. And I, I think with him, you know, we, we were talking yesterday about you have to learn how to win. Yeah. Kyle's learned how to win, yeah. and he's confident. He's going in here knowing I've got the best team. I've got the best truck. We're going to throw down, and we've got a really good opportunity to win another Mint 400. And everybody else knows it. 
<laughs> that's that's, <laughs> weeb, like, dude, that's dude, big. One of the things that I really <laughs> like about Carl is that he also knows that the bigger trucks in front of him, they're going to have to check up if they want to finish this race. And that yeah, plays yeah. right into his hands. He's got that smaller horsepower. And uh, do you think he can trouble some of those big guys? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We, we've seen it time and time again. Whenever you put the... the, the really good guns which there are so many now in unlimited spec when you put them in this truck they drive really hard all day long they don't have the big block the thousand horsepower so they're not doing as much damage on the transmission they're not doing as much damage on the tires as well as the rear gear we're up to about 11 inch rear gear that, that neil mason makes for these trucks but the spec trucks they can run a lot harder but they still go very very fast they don't have the top speed of the unlimited trucks probably about 110 115 across the dry lake bed where you'll see ryan rco breach about 150 so i know that sounds crazy but from corner to corner a guy like kyle jurgensen is uh, almost untouchable well let's be honest this race is going to be one running between 60 and 70 mile an hour absolutely not at 150 but the guy sitting out there at the front right now is nick whetstone <laughs> yes and you guess what Tiffany's got him down there on the line. So, Tiff, what do we got? It's going to be good. Down here with our overall top qualifier for today's race, Nick Whetstone. Now, Nick, new truck. Love to see you out here. You, you just pretty much have an amazing time over everybody. How did you do it? Um, we've been working on our program. The last, the last couple of years, you know, we built this new truck. Um, you know, we've had... Dugans and SDG and the Geyser Brothers team kind of working on some stuff and we think we've got it pretty much figured out now so the truck's super fast um, as you see yesterday um, you know we we hold the mail we got it done and um, you know today's going to be a little bit of a different story today it's kind of more about survival super rough super gnarly mint 400 man L the last couple of laps is 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 brutal so we're just gonna we're gonna try and bring it home I win. Well, so sorry, I didn't mean to bring that, but I was just so excited because Ricky Johnson last night was just praising you. He said it, it was amazing to watch you. It was amazing to see all the things that you have implemented into this new truck. Yeah, I sent him a text last night to stir him up a little bit because, you know, we're talking about the intermittent braking and, and just looking, you know, looking corners ahead and stuff like that. And we've been working on a lot of stuff, and so it's starting to come together. We're feeling good. Wonderful. Best of luck. We can't wait to see what happens. Our top qualifier in today's race, Nick Whetstone. Wow. Now, there's a man who's looking super, super excited. That's yes. got to be really cool to see your, uh, your man down there. Yeah, Bob? You know, we're, we're starting to hear the things we know we're going to hear, but we're going to see if they really do it. Well, it's going to be a race of survival. We're going to take it kind of easy. <laughs> we're going to hold back. Well, you know what? That flag goes down and all the brains go out, and you're go they're going. <laughs> They're going, and they'll wake up about lap three and realize, oh, do I have enough left for another lap? <laughs> well, and and you you, talk, you heard Kyle Jurgensen say he's been in the sprint races. He's also been in the attrition races, yeah. and he saw the track yesterday on the pre-run, and he was saying how rough it is out there. So, yes, you I, you have to go back to the Rod Hall statement. you got to be Baja wise. And what Larry Raglan told me when I first started, when you think you're going slow enough, slow down a little bit more to save that equipment. It's always going to be that one thing that's going to bite you. And I think the guys that stay in the mix, keep the guys within two minutes of them because that's about what a tire change uh, takes. Keep those guys in that and keep the people behind you stay in line. And then the last lap, you're going to have to go for it. But it's, it's a different racetrack. you, you got to make sure that you're picking the right lines and not hitting those big holes. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we're looking at Nick Whetstone, because uh, this is a new truck, yeah. a new guy. To lay down that kind of thing is incredible, but to be race savvy enough. Now, we know he races back in Australia. We know he's got some race history, but racing out here in this dirt in the US of A is a very different thing indeed. And I'm going to be intrigued to see what he's got for us, particularly when we've got the likes of, you know, Harley Lettner sitting just behind him. Ryan Arciero yeah. is going to be breathing down his neck. And I know Ryan's going to want to break free. He's going to want to get past him and then control the race. But let Let's not forget who's right on his hill, and that's Eric Harden. Yeah. All right, last that's year's last winner, the year's guy winner, that yeah. did put it together. And he's also got a driver in the right seat with Andrew Myers. So you have a great combination. They won this race last year. He was very fast in qualifying. So we got – we're going to keep changing our mind, people, all day long. We're going to go <laughs> – yeah. he's going to win. He's going to win. He's going to win. But we have a handful of guys, Jim, that could easily win this race. Yeah, well, and, uh, you know, I'm saying right here, Rob McCachron and Tim Herps in the four and the five spot, a couple of Vegas locals. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, please stand up. If you're at home, remove your hat, and let's listen to our national anthem.
there we're nearly at go time here at the 2024 beer of goodridge tires mint 400 what a lineup we have for you but right now let's go have a catch up with tiffany who's got ryan arciero down on the start line ryan arciero ryan it's so good to see you back here you know we did have a chance to talk at hammers you had a little bit of a, a knee injury but now you are great you said you are back to left breaking right now and how does that make you feel no, it, it, it makes me feel really good. It, it is so hard to drive these trucks with right foot brake. Uh, I give my hats off to Eric Harden because he's doing it with one leg. So I got, I got nothing to complain about. But uh, the truck's running fantastic. I got to say, I mean, especially for the Mint 400, how rocky this course is, I, there's no other tire besides BF Goodrich that I would be on. And, and that's what it's going to take to win this race is no, is no flats. And then having a truck that's going to be able to go through those bumps and, and kind of float and fly through those bumps, our Fox shocks are dialed. And I'm so excited to get this race started. Well, in talking about that, I had a chance to talk, to talk to Rob Mack. I mean, like this, you know this like the back of your hand, and you guys were all comparing notes about how fast Nick was out there, and it's so cool to see. And he says it's awesome to see that this sport is alive and running and everybody still wants to be a part of it. As a person who's multi-generational in off-road, how does that make you feel? It, it, it's awesome. I, I love to see the, the variety out here, the, you know, the generations. That's what's cool about our sport. I, I mean, I'm third generation out here racing, and I've been doing this for 31 years. Nick, I, I mean, that was phenomenal yesterday. My hat's off to him. He smoked all of us. And, uh, and at first, I'm like, well, that, there's no way. I, and I started thinking to myself, I was talking to Rob. I'm like, uh, like where was nine seconds? Like, what, I, I, there's no place on that course I could have made that up. So my hat's off to him. I'm, I'm happy we get to hit the reset button. Now we get to go racing. And you got, got to put four laps together in to win this race. So you have to be four consistent laps. We're ready to get back to this finish line first. Wonderful. Well, best of luck to you. I know you've got a lot of fans out here waiting to meet you. Number 32, Ryan Arciero, back up to you guys. Now there's a man who looks supremely confident. Yes. There's a man who should have won this event so many times. We've seen him go out there. We've seen him dominate. Last year, he had an absolute shocker. I mean, he didn't even make it a lap. So what's he going to do this year? What's his game plan, Ricky? Well, they did see that they did get to see the track during pre-run. So Ryan has he's he's got a lot going on for him he just came off an injury he's using his left leg as he said he feels confident in the truck and they've been doing everything and also as bob was saying that, that now ryan is working at the one nine shop which is the herbs uh, development shop so he has more hands-on of what's going on with his truck and the other trucks that are going on out there so i think that's going to give him more knowledge also he has unbelievable desert knowledge of, of out here in at the mint 400 course so i think he's once again going to try to stay in the pack the first lap but if you have an opportunity to attack a second's a second if you get it in one lap on lap one or lap four uh, i think uh, one of the things i'm looking at is our top 10 drivers 
all, you know, have a shot at the win. So I think this first lap, you've got 10 drivers that are going to be, I mean, it's going to be an all-out slugfest because nobody's going to want to give an inch. And I think the pace is going to be, you know, pushed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's ju just having a quick look down through our top 10 here. We've got in 10th position, we've got Ethan Ebert, who's there, sitting there in the twin turbo V6 Honda entry. A very interesting car. Just in front of him, we've got Kevin Thompson in the Concrete Motorsports, obviously being driven by Harley Lettner for the first two laps. Then just in front of him, we've got BJ Baldwin. Now, this was BJ's race to win last year, and it was only a mechanical that took him out. So we know he's got what it takes. In front of him, we've got the young gun, Christian Serapis, in that amazing newly beast race car and we know he has the pace Adam Householder ahead of him he's a previous winner here then of course we've got Tim Hurst he knows this desert like the back of his hand then Rob McCachron well what isn't he not won and how many times did we work out he's won this it now six it was up to six I think it was up to six so far. grief incredible then Ryan Arciero we were just speaking about and last year's winner Eric Hardin incredible well talking about Rob McCachron I mean yesterday he went out and you heard Ryan Arciero Rob Mack and Ron Harris here is how did Nick Whetstone do it? But let Tiffany's got uh, Rob down on the on the starting grid. Take it away, Tiff. Back, Rob. It's so good to see you once again down here. The Mint 400. I know that you know this course like the back of your hand. What do you think it's going to take to win today's race? Well, as usual, it's going to be consistency. Um, you know, the Mint 400 has always played out that they're at the beginning of the race. There's all these trucks uh, go one lap, and there's you know, half of them are gone, and then by the end, there's only two or three guys running again So at that time. So um, for us, it's really about just keeping a good pace, staying with the leaders, uh, make sure you don't lose touch, don't have any issues, try to keep maintain track position. Um, and then at the end, when last lap comes around, uh, see who else is still in the game and uh, go for it then. Well, we've seen these names before, the ones that are right above you, or right in front of you, but now we've got Nick Whetstone out there just putting out a dominating time. As someone who's been in the sport and seeing newcomers come up, how does that make you feel that this sport is still alive? No, absolutely. You know, there's, uh, like you said, Nick did an awesome job in qualifying. We were just talking about it, and uh, we were all comparing our top speeds, and he definitely had the most top speed on the back straightaway there. So pretty much, um, you know, that's pretty key for qualifying, but in the race, it doesn't matter. So there's a lot more elements to the race than um, just top speed. So um, it's cool. And, you know, we got all the heavy hitters here again. You know, everyone that's capable of winning, they're up here in the top 10 or so, um, you know, and, and they're all smart. You know, we all are, we know how to win it. A lot of people here have won races very similar to it, if not this one. And, um, you know, we're just hope to outsmart them this race and, and try to bring this BF Goodrich uh, Fox truck home. Um, we've got Fox, Fox Shocks on board. It's 50th anniversary um, of Fox Shocks, so it's pretty cool. There's a lot of little sayings on the truck and notes and stuff from Bob Fox back in the day. So I've been reading through them all. It's pretty interesting. But anyways, I love racing here in Vegas. Um, it's 40-something years ago. It was my first time racing here in the same desert. So I uh, got my son, Caden, riding with me, and he won a couple – or he was with riding with me when we won a couple years ago. So we hope to repeat that. Awesome. Well, best of luck. And I want to show you guys right here. This is kind of what Rob was talking about. 50 years, Fox. They've got all these great things. So if you do get a chance to be down here on the Midway, head over to the Fox trailer. You're going to be able to see all of this. Thanks so much, Rob. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Tiffany. Always good to hear from Rob McCachron. Now, Rob is not the kind of guy who's going to come out of here all guns blazing on laps one and two. He's just going to be holding his pace. He knows where he needs to be, and he knows where he's got to attack. He's a guy who's won here six times, but we've also seen him lose it in the last lap, literally within the last 10 miles. Yeah. So, you know, he knows where it takes, but he also knows what can happen. Well, Rob is just so good. Like, I've listened to him. You know, he wants to know what his front door and what his back door is. And what he means by that is that he wants to know how far is it for the car in front of him. Because we've got to remember... It's a, there's a lot of rain out there. It's not muddy, but there's not much dust. So you could be within 10 seconds and still not see that guy in front of you. So you got to make sure that he, he's going to want to be close enough to when they stub their toe, get a flat, go in for a splash of fuel or whatever it might be, he can get that advantage. But he also wants to make sure that he keeps at least two minutes in front of the guy behind him so Rob is one of those guys that will drive his pace. They'll say, okay, back door is a minute and 30. He'll pick it up a little bit, get that cushion, and keep it right there. So he's definitely someone who's won this six times. So we have to make sure we keep our eye on him all day long. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Bob, yeah. just looking here at uh, all of the runners and riders, and okay. I think we need to go back down the list a little bit because there's a young man who's really qualified well, and that was Connor McMullen yes. in the Class 1. Let's just talk a little bit about him and what he's been doing because he's been dominating in other races. He's on a tear, you know, and, and it's momentum. Momentum will get you a finish, and 
his style of momentum is going to get him a high finish. The, the track is, is that he's the first buggy that's out there, which is a shame to even call them buggies, Rick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, don't, they don't belong to be bu buggies. He's going to take a pace out there, and I think that actually you're going to see him get conservative. He's going to take track position, and he's going to let things fall out from in, in front of him. That's my guess. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Now, we have got a uh, sort of a, a weird one being dropped in on us. So we've got the unlimited class cars going yeah. out, first of all. Then just t tucking in behind them, we've got the Ultra 4 Unlimiteds. Uh, we're going to have Keith Reed, Casey Curry, and Shannon Campbell, and they're going to be going out just in front of those class ones. So that's going to be a very interesting. Are those cars going to hold them back at all? Because I would suggest that a class one is faster out here than an Ultra 4. Well, in those sound washes, the Ultra, the, the ultra 4 with the all-wheel drive can pull their way through there so when we get in those deep ruts watch for the ultra four the four wheel drives to make up time just a, a quick note on that uh, cole potts who is our other all-wheel drive not in the ultra four class tipped on his side yesterday so he has to work his way back up but right now tiffany's got shannon campbell down on the starting grid tiffany take it away Standing next to three-time KOH King, Shannon Campbell. Shannon, we saw earlier this year you built a two-seater. Drew Schultz was your co-driver, and now you have your beautiful wife, Jess, here for the Men 400 as a co-driver. Walk me through your day so far and how you think it's going to pan out. Well, we're starting pretty close to the front and unlimited class one, and I got the best co-driver in the world right now, so hopefully she still loves me when it's over with, and hopefully we make it to the finish. Well, we've always seen you have a single-seater, and this year for 2024, you brought out a two-seater. How much has that changed your drive style, knowing that somebody's sitting right next to you? That doesn't really change my driving style, but just gives me someone to say, hey, dummy, you're supposed to go this way or that way or whatever, and, uh, you know, just something like that. But, yeah, it's fun with two people, too. Awesome. And we always see, you know, brother, son, father, son, you know, and everything. So seeing a wife and a husband combo, this is awesome. And Jess, you married him at the end of last year. You know that this man is a wild man. How do you feel being in the right-hand seat now with him? I'm totally excited. I feel more safe in the race car than I do driving down the highway with him. <laughs> awesome. Well, best of luck. I can't wait to see where you guys are here. It's so cool to see the Campbell family out here. And, of course, this beast. I am pumped for this. Best of luck to you guys. It's so cool to have Kings out here, especially with their queen sitting in the right-hand side. Back up to you guys. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Now, it's really interesting. That's an interesting dynamic to see Shannon Campbell here with this unlimited um, Class 1, as they're calling it. It's an Ultra 4 car. Yeah. Now, this is a brand new car that he's just built. So it's an IFS front. It's a solid axle rear. It's running a big block motor in there. He had some teething problems at King of the Hammers this year, um, but I believe they've got that dialed in now. There were uh, melting spark plug leads. So it's going to be interesting to see what he can do. But lining up just behind him, we've got Casey Curry. Now, Casey Curry, of course, he's won, state, he's won a DACA title he's won all sorts of desert races and of course we just saw him narrowly lose king of the hammers this yeah. year by the smallest of margins and what he calls the trophy jeep now that really is a weapon out here are these guys got anything for the class ones behind them well, I think they absolutely do have something for the class ones behind them. I think they've got something for a lot of the unlimited trucks. Uh, you know, Casey Curry, like you said, has won just about everything there is to win. Shannon Campbell, he's an absolute savage behind the wheel of anything he drives. Yeah. Uh, if anybody can find a way to make time in the, the spots where they're going to have shortcomings in an Ultra 4, it's going to be Shannon Campbell and Casey Curry. I'm not counting them out for anything at this point. Now, the interesting thing about this is also, for me, is tyre choice. Now, both Casey Curry and Shannon Campbell are going to be running a different tyre uh, combination to what we're seeing most of the other cars out there. And I'm going to be really interested to see how that story pans out and see, because, I mean, let's be honest, this is the domination of the BF Goodridge tyre. This is where the BF Goodridge tyre has been developed to be dominant. So, Jim, touch base on that, because you, you kind of left us hanging. The different <laughs> size, different brand. What well, they're going to be using package? different brands. So they're going to be using the Nitto tyre out here, which is the a tire that's been developed for Ultra 4 racing, yes. has a much stronger sidewall for it developed to be in those rocks, etc. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see, for me, just how that hangs up in the desert. Well, and we talked with Rob Mack, and I said, how does this course compare to, to stuff in the past? He goes, well, to be honest with you, everything is great, but there's a lot more exposed rock from the rain. It has it's got yes. those jagged rocks, so maybe that tire could be a game changer, because as fast as they're going, you can only adjust so much, and a lot of times in the, in the, in the uh, two track you can't avoid the rock you just got to hit it straight on and if you are going to hit it you want to hit it square unless it's so big it's going to completely bend the wheel because we found out in the past 
a lot of time it's not the tire that blows up, but you break the rim, and even and that's why they went to a 40 inch tire, and that was that seemed to be the problem. So having a tire that maybe performance isn't as good, so to speak, but longevity is better, might be a game changer. You know that broken wheel idea is not new. We, my one of the, my mint 400 wins in 1991. We blew a tire in Paiute Wash, crushed the wheel, got back, they put, took it off, sent us out on the next lap. Third lap, we came in for fuel. Put that tire on a new rim, sent it off. We won the race on the, right, on the tire we blew in the morning. Well, there the you go. tire made it, the wheel died. Well, and that was the research that, that BF Goodrich did a long time ago. Is they started using ultra slow motion cameras, and we found out that it wasn't we, we thought the tire popped and then that broke the wheel. And then they found out that, that the tire was flexing, doing its job. But once the wheel broke, and that's why you see the bead locks, you've seen the casting. And now, Jim River, you're seeing carbon fiber wheels. So the, the technology is always getting better. But the tire technology has been good for quite a long time, Jim. Well, the tire technology has been great. And I think, uh, you know, talking about the Ultra 4s versus the traditional desert cars and tire technology, I think, don't forget the mid 400 is different than a lot of desert racers. There's actually a lot of similarities to something say like king of the hammers yeah. i mean out here you've got sand you've got silt you've got rocks there's a lot that's thrown at you it's not a traditional desert race that's what makes the mint 400 special so i think uh, you know these ultra fours and maybe their tire technology might be uh, pretty pretty well suited for this uh, race here today yeah looking forward to that but there's also some other things that we're going to see out on track uh, let's talk about uh, the grabowski brothers yes. because of course they were using different technology particularly with streamlining on the back end and we see that incredible wing yes. system that they have um, is that and we were talking about this yesterday is this the next step for these unlimited trucks well i and that is a, a unlimited spec truck and so when, when i did some testing and, and some stuff i got a little sideways with usac back when i was racing pro 2 and we were running longer side plates and what i found out is that when i threw the truck sideways get the cushion it became a wall and i could drive harder and slide harder and run the cushion much harder than the other guys so the grabowski family has figured out that that wing is probably giving them more straight line stability and when it steps out it wants to push the truck back scott douglas back in the day used to have his number plates with little lips on the top so everybody's trying to find an advantage to keep the truck straight and keep it planted and joey logano and his gloves same deal <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, and I, I think we've talked about, uh, you know, the unlimited truck classes and how the envelope's been pushed, you know, and that you've got to find small things. We're not going to see those huge gains that we saw in the past. Now, you know, shocks are getting a little bit better. Brakes are getting a little bit better. Tires are getting a little bit better. You know, we're getting a little more horsepower. Gearbox are getting better, but there's not these leaps and bounds that we've seen in the past. So all the advancements are going to come in small areas like aerodynamics, things like that. You know, we're not going to see five and 10 mile an hour jumps. We're going to see one and two mile an hour jumps. And I think, you know, it's this fine tuning and it's making things little by little better, 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 faster, faster, faster. As they say, if you if you work on 1%, all of a sudden next thing you know, you, know, you have 10%. I do want to throw a shout out to Steve Olegas. He had a tough hit yesterday. Yeah. Um, sent, it pre sent, pretty high, sent it pretty hard off the second jump, landed, had an uh, injury with his back. I heard it knocked him a little bit kooky. So Steve, if you're watching this, you're going to be watching your son, Jack. I wish you all the best. Get well soon, my brother. And uh, all the best to Jack while he's out there. Yeah, absolutely. And as we're waiting to get this 2024 Beer of Goodridge Mint 400 started, Tiffany caught up with Adam Householder, a previous winner, earlier on today. Thanks, guys. Down here with Adam Householder. Now, Adam, you're racing the entire Unlimited Series. Round two here is at the Mint 400. You had a great run at Parker earlier in the year. What do you think it's going to take to win today's race? Uh, it's going to take it just being smart, you know, don't have any issues, no flats, just keep the truck running. Um, we're going to see what the first lap is, kind of run with everyone and see what our pace needs to be and pick it up or slow it down from there. But, you know, we're, we're, we want that number one spot. I want that Mint 400 to win. Well, and going after that, you've got heavy hitters right in front of you. You're right next to Christian Serapis. What do you think it's going to take to get the whole shot on Christian as well? I think we got it. We, we got a good Gibbs power plant and BFT tires, so we're hooked up and uh, it's going to launch off the line. Awesome. And what's today's pit strategy? I know it's a long race, four laps. Attrition is the key. That is the word of the day and, of course, the weekend. And what Mint 400 really means? Um, you know, we're, we're pitting every lap, taking fuel, tires, just to make sure we have everything underneath us. Um, like I said, just got to be smart. And uh, we've done this really well. I won this back in 2020 with the 6100, the spec truck. Um, I want the overall win and the unlimited. Awesome. Well, best of luck. I'm going to let you get back. Enjoy the fans. Thank you so much for your time. And back up to you guys. Thank you, Tiffany. Now, Ricky, what are you thinking? 
I love what he just said. He's going to pit every lap because a lot of guys are going to try to go the long run because they want to hold their place in line. What I think Adam is doing is very smart. Going to give him a new set of rear tires every lap. He's got that big Gibbs motor. It's going to be shredding those tires on this course. So he's getting. He's probably going to go a little bit lighter on fuel, which is going to help him through through the bumps and stuff like that. So if he sets his chassis up to run a little bit lighter, put on fuel every hundred miles with a new set of tires, that could be a winning combination. We don't know what everyone else is doing, but I think he's he's on a something well and i think going along with what ricky said uh you know adam these guys you know you're talking about the back door and the front door as long as he can keep that back door within a you know a couple a minute or minute and a half they can do a you know a, a dump and two rear tires in probably under 30 seconds so i think as long as he's got you know the back door covered i think he's going to be able to get in get out and he can make up that time on track it's definitely well and he's he's that guy i really want to compliment him i was down talking to him i said man you're looking good you look at his driving suit really loose on him he's lost about 40 pounds he's taking his racing very serious his fitness is right there so and when we saw him last year and the year before he was dead after the race so i think him racing more training more he's definitely someone to keep an eye on yeah absolutely and, and let's not forget he's also looking for the championship yes. as well and uh, and if you're just joining us and you're not sure what that championship is that is the parker 400 it's the mint 400 and then the california 300 later on in the year well that and that's the thing when you're going for a championship things happen because some of the guys are just running what we call the super bowl or or the indy 500 whatever you want to say they're just doing one race and done and so when they realize that they can't win they, their enthusiasm goes down but i love it when someone's running for a championship because they do everything they'll come in on three wheels they'll do whatever they have to do to get to that finish line and adam is one of those guys that is looking very strong for this championship yeah, and we're not far away now from the start of this incredible 2024 Beer of Goodridge Tires Mint 400. If you're just joining us, we are just outside of Sin City, Las Vegas in Prim Valley, Nevada for what is the toughest race in North America. You know, Jim Mars and I'm just kind of curious to see how this first hour and a half goes because, <laughs> you know, somebody's going to jackrabbit. Somebody's going to jackrabbit and somebody's going to hold it tight and, and try and last them, outlast them. Now, we do it. At, uh, we were just actually watching uh, two of the Ultra 4 cars there, but Tiffany's been down on the track, and she's with Cowboy Cerrone. So let's see what he's got, he's got to say. Cowboy, it's so good to chat with you. Yesterday we talked about pushing hard. You said if we push hard, we're going to break, and unfortunately that happened for you. So change of game plan for today's race. What are we looking at? Yeah, no, we're doing the same game plan. We're going to push hard. Well, today's game plan is not the flat. The flats are really going to kill. It's so rocky out there, so keeping the... Well, you can't really see over the hood, so you kind of got to just hope and pray. But still going to press just as hard. We dropped two ball joints, went for a cartwheel yesterday, so it was a fun ride. I do not want to go for a ride in this, so we'll keep it, keep it on all fours and keep the tires alive. Well, when you're coming up here to get to the starting grid or whatnot, we saw Dustin Jones hanging off the side. So, Dustin, you had an unfortunate day as well. Walk me through what happened with you, and did you give Cowboy any advice on how to tackle today? Yeah, so yesterday was a rough day day for us, too. It's it's always, you know, you're doing good until you're not. So we had a good run. We took over. We were first until we weren't anymore. So we had some shock troubles. It's just a rough race. And so uh, now we've moved from being comp competing against Cowboy. We're going to pit, pit for him for a couple laps, and then I'm racing against him in a spec truck later today. So, you know, Cowboy's familiar with the track. He's uh, He's gotten good in this truck. He's being real competitive, qualified well. So it's, it's, you know, the plan is conservation and push hard on the last two laps. But he's so rowdy, and I'm the same way, as when you get in the truck and it's green, it's freaking go time. Well, best of luck to you guys. And I know you both know the world word attrition. You guys both definitely, what's well, attrition? He do, they, they definitely know that. So best of luck to you guys. Did our cars have attrition rate right yesterday? It had the most attrition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody. Yeah, we made it. They're on trailer. We had to drag them home. We're dragging them home. They rolled here and pulled home. That was attrition. Got it. All right, Cowboy, any last words before we send you out? We're going to see you at the podium, suckers. Yeah. <laughs> Best of luck to you guys. Back up to the booth. Now, I love that. The enthusiasm there. He just looks so up for this, doesn't he? I remember when he came out here a few years ago, and it was like, you know, they, the Martelli, Matt Martelli and Josh wedged him into a UTV and said, you go and play in the desert. And, uh, <laughs> and now, all of a sudden, he's got this full-on race program. He's got a Class 11. He's running an unlimited spec. He's also got a UTV. Incredible. Well, the commitment that it takes to be a mixed martial artist, especially a world champion like him, this is a vacation for him. I mean, he's out He's out having a good time, and, and you look at him, he's strong, he's fit. He did. He broke and flipped twice yesterday, he said, so he does not want to do that, but he looks fit as a fiddle, ready to go. And so I think him applying himself, and I said this yesterday during the limited show, 
he's he's going to be a weapon because the commitment, as I said, that it takes to to lose weight, to be to take the beating and everything like that in, in MMA is unbelievable, Bob. Here's what I saw: a real relaxed, calm guy. Yep. He's he's already finished his day. He's just going to go do the drive now. Yeah. Well, and I think you know with the fitness fitness level he has, you see a lot of guys get to the finish line and they're beat up. You know, yeah. here's a guy who goes three to five rounds in an MMA fight. You yeah. know, I, I don't care what the mint 400 throws at you; it's nothing compared to that. So he's <laughs> he's he's he's, he's built for war, literally. And I yep. think uh, you know, here's a guy who uh, you know his driving ability we've seen over the last few years has got faster, faster, faster. I mean, he's a threat. He's no longer an MMA fighter; he's an off-road racer. And he'd he, be glad to hear you say that. <laughs> and there are so many. Many off-road races down there. There are so many off-road races ready. If you are just joining us, this is the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400, and today is the big day. It's the Saturday. It is the day where we see the unlimited clashes unleashed on this famous 400-mile course. We've got huge crowds waiting. We've got blue skies. We've got some wind and per absolutely perfect race conditions. I'm Jim Marsden, and joining me in the booth is none other than at, uh, Bob Bauer, Jim Beaver, and, of course, the legend that is Ricky Johnson. Are we ready? for this gentleman we're about four minutes out now i am so ready you know i something's happening at this year's mid 400 we're seeing crowds that are larger than we've seen in the Absolutely. last five or six ten years we've seen long lines at the merch traders we've seen a bunch of happy fans everywhere we go and everywhere we go we see family this is this is the mid 400 and i tell you as many as i've been in i got goosebumps right about now well looking you look at the grandstands you look at every everything it is packed 100 percent trying to get a coffee this morning at starbucks was ridiculous yes but everybody's here this is just the people on the starting line to get to watch all that but jim you know what it's like you've been in both positions yeah. what are these drivers feeling right now you know, honestly, there's a, they're anxious, but not about what's to come. They just want to get out on track. I know as a driver, I hated all the pre-race festivities. I just wanted to go and do business. Yeah. And I think as soon as they get in, they can settle in. They can set their pace. You get in sync with your co-driver. The car starts working. You get a little heat in the suspension. You get heat in the brakes. That's when things get exciting for a driver. This is part with the driver. We appreciate it. We love the fans being out there. But uh, you know what? They just want to get out on course and do battle. <laughs> that is so right. I mean, folks at home. Jimmy just said it exactly. That's exactly what's going on out there between the ears of those folks outside. Well, we've got two minutes before this race gets started. I cannot wait. We've got 400 miles of unbelievable action ahead of us. And we've got some of the greatest names in desert racing. Chuck in a smattering of Ultra 4 legends as well. And we've got all things going on. But come on, I'm going to put you all on the spot now. Bob Bauer, who's going to win the Mint 400 this Ryan year? Ryan Arciero. Jim Beaver, who's going to win the Mint 400 this year overall? You, you know what? I can't go with Ryan because Bob did. I'm going to go for Tim Herbst. And Ricky Johnson, who's going to win the Mint 400 2024? I'm going to go with my boy, Nick Whetstone. Starting up front, Ooh. I think that a lot's going to happen. I think he's going to get bounced back a little bit, but I think he's really, really happy in that truck. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to it. Have you noticed? And who are you yeah, taking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you had to come back to me, didn't you? <laughs> hey, you got do you Rob know Mack. Do you know what? I, I'm actually going to go with Bob on this because we're a 405 boys. And if That's you were watching exactly yesterday, right. you'll Don't know what you I mean. Don't you forget That's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I really believe that this is Ryan Arciero's time. Yeah. And uh, and I really think that he's got the car, he's got the team, and I think it's. Just, and I think he's starting in the right position. It, uh, he's on the second row of the grid there, and I think he's going to be... All about Ron Arciero all day long. Well, Butch and Awesome Albert are going to be happy to hear that. So the Arciero <laughs> clan, obviously, well, I had to pick somebody because you guys picked him. <laughs> <Yeah>. But um, <laughs> no, it, it could be anybody's race, and obviously Ryan is is one of the one of the favorites for sure. But I'm also going to throw something out there, just as a random yep. one, because sitting at the back of all the unlimited cars, and we just saw a little glimpse of him, is Cole Potts. Yes. Now Cole Potts, he is going to be really angry about his performance yesterday. He's yeah. going to be annoyed, and sometimes that makes people do incredible things. He's sitting in the all-wheel drive at the back of the unlimited plaque. Can he come through the field? Can he deliver and do something special? It's going to take a lot of patience, and when you get up on people, even when it's not in the, in the dust, you got the roost and everything like that. So we're, here we go. Here we got Nick Whetstone. I'm going to finish that thought in just a little bit. But, Jim, we are getting ready to start the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. Take it away, buddy. You got the lead. We have, and look at this, this is Nick Whetstone. I am sure there are people from all over Australia right now who are zooming in. It's not often you see an Australian at the front of the grid at one of the biggest desert races in North America. The and guy that honor down, goes to this man. The guy from down under is on top. He is indeed. <laughs> He's running a brand new car for this race. 
And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2024 BF Goodridge Mint 400, and our lead car is off the line, it is Nick Whetstone. And he's still in front. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, taking a look at this, if you are just tuning in, you you haven't watched this, the whole racetrack does not look like this. This is a short course track where, the, where Brian Manley and the crew put this together, did a great job. And you notice Nick is by himself. He's the first one on the course because he qualified first and he goes off uh, single car. But everybody else is side by side. We're going to see a bunch of racing. <laughs> Yeah, we are indeed. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And that's always the problem with having two gyms in the booth. You're like, is he talking to me or is he talking to the other gym? I tell you, it gets to be a real jungle sometimes. <laughs> you know, I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Nick Whetstone, though. Just watching him pick his way through the infield. He's not getting in a hurry. He's not, you know, he's not risking anything early on. Looks like he's settling in. He's setting a good pace. He's not going to risk anything. I, I kind of like what I'm seeing. I mean, he's, he's already driving like he's, he's racing to uh, win. Oh, look at that. And you Eric. just saw Eric Harden there just taking the jump on Ron Asiero. And a little push on the inside. It's a little bit muddy. So Ryan's got to watch that he doesn't fill his radiators and his goggles full of mud. So you want to get out there in front, and he looks to the inside. Oh, these boys are pushing hard. I'm yeah. loving this. But as you say, he's got to be so careful. You don't want a face full of roost this early in the day. Yeah, I mean, sometimes a little patience might be better. But I know Ryan he loves to get out in front. He loves clean air. Yeah, absolutely. I've got to say, that was an amazing piece of driving there from Eric Harden. Absolutely incredible to outpace a man like Ryan Arciero in the short course. That takes some doing. With but, then you see, hold on, but, but Eric just missed the turn and the water was out and Ryan Arciero passed him back. So we could just see in the, in the uh, edge of it. And now we have Tim Herbst as well as Rob Mack. So these two guys, no short course. And they also, but Rob is the expert when it comes to short course. Now, I don't think that's actually Tim Herbst oh. in the car. I think that's, um, oh, who drives for him? You're going to tell me now. <laughs> it depends. He's got a couple different guys. Oh, no, no. That's Pat Dean. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. I saw Pat on the, they call him Pigeon, and he's a local boy. Um, grew up here with his father on Butch's Speed Shop. So Pat Dean is out in front. You can see how bad the guys are pushing, how much oversteer and understeer that they're going through. Um, the course is very wet, but Pat's going to hang back and let Rob do his thing, and then, but always keep it on. I actually got a chance to talk to Pat earlier. He said, you know the best thing about this is he said, I get to use the car while it's fresh. He said, I get to come back in. He said, and I'll be in the bar by three. There we go. <laughs> um, you know, and I've said this a long time, if you know, you know. And Pat Dean, he, well, it looks like Ryan was here there. So Ryan did make the pass. We, we showed yeah. that, that he was able to get by Eric Hart. I didn't mean to drop, chop, chop you off there. There, Mr. Beavers. I'm going to just call you Beave. Like, like, leave it to Beaver. <laughs> so we've got Adam Householder, our previous winner here, next to Christian Serapis in that new unleashed livery. And Adam has taken the whole shot here, but can he hold on to it? It's so difficult with these two-wheel drive cars to hold on to these in the short course. You know, you you think about how are we, why are we so excited about the very first part of the race? It's, you know, 17 feet ahead of the back. It's track position. By the time they get out in the desert, they want to have separation. They want to have a lot of guys separated from you behind you. Well, going into that first turn, it, I said with super runs, everybody has a chance to win. Yes. It's like the first race of the season. Everyone has a shot at the championship. Until we get out in the desert, it's going to be a different race. Right now, if you're just joining us, this is the 2024 BF Gerdridge Mint 400. If you want to stay up with the tracking and also with the live scoring, pop over to the mint400.com and you'll find all of that information there as we watch Harley Lettner getting the jump on ballistic BJ Baldwin there. BJ was in a nap. He took a nap. <laughs> yeah, he either... Yeah, well, I actually, don't know what happened there. Either to be Harley honest, jumped the gun or we had BJ who was asleep at the wheel. Yeah, I'm going with Harley. <laughs> <laughs> BJ's looking at the inside. Come up. Oh! oh! And there's contact. Wow. No, I don't. Did I BJ did, in the contact no. or did he just blow no, no, the corner? No, no. I think he blew it. So here's what happened, guys, is that Harley was loose coming over the first jump, overcorrected, and then when he came, when he landed, had a traction, shot him off. So shot him off to the right side and, and lost that position. So... Great hole shot by Harley, but we'll take a replay. Watch how when he lands over the first jump right here, he's all corrected, it snaps back. So it, it wasn't, he, his wheels weren't straight as he went up the face of the jump and that increased the traction and his wheels were left and it bounced the, the back end off to the right. Yeah, it was definitely something flew off of one of, definitely something flew off of one of those cars though. So 
Not sure. Not sure. Jury's still out. <laughs> I'll show you what got thrown out. Caution got thrown <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here's that and up. now, this is a very interesting car. This is a the Honda entry with Ethan Eberts driving, and this has a twin turbo V6, whereas pretty much everything else in this field will be running a V8. Right, but he's running turbo, so they're, they're, they're going with the idea, let's go with the, the lighter package, go with the, uh, I think it's, I think they have, I know they have a six-speed or a five-speed in there, so, so there's not a big a gap between, so they can keep that motor piped up the whole time. Yeah, and that is David Bernstein in the yellow car there. We were saying yesterday he won't lose that in a car park. <laughs> <laughs> and from what I understand, that engine that uh, is in that Honda entry of Ethan Ebert, it's based off the technology that Honda uses in the Indy IndyCar series. So it's uh, it's definitely some tried and true package. I think they've just tried to adapt it to off-road racing. Well, this is where you see the one truck by itself. The next spot well, this is 12th and 13th. Steve Olegas is not racing due to an injury. So, Steve, if you're watching, I hope you're feeling better. That out there is also Brett Kaminsky from Australia. That is an all-wheel drive entry. So, Brett really excited and felt good about his qualifying run. Yeah, now I was chatting to Brett earlier as well, and he's super stoked to be here. He's been coming to this race since like 2012 as a spectator. Then he started racing UTVs back in Australia. And now look at him. He's here. He came out here last year. They had some real bad luck and uh, he's really hoping to put it together. This guy's fast, it'll be really exciting to see what he can do, and he's our highest placed um, four-wheel drive car in this race. Nobody around him, so he can just run his own pace, nice and comfortable, and as we watch a little replay coming up, as he comes around, watch the four wheels pull, and notice how he's driving with a little bit of understeer, not oversteer, Jim Beaver, and that's the difference between running two and, all, two and four wheel drive, Two wheel drive, you're always correcting with the front tires. Well, and correct me if I'm not uh, wrong, Ricky, and I know we've got uh, Alexander Wacker here and uh, coming off the line. Yep. Um, but uh, the all wheel drive, it's not full time all wheel drive, correct? It's like an 80 20 rear to front? Yeah, some go some go a little bit different. That's been a, been a problem with a lot of guys that haven't been able to get them to survive, is they're trying to put too much drive, like a rally car, to the front. But with the 40 inch tire, the weight knob, everything like that, the Mason guys have figured that out. And they're about, I'm going to fudge a little bit 25 front 75 rear and then but it doesn't come in until you break the rear tires loose so it's not putting the stress on those front cvs and that front diff if you were to run a traditional more more front drive yeah well let's just talk about these two guys so we've got bill apgood out there just ahead of alex wacker and uh, alex is running the camberg chassis of course from twisted monkey racing yep the best beer koozies in the business. <laughs> <laughs> Bang it on it so you don't lose it. You do realize you're going to get a box full of them next I week. I hope so. I need a couple. <laughs> of them. I, I have one from five years ago. <laughs> okay, now leaving the line now. This is Michael Fry, I believe. Yes, it is. So Michael Fry going out there on his own. So as we watch Michael Fry going out there, the next car off the line is going to be none other than Coral Potts, which will also be in another all-wheel drive car. But yesterday, Ricky, we saw that he had some troubles on the qualifying course. Yeah, we did. We're going to go back and take a look at that. And Cole says the finish line. And sure enough, Bob Bauer, he jinxed himself because he's not running a hood because it got smashed yesterday. But if we take another look at what happened, he was just a little too aggressive through the middle yep. of that corner. It bites. He turns into it. But then he gets to that berm, and he doesn't save it. So so tough, tough break for Cole. But if you notice, it didn't really hurt anything. It just it just messed up the it obviously taking the hood off. That's cosmetic, not hurting any of the drive parts. Yeah, so this is Cole Potts off the line right now. So watch how he can accelerate hard down the inside because he's got that all-wheel drive. Now, I, I have no idea what the drive ratio is front to rear, but this seems to drive a little bit more traditional, like, like the rally car pulls really hard on the front. But as I said, that's been a, that's been a tough thing to get a trophy truck to live with that much drive to the front. But Cole always fast, and that truck is very fast. Now, yeah, this is the Heisman car that used to belong to Bryce Benz. This is it's correct. So, so the Heisman brothers, um, Built that, built that. It took a while because they were all very innovative, and Bryce was always fast, but always had some, had always had a problem. And this looks like this is going to be uh, Jordan Brenthal. Yes. Or Jonathan Brenthal, Jonathan sorry. Brenthal. Now, this is the all-wheel drive truck that we saw Carl Jurgensen racing last year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So they, so they, 
built a new truck. It's more traditional motors up front, which you can see. You can see the scoop there. But it also runs the portal, so they get a little bit better drive, and also it's not as hard on the CVs. So let's just talk about the portal. So what we've got is a, uh, the actual hub itself. The yep. drive comes into the top of the hub. It then steps it down through uh, through the reduction gears or sank point gears, yep. and then points the uh, the drive out the side. So what they can do is that they can give it a better ratio, so it's not. It's like an underdrive for for what you're seeing on the two-wheel drive trucks, and that way you can get a stronger gear and also make it live a lot more. Because remember, what's in these tires about with wheels assembly 150 pounds. So when it's bouncing back and forth and spiking on rocks and sand and all the different stuff, you have to make that gear a stronger package. Yeah, absolutely. And those portals do offer that protection. This is our Legends class. I believe the first uh, first of our Legends drivers. Yeah, it is indeed. And this is Robert Malone. And we've got two cars in Legends this year. Number L22, Robert Malone. Awesome livery on this car. We said it yesterday, but there's no mistaking which country he might come from. Yeah. Still today, it still looks like Texas to me. <laughs> I'm, oh, Bob. <laughs> I'm waiting for a good Bob. -ism. I'm like, is he from Spanish? Because they start the song with Jose, can you see? <laughs> No, but, it, but this is great. This gives the guys that are been around a little while and they don't want to go out there and bang doors with them. They do because they qualify up front with them, but it also gives them a chance to go out and race against guys their own age. What? Yeah. You know. I'm just going to say this because now, of course, you're, I mean, we're just about to have the Ultra 4 Unlimited cars. Oh, look at this. Ooh, Starting to see these cars getting on it right now. And these are the unlimited trucks, so they're going to be hitting speeds. It looks to me, what, I'm saying about 120 there, something like that? Yeah, but the, the dry lake bed looks a little soft and beat up from yesterday, so they're not going to see that. But you, what I loved is I was curious to where um, Whetstone made his time, and, and uh, Rob McCacker said they looked at the time. That's the thing. They can see where he was at, and his top speed down the back straight was higher. So kudos to, to Ray Dugan, or, or Ray Fields at, over at Dugan. He's got that big block in there also, too. To the Fortin for having the right gearing in that truck, uh, but I also don't want to take away from Rick Geyser for that Gen 6. It's getting good traction all the way down to the BMG tires. Yeah, good absolutely. Combo. Well, I, oh, now that was interesting. That's the first car we've seen today who's taken the middle line. And I was actually going to talk about those whoops because these big cars, they just chew up those whoops, don't they? Yes. As we're watching Ryan Arciero right now. And now, th this part of where he's at, it looks really hard. You don't see much rouge, you don't see much dust. So that that part of the lake bed that he's on is not very chewed up. I'm gonna say he's, he's 150 plus. Wow. And so I'm gonna get somebody butcher me on uh, on social media. Oh, you don't know, I know that truck goes over 150. <laughs> I've been in it. <laughs> <laughs> this is Keith Basso, I guess the first of our uh, uh, what, what are we calling this class? It's not Ultra 4, it's Unlimited Ultra 4. Well, it's un un Unlimited Ultra 4. Unlimited Ultra 4, But, okay. uh, but he's, uh, this is an interesting vehicle. It, uh, it's not something we would see in Ultra 4. I think he's just kind of banged himself in there for a bit of fun. I'm just fascinated with where he puts his weight so far behind. It's got to be absolutely important to the car, otherwise you wouldn't put it out there. Well, it almost looks like a big truck that someone stole all the panels off it. Getting back out onto the course, the guys are up to speed and rolling, but now we see some of the dust becoming a factor. You can also use the helicopter. So when you're racing, you look up, you can't see up in the dust or see the truck in front of you. You look and find his helicopter, and that lets you know where they're at. And when you see that helicopter start to hover, you get so excited. You're like, something's <laughs> happened. He's got I hope he's not hurt and cr hasn't crashed, but I really hope he's got a flat and I get to get by him because <laughs> that's free. That, that's good stuff. You start sniffing the air, hoping his gear oil that you smell or something nasty. Yeah, this is the way Rob, Mc, Rob McCacker is he's, as he works his way out of the dry lake bed. Um, in years past, the helicopters have been known to uh, you, you blow the dust off the course for a few drivers here and there, too. What? No way? Really? <laughs> come on. Well, I haven't had him, had him blow dust, but I haven't had, had him come around. And now he's in case of security as he starts to hit out. Looks like that's Shannon Campbell right in front of him. So this could be a great race all day long because they go at it in the rocks, Jim oh. Marsden. They go at it in the desert. They only, In fact, and they did race short course together yeah. way back in the day. Oh, oh yeah. way back in the day. They've been there, seen it, done it. I mean, Shannon Campbell is a three-time king, whereas, of course, 
the King of the Hammers is one of the few titles that Casey Curry hasn't won. Yeah. So it'd be in great right. to watch what they're going on there. Now this is who we got. We got to keep our eye on this guy all day long. He was a very. He was our number two qualifier, Connor McMullen in the unlimited. Uh, class one car. Yes, so and a 405, Bob. Did you know that? 405. I know. Just he, he, he was at the time. If he would have went a little faster, he would have made it into three minutes. But, but <laughs> right there, this guy is no. on a charge. Let me take it over, guys. This guy is on a charge. He's been winning everything, and you're going to watch him all day long. Now, he's got to work his way through these guys for the overall, but definitely very strong. Jim Marsden? Yeah, and while the action continues here, we're going to fly into a short commercial break, but do join us very shortly here at the 2024 Be of Goodrich Mint. 400. Need a little help? We got help. Need some advice? We got advice. No matter what you need, we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it. Exceptional customer service. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. I got that right turn, we're good. Just, uh, meet up at the compound group up. I turn four. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good little driver, straight on through. Okay, and welcome back to the B of Goodridge 2024 Mint 400 here in Sin City, Las Vegas. And coming off the line now is none other than Carl Jurgerson our fastest qualifier and the unlimited spec, Ricky. Well, this is a past winner. He's back at home in the camper livery. He's got that beast on there. He's got Mega Flow, and he knows what it takes. He put down an unbelievable qualifying lap. Now he's by himself. He can set the pace, but we saw him pre-race, pre and he was very confident and very calm, said, I saw how rough this track is going to be, Jim Beaver, and he's got to be patient. 
Well, you know, and I, I've got to know Jerry Zayden, the team owner, for, for a long time. And I was talking with him, uh, you know, a little while back, and he said, you know, that they're out to prove a point with this program. Yeah. You know, they brought in uh, some of the best sponsors. Uh, you know, they brought Kyle back to run. He goes, we want to prove we have the absolute best chassis in the game. We're here to win races. Yeah. Well, and, well when you put a guy <laughs> like Kyle Jurgensen in there, that things like that are going to happen, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to see him out on track. But look at this. That is Christian, Christian Serapis. Serapis. He's screaming there. Yeah, no, Christian, no, he's no stranger. He's driven in two-wheel drives. He's driven in four-wheel drives. Uh, Side-by-sides, he's been uh, in a limited spec before. Uh, Christian's a wheel, but he'll drive just about everything. Well, and his father, he comes from, a, he's got the heritage. His father, Steve, won this race in a, in a Class 10 car. How do I know that? I got second to him. So um, <laughs> definitely the, the Serapises know how to drive. They know, the, they know the Nevada desert. They're from down south in San Diego. But, but Christian works very, very hard. So look, this looks like the first car, our lead car, coming through thumpers. And just look at the way this car's handling. Yeah, it's floating the front a lot. Now, just for me as a driver, I don't like to, to wheelie quite so much. I, I like it to stay down a little bit more. I like to see the rear end a little bit higher. But that is Nick Whetstone and running very, very strong and definitely up to speed. So Nick is doing an unbelievable job. So you'll see him in that left line. So anybody that's driven this course, that left line that Nick Whetstone it's, is in, it's, it's actually got more bumps than the right-hand right line, but they're closer spaced together. You get in that far right line, and they're... Uh, they're a lot. To, they're a lot less, but they're gap farther apart. So you see a lot of the unlimited trucks run that right line because they can get on top of it. Some of the limited cars yesterday were preferring the left-hand line because they're not quite as, uh, quite as far uh, far apart. Yeah, you can you can get up on top of them and blitz across the top. But the other ones, especially because this direction, we're going uphill as we're watching Christian Serapis. And what does he have? Dust. What did Nick Whetstone have? Clean Zero air dust. for the first lap. Because remember, this is a multi-lap race, so we're going to be getting into the lappers and, and other traffic. So right now, Nick Whetstone is putting putting distance on the guys as quick as he possibly can. Yeah, but somewhere in front of uh, Christian Serapis should be Adam Householder, Tim Herbst being driven by Pat Dean, then Rob McCachron and Ryan Arciero. And that is Ryan Arciero there. Easy to tell. He's towing the helicopter, as always. Notice the, notice the, the, the way the truck's sitting. A little more flat. It's not wheeling as much, and it's driving it down. Because old-school technology, you wanted everything to float. But now, with the strength of the wheels, the shocks, the A-arms, and everything, I think the truck is faster. As we're watching Eric Harden as he comes through, same thing. Notice the platform staying a little more flat. Not that, obviously, Nick Whetstone is doing a great job with what he's got, and that's, he's, he's used to that uh, style of driving. You know, I'm seeing two different setups or two different philosophies here. Cardin looked like he's a tall truck. He raised that truck up there to go through the bumps. I'm looking at Ryan Arciero. He may be taller than he normally is, but he's low. He's yeah. low. Well, you can set the trucks up with that, with, with your secondary spring and how you run your rebound and stuff like that. Yeah. As we're as we're watching Pat Dean as he rolls through, the in-car is unbelievable. You can see how square the bumps are. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the first lap. You see that little jar? Uh, it doesn't look like much, but as a driver, it's constantly going. And you can see uh, the, the co-driver telling him left and right, look out here, we got this yellow, we have a hazard, we got to the left and to the right. Now, what I love about this, if you're just joining us, uh, do you are welcome. And uh, this is the 2024 B of Goodridge Mid 400. But the thing that's very special is we've never been able to show in-car shots like this before. The technology has changed in allowing us to do this. So thank you to our production crew. Especially live. Exactly. Live. That's the deal. Here we have a 1.9 Industries Herbs truck, looks like. So, Jim. So, yeah, that was. Pat Dean driving. Well, it was, we were watching from the outside and now the inside. And you can see, ah, it doesn't look like he's going that fast. And then you see the outside, the helicopter shot. You're like, holy cow, that is unbelievable. So we're watching, we're watching live from 125 mile an hour through thumpers. Unbelievable shot. And, and if you notice, he's nudging away from the helicopter. Just screaming there. But, you know, it looks like the truck's going straight, you know, on the outside. You look inside and you see how much they're actually driving. You know, to keep these trucks straight, I know we were talking soft hands, and you, you're kind of like controlling the chaos, just guiding it back and forth, you know, and uh, just amazing piece of driving by Pat Dean. Catching it. Yeah. Well, and these, and these drivers, they'll look about a 1,000 foot up. When they're going this fast, he's looking all the way down at the end. You can't help but bring your vision back, but the further out you go, I took the statement from my daughter's go-kart teacher, with distance comes comfort. The further out you see, the more relaxed you are as a driver. Well, the, uh, and the right seat is looking even further out. 
to keep orientation because the driver can't really look too much off of his line. He's busy. He's got things he's got to decide. Do I want to raise the truck? Do I want to hit it? Do I want to not hit it? Well, and, and they're, they're constantly working their feet. If, if yeah. we had a camera in there as we're watching Rob Mack as the inner stumper, and as Jim Beaver was saying, notice how he, he times some of them. So he does like a short course where I'll jump this, jump that, and then I'll blitz across the top because they're, it doesn't look like it, but they're going slightly uphill, and that, that makes it that much harder on the driver and the car. Yes, it looks like Rob is slowing. slowing. That doesn't look like race pace to me. No, it looks like Rob might be having an issue. Oh, that's right. He's good back to me. on. I don't know. I didn't. We're just armchair quarterback in here. So. Uh, yeah, Rob Mack is going so slow today. Wait, wait. Who's in the finish line? Oh, Rob Mack. Yeah. Uh, here's BJ here's Baldwin. BJ, yeah, BJ knows this uh, this area uh, as well as anybody. He spends a lot of time out here testing, and uh, you know this is his stomping ground. So expecting some big things out of BJ today. I think he's one of those that can sneak in and. Uh, you know, gets his pace set right, sneak in and take a victory here on lap number four. Well, it'd be so easy to say that BJ's overdue because, this, you know, you got to call it a shot, a shot. It's been a pretty dry spell for BJ. These guys are running an unbelievable pace. They are already into Gonzo Pit. So, oh no, I'm sorry, this is uh, a Gene Hurst Pit. This is a Gene Hurst Pit, my bad. So leaving it out of Gene Hurst pit, you've got, uh, you've got, I believe, the Fox Proving Grounds. You yep. head up into the quarry. Really rough area course after you leave Gene Hurst. Well, and that's what the drivers were saying yesterday. From Gene Hurst past that to the shooting range, it's just brutal. It's so square edge, so rocky, and so harsh. And we also heard from Rob Max saying that the rain has exposed more rock. So the dirt that was in there has got washed away, Bob. So Gene Hurst pits is only about 20 miles into a 95-mile lap, to give you a perspective of where they're doing this. And the, to, to get to the next pit they're talking about, the, sh the uh, shooting ranges, that's about another 15 miles. Yep. Now, that'll all happen in about nine minutes. <laughs> there you go. But what I love is you know, I'm, we're probably going to see some carpal tunnel on uh, Pat Dean for giving everyone the thumbs up so enthusiastic because <laughs> he's rolling through the pit. But he's pretty happy. Absolutely. Means the truck's working well. They're 20 miles in and, uh, you know, got some heat in things and uh, they've been able to look at the gauges. And that's what you like to see. Everything coming up to temperature 20 miles in, truck working perfect. Let's Ricky, there's your floaty front. Yeah, the, flo the floating front. And everybody has a different style. Some people yeah. like that. Myself, I like the wheels touching the ground a little bit more and the platform a little flat. But some people feel that that's going to make it kicky and want to toss you up and over the bars, even though you're not. You don't have bars on these. It certainly does illustrate, though, that these trucks, even though they're all very similar in certain ways, they are tuned by the individual to meet, to meet whatever criteria they want. Different drivers have different styles. Everybody, yeah, everyone yeah. Has, has their own way. But we saw Nick Whetstone un going unbelievably fast through there, and it was floating a couple different. The reason I don't like to float so much is that I might miss one and come down in between in yes. the low spot. Yeah. I want to hit the top of every bump. Just That's, once again, Cowboy my Cowboy Cerrone here, I believe. Yeah, yep. that does look like Donald Cerrone, Cowboy Cerrone there. Charging Coming off that. Hot. He's got Fast Felix sat next to him. Oh, a little contact. Yeah, contact. I don't know. The, if Cowboy's the guy I'd really want to run into. <laughs> well, if I was going to fight him, I'd want to be, I'd want to be a car fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me a front bumper. That looks like an older Mason chassis. I'm not sure if that is Donald's truck or if he's running that truck or whatever. But that, if he's in one of the old, older Mason uh, spec trucks, that is an unbelievably forgiving. So we take another look, bounce back, and this is where I was talking about you want to make sure when you come up to the jump, regardless of how sideways you are, your wheels are straight. Because see if it's slightly off, it rebounds, gets traction, and shoots it out the other direction. And we saw that happen with uh, Harley Lett. Uh, Terry Householder here. Yeah, now it's, it's worth noting, we haven't actually seen... One of the Herbs entries. Yeah, that one. Is that going to be EJ, I think, the final? Uh, sorry, Thor, rather. I think Thor qualified ahead of EJ. Yeah, the, 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 yeah this, that is. Th this is EJ and Terry Householder. And Householder is running one of the, uh, the, the one nine Industries chassis don't, uh, from Herbs folks. You're so proud of yourself knowing that uh, before everybody else. Well, I took notes. I know you did. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are through trucks 51 and 52 of 69. So we have about 15 more cars to go. Um, I love what EJ's doing. He's just being patient right now as we get this in car. This is going to be awesome all day long. 
I want to thank the guys that, that have put this together. George, you and your team have done a great job. But I really want to thank the production crew from here at Unlimited uh, for the Mint 400. As we see EJ taking another look on the inside of Terry. Looks pretty calm. Yeah, EJ's in the third of the Herbst cars that are out here today. This is Andre Lorne and Chad Hall. Andre out of Canada, racing with uh, Adam Fitz uh, out of Colorado. Both of them been around the industry a long time. Chad's a finisher. Yeah. He's a finisher. He's not going to not finish. You're going to see them put in four really quality laps, and they're going to be there at the end. And he'll never miss a mark. But think about this, though, guys. He ran yesterday in that production truck. The pace that you're reading, I mean, you're reading in slow motion when yeah. it comes to that because you have to protect that vehicle. So I think he's going to get faster every lap going, oh, I can trust this, I can trust that. Even though he has all that knowledge, your head is still wrapped in what you drove last. Muscle memory. Yep. Which make which which is shocking when the guys would do short course and do two and four wheel drive. It was and they would just jump from one car to the other. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, this should be Neil Drickey and Adam Castanada. Oh gee, sorry, no, Kirk Harkey and Neil Drickey. They'll be going off next. Oh, we have some guys. Oh, close look by. at this. Three to three. Three and somebody got fast and somebody got slow. And there's someone in between. Now, is that Cole? Yeah, that's Cole that's Potts Cole on the inside. So look on the far right, ladies and gentlemen, the one without the hood the, with the green fenders bouncing side to side. That's an all-wheel drive. And see if he can make up that down <laughs> distance. They yeah, are that's boogieing. Brett, I think that's Brett Jeffers on the left-hand side. And Potts is in the, the worst line of the three, but he's going to try and get around him before he gets pinched off here. So he's going to have to wipe back in at some point. What I want though, Jim Beavers, I agree with you that having the bumps closer together, I would take that even if they're bigger. And right there we see it. Yeah, that's Twisted Monkey. He's just gone past. Alex Wacker. Cole Potts as he works his way up, obviously missing a hood. Um, if you missed qualifying or the start, we showed a replay of that. Cole tipped over, and that's why he's starting so far back. Um, so he's already making up ground on people. So very, very good news for Cole Potts. You know, Ricky, you've been mentioning a lot of different chassis makers here. Yep. And for those at home in the public, what we're really enjoying right now, because it means development, is there's a there's a trophy truck chassis war. Yep. You've, you've got you've got Geysers, you've got One Nine Industries, you've got well, Mesa. as you know, you've got Jimco. You Jimco. talked about that yesterday. Jimco. We don't want to we don't want to talk about that. So uh, we have got Jim Tisco. Tyson, <laughs> we have Tisco, we have Mason. Mason, we have we have a lot of different Brentful, things. Geyser. I, ID, ID chassis. Yeah. Uh, and they all have different characteristics. Cabo. Yep. You know, and, and drivers decide what they can test drive them. They say, I like the way this is like the Herbst ones, the, the one nine industries are, are supposed to be a little lighter, more nimble, quicker steering. They go for higher revs. Geysers, good solid. G6 is a good solid platform. Well, guys, if you look at how long, and look at Rob Max truck. He's been out there for the longest time, and I want you know you really want to, you know, Rick Geyser had the right idea. Is we're seeing Troy Grabowski. Um, we did not see where uh, Kyle Jurgensen was, but Gordon Grabowski as he rolls through. But uh, Rick Geyser was smart. He said, Rob, I'm going to give you a truck, and you can pay for it later. And look at how many trucks that sold because you put a guy like Rob Mack in there. And now you see our pole sitter in a G6. So the, the evolution of the geysers have, have been unbelievable. They started, they did a four-wheel drive, but they went back to their, their, their two-wheel drive, and they think they want to stay more with that. So that was David Burns like, oh, right oh, now, who is this? Not good. So Travis Williams, as he's unlimited spec, he, he's off. He's got the hood off. Obviously, that is the motor in between his legs. What I think he's done is he's lost a serpentine belt. Jim Beavers? Yeah, yeah. yeah it definitely could be. Get the driver sitting there. Yeah, serpentine belt. That's a, it, it, It's not a game over. It's just a, it, it takes a while to get one of those back on. We're, not, the, we're not talking a 30-second fix. But, well, you know, it's, it's so annoying. It's disheartening when, when, you know, you only get, like, 24 minutes into a race and bang your stop for a 30 minute time because well, that, you, but yeah. but oh, hold man. on Sorry, hold on guys notice he's in the speed zone everyone's yep. going by really slow so the, the question is did he drive it very long because the, the telltale sign when you're driving these limited and un, unlimited uh, unlimited and unlimited spec 
is you lose power steering. That's your first thing that goes, uh oh, I got a problem. And your reaction needs to be shut the motor off because Wait. if you stop that oil pump, you could seize the motor and, and, and everything can be catastrophic. Yeah, and now these vehicles that he's running, obviously, the LS3 package yes. this one. So he's not going to be running a dry sump. So that's one bonus. Okay, the other bonus that he has is he's probably running an electric water pump, which you are allowed to have on these particular engines, even though they're spec. So he has got that advantage. They run two alternators. Now, this is frustrating me because we practice belt changes because belt changes are really important um, and I think Travis Williams will be practicing belt changes after this as well but the um, but it is very very difficult and you have to ask why has he lost the belt because these are normally tried and tested systems they usually have a billet front end on them with all the idlers and pulleys set on them yeah I you, you could guess all day long. Um, it, it's just a heartbreaker for him. He, 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 I don't think he qualified as well as he wanted to, so maybe something is awry. You, you never know. That motor could be starting to go away. Something in the oil. Because so, what happens a lot of times, something goes through the oil system, hits the oil pump, it seizes it, and it, and it pitches the belt. So here's what I'm going to be looking at the next time. They're going to get it fixed. They're going to get it back running. But what I've watched is when they showed us in the end car and you see Travis in that car shaking his head side to side saying how angry he is and how uh, upset he is. Now we're going to find about the mental part of the yeah. mid 400. What can he do to get back into into the fray? Yep. So what he's telling him right now is I got it close. Go ahead and clip it. And he bump wants it. to see it run. And he wants to bump it and make sure it's straight. Oh. And then he'll find out. So he's going to let us know if he's got a problem. I've seen belts go. I mean, you can bottom it out, and all the silt and rocks and stuff gets oh. blown up in there, and it knocks the belt off. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can pitch a belt. But and once again, can. Jim, he's, I'm sorry, sorry, Bob, but he's in a he's in a slow zone. Yeah. That, that, that tells that, me there's that, there's a bigger problem to just pitch a belt in a low in a low RPM zone like that. So, once mm. again, we're guessing. Yep. Yeah. And so are they. Exactly. <laughs> and that'll be one of those you want to watch because if they go another 20 miles and another belt goes, then you know there's a bigger issue. Yeah. Right, right on our up, up by the shooting range in between uh, right at race mile 30 through the quarry as he's going back and forth. We see that he has caught dust. Um, we'll, we'll find out exactly see. what the running order is as soon as we can. Um, I want to remind everybody, if you go to the mint400.com, you can start, you can scan around, you can go to the live tracker, you can go to the time tracker, and you can also watch, obviously, if you're watching these videos as well. So a lot of great coverage. Is that this looks oh, like it looks, could be Harley Lettner. No, I think that's Ryan. I think that's Ryan. That's yeah, Ryan. you're right. You're yep. absolutely right. That That is Kyle, uh, Kyle Washington up at the helicopter chasing his driver around. So, um, oh. that you look at uh, Ryan through that quarry section, those tight turns we saw yesterday in qualifying, he's got that turning break. So, this in the quarry here, you're going to see Ryan use the use the heck out of the turning brake, getting the rotation down. And, you know, it's when you have that and it's an area like this, this is where Ryan can pick up a second here, a second there. Exactly. And it's won by that. It's 1%, it's 1%, 1%, 1%. All right, as we're watching. Look right at those shoulders off to the side of the track. We talk about no run out. Yeah. When you're in this quarry section, there is no forgiveness. This might be our last two Ultra 4 racers. Looks like Sky yes. Johnson, possibly, and uh, Mike Spindler. Yep. Cole Johnson and Mike Spindler as they, as they, as they head out. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are officially underway for the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mid 400. Everybody is off the line, and we are going. What's awesome, nobody's stuck here. I'm sorry, except Travis. And Travis, is, his driver, saying, "Go! I'll buckle up on the road." So it's yeah, running. Yeah, now he's in the time control zone here, so he has got a little bit of time on his hands. He can get those buckles in yep. with a, with some relative safety. It takes a little bit to get buckled in. It's uh, usually a five or a six-point harness. Tell you what, the cam locks have made life a lot easier to get yeah. in and out. When we used to have those uh, latch and links, that'd take forever to get things buckled. We you take your time, you see he clicks the one, clicks the, 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 the buckle is on the crotch strap, he gets that, and then the other, then the other. The old school, they used to, to weld them together and stuff like yes. that, which was, was great and fast, but it was dangerous if something happened. Yeah, we actually run a modified harness at home, which I won't talk too much. In fact, we sell them, so I can talk about it. <laughs> but uh, we actually have the uh, the top and the sides actually uh, sewn together, and then uh, it looks much easier to put on. Well, we've done, they did that before, but the rules here, they, they didn't allow that because if you're upside down and they unclip you, you your, 
trapped in. So if the idea is that when you release the belt, they all come apart, yep. and that way you're not trying to get under, because if somebody blows the shoulder or something like that, it's really difficult to get that driver out. You have to cut his belts and stuff like that. So it's all about time, Jim. Well, we it's want to get well, in and get out. There's changes in technology as well, with quick release buckles and stuff on the shoulder straps. So there's a, there's a yin to the yang, as there always is. Right, if you're just joining us, this is the 2024 BF Goodrich's Mint 400. Now, if you want to find out where all the runners and riders are, pop on over to the mint400.com. You will be able to find live tracking and live scoring information there. And as I look at our tracker right now, I can tell you that two cars are starting to break away from the rest of the group, and that is Nick Whetstone and Ryan Arciero, although it does look like Ryan Arciero is ahead on adjusted time right now. Well, and I got to give it to Nick. I mean, it, racing with guys that have had this much seat time and all the different stuff. Nick lives up in Modesto, developer, does, does a great job, but I'm really, really impressed with, with his commitment as, as with the whole team. Because to be out there and be in front of the guys like uh, Ryan Arciero, Rob Mack, um, and he did it legitimately. He didn't cut the course, he didn't get lucky, he actually just ran an unbelievable qualifying run, and now he is leading. Well let's, just, well, let's just talk about the times as well. I mean, the fastest car before we saw um, uh, before we saw um, Nick Whetstone take up the line was actually Conor McMullen yes. in the Class 1 with a 4.05. Isn't that right, Bob? I think it was 405, Jim. Yes, right. yes, yeah. I do believe. If you're wondering what all the sarcasm is, folks, is that <laughs> Jim Beaver and I predicted a, a high three minute, all right? And then these two over there said 405, and it was that until Nick my Whetstone. boy, Nick Whetstone, yep. <laughs> put me in the spot. He so. saved you. Yeah, he did. He, he did. We, you know, you you owe Ricky and I a beer, <laughs> but we owe Nick Whetstone a beer. Yeah, we, owe, we owe him a case of that. A Belgian Beaver, we're gonna we're gonna set him up. But hey, now we're back with Pat Dean, uh, driving for Tim Herps. Uh, he'll, I think he's gonna do, I think a lap and a half or two laps. I'm not exactly sure of the driver change, but we'll see there. But now you can see from inside and outside, you see how violent it is out here in the in the Nevada desert. You know, one thing I'm really impressed about with Nick Whetstone, though, is you know we're he, he's approaching mile marker 40 on the tracker. And, you know, my question was, he qualified fast, but I didn't know, is he going to cave to the pressure? You know, is he going to give up yeah. the position? We're 40 miles in, and he, he's breaking out. I mean, he's breaking away from the pack. He's ridiculously fast right now. you got to give him credit. There's no question he can handle the pressure. I mean, he's running away from some of the best in the business. Well, so I, it's a new truck. Does that mean, can the truck handle it now? Right here we're watching Jason Coleman. Nice running. Um, in the trophy, or not trophy truck, in the unlimited spec class, Jason ran really solid in qualifying, but he's one of those guys that is so fast throughout the day. You, you, can, you can see his co-driver, come on, it's go, 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 go. It's yeah. green, green, just keep, just keep flying, but definitely got to keep an eye on him. And you know that Jim Beavers is keeping an eye on that air box. It looks like a gigantic Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right in thinking that this might have been an old Serapis car. It, well, it is. Well, he's got two of them. So he, he has he has a one eight or one nine car, a, a Herb chassis, and then this is uh, Troy Grabowski. And once again, we we talked about uh, going through Thumpers Live, and you can see that back wing. Now, I think I haven't driven that truck, but I think that is to give him straight line stability because as the air hits it, it pushes on both sides of the vehicle, and if it steps out, it grabs it and pulls it back in as well. I um, think it's there to get attention and have people talk about him. But he hauls ass, so he's doing something <laughs> yeah, right yeah. as we go back to Pat Dean racing for for uh, Tim Herbs. Yeah, if you're watching at home and you're wondering, because you will see three Herbs car out there today, and they all look very similar. We've got Tim Hurst, and that is the 19. That is the unlimited car, and then we've got Thor and EJ in the limited class races. And that's the uh, source of the new branding for the company, which is 19 Industries. They've been number 19 for years and years and years. And so now when they're building their race, trucks for everybody you know they've got orders for 45 race trucks do you know we even have a turn one nine at king of the hammers yes we do we do because tim managed to roll yeah. it twice <laughs> yes we <laughs> do <laughs> we call it turn 19. you know but you know I'll, I'll go back to what i was saying earlier and then uh you know we had somebody going off but uh, pat dean we, i want to talk a little bit about pat dean because family is iconic with off-road yep. yes. no butch's speed shop you know butch getting inducted to the off-road hall of fame was Last you know to year, me yeah. it was absolutely 
long overdue, but Pat Dean, he's not a flashy guy. You know, he doesn't have the big social media following or any of this, but if you, I, I said before, if you know, you know. Pat Dean, he is absolutely one of the best drivers in off-road, hands yeah. down. He can drive anything from a class one car to a truck to a 1600 car. I mean, I love seeing him and Tim Herps racing together. I think this has been great for both of them. And I mean, Pat Dean, this guy, he, you know, he impresses me every time he's behind the wheel. He's a journeyman, skilled racing driver that is reliable. He's fast. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Pat Dean. And one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, too. He is. Yeah, he's going to be doing a two-lap duties before Tim takes control of the car. Oh, Here look at this. This is Shannon, Shannon Campbell in the new car. The chassis is designed by Matt Taylor. So Jim, Josh West did all the electrics on this vehicle. But Jim Marsden, for somebody that doesn't know, explain why the hood is so short and it's so long in the back. Explain how this is an Ultra 4 car and not your traditional trophy truck. Okay, so this is an Ultra 4 car. So what is Ultra 4? What we have to remember with Ultra 4 is oh. Ultra 4 isn't just about desert. If we actually go up through the rock trails in many different places around the world. And so the cars are built differently. And the reason it has a short hood is that means he has perfect visibility over the top. So unlike the unlimited trucks that we see here, where they're looking a thousand feet ahead, these guys, when they're yep. in the rocks, they literally need to be able to see the wheels. You got it. We're going to take a quick break for some billboards. We will be right back for the BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. We'll see you in a sec. The BF Goodrich 2024 Mint 400 is brought to you by Monster Energy, unleash the beast. Rigid Industries, own the night. Vision Wheels, built to conquer. Cageworks, top quality UTV roll cages and accessories. Ibac Springs, springs, shocks and suspension, made in the USA and engineered to win. Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame for the off-road industry. Join today. Legends live at ORMHOF.com. Okay, and welcome back to the 2024 Bit of Goodridge Mint 400. I'm Jim Marsden, and joining me in the booth are none other than Bob Bauer, Jim Beaver, and of course the legend that is Ricky Johnson. What a day of racing, gentlemen. As we're watching the guys come through the thumpers, this is another one of the, uh, um, sorry, the 1-9. I have a hard time not, not seeing the Herbs trucks, but this is one of the Herbs out there. I think this is, I think, either EJ or Thor. I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure that is Thor. That's two, the 219, that two, is Thor. That's yes, Thor, correct. 219, yeah. Well, we'll give you the uh, rundown through sector one on the first lap on uh, on some of our timing we've got. We've got Nick Whetstone uh, continuing to lead. Looks like a physically on track. He's got to about three minutes or two miles on Ryan Arciero, but on corrected time, Eric Harden is second through uh, sector one. Uh, uh, sector one, we've got Ryan Arciero in the third spot through sector one, then Rob Mack, Tim Herps, Adam Householder, Christian Serapis, B.J. Baldwin, uh, Harley Lettner and Kevin Thompson, and then Ethan Ebert. And this is Kyle Jurgensen out in front running in clean air, clean air in that beast vehicle. Also, uh, Camberg built, um, sponsored by Magnaflow, running very, very strong. We were just watching Brett Jeffries as he was rolling through thumpers, but looks like uh, Kyle Jurgensen has a very, very strong pace. Now, he's saying he's pacing himself, but this guy knows <laughs> trucks. His, his pacing is going to be unbelievable as we're watching Jim the leader come through Walton's. Yes, and uh, this is literally halfway through lap one. And look at this, this is fantastic pace here from Nick Whetstone. But most significant thing here is, look at this Ricky, dust. Yes, we're seeing a lot more dust than we, we did yesterday, so Nick is not dealing with that on this first lap, but he's gonna be catching some slower vehicles on lap two. He'll be right into some of the guys that have had problems um, that, that, are, that have to work their way back up, but everybody else is chasing him down. He is not, this is not a fluke. He, he didn't just, as Jim Beaver said, he did, he's not folding to the pressure. He's not making mistakes. The body panels are on, no flats, so good job. And he's out there. I want to throw a shout out to Rick Geyser. Obviously, that is a Geyser G6 as well. We talked about Dugan engine and that form transmission. 
Yeah, this is Ryan Arciero, and the, you can see how short more the distance is there. And it does look like that Ryan Arciero is our current race leader on adjusted time. So here we go, this is Ryan Arciero. Now, when you look inside these cabs, I love all this footage. You've got to say a massive shout out to the boys and girls who bring this to us. God, he's got his own helicopter and his own shot. That's not half bad. <laughs> this is that uh, area they call the sand whoops. You go, it's downhill sand whoops section, and then yeah, it, it kind of comes together. Yep. Multiple lines come together at the bottom as you make a hard left-hand corner. What always makes me laugh is when we go in car with all of these cars, all of the panel goes dead quiet because we're all racers and we're all sitting there <laughs> we're trying to drive the car from here. I'm watching what Travis is doing. Look how relaxed Travis on the right side is there. He's just he's reading the screen, he's watching things, he's talking to Ryan, giving him notes. And you know, one of the things I'm noticing is, is when we go to that in car, look how little Ryan is moving his hands. That's yes. a truck that's working very, very well. Ryan's not seesawing back and forth. I mean, we're talking subtle, very small movements. Well, and Ryan is one of those guys that liked a lot of information. You know, we were talking, I was talking before when he had Benny Metcalf in the seat with him, and Benny would have a literally look like a phone book in his lap, and he's calling off rally notes left, right, left, right, left, right. And now the, the technology, they have that um, on the GPS. He can read off the notes to him and let him know what's coming his way. Yeah, you'll also notice that uh, in front of the switches in front of the co-driver, you'll see them flashing away there. They're actually LEDs, so those lights will be solid. But he'll be running a MoTeX system in there. And if it detects, there'll be pre-determined um, factors already built in. So if anything starts to go wrong, if he gets a fan, starts to pull too many amps, the system will actually talk to them, and they'll be able to deal with that from inside the car. You know, it's funny, we're sitting on the outside looking in, and, and what we see is a car bounces to the desert, tires move and things like that. It's amazing how busy a machine really is inside. Under the skin, that is a busy machine. Jim Beaver, you got some, got some for us? Yeah, we are just watching the tracker. Looked like the number nine of Ethan Ebert uh, had a little bit of downtime. It looks like he's back up and running now, but uh, maybe a flat tire or something early yep. on. That was, I believe, through, uh, through the shooting range up in that area, possibly. So it uh, uh, looks like they're back on course now. So it's a minor issue for the number nine, but they're back going. Now, this is the interesting thing about this first lap. Now, normally, we'd be expecting to see several cars stopped with flat tires. We'd expect to see several people having issues. The lack of attrition on the first lap yesterday and today is absolutely remarkable. I just think we're going to get some attrition today. Right? Oh, there will be. Well, if you talk to uh, guys, uh, Cliff Flannery, he says the nutrition of these big blocks is pretty tough. Yes, he did say nutrition. <laughs> that was, I didn't mess uh, we, up. We, we, we kinda, I was saying, uh, you did say Cliff Flannery, I so did I say paused. Cliff Flannery, so he, he, he would say, you know, the nutrition on these big blocks is, is pretty tough. And well, yes, they do have quite an appetite. They eat quite a bit of gas. Just, just so you have an idea, they get about a mile and a half a gallon. That, wow. That's the kind of... And if you're watching at home, that's 3.8 liters yes. per so, mile. So by comparison, by yourself. comparison, Ricky, <laughs> most of the small blocks, at least in my memory, are two to two and a half, correct? Yes. So correct. we're talking almost a full mile a gallon less with a big block over a small block. Exactly. We're, we're building a truck for Lucas Cassidy, and we're putting in the, the LS3. And so I'm trying to find out. So I'm talking to Jason Coleman, talk to Colby down at Turnkey, and the find, down, find the different guys. They say three-ish. So I'm planning on, we have a 95-gallon fuel cell. We have 90 gallons usable, so we have 90. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to go to two and a half miles because I, I 2.5 miles per gallon because you always want to be conservative. But you can still get over 200 miles on that 95-gallon fuel cell. You know what I find interesting? This is that we were still doing two and a half miles to the gallon back in the 70s. That has stayed consistent. The thing is, what we're doing with that two and a half miles per gallon is going a whole lot faster. Yeah, we're getting there a lot quicker. <laughs> oh Our mile per average is going great. Now you can see, Jim Margin, let's talk about this. On the leaderboards, like you said, on corrected time, it is Ryan Air, Ryan Arcier out front. But if you look on your tractor, it is still Nick Whetstone out in front physically. Yeah, he has that physical course lead right now. And that's going to be important if we're going to start to see more dust today. But we saw on the start line, wind and that makes a massive difference. And most of these guys are hugely experienced at driving in dusty conditions. And if we look at this Ultra 4 car here, which we were a moment ago, there was no dust coming off of that at all. It just wasn't breaking the dirt, so that was good to see. So this looks like Cowboy Cerrone to me. Yep, it looks, like, looks like he's in an old, uh, older, I think, Gen 3 or Gen 4 Mason uh, unlimited spec. Very, very comfortable, great truck to run. I, I, I pre-ran a lot of those when I was with Team C. As we're watching the drivers as they work their way in. This is our 
unlimited spec leader. Kyle Jurgensen. Yep. Yeah. This is a small pavement section after you leave the quarry. Uh, you're running the asphalt for about a mile, mile and a half before you bail back off. And we've seen some pretty horrific crashes because it gets to the end and people don't realize how fast they're going because they're not bouncing up and down. That they're just getting great traction on that asphalt. It's a hard 90. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Emphasize hard. Well, here you oh, go. They, now, they, so now they, they, they fade off and they don't go. But now you notice he's trying to try to make as much time as he can because he's back in the dust. Yeah, now he's got someone's dust in front of him, but there is nothing that drives you on harder than seeing someone else's dust. So he'll be pleased with that. Dust is an aphrodisiac, gentlemen. And that is Christian Serapis there. <laughs> Everything's an aphrodisiac to you, Bob. Yeah, but, but I'm harmless. <laughs> gentlemen, air is, uh, water is an aphrodisiac. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Bob. Right, okay, I can tell you now that our race leaders are gonna be coming through Gonzo Pit very shortly. We've yes. got three pits out there today. We've got one back here in Prim Valley Town. Then we've also got the Genehurst Pit, which they went through uh, around about race mile 20. And now the Gonzo Pit, which is somewhere around about the sort of that 57-mile uh, mark. I'd give that halfway, wouldn't you think, Jim? Well, just over halfway. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, see, exactly what you're talking about. They're going to stop again. This is, yeah, a, this, this is a bigger problem than, uh, than a serpentine belt now. We've got to... Uh, Anything that gets the driver out of the front seat. Yeah, they're, apparently they're planning on being down for a while. Oh, yeah, and the yeah. worst thing is that what can happen with these serpentine belts is they get wrapped up round the, uh, the bottom crankshaft pulley, and then the worst that can happen is they can actually go into the crankshaft seal. Well, and if that happens, it really is game over. Ladies and gentlemen, these belts just don't I know. Something, Something's going through the motor, making the, the pump seize, the and then pump. that's jumping the belt off. Because once again, look, he's, he's out on the dry lake bed, a completely smooth section. So very, very tough day for Travis Williams. I got a little information about the Grabowski brothers I was talking to, um, Dustin, it, is that Troy is going to do 150, and then Jack is going to get in and do the second half. So the, the, between the three Gabrowski brothers, um, they're going to, uh, only two of them are going to be running. But uh, Ricky G says that, that when I talk with Dustin, he might get in at the end if there is a problem, but it's just going to be Jack and Troy. Here is uh, David Bernstein. Look at that truck dance down that uh, down those sand lips. But look at the dust, though. So when we start getting we start getting in the other laps, it is going to be a huge factor. And it's not sliding off the course that fast. Look a little cross. Silence. It's still yeah, no, we're just watching the truck do its Every, business. Everybody becomes a driver. <laughs> Did we become uh, speaking fans of Grabowskis, again? here we've got the Grabowskis truck yeah. looking pretty. This is Troy. He qualified well, and as we talked about, Bob thinks it's there like one of those uh, satellite antennas they used to see back on Pintos back in the day. I think it's more function, but also notice their front fenders, that they're kind of up, which is going to give more downforce on the front, front of the truck as, as well. Truck. So Ricky, the, tell, Ricky, you've done more, a ton of stuff. At well, what speed do you think wings and such start to really affect the car? It, hap it happens at like 40 miles an hour. Stick your hand out the window of your car yeah. and just make your palm big. Okay. Now stick your whole arm out there. Now imagine a wing like that, yeah. that in square footage wise, it's five feet long by two feet high. When it sets out sideways, that gives a wall to want to bring the back of the truck back. Also, when you're at speed, notice it, it's in a slight V. So what it's going to do is slice through the air and put pressure to keep the thing straight. A lot like the Indy cars with, with the wickers. Right. So, so when we get a chance, we're going to shoot it down to Brian Little, who's got some text pieces from us. So Brian Little from AGM, take it away. So we're out here talking this weekend about tech and new technologies, but sometimes you just need replacement parts for your race car or your ride at home. That's why we're at the O'Reilly Auto Parts booth talking to Guillermo. Guillermo, tell us a little bit about your company. How you doing? Well, O'Reilly Auto Parts has been around since 1957. The, the brand out here in the West Coast is a little bit newer since 57, but we just want everybody to know that whether you need some simple parts or maybe some really technical stuff, we're the place you want to visit. Yeah, we have a, a commercial account with you guys back at our shop, and man, if you don't have it, you can get it. You guys always come through for us. So if you're looking to fix your car either out here at the Mint or back at home, check out O'Reilly Auto Parts. Back to you guys. Thank you, Brian. Good to hear from you. And check this out. Is that, uh, is that Ethan? Yes. Yes, that is the Honda entry. Yep. 
Yeah, and we, we, we he's really a fender there, I see. Yeah, we, he had some downtime earlier. We talked about that, and he got back up and going. I wonder if he cut a rear tire. Maybe the rear tire got into the fender, destroyed the rear fender, and that's what happened. Yeah. So, Bob, so Bob yeah. you were talking during that piece, and you said you had a little information about Ryan Air Sierra's dash. Well, when when we get back to an in-car, and, uh, and Ryan's in, in the turning stuff, not the straightaways, you'll see him reach up with his right hand and move a, a lever. He'll pull it, he'll push it. What that is in this truck is that that's how they're uncoupling the rear end so that the what? front end can touch. So he gets to the turns. He gets to the turns quicker. Uncoupling the rear end. Yeah, and, and it allows him to keep the rear tires going with power and still have steer. You're going to have to explain that one to me one more yeah, time. Yeah, that's going to, we're, we're going to argue about this at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not that they're doing it wrong, it's because I'm saying it wrong. No, no, no. The, 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 I, you know, Bob. I, if anyone's going to give me a hard time, it's going to be me. So I'm going to have you do a little bit more homework because I want I want to understand that better because I, I don't. And you might get in trouble for giving away a trade secret here. You know, I found out yesterday you got to be careful what you say on the air. But let's, So there's Cole Poss as he's working through uh, the sand whoops. I also want to throw out that, that that truck, I did recognize that truck. It is uh, uh, the Cowboy Cerrone is running. Tim Scalzo threw it out. But that's Brian Goldstein's truck. He got in, did some racing down there and now uh he's got cowboy cerrone in that so i know that truck it, in fact it uh, was an unbelievable uh we're not going to go into the, the lineage of it but it is an old mason truck which is so tried and true let me follow up on here go Maybe ahead well my question to them was is this a turning brake push you know push left pull right whatever it is no it's a front and rear thing not side to side locked rear differential can't do side to side like it's like a buggy they do it to transfer weight for quickly for turning. Huh. Okay. Okay. So my thought. Uh, okay. I'm going to take a guess. I think that they got to set up with the front brake. Right? Um, and I, I, I got to probably shut up because I got in trouble yesterday for saying something I was supposed to say. But it, there, a lot of people do different things. When when Toyota was doing short course, they had a pedal on the brake that they could shut back and forth to do front brake versus rear brake. When I was racing for Nelson and Nelson, I would hammer the brakes hard straight. As soon as I turned it a, a quarter turn, it would release the outside front tire so I could rotate on a dime. Russ Wernemont, uh, and I, the one thing that I did create with him was for Scott Taylor, basically two brakes where you push the right brake and push down both pedals when you push the left and push down the other one and then that's where the handbrake started coming in for short course to, to back it in so there's a lot of different things that you can do which it all goes back to Jim Beaver the cutting brake and we talked to this morning we were talking to Rob Mack and he was saying that we drove that buggy yesterday it was spinning and running almost did a couple of 360s so explain what a cutting brake is in a buggy jump. Well, in a buggy, because it's an open rear diff, the buggies work a little bit different because I think the buggies, correct me if I'm wrong, they work off the front brakes, right? No, rear. Oh, what the the buggies are because, rear? Of, because it's open, you let off, and if you push, you push push left and pull right. Okay. It locks up the inside. Yeah, it locks up uh, either or tire. Yes. So you can pull, lock up the right rear tire, the left rear tire, depending correct. on which way you want to turn. Makes you whip around with uh, with a full, full rear end. You've got, like with my old uh, unlimited truck, it locked up both rears at the same time. So you kind of have to lead it into a corner a little bit. You grab it and it'll whip the rear around on a dime. Yep. Gentlemen, I have some news. I'm just looking at the tracker right now. And car 97, which is none other than BJ Baldwin, is showing at zero mile an hour oh. at around about race mile 51. So I'll keep an eye on that one. So that's going to put him before Gonzo Pit, just after the sand whoop. So tough place. We didn't we didn't see BJ come through the sand whoops because we've been jumping around. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, this is the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. I'm Ricky Johnson along with Jim Beavers, Bob Bowers, and Jim Marsden. And we are seeing a lot more dust than yesterday, gentlemen. Yeah, this track is really starting to change now. Now, we had quite a lot of rain out here, as what Mac was saying earlier on. That there's a lot more exposed rock, but with that came the whole point. We had that beautiful, as you would say, Bob, that cake dirt. So yeah. there was not so much dust, but we're just starting to see a bit more dust there. But we saw Ryan Sierra just reaching for that um, that break that you were talking about earlier, Bob. Yes. You know, he grew up driving open wheel or buggies. And, and with, with the cutting brake like Jimmy was describing it. So for him, it's, it's a, like a natural act, just easy. Yeah. Well, and he's driven so many different vehicles. If you're, he's driven manual transmissions when he was with the buggies when him and Jimmy Johnson started back in the day. Um, so 
you just got to give him a couple things. So there now, see, he reaches up for it. Ah, man, I know that we're probably, if, if we open up this Pandora's box here, we're probably going to get in trouble <laughs> of what it might be. But I'm, I'm waiting for my cell phone to blow up to either say shut up or this is what it really is. But Ryan, obviously very, very comfortable, got a great combo going. And he's actually lost a little bit of ground to Nick Whetstone. So I think that dust might be getting him a little bit. Yeah, I've got some other news as well. Uh, tough news for Ultra 4 fans. Casey Curry is showing at zero mile an hour uh, right back at race mile 10. Oh. Well, as, we, as we've seen, we still see B.J. Bottle with a little red dash or anything. But now, we, if we notice, with the, they reloaded. So it, it is um, Nick Weston is not that far in front of in front of Ryan Arciero. So yeah, it's no, going I think back and forth. It, we when we saw see, out of the front, when we saw out the uh, the first uh, out of the window. But this is the first class run. This is Conor McMullen. This is actually the man who qualified in second position. Second fastest qualifier, but to have to start behind the unlimited trucks, and you know he's on a mission today. I think he's uh, he's going to be charging hard. I want to see his time. Yeah, I want to see what he's on an adjusted time. That's for sure. It's going to be very interesting indeed when he comes in to cross the line. Well, and if you guys are, are watching the tractors, you got to make sure because uh, Jim Beavers and I are over here looking at his <laughs> his iPad, and we're going back and forth. It's like, oh, well, wait a minute. Or, I'm sorry, but we're watching the physical leader. This is Dick Whetstone as he works his way through Joshua Tree. And notice that yesterday there was barely any dust. It was very wet, very tacky as he starts to break through. I think we're going to see less dirt as we get going, Bob. I noticed in the background a helicopter. That's Ryan's helicopter. That's how close Ryan is to Whetstone. Well, I've got some news for you, gentlemen. I'm just looking at our second time split sector. So we're, we've got three time splits on this course as they right. come around. We can collect times. At the moment, it is Nick Whetstone on adjusted timing. He's made his way back up into the front. And it's Eric Hardin that is actually running in second place on adjusted time. Just behind him is Orion Arciero. But the man I'm not seeing at the moment who was running up there uh, really hard was Rob Mack. So I'll come back to you as soon as I've got more on that story. Well, and the question is, is that Arciero's helicopter or is that Herb's helicopter? We don't, we don't know that. Yeah, that's definitely uh, Ryan's well, helicopter. I know that's Ryan because it's, it's Ryan right there. Yes. But, but just curious to see where everybody's at. And, and we're, we're guessing back and forth. Once again, you go back to the track. It shows right now it's showing that Tim Herbst is in second place on the tracker. But uh, I don't know how close Yeah, but if you, look at it, uh, if you actually look on the tracker, click on it, then you can look at the time that it actually refreshed. So it's an and, uh, yeah, so on Tim Herbst, it coming up at 19.50 for me. If I then look on 19, it comes up at 19.48. So you've got a two minute difference on the way your track is pinging. Yes. And that gives you your difference. So ladies and gentlemen, we, uh, Casey Curry, we can see him at, at race mile 10, um, just past race mile 10. Under the left rear, looking at something there, that's not good. Yeah. Tough, now, tough but, break. Yeah, now the one thing I do like is the fact that he's pulled right off the racing line there. Yeah, always the best thing to do, get them as far as you can away, because as the guys are going by, um, they're, they're racing. Yeah. So the problem yeah. the problem isn't one guy, is the guy that's right in his dust, and he's looking to the left or to the right, and next thing you know, he's right into a car. But with the racing tracks and the other things that we have to help the drivers out, they can push a ping on there, and as you're coming up at speed in the dust, you see that it's going to let you know that there's a car coming to, to keep you safe. But uh, tough, tough break for Casey Curry. Oh, no. Oh, Our last year's winner is in the pit. Yeah. Hood's off. That is not good for Eric Harden. Had a blistering pace to start. No, very, very fast. Yeah, he was showing up on our thing. But, uh, yeah, he was showing on our tracker as running in second place pace. So, real tough break there for him. And I'm just trying to find out where Rob Mack is. Um, I'm not showing him on my leading board right now. You know, so the, I'm just going to try and find him. The body English of these guys in the pit says they're going to get it running. They're going to get back out there. They're they're rushing. Yeah, I can tell you that uh, BJ Baldwin is back up and running again, so that's great news for him. And Cole Potts is definitely charging hard. This is a fast lap. We just found out that this is uh, about the 65 mile mark was where this camera's yeah. going. It, it, in an hour and nine minutes. Yep. Can you imagine the average? I mean, holy moly. 
I'll be interested to see what the lap four's average is compared to this. Not going to be the same. Yep. Another one of the trucks make his way through Thumpers. If you get a chance to look at the map, um, Thumpers is at race mile 20, right before the Gene Hurst pit. Yep. And this is another driver up in what they call Spectator 1 or the gravel pit. If you notice, you can see that the, the piles of dirt to the left or to the right so that they, they do a lot of mining up there, but they give the guys give those guys um, room to go. Here. So when 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 Eric came into the pit, he was in the top five, wasn't running very strong. That you see that TE right there, that is his co-driver, Andrew Myers, who is out of the truck, helmet is off, they're they're looking, and so the, I, I disagree with you, Bob. It looks like they're not going anywhere. That's it. You're right. What a tough, shame. Tough, tough break. Yeah. Well, and that and that's the thing to try to back up, and you know we see guys like Rob Mack and um, other people do it, but to to go back to back and win that race is really tough. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of. It takes a lot of skill, a lot of hard work, but there is some luck because it's just one bolt, one this, one that. It can bite you. Win the Mint 400 in 2023. Win the Mint one hour. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in 24. Yeah, I'm, so I have a, I, I, I'm still waiting for my Bob, like 9, 9.45. Well, right now we're going to break to a commercial. We're watching the different stuff. As the guys are coming through, we'll watch this, another one of the drivers as he works his way into the sand whoops. Um, Right now, we have a blistering pace. These guys are running about 65 miles an hour. We're going to take a commercial break. We will be back. That is Kyle Jurgensen, your unlimited spec leader at this point time as he works his way through. We'll be right back.
bestoffroad.com. Offering the best off-road brands, best customer experience, best prices. Experience off-road retail re-engineered by bestoffroad.com. Stop by our booth in the Midway. Off-road advice is always free. Bestoffroad.com can help you create your ultimate off-road vehicle. Over 25 years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. And welcome back to the 2024 Beer of Goodridge Mint 400. We are around about three quarters of a lap into the unlimited race here, just outside of Sin City, Las Vegas at Prim, Nevada. My word, what a race we've got going on so far. We were just in car then with Ryan Arciero, but we've got some big news. Jim Beaver, what's been happening? Well, it looks like we've got some downtime with Nick Whetstone, our leader. It doesn't look like he's been passed quite yet from Ryan Arciero. That's BJ. Herbs. Now we're getting a view here of BJ. J. Baldwin, who we knew had some downtime earlier in the day, uh, but Nick Whetstone, our leader, currently still down, hoping uh, maybe just a flat tire and we can get him back underway. But uh, uh, our leader now, you know, this is the mid 400, and where he's at is a very rocky section of the course. The salad is being tossed, gentlemen. We're seeing the changes happen. They're going to oh. be big next time. Now look at this. This is BJ getting back on track again. So I wonder what was happening there. Maybe he had to shut down and do a hard reset. Now a lot of these vehicles run what we call PDMs, so power distribution modules. Um, sometimes that they can be having issues, and you have to just literally close the car down and Ooh. reset and restart. So uh, this is uh, looks like Ryan Air Sierra going up through uh, Beer Bottle Pass. Beer Bottle Pass, and I tell you what, that's tall and that's skinny. It doesn't look like it from here, but it's a it's a well. It's a pucker factor. Yeah. A little bit of a sphincter clinch. It's a few miles long, but uh, definitely no room for forgiveness. No. Uh, it actually reminds me of some of the areas in Baja. Cliff on one side, yeah. mountain on the other, and no, no runoff. And an ocean at the bottom of the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him going, though. Well, Ryan's this. got a great pace. And this, where, where Rob McCacker was talking about how the rain has exposed a lot more rocks, and this is one of those places. If we have a problem, we're going to have a massive bottleneck. Oh, boy. So, so the guys really got to be careful because what will happen is a truck is sideways. There's no way unless somebody comes in the other side to pull them back out. Or shove them off. Yep. Exactly. Well, talking about Rob McCachron, I've been looking for Rob on our tracker, and I can't find him. So, well, we're just going to have to surmise as to where he might be, as to whether he has a problem or whether the tracker has a problem. I think, that, so, I think that's our yeah. route because we haven't seen him on camera much, so we don't know exactly where he's at. I'll, I'll wait and probably get a somebody will send me a text but we'll find out yeah he was running a strong pace so it could be he's just dropped off the uh, transponder or lost his tracker we'll soon get, find out when he comes back through uh, to complete his first lap so i just got a little bit of information from casey curry lost the transmission must have been damaged from the hammers we didn't change it to oh. test for for the thousands so they were trying to put on a thousand miles because they wanted to see what it's going to do well, they found out a problem so thank you Casey for letting me know about that uh, this looks like uh, that is Brent Jeffers I think or Brett Jeffers sorry check that 267 yep that is Brett Jeffers in the 267 So I'm just looking at the front here. We keep saying that uh, leading this race can be this is Ryan Arciero this is live now, I, this, I believe, is our current race leader, physically and on adjusted time. Yes. Yep, we see no dust in front of him as he works his way. He'll be starting to head his way back down. And now, notice that there's not near as much dust on the south side of the course. So we should be seeing him back at the main pit very soon. Yeah, yes. no, it's, it's trying to work out the message he's trying to send on the side of the car there. It's, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's difficult. It's quite cryptic. They need to go bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, and Ryan enter in that area, I like to call no man's land, Joshua Tree Highway yeah. out behind the mountain. So he's going to wrap around that mountain. Then once he gets around the edge of the mountain, you hit a wash and that wash takes you all the way back down into Prim. That wash back, forth, back, forth. It's got rocks the size of refrigerators. Uh, but if you stay in the main line, it's actually really quick. Which is just a, a, 
downhill walk, yeah, It's right? downhill. It is a full freight train run all the way back down in the brim. But well, I'm just looking at my tracker at the moment. I can tell you that uh, it looks like Ryan Arciero is out in front at the moment. Behind him is Tim Herbst. Then uh, behind him, it looks like we've got Adam Householder. And then it looks like Christian Serapis. Uh, then Nick Whetstone, who we're still waiting to see. He's still showing zero mile an hour at the moment. So tough luck for Nick Whetstone there. And then just behind him, it looks like Harley Lettner driving the Kevin Thompson Concrete Motorsports car. Well, what's awesome is we have three cameras, or actually four. We have one in, two in the car, one in the one in Ryan's helicopter, which you can see the shadow right behind him there. So that's one angle. This is the angle out the back. Then we have that, wow, getting right down on the deck. Well, this is one of those images. That is, tell me what desert racing is, and this is kind of it, isn't it, really? When well, you've got your own helicopter in the shot of you and the car. Well, this is when you do it right. That not everybody gets to do it like this, but when, when, when they do do it right. Uh, do we call this portrait mode? Is that the deal? I don't know, but, but that's, once again, we're, we're watching, we have the, the crew helicopter that's filming their helicopter and their racetrack at the same time, but rightfully so. This is our race leader of the 2024 Mid 400, brought to you by BF Cripper's Tires. Yeah, Ryan Arciero. He's leading the pace now. He has clear air in front of him. This is exactly what he wanted. And before the end of lap one. Now, this is coming to Joshua Tree Pass. Is that correct? Yes, this is, on, this is where Jim was talking about. You can see the mountain off to the right, and you can see, well, you can't see in the distance, but this is coming down. You can see it's slightly downhill. The big sand watch is going to arc around, and all of a sudden, when you come there, and you see the lights of Prim, and it's nighttime, you're like, oh, yeah. I'm almost there. But you're not. No. <laughs> Yeah, and as you go around the back side, it starts out with a few Joshua trees, and then it starts getting more and more, and they get thicker and thicker. So the more Joshua trees you see, you can see he's farther along in the course. See, ladies and gentlemen, there is an old school racer. Everyone else is talking about what they see in the GPS. Jim Beaver is telling us how we used to have to do it. You have to <laughs> actually look outside the race car, see what you see, and see what it means. I could tell you the first few times I raced in Baja, my dad refused to give me a GPS in the Class 8 because he said you need to, have to learn to race Baja without a GPS before I'll ever allow you to put one in the truck. He was right. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, racing a motorcycle in Baja with no GPS at night is probably one of the most terrifying things I've ever done. Well, two wheels is another level of crazy in Baja, so high five, Ricky. Well, I, like I said, I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't do it at the, at the very, very high level, but we, we ran strong. But when you had to do it with no GPS, and sometimes when you get in the fog down south, it, oh. it, was, it was pretty horrifying because you don't know where you're going. But um, a lot is happening. I'm curious to find out where Rob McCacker is at this time. Is it a situation that here we're seeing Adam Householder as he works his way through? Obviously, he's still in a good position showing fourth on the leaderboards right now. So a lot of racing still to go, Jim Martin. Yeah, there's still an awful lot of racing out there at the moment. And it always is the same at the mid 400. You see Adam Holsolder there really laying down the power. And we talked about him. He's going to come. He's going to make a stop each lap, put fuel in. I doubt that he's topping off the fuel. He's probably he's, he has a, a known amount that he wants to add to it. So he's a little bit light on fuel, but going to change tires every lap because it is going to be very, very hard on, on rubber um, every lap. We, yeah, well, let's just talk about that for a moment because the longest part of a pit stop is actually changing those tires. They'll be able to splash and go for the fuel, and I'm, I'm imagining they're going to be looking at something around, you called it earlier, but probably something around about 28 seconds to take fuel and two tires. That, that is a blistering pace. <laughs> to, for, for, to sling these 40s that quick, that, that is hard. And a lot of times it does, as you were saying, it takes longer to, to add the fuel. But if he's not going with a full load, if he's not putting a whole, you know, over no, so it takes longer to change the tires than it does to do the fuel. In some cases. Yeah. But when, when we were at Team C, those guys were gunslingers. They were done. Now, here is, that is our Nick fast Whetstone. qualifier. This is Nick Whetstone. Yeah. Nick is back up and running, it looks like. Uh, you know, like I said, where he had his downtime was a very, very rocky area. So I wonder if he had a flat in that area. No, look, the, the, he's still got two tires on the rig there. The, he has not taken the tires out the back. So something else is going on here with Nick Whetstone. And Christian Serapis looks like he's made up quite a bit of time on Nick Whetstone, so he is in his dust. So Christian doing a great job working his way up in there. We, we should see him if we back out just a little bit, which we're not controlling cameras. <laughs> we could see both of those in the same frame. 
Yeah, but interestingly, you can't say, look at the dust, or, or should I say, almost the lack of it. Yeah, that's once we get down, we're down further south. There at the, uh, the furthest south point of the race, here we see uh, Kevin Thompson, Harley Lettner, and the Concrete uh, Motorsports, as they're working their way through. Yeah, so, chatting to Harley earlier, I said to him, you know, was it like to be back in the two-wheel drive? He said, to be honest, it's more fun than the four-wheel drive. Absolutely. I didn't mean to shut you off, I just agree with you. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, Har Harley is one of those drivers that seems to like his, using his doors as his leading edge. Yep, well, the, here, here we see Thor Herbs as he works his way through Gonzo Pit. So these guys got a great pace going. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how we line up once they make it back to Main Pit and who is going to follow that Adam Householder and take on fuel and. Uh, no stopping for Thor through Gonzo, but who's going to take that on and who's going to go try to go long? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the what happens there. But uh, on the unlimited spec, they're not as hard on tyres. They don't make the, they, no, they don't put decoration into tyres. They've only got that limited engine. Six point two liter. He gives the thumbs up, gives a wave to his pit crew. Now, a lot of these cars, as they come through here, they will have speed controllers. Well, Bob Bauer, I just got a question for you. Did okay, you go okay. with the P sign, the Shaka, or the thumbs up when you went through the pits and you were waving at everybody outside? Depending on the pit. If it was our pit, it was just a thumbs up thumbs telling up. them we're okay. If it's people hollering and screaming at you, you'd give them that. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, anybody, anybody, anybody ever get the one finger salute, Bob? If there were, I tell you what, if they were wearing a helmet at a 5.0, she damn right I will. <laughs> <laughs> it's race day. That's one thing I love about off road racing. We're all enemies <laughs> on the track, but afterwards it's great to have a beer with them. <laughs> Colonel yeah. Duke used to call them frenemies. Frenemies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just talk about their ancestry. Yeah. It takes care of business. <laughs> yep. uh -huh. So here we're on with uh, Thor Herbst. I've uh, been on with uh, with Pat Dean and uh, Tim Herbst number 19 quite a bit. The first glimpse we've had uh, out of the younger Herbst entries. So that is Bernstein there. Easy to spot that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David, he certainly went low. He went bold when he went for that color scheme, didn't he? Even from the space shuttle, can see that. One. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want to be stuck overnight out in the desert. <laughs> Jim Marsden, wait. Our, our first and second are, are both, I guess we have uh, Ryan in first and is Herbst. Uh, yeah, it looks like Tim's. we've got Ryan in first. It looks like we've got um, Tim Herbst with Pat Dean driving in second position. And then in third position, it looks like we've got Adam Householder. Uh, and then literally just behind him, it's Nick Whetstone. And then we've got Christian Serapis as the breakaway group right now. But not far behind them is uh, also Harley Lettner and uh, driving the Kevin Thompson Concrete Motorsports truck. And then uh, we've got David Bernstein, who's really putting together a great race right yeah. now. And Ethan Ebert in the Honda entry. Here's an observation I'm making right here. I'm, listen, I'm not in a contract with them, but the first three trucks are all 1.9 industry trucks. I think you're they're getting almost all No, no, I tell you, they're almost all identical. Like Ryan's truck and, and uh, Tim's truck, identical, except Tim runs a manual tranny, Ryan doesn't. That's really? the only difference, yeah. So, so Tim is running which transmission? He is. He is very No, I don't know. Well, I well, guess you technical. Can't, you can't say that. Is it an extract? Is it? Is it a uh, Fortin? It's got gears. Yeah, well, You've got to find know. that. He's got <laughs> multiple <laughs> gears. Does it well, have a park and well, reverse? I don't know. Well, yes, probably <laughs> it does. So when we talk about it, so let, let's just give a little education on that. So okay, let's well, find out. Back in the day, Ivan Stewart ran what a means? traditional manual sort of the, sort of the class one cars and stuff where they just had to, a clutch and they had to shift when they shifted they were in gear now they have a manual transmission but it has a converter on the back to soften that shift up so a lot of these guys they can just run paddle shifts and it's called a no lift shift where they keep the power on and when they go to shift it shuts the it shuts the power off make sure that it's back in gear and then it goes so that you don't you can't grind the gears or blow those apart so if Tim is running a manual, I'm going to say it's a manual with a converter, probably a five-speed, could be a Fortin, could be an X-Track, could be a lot of different things. So um, as we watch Chad Hall as he works his way, manages his way through the Mint 400 course. But to finish that, traditional manuals, they don't use them anymore. They, they got that converter to soften everything up. 
Yeah, absolutely. It makes a big difference as well. It does stop a lot of drivetrain issues. I reckon, gentlemen, we're between 10 and 15 minutes away from seeing our lead cars coming back into town for the first time. Wow. We're this is a four-lap race on adjusted time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to step away to the billboards really quick. When you come back, we will be at the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mid 400. We'll see you in a bit. The 2024 Mint 400 is brought to you by BF Goodridge Tires, title sponsor of the Mint 400. Find yourself off-road and explore the BF Goodridge family of tires. Magnaflow, your source for everything exhaust. Camberg, number one in off-road suspension. Rugged Radios, the official communications of the Mint 400. Stay connected and go further. Sylvania Off-Road, built for any adventure. Belching Beaver, the official craft beer of the Mint 400. The Belching Be Beaver Brewery brings damn good times. Good morning and welcome back to the 2024 Beer of Goodrich Tires Mint 400 here just outside of Sin City, Las Vegas in Prim Valley, Nevada. We are here for the Unlimited Class Racing and we started around about 10.45 this morning and we're around about three quarters of the way through the first lap and our current race leader is Ryan Arciero. Nick Whetstone was our fastest qualifier, had issues out on course but he is back up and running again and running in around about fifth position right now. Joining me in the booth is none other than Bob Bauer, Jim Beaver, and of course the legend that is Ricky Johnson. How are we doing, guys? Fantastic, as we're watching. Yeah. I think this is Troy Gabowski. Um, <laughs> Ricky is close. We have an X track with a torque converter. So this looks like, I, I apologize, I thought this was Gabowski because of the colors. This is not. Um, but right now, Ryan Arciero is the man on a mission. He is running hard. Um, got his way through and he, we should be seeing him in main pit anytime soon. Yeah, I reckon we're about, about 10 minutes away from seeing uh, Ryan Arciero coming through. That's one of the Brenthal cars. Picking, picking its way through the ruts. Now, okay, Ricky, you're Ryan Arciero. You're coming into lap one. Are you taking tires? I, I'm going to go by my plan. If he if he's not set to take tires, um, he might try to do a one pit, which would be very be very tough. I don't know what exactly the mileage is on that, but it's got to be under two miles of the gallon. So um, he might do tires and a splash somewhere. But he we know one thing: if he uh, if he doesn't stop, he's probably going to stop at uh, Gene. I'd be working my tire stops back from the finish, so that I I put new tires on the rears at least. 100 miles before it's over. Yeah, well, and, and I think the householder plan is, is pretty darn good to, to give yourself uh, four new sets of, of rear tires. Yeah, the three new sets of rear tires. Yeah, so this is the Gonzo Pit. Now, this is the car we saw earlier. Seems to have lost all of its side fairings. So they'll have a story to tell later, that's for sure. So I think that it's, once we get these cars coming back into main town, it's going to be very interesting to see what the pit strategy is. Now, are they actually going to go blow through main pit, get back out onto the Gene Hurst pit, and therefore take track, try and get track position before they take on tyres and fuel? I think that's going to be the aim for Concrete Motorsports, although he was saying that they had three pressure pros out there on track. I mean, yes. that's incredible. So they can be very flexible on their pit. Well, what the, what, what their plan is right now, they said they're ready to, to pull an audible. And, and I tried to explain this to Jim Marsden. When there's a blitz coming, <laughs> all is off. And he's like, what is that? Uh, I don't, that there's <laughs> that's a German football. plane. He doesn't understand that. But, but, but it's one of these things. Is that, that you have to be, you yeah, use with you your have, hands? Yeah, it's right. That's right. Um, you have to be ready to make a change. But what their plan is, is to do Harley, Harley to do the first two laps all the way to the finish, then go to um, right up to Gene Hurst pit, and that is where Kevin Thompson is getting in. So he, Kevin will do one and three quarter laps. Harley's going to do obviously two and a, and, a, and a quarter. So that's the plan. That's where they're doing the driver change, and I think it's a very good good role. But they did tell us that 
regardless of what happens on the track, if you get a flat, you can't leave it out there. You need to re-rack it. It's always good to have two tires. I've been in a situation where I've got two flats. You have to go very slow because if you do get another flat, that could end your day. That the thing could come off the wheel, wrap up in your brake lines, and, and really you could have a bad day. So you always want to have two tires on there so that if they do have to stop, they have three pressure pros, which what that means they can fuel up very, very fast. Yeah, absolutely. And what you were saying now about they have to re-rack. When we're racing here in America, you've got to make sure that you put your tires back on the car before you continue. Now, unfortunately, some people, when they're out in the desert, don't do that. But that's all right, because out here at the Mint 400, we have a cleanup team that comes yeah. out before the start of the race. We've got a little bit about that right now. Public Services Desert Cleanup, this year presented by our friends at Sylvania Off-Road. Last year was a record year for us. We collected over 92,000 pounds of trash. This year we're looking to break that record. A few more hundred volunteers back at it. Hopefully we can beat that record. It's a pretty awesome thing. I live here in Las Vegas, so I'm out here riding all the time. So it's really cool to see the whole off-road community come together, come out here, clean up the desert right before the race. It's a great turnout. We've got hundreds of people out this year helping us beautiful weather. It's important for us to show the world that off-roaders are good stewards of the desert. Over the past seven years, we've cleaned up over 190 tons of trash out of this area, and we're gonna keep going. Be sure to bring all your friends and family out to the Mint 400, March 6th to the 10th. You can find out more information at themint400.com. I'll see you out there. Okay, and welcome back. And there is our current race leader. That is Ryan Arciero making his way back towards Prim Valley. And he's got to be at least two to three miles out from the start finish, but that's going to go very fast indeed. Ricky. Well, right now, you get. It's funny when you really know where you're at. When you come around and you see, as you can see, the dry lake bed, and you look in the background, he's going to be coming up to the main pit here in Prim, Nevada. It does something to you. Now you do start doing the math, and you want to try to stay away from that as much as possible. But you still go, all right. Now I've got a hundred down. I got to do this three more times. So you start doing the math, but you want to stay as present as you possibly can, and just go. Don't start. What I saw, counting my money. Don't start thinking about yeah. what I'm going to say on the podium. I'm going to congratulate everybody because we have a lot of racing to go, Jim Marsden. Yeah, you can't do that. How many people have done that in the past? That they're thinking about the champagne celebration before they just knock a tire off. We saw that happen to Raul Gomez this year. I'm not saying he was thinking about it, but he was on his way <laughs> to the finish and taking his third title and put his car on its roof. It can happen so so fast. Now, this is an interesting part. We're just seeing him coming into the pits there. Now, I like to call it housekeeping. You're coming into those slow down zones. You're gonna start looking at your gauges, make sure everything's okay. Clean your visor, start to think about nutrition. Are you gonna take on some gel bars? Are you gonna take on some water? Well, what I what, typically what I did is, is I had the places on the course, like when you got those mile per hour zones, and going through Gonzo Pit, if you have a, a goo packet, you just rip it off, throw it down your throat, drink some water, and away you go. So probably now that's what Ryan's doing. More than likely when he gets to his pit, they'll hand him a big electrolyte bottle that he can take some big swigs off of. Now myself, I just like plain water. I don't like electrolytes and stuff in my bag. Obviously a little thumbs up, a little shaka, all looking good. We were watching him as he goes through main pit live. So very, very good. Now Ryan is into the pit. Let's watch what they're doing. They are going for rear tires, the they're rear going for fuel, yeah. so he could have the same plan as Adam Householder. Now, let's see if we can see the Herbst car. Now, we can see the Herbst pit, looks like the Herbst pit just behind him there. Are they getting ready? I'd say they are. It looked like they had tires out as well. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere. That's a, a very, very relaxed Ryan, Ryan RCR right now, waving to everybody. Things are good, I'm all good. Still, nobody coming up. Still not seeing anybody behind Looks him like yet. Looks like some dust in the background there. Yeah. So that could but be. I've, but remember, they're either going to stop or they're going to try to blow by and, and pet at the next thing. But right now, he's off. It also gives, away gives Ryan choices now. He doesn't have to stop if he doesn't have to. If he's got to stay in front for another half a lap and, you know, put new tires on later, 
he's still got fresh stuff. Well, I think he, I think they're going to go for the, the I'm going to call it the householder plan. I'm not I'm, he didn't trademark or anything like that, but he was the one yeah. that was the first one to, to show his hand to us. Yeah. And I think that's the way to go. It gives him a brand new set of tires so that he can run hard the whole time. And all of a sudden we can hear the roar of that engine here in the booth as Ryan Arciero makes his way out onto the second lap of this, the 2024 BF Goodrich tires, mid 400. Look at the corrected time. We still see Nick Weston only 34 seconds behind, so great job by him. Then we see Tim Herbst, AKA Pigeon, Pat Dean running right there in fourth place. And then Household, oh, oh little, little spicy there, Ryan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was, was too big. Yeah, it's not the big hits you wanted, uh, you know, at the start of your second lap. Right, so Rano Sierra, he crosses the line, having taken a pit stop by the one hour and 38 minutes. Yeah, now his co-driver will be saying to him, just chill out on those big jumps. Relax, buddy, we got time. It's one of those situations you want to see it there, go, car looks great, but you don't want to say that after a jump like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, watch. He says it really far right now. He's like, uh-oh, bam, it's right at the oh. bottom, right in the worst possible spot. So very, very hard hit for Ryan Arcio, but obviously that 1-9 truck handled it perfectly. Right, Bob? 1-9 Industries, let's go. All right, now we've got, uh, looks Pat like Dean. Pat Dean coming into the Herbs pit. So i got more intel for you. All right. It is a three-speed turbo 400. <laughs> and for who? Ryan. So Ryan is a turbo 400 three yep. speed guy. And, and the reason is, is that they give motors like higher RPMs and that's how they do that. Hmm. Better gear choices. And, and they're telling me that the extract, when you shift, you uh, cut out the ignition. Right. It, it, it's it, but a, it is like for a hundredth of a second. It's yeah. a no lift shift. But when you're qualifying, it does make, it does, it, it, you have to drive it different. You can't drive. You can't shift it in the middle of a transition. Now, well, now that was a well, very, very like a, fast pit for Pat Dean. Yeah, it's not like a rally car. You don't. Have, you have a very different wheel speed situation going yeah. on with one of these trucks to the kind of the, the smaller tires that you see in rally cars, where they really make that work. Co driver talking to him. Keep it calm. Slow down. We got a little bit ways to go. If you just look just right in front of his eyes I'm there. Reading, I'm reading sign that turn to the left. Yeah. See, I can, I can read sign language. Good. <laughs> we'll see how Pat uh, Pat takes this big jump. I'm sure somebody's radio. Hey, take it Chill. easy. But bump, bump the brakes a bit. You know who we need to keep our eyes on is Christian Sharapis. He has worked his way up and, and has a, you know, didn't qualify probably as good as he wanted to. But he has passed a lot of drivers. You know who we have not seen, once again, is Rob Mack. No, Rob we Mack. haven't seen Rob Mack. I'm looking for him on the track where I can't see him at the moment. So I'm hoping that we're going to see Rob Mack come through. But this is going to be Tim Hurst coming through and start finish. Yeah, he definitely checked up on the uh, big jump. But, you know, we did see earlier, we made that comment about Rob looked a little slow and off pace when he was going through thumpers. And we, ah, you know, we kind of laughed, but no, we're being armchair quarterback. So maybe there's something to that. Yeah, now I can just tell you this, is that Adam Householder has just gone into second place on adjusted time and is right behind Pat Dean. All right, they are working their way through. And we know that Householder took on new tires as well, but it looks like he didn't. No, he His hasn't. His tires so look dirty, so he maybe changed his plan or he was fibbing. Because look at the tires. Yeah, no, he's definitely not stopped, but he might be using the Gene Hurst pit. Or alternatively, wanted to be flexible and try and get track position by taking, uh, by getting past Pat Dean right here. All right, who wants to know about Rob Mack? Go. I, I do, right. I do, I do. All right, all right. Gentlemen, Kevin Corrier sent to me, unfortunately, Rob Mack will not win another mid 400 he has a converter issue rob mack is out so heartbreak for them i feel i feel bad for him but i will see him down in san felipe as always yeah <laughs> and he'll be able to redeem himself but tough break for rob mack rob mack is out with a converter um that, that's all that's all we know at this time yes yeah, so adam household has got a say Householder got, got, by got by him yeah and you see pat doing a little squirrely drive there Trying to catch up. And these, these All right, here both of these race cars are, 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 are identical trucks. Yeah, and that is Christian Serafin. Yes. Rolling through the pits. Now, is he going to stop and take tires? No, like he's, he's not. Nope, he, he, he could be doing it at Gene Hurst. 
So here's the pass. We see Householder looking at the outside, and you see that um, Pat Dean got a little bit squirrely coming in, and I love it. This is like short course racing. <laughs> Rubbing his racing, buddy. That was good, good racing. I'm curious if Pat Dean knew he was there, if he relaxed. I think he did. I think he not only knew he was there, he was looking at him, and that's what blew his turn. Uh, you don't see Pat Dean make those mistakes make, very often. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. So, okay, right, just but, look but, at our top four cars have now gone through and crossed to start their second lap. Kristen Serapis has done a one minute 42, se uh, one hour 40 and 42 seconds. Tim Herbst in, with Pat Dean diving with a one hour 39 and 40 seconds. Adam Householder with a 138.43 and Ryan Arciero is our current race leader on a 138.04, around about 38 seconds ahead of Adam Householder on adjusted time. Well, the good news for Pat Dean is that Householder did not get tired. So if he just stays within 30 seconds, he's going to get him when he goes when he goes to get tires at Gene Hurst. Yeah. So I, my speculation, as there's people that can do it, people talk about it, and I'm talking about it today, um, is that he should sit back and just keep him within 30 seconds and then make the move there. Uh, and this could be this could be what wins the race for him because it calms him down and slows him down. But once again, Householder's not exactly running a slow pace. No, he's not. But the other thing for Adam, you've also got to consider, he's going to be taking on tires. Uh, let's say he gets to Gene Hurst pit and decides to take a pair of tires there. His tires are going to be fresher coming into that quarry area, the horseshoe, all of those places. So there's, there's yeah. also it's to talk about, ah, oh, now this was our fastest qualifier. Nick Weststone, Nick Weststone with that Geyser G6, um, obviously still doing phenomenal. We don't know what happened there. Um, if somebody from there, if Rick Geyser's got that information, Nick obviously running very aggressively in the Rubik Industries, um, can let me know how he lost the lead, but obviously the truck looks like it's in great shape, probably just a flat tire. We see it one new tire on that rear rack, so that left rear tire, um, probably a flat tire. Yeah, do you reckon? Because I don't think they look, the, the tires on the rack actually still look like they're fresh to me. Yeah, boy, the one on the left looks a little bit newer to me, but, you know, my eyes are going bad. <laughs> well, let's see what happens, because if he did get a flat, he would definitely be pitting in a moment. And we'll be able to see if they change that or not. Well, he's already passed the main pit. So did he fill up with fuel? As we see Kevin Thompson as he works uh, on the left, as he works his way back out. So already through the short course, um, did he take off? So we're not seeing in the main pit. We, we watched the two uh, one nine Industries trucks make it in the pit, but everybody else, um, it looks like he has not changed tires. So um, I'm going to say taking taking on fuel and tires every lap at Junior's. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Whetstone, I can see here, is now running in sixth position on adjusted time with a 144.13. And ahead of him is Harley Lettner on adjusted time with a 140.15. Now, Harley's made up some time on him, but still, he, it, it, track position is everything. Because if Harley works really hard, gets up tight. And how many times did we hear yesterday? One second separating the guys, and they pushed a little bit on a, on a lap truck and got a flat. So, yeah. So many things to think about. Yeah, one second over uh, after 350 miles. That was incredible. We've got all these leaders uh, within, what, six minutes of each other, I think, at the end of the first lap. I mean, they, you know, everybody's still in play for this win. Yes. Well, you know, one flat tire here and a little issue there. And, you know, this is this is wide open. We're 25% into this race. And, um, yeah, look at it. We've got Bernstein here is actually putting a really solid first lap as well. I was just going to say, we really got to compliment him and give uh, David Bursi some props. He's from Valley Center, California. That's down just east of Escondido, so a SoCal boy, but really, really running strong all day long. It looks like both tires on the back have not been changed. Um, and also, it doesn't look like he's got a new spare on there either. So um, got a good run going and keep an eye on him. Yeah, no, he's putting down a really solid pace here. Qualified well. it across the road and makes his way out into the desert and David Bernstein is currently running sixth on adjusted time ahead of Mick Whetstone. Okay, let's talk to the co-driver of the stars, Bob Bauer. You are in a situation. Yeah. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you two scenarios. One, you're with Ryan Arcier, you're out in front, you're running clean air, and you're riding with Ryan. What are you saying to him? Are you just trying to keep it light? Are you motivating him? What what what's going on inside the cab? On lap one, I'm what how you feeling Ryan? doing good I will I will actually point out some really good things he does I don't talk about mistakes good job nice save 
good line. He threaded that needle. Second lap, we get quiet because he's now getting hit into the belly of the beast. Third lap, I'm reminding him it's third lap. Now we got to really start to decide when are we going to commit, how much commitment are we going to give it, and how much have we got to give. Well, and that's the thing. So, like myself, I had Wade Weaver with me when I was running with, our, with Ryan R. Sierra. Yeah. And I got a flat and I hit a rock the size of a Volkswagen class 11 car. And when Wade got back in, he's, he literally said to me and held up his finger, he says, that's your one mistake. Okay. <laughs> he said it with disgust in his voice. And I remember going, okay, don't, don't hit me or anything like that. Yeah. But, but, it, but it was. Wade's, I, Wade's not petite, by the way. Uh, no, he's, he's, he's a good sized boy. Him and, him and Benny both uh, tipped the scales. They, they didn't move the big bar over. But anyways, is that I love that. I like it when my co-driver isn't afraid to bark at me. And with my son, Luke and I, we have a great relationship. But when we're when we're on the other side, we're not afraid to bring up, bring up our boys. Because you notice how you can always see other people's typos. Yeah. Whatever they're oh, talking about. Like, I, I have a thousand of them, but I spot other people's. I never spot <laughs> my own. And so the same thing, when you're over there, you want to make sure that you keep that guy either, come on, man, let's get with it, or calm down. Here's Bob's method. I ask questions all the time instead of telling him that time what that really means is when it's time time for me to say hey 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 they listen all right ethan ebert i'm saying you can see he, he just filled up with gas a little bit of a little uh, spin out the back now you're in that position new vehicle new everything what are you saying to this young kid that is obviously just a weapon well, when, I, when, I say right we now? when i say weapon not bad i'm just lethal well, this is a team that's learning. This is a team that's out here to get miles down. They're out here, yes, they want to do well, but they're also, they're just taking on board all the information and they're just processing that right now. And the best thing they can do is just get miles on the track. And that's exactly what they're doing. So I think this is a great job for me to meet that's Absolutely, and, and with that truck, with it being new and, and having the smaller, smaller uh, you know, power plant, but it revs more. So depending on what, how, how you drive it, you got to keep it up on the pipe. You know, yeah. Keep in mind, I mean, we, we, I was just looking. He's about six minutes uh, six minutes out on corrected time. Yep. He had some downtime with a flat, and we're predicting. Yep. You know, that would have been two to three minutes, probably two-ish minutes. That kid, I mean, in this Honda truck to be running within four minutes, you know, and he, that's really fast. This is, you know, that program, I mean, they're bringing it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's fair to say that he has had a flat. We can see that he's lost his rear fender. That would be consistent with what Ricky said. If yep. you get a tire shred, just knocks that for a rear fender off. And that was Sid Matila. We just saw parts up there who had a fantastic qualifying. So tough break there for Sid as we cut back to Ryan Arciero, our current race leader. If you are just joining us, you are watching the 2024 BF Goodrich tires mint 400 as we're watching another another truck to make its way through the That's infield. That's Brett Kometsky. No, yeah. come Brett Kometsky. You know, the Australia. pace, I, I just got to get back to the pace, you guys. I mean, we're looking at a 95 mile lap. We're, we're less than two hours into this race and we're already on lap two. That tells me we are booking it out there. Yeah, we are indeed. Now, Brett Kometsky is our current highest placed all wheel drive car. Now, we saw Cole Potts really charging hard, but unfortunately, just after the um, the Gonzo pit, he was actually pulled over on the side of the road. So I will keep an eye on that, and I'll let you know as soon as he's coming back through again. Well, and I'm anxious to see once we see, uh, you know, the times from our, our top unlimited specs and uh, Connor McMullen, who, uh, you know, we predict is going to put down a burner of a lap. It's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, what's corrected time, you know, where those other classes are going to factor in. So here we're watching Brett Kaminsky once again in the all-wheel drive. So pay attention to the front tires, but so this has got more, uh, like more rear drive. Because you watch as he comes off the corners, he's correcting, he's turning into the steer. If it's more front drive, you're going to see him drive with a little bit of understeer, which means they're turning into the turn a little bit more. So as he turns, and then as the back end steps around, watch he, he corrects it. So this is more of a, uh, I'm going to say setup like a mason where it's more rear drive than front drive because he's notice how the back drive wants to step out a little bit yeah this is only set his second time driving here at the mint 400 in the big cars and he's so stoked to be here that's a big commitment come over here with your whole team from australia it's a big commitment logistically, financially. There's a lot of commitment in that. You got to give a plot a guy that uh, wanted to run the mid 400 that bad. He's willing to put it all on the line. Absolutely. 
and our race leader is now around about 10 miles into this second lap. Still got huge crowds here down here in Prim Valley, Nevada. Oh no, uh, no, who's this, that? This, that is... this is Cole Harden. This is, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure I don't want to be wrong, but I think this is the son of Eric Harden. Um, so bad news for both uh, both Harden trucks. They were both qualified well right up front, but you can see with the hood off, we can't see exactly what they're working on, but has the tool pack out and trying to get him back on track. But um, a lot of tools out. Yeah, know. that's the yeah, hood's off. A lot of tools out. Looks like they're uh, going to be there. Not yeah. what you like to see. What I, what's a new feature that you see on a lot of the different vehicles um, is you see that white square behind the cab, that Starlink. So the people are communicating and they're able to see what's going on. A lot of them are running the Starstream. But as you, as a lot of people, as I say, a lot of people can communicate back and forth. We're going to step away as we're watching uh, Harden work on his car and work on his truck, trying to get things going. Looks like he's got to bleed a couple things. We're going to do some billboards. We'll be right back to the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. We'll be right back. The 2024 BF Goodridge Mint 400 is brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts, your professional parts people. The Beast Unleashed, flavors you know, brewed hard at 6.0 yeah percent. King Shocks, the leader in off-road shock technology. Best off-road, best customer experience, best off-road brands, best prices. Experienced off-road retail, re-engineered by bestoffroad.com. Dirty Life, Dirty Life Race Wheels, conquer the dirt. VP Racing Fuels, the official fuel provider of the Mint 400. VP Racing, the brand that you can trust for performance race fuels, lubricants, coolants, additives, and so much more. Amsoil, engineered for what you drive. Order now at amsoil.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 2024 Mint 400 brought to you by BF Goodrich Tires. You're watching Cole Posh. You can notice that he's missing his hood. He had an altercation with himself and a berm yesterday in qualifying went over. But right now, Cole Potts is on a tear trying to work his way up. Now, he was stopped for a while, and he did lose some time to Kaminsky. Um, so he's trying to work his way back up. But it's good to see that all-wheel drive working his way forward. Everybody is finishing, not everybody, but a good chunk of these guys, Jim Beaver, have finished their first lap, and now they're starting. Oh, and we see McMullen just rip. So, Jim Beavers, that is Connor McMullen, our first class one. Yeah, you know, we we're expecting Connor McMullen to put down a burner, and I'm waiting to see on corrected time where he uh, factors in here. But, uh, man, I mean, put down uh, second fastest qualifying time. The kid's coming off a couple of wins uh, here to the mid. Matt, I mean, what are the, what are the odds uh, that we see a class one factor in this overall? Yeah. And, and hold on, but here we see B.J. Baldwin looking to the inside, trying to work his way back around. Unbelievable racing because, remember, McMullen is in a open-wheeled car, so you do not want to touch fenders, be, touch tires, because there could be a big flip. But when you have ballistic B.J. Baldwin right on your dust, that's saying something. But Connor doing a great job and pulling back away from B.J., Jim. Yeah, this is incredible racing here. You know, you don't often get this door-to-door -door action in desert racing, especially on camera. And uh, like you said, Connor is extremely fast. He, he won the Parker overall in a class one car, which is pretty unheard of. But Jim here, I, I don't think a class one car is gonna do it just because of how rough the course is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is Matt Martelli. He did a quick change on me and I looked over and I said, Jim, that's not Jim's voice. So Matt Martelli, <laughs> thank you for making it into the booth and congratulations on another stellar mid 400. Thank you, brother. No, it was, uh, Wonderful start to the day to get everybody off the line, shake everybody's hand, and uh, oh, PJ look looking that. for a door opening there. No, oh, Connor or... broke something in the right front. So if you look, he, he's either broken a, a spindle or a tie rod. That right front tire is flopping all over the pace. Look at that action. That is spectacular. Connor shooting to the inside. Well, well, if he <laughs> broke something, don't tell him that because he's still driving no, he's the driving. wheels off of this. Well, it's, it's really cool. And Connor was uh, 
uh, about to take delivery of a brand new geyser truck, which I think will, will come at, at, together after this race. So he'll be moving up to the spec truck class, which will be great to see him battle there as well. Now I'm just looking here, but uh... <laughs> look at that. Oh my Great word. roost on the backside. The, but then he pushes a little bit. Now notice that the right isn't turning, but I think he just got caught over the berm and then BJ had a clean run up the inside. So um, it was my, you know, misread on, on that. He just, what he happened to do when he straddled the berm and threw him out to the outside. Yeah, awesome, awesome door-to-door -door racing here. And because I'm a motocross racer, I, I literally just reached up to pull a tear off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, pull a tear off, pull a tear off. So, so what do you think about these speeds, Matt? I mean, we, we predicted a ridiculously fast uh, lap number one, but uh, I mean, Ryan Arciero threw down, and we got to give Nick Whetstone some credit. He's hanging tight in there, too. Nick, Nick is doing fantastic. You know, first off, being the first qualifier at the min is a feat, right? Yeah. It's a stacked field, so I'm really stoked and impressed by yeah. him. And uh, you know, this race, I mean, it, 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 it's gonna turn over and we don't know who's gonna win it, but uh, man, our Sierra's led this race and had some heartbreak, so um, he for sure is due, um, you know, and, and there's a bunch of killers behind him. Yeah, well, we've got Rob Mack out. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Pat Dean and Tim Herps, that team, they're, they're running strong. I think they're going to push Ryan Arciero here, too. Yeah, and Pat Dean, both, actually, Tim and Pat both know this course very well. Yeah. Yeah, so this is our race leader right now. This is Ryan Arciero. And you can see why we call it thumpers, because that's the sound those trucks make coming through those giant whoops. Those are about three to four foot whoops there that you're, you're seeing them power through. Yeah, and he's running uh, just a little over a buck. So he's running just over 100 miles an hour. As we said, that's going uphill. Downhill, they have reached up to 120, but it is scary and a handful. And I love how the platform is really flat, really digging. The front's eating what it needs to do, but the back getting great traction. So those guys have done a great job, and Ryan Arciero obviously driving the wheels off that truck. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I had to step out for a moment. I've come back in. We saw Conor McMullen there going side to side with um, BJ Baldwin. But I can't help but look down at my score sheet and see that Mario Fuentes is actually our highest placed Class 1 car right now, ahead of Conor McMullen. Interesting. Yeah, so uh, Mario is running in fifth overall at the moment and first in Class 1. So a fantastic run there from Mario. With Conor running in second in Class 1 and seventh overall. And one of the cool things about Mario Fuentes is uh, he put up some money for the class. He, we've got a $15,000 prize purse for the uh, points championship for class one. So a lot of those cars out there um, not racing. We want to get those guys off the couch and out racing. <laughs> so Matt, talk to us about the two and four wheel drive. What was the decision to have, uh, obviously the overall is the overall. Correct. Correct. But, but you, are break, you did break the class down. Yeah, we, we broke it apart because a lot of the, the racers were coming to us and saying, hey, man, like, we're not going to move up to four-wheel drive. Uh, we can't afford it or, you know, uh, we can't get our sponsors to back that move. So we just wanted to separate the classes to keep two-wheel drive healthy. And, you know, as you know, no four-wheel drive has ever won this particular race. Yeah. Now, they've won Baja. They've won Parker, they've they've won the 500, they've won a lot of the other races, but uh, this is a rough, rough course, and I, st I still think it, it favors a two-wheel drive truck. See Householder there dancing through thumpers. You know, it's kind of crazy to me. We've seen very, very few trucks take that right-hand line. Most of them are taking that left, where, like we talked earlier, it's a little bit short, choppier. Uh, whoops, the uh, the right-hand side's got the more spread out whoops, but uh, it seems like, I mean, 90% of the drivers off to that left-hand line. What I'm going to say is that it's rougher at the bottom. I mean, you have to manage through that, but it's a good give and take that you get faster as you get up towards the hill. Did you see there in the background? That was Pat Dean chasing hard. It stepped out onto the opposite line. Now, we have got something coming up here because when they come up to the, towards the uh, Gene Hurst pit, yes. are we going to see Adam Householder pull in for tires and fuel? That's what that's what we, he, he said to us before the race that he's going to stop and take on tires every lap. He didn't do it at the main pit, so I am suspecting we got a good eye on him. He's going to do it at the Gene Hurst pit. Yeah, the pit strategy here gets really interesting, you know, um, because we've got three different pits. They can put on tires and fuel them, you know, according to how the race is playing out. Yeah, now this is an interesting vehicle. This is, of course, Carl Jurgensen. This is potentially our race leader in the unlimited spec class. 
and he's in the Camberg Magnaflow truck. One of the one of the cool stories about this truck is that uh, they are uh, featuring the new Camberg calipers, a monoblock caliper that's developed specifically for racing trucks. Now, with the caliper, um, so they're doing their own their own caliper. Or what about the rotor and all that? Are they they putting the whole package together? Um, just the caliper right now. But as you know, you know these things are hard to stop. Yeah. And uh, this offers a, a new level of braking power. And this looks like Pat Dean through thumpers, as you were as you were mentioning earlier. This is Tim Herps. Uh, Tim Herp entry, and he yeah, is also in the left lane. But it's looks like he has a few more miles an hour. Yeah, that, I mean, it's just spectacular. These guys know this area. They test out here all the time. I've actually been in one of these trucks uh, multiple times, and it's super impressive, especially the high speeds that they're getting on the flatter areas, you know, up towards 160 miles an hour. Well, I was getting some notes from Duncan from SDG, and, and they're very proud of the work that they do and the people that they work with. And this is one of their teams with, uh, with the 1-9. I'm going to have a hard time doing that. The Herbs truck is what I'm going to call it. That's what it's going to be for me from, from now on. Right. But now this is Pat Dean as he works his way into Look the at that. Look at that. Pit. Three wheels. Perfect rotation. Wow. Pendulum turn back and forth. He's going to come up here, and then you're going to see him shut it down. And he's going to be going through it. Now, will he pass Adam Householder? Because it was pretty tight. He, um, he, the distance that Adam had, he might not get by him. They'll stop. Now set the, now set the cruise control or uh, the, the limiter. And they'll just put up, put up, put up, put up, all the way up and around. Ricky, how hard is that when you're in race pace? Oh, well, when you when you work really hard and then you see somebody up there, you go, God, they're they're right there. I can almost reach out and touch them, Jim. Right, I got some information for you. On that lot, first section of the second lap, Ryan Arciero was nearly a minute faster than <laughs> these two cars. Okay, and Adam Householder came through. Well, Ryan Arciero came through with a 33.45 for that section. Adam Householder with a 34.49. But this is interesting. Coming through, Tim Hurst come through with a 33.43, but is still behind Adam on adjusted time. So right now, Pat Dean is absolutely smoking hot. But this is uh, Christian Serapis as he works his way through and looking very strong. And he's passed a lot of guys. So in, on corrected time-wise, he's in a great position. And also, he's got a pretty big gap between him and Pat Dean, a.k.a. Uh, Tim Herbst. So he's got clear track to work with. He's just got to make sure when they get into the lappers, he doesn't waste time beaver well yeah that's absolutely it you know and we're gonna get into lappers here pretty quick i think with the pace these guys are running so uh you know i think they're gonna push and then you got to get into lappers you got to check up a little bit make sure you don't make any mistakes as we go back here to uh tim herps uh, with pat dean behind the wheel uh just continuing to push uh you know once you leave gene hearst pit uh you head up uh towards uh the fox proving grounds uh then through uh through up to the quarry and it's just a really rough nasty area of the course yeah, man, look at these trucks fly i mean this is spectacular racing it, it, you know it always amazes me uh the speeds that we're racing i mean and, and how rough this course is we're still able to turn it into a sprint race i'm trying to do the map back and forth did it look like householder was in, still in front of, of I was Pat trying to see. <laughs> because now look because we have we saw the red helicopter on, right next to adam householder and we see uh pat dean and dust so evidently he made the tire change. He made the fuel tank. Here's what they're going through the Fox Proving Ground, which is the most, Martelli, it is the most brutal section of this course. It, it, <laughs> it, just skying it there. It, it, it is. The, the embedded rock right there is just crazy. It just destroys tires. And uh, you, you would know. Like, look at this. Wow. Well, this is a guy that's a local here because what he's doing and skying off of those, yeah. a lot of them are blind landings as you're coming up and over hills. You don't have that commitment level if you haven't driven this countless times. I mean, Pat Dean putting on a clinic right now. Yeah, I mean, this is this is incredible footage. I mean, you know, when I watch other forms of racing and they talk about track changes, I always laugh because uh, there's no track changes like what we have here at the Mint. Yeah, it goes beyond track change. <laughs> yeah. You're like, am it's I running on the same, am I in the same state? Yeah. But, but I'm really impressed that Householder was able to maintain that because we did see Pat Dean take tires in the main pit, Jim Martin, as well, we I'm go just, back I'm, to I'm just um, looking here. Sorry. Jason Coleman, go ahead. Yeah, Jason Coleman. Now, I'm just looking here, you see. On that last split, we saw that Tim Hurst was actually uh, running faster than Ryan Arciero with a 343 uh, against the, uh, Ryan Arciero's at 33.45. So two seconds ahead 
um, who we found. But Adam Householder was running uh, almost a minute down on pace. So I'm not sure that right uh, that Adam would have been able to get in, get tyres and come out. I grant wonder if that Adam is just running hard now and he's just trying to hold track position on whether he's going to push onto the Gonzo pit because I'm not sure he is ahead of Tim Hurst, or if he is ahead of Tim Hurst, he didn't have the time to make the change, in my opinion. Well, and as we talked to Harley Leonard and Kevin Thompson, everybody's ready for audibles. Yeah. You know, I, I know I tried to explain the blitz move to you, but you didn't get that yet. But <laughs> what you have to do in, the, in these race scenarios, and you have the different pits that you can you can work on the different things. We go back to watching uh, Tim Herbst as he rolls in the desert. you got to be ready to, to make a change. Dust in front of Tim Herbst. Yes. Okay, now I'll, I go to my tracker and I look on there to try and find out. Now there is lap traffic ahead, definitely. I, I, is he I'm catching say, lap traffic or is that Adam Householder ahead? If it was lap traffic, he's going to catch him really quick. So yeah. I'm going to say this is Adam Householder, and I think that the, the helicopter for the Herbs team was doing a little game play with, with Householder because when uh, a helicopter buzzes you, it makes you realize, uh oh, they're right behind me. But wow. he wasn't that close at that time. I mean, look at this footage. This is incredible. God, it's like it's like the people that put on the show actually thought about how cool <laughs> this would be, huh, Matt? It's weird, <laughs> you know. It's not like I've been around this course hundreds of times. I feel like I've walked this course. Um, I've been on it so much, but you know, just incredible to see what these vehicles are capable of. You know, especially with the BF Goodrich tires on it. I mean, tires is an important thing at this race because any flat and you're out of it. Look at this. You know, and Ryan's getting radio, and they're telling him, hey, they're coming. I mean, you know, you got Pat Dean pushing. You've got Adam Alsoloon pushing. Ryan, you know, with that clean air, he's just trying to run away and hide as best he can. Well, but let me just tell you, Jim, it, as everyone let, lives those behind, is that it's hard when you didn't make the mistake. Ryan, Ryan RCO has been out in front, and something broke. Something mysteriously broke in the motor. Something happened here. It wasn't because he overdrove and he broke something and this and that. And I think that's really hard on a driver's psyche. So, but for him, he's been around the, the block so many times, has driven so much and understands the pace and everything. He just has to keep doing what he's doing and get it and, and make sure that, uh, make sure that he gets it to the finish line. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the current leader of the BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400 in 2024. Ricky Johnson with Jim Beavers. We will be right back after this commercial break. a little help we got help need some advice we got advice no matter what you need we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it exceptional customer service just one part that makes o'reilly stand apart the professional parts people oh 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 o'reilly auto parts
I got that right turn, we're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. That's 10 4. BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. I'm Ricky Johnson with Jim Beavers along with Bob Bowers. And Bob, you have a special guest. I'm going to let you take it away. Well, I do have a special guest. And it's special for more than a reason that, that there's a title sponsorship here. Frankly, we've got a good man here. This is Harold Phillips. And Harold is the global general manager of BF Goodrich brand, which means he's got responsibility for BF Goodrich brand product, everything worldwide. So he understands worldwide product picture and worldwide troubles but Harold is one of us you see I've known Harold for 30 37 years 37 years my first encounter with Harold Bob don't have the moment on me don't seize up on me buddy come on keep it rolling <laughs> well he, he's busy talking to me and I know <laughs> these voices I recognize most of the voices they're me but <laughs> keep it going when they Bob. give me instructions and I get a little freaked out yeah. <laughs> but no listen Harold my first encounter with Harold Phillips was uh, when he came in as a new guy. He was like the new sales guy, the newbie. And we were, because the culture inside BFG at the time was you help guys get better. You help them get better always. Just give it away. Help them, help them. And uh, he's done rather well for himself. I mean, you know? so, so, Harold, let's talk about this. How, I've been with the brand for a long time. And I, I know a lot that goes into it, but tell the people how important this racing is to to make your production tire. Yeah, no, I mean it's absolutely critical since 1976 or thereabout. Um, we've used Desert Racing as our RDI lab. This yep. is our research and development, and so every race that we we take, we're doing something whether we're telling people about it or not. And we've got some special things going on in this race right now. The, well, that's uh, the 35 10 50, for example. You saw that yesterday. Yep. I think we won at least one class. Um, the not so secret KO3, which yep. we're going to be launching this year. We won two classes yesterday, um, and we haven't launched the tire yet. So we're always testing our tires, we're always trying to get better. Um, we love competition, we love racing against other tire brands because that only makes us better. Yes. And then it helps us to say, what do we need to do to improve? And uh, the KO3, you're, people are going to love well, that and, tire. And I saw a lot of that because when I was at Team C, we did a lot of testing with Bertrand. And, and, and we would go out and we'd have the, the main tire. And then we would veer one side or the other. And it was great. They didn't tell me anything. It was just go drive it as hard as you can. We're going to check wear. We're going to check performance. They would give you the, the, the thing going back and forth. And as a driver, I got to say it's the coolest time ever because it's like go destroy the tires. Yeah. Don't save them, but but completely destroy them. But on the other end of that, the very first tire test I did, I blew up 14 tires in one day and ruined a, a four-day tire test with John Nelson and Gary Johnson and, and Gary Blaylock, not Gary Blaylock, but the guys back in the day. So yeah. that was a tough uh, tough deal. But you you work so closely with the racers, and how important is their input? No, I mean it's critical, and you look at our our. The three signature products, our, our best kept secret is the HD Terrain. We just launched that. Um, we took that tire in the desert. Any tire that you see that we have that says Baja Champion, it means that it's it's actually raced and won a class and, and desig you know, determined itself as a Baja Champion. And, yeah. we, and we take pride in putting that on the sidewall. And so we're, we're learning, we're developing, we're trying to get better and better every time we do it. And the drivers will tell us, you know, I mean, the drivers are really great. Our partners are really great. Um, 
you know, a guy like Rob Mack, for example, he'll say, look, I had two flats in the thousand or three, whatever. And he's like the first one. I don't know what happened, but the second one's on me. I, I, hit, a, I hit a rock, you know, yeah. and, and so that kind of transparency is what makes our relationship with our driver special. Well, and how exciting and Bob, I hate to, to over, overdo you here and he, overdo this, but how exciting is it with the side by sides with the UTVs? Because you guys are be, being very aggressive there and doing a lot of great things. So the UTV um, business is a really interesting story because we kind of did a Skunk Works project that I led, and we we generally have milestones. Um, a, a, a product development's going to take about three years. Yeah, and we went from start to, to market in less than 12 months. Wow. And and we just and we, we made some mistakes. We we called it a mud terrain. Yep. And and that tread design on on the replacement tire is really an all terrain. We yep. made some mistakes like that. Um, but it was a market we knew we wanted to get in. I, I'd come to events like this and there'd be a F-150 with, with KO2s on it and a trailer and a, and a Polaris Razor and a gaggle of kids that jump out. And I'm like, why Why aren't we on that Polaris Razor? Right. We need to start learning and getting exposure with the younger audience. And so we, we took a risk and we just jumped into it full force and we knew we were racing well with our race tire. And so we said, let's let's bring a tire to market in this in this really important space. So what's next, Harold? <laughs> um, well, I, I already told you what's next. The KO the KO three, which is you know the next best version of our our legendary um, tire. So yeah. we we had kind of invented that category in '76, and we've gotten better and better. That's the newest tire we're bringing out, um, and then we're. We've got some other things that we're thinking about. Hey, Bob, I'm going to jump in really quick, and we're going to go, go to the racing. We just saw EJ Herbst come in and out okay. of the pit. Looks like he took on tires. EFGs. Yeah. <laughs> took on a brand new set of tires there and also filled up with fuel. So looks like the Herbst crew is on that pit every lap in the main pit. Um, with So I'm going to throw that back to you. When they pull those tires off, they mark them. You're going to go look at them and check them. Or do you have engineers down there right now looking to see what's going on? Because you have a lot of teams, and they're spread out. It's not like NASCAR where they're all in the same place. Yeah, I'm not sure where everybody is at the moment. But, yes, the answer to the question is we're going to look at every tire uh, post-race. I get a report. There's, you know, Jason Enzalone gets a report. We look at very closely what happened to our tires after each race and what can we learn from it. Come on, Bob. Get in there. We learn a lot from this, from what I'm gathering like that. You know, Harold, this organization that we're part of is, uh, I, my belief is it's focused on utilizing our presence here to improve our products. Now, you talked about the engineers. Let's talk about the testing that happens here, and then I'm fascinated with this new tire, the HD. Yeah. That didn't get tested just in the desert. Talk to me about that, please. Yeah, I mean, really the, um the motivation there is we started to see um, KO2s, KM3s in the, in the rock quarries, in the oil sands, and you know people were saying these are getting torn up, and and our response back is that's not a tire that we designed for a rock quarry. That's a in, but they they lean on us because they know we're the best, most durable tire out there, and so you know we we made a decision to really create a super durable tire called the HD Terrain so that we can go into that into that rock quarry with something that serves their needs. And so what we did, tested it, a um, lot of fleets in those kind of situations, and they were lasting four times, five times longer than the best other tire that they had. Wow. And then meanwhile, you know, in, in some of the things that I'm passionate about, outdoors, hunting, fishing, you know, my friends started to see this test tire on my vehicle, and they're like, where do I get that, yeah. right? And so we're starting to see that, that you know, enthusiasts of any kind of sport that, that, that's outdoors are really taking a notice. And by the way, great application for chase trucks, um, chase teams, perfect tire for your, for your needs. And so it's, it's a winner, and, and I, can, I can guarantee you once we get some more testimonials, uh, it won't be a secret any longer. <laughs> be a secret any longer probably be a secret with a champion side already right on the oh, side. It's, it's got Baja champion we already. raced yeah we raced it we raced it before raced we it. launched we raced it and won so Oof. you know that's one of those secret things that maybe we don't tell people enough about but we, we want to, that's part of the test you know one of the things that's uh, 
normal, well, I guess normal about BF Goodrich is, is how they seem to be so people focused as opposed to just product focused. Um, you have a group here visiting. I mean, listen, Harold, you brought the right people to this race for the right reasons. You brought some people from a tire plant. Could you talk a little bit about why we do that and what they saw? Yeah, so that we have got some special guests from the um, Tuscaloosa STS shop who are the builders of our race tires. This is like a Skunks Works tire, uh, tire shop. I want you to know that. It, it's, a, it's a pretty amazing thing. And we thought one of the things we've learned is when we bring, um, whether it's influencers from all over the world um, or people from our plants, to actually see what we do here, it's hard to de describe it in words, but when they come here and they experience it, they go away and go, now I get it. Now I get what the BFG community is. And and the other thing that, when you talk about people, the BFG community is Warfighter made. I'm a, I'm a volunteer board member of Warfighter made, um, volunteer board member of Tread Lightly. We, we have got an integrated family with, with BFG that we we really value and we love. And so th these are our people, right? And so my peeps every every time we come we see our friends again and and that's the only way we learn because people are giving us feedback constantly how are you going to measure success or uh, let's say the partnership that you have with unlimited off-road racing because it's a long-term deal yeah i mean obviously we we hope to sell more tires right that's that's the business we're in and so we're, we we want to sell more performance tires we want to sell more race tires um but, but really, it's about relationships for us. Ricky? All righty. We want to jump back to the race real quick. I love everything you got to say, Earl, but that is our current unlimited spec driver who's leading it. That is Kyle Jurgensen, our fastest qualifier. We were watching. Ryan RCO has got quite a, quite a lead going right now. And we're now watching on the screen number 32, Ryan Arciero as he works his way through. Obviously, a Trump supporter and in car. We get to watch a lot through Starlink. Great job there. And if you notice very calm very collected we talked about not lazy hands but with soft hands soft. And, and he's very very smooth when it comes to the driving so unbelievable job right now we see adam householder in sec with, second with tim herbs in third we also see uh uh, Christian Serapis that is going to be in fourth. So these drivers all run a very, very close. And Bob, the, the race is just starting. You know, it, that's a fact. It really is. And when what you're in this section or this stage of the race for yourself, this is the middle where you say, let's keep what we got going, going. Let's not mess it up. And but we have to wait until it's decision time next lap. Well, and Jim Beaver, we talked about w with Ryan Arciero that when he when he lost the races before, it wasn't, he didn't lose them. There was a there was a problem. So something went wacky in the motor that that never happens. I mean, it's a it, it's a metal man built piece. So for him, he's very confident as we're watching Tim Herbs, uh, aka uh, Pat Dean, as he's rolling rolling his way, and we see him in Adam Householder's dust. So he's having to navigate that, but that is encouraging when you see them guys right in front of you. So getting back to Ron Arciero, he has to get all that negative mojo out of the way. I should have won. I could have won. All that, all those different things and just going, I know what it feels like to win. I am a winner. I just got to keep this thing moving, Jim Beaver. Well, absolutely. And Ryan knows what it takes to win at the Mint 400. He's been so yep. close. You know, and like you said, it was no fault of his own why he lost the, the race. So I, I think Ryan's setting the pace. He's doing what he's done in years past, knowing, hey, this is what it takes to win. I just haven't, uh, you know, been lucky enough to be able to cross the finish line first. Well, a lot of things happen. You know, as Harold was talking about, the driver has to be honest. I got to, because sometimes you get those mystery flats, those slow leakers. Was it a piece of cactus? Did you pinch a tire? Did you did you scratch a sidewall? You don't know. All of a sudden, you see your, your tire pressure going down. Then there's those ones where you go, I can't believe that the, that the tire, the wheel is still, still on the car. So you know when you deserve it. And every driver, it's like speeding to work. There's so many tickets you should have gotten, <laughs> but you didn't get caught. So there's many times that you should have gotten a flat, but you have to consider that, that there's that rock that was knocked out of the, knocked into the trail or something like that, or you sidewall a tire. So Ryan Arcier was doing a great job in putting him in a position to, if there is a problem, he can deal with it, Bob. Well, you, you know, the, the idea is, wouldn't it be great, Ricky, for those slow leakers, you, you talk about the mystery flats. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if there was like a system where you could inflate your tire back up while you're at speed. 
or, or, or keep it from leaking down while you're at speed. Just push the button. Wouldn't it be great? Yeah, I can, yeah, but I can. that's what a co-driver is for. <laughs> <laughs> well, Harold, I, I actually think we got one better. We've, we've got a system that we've developed called BF Goodrich Active Air um, with one of our, our subsidiaries, Teleflow, and it's, it is a completely integrated CTIS system um, that we've developed <coughs> that we're trying to get into a couple teams here um, of our desert racers. And, and for, for me, it's not only optimized a tire inflation, but at a push of a button, you can, you can go up or, or down depending on what terrain you're in. Wow. Great shot of Shannon Campbell. Now we go back to Jason Coleman as he works his way up thumpers, um, running very, very strong. We did just see Kyle Jurgensen, so it looks like Jason is in second place. I, Jim Beavers, I think it's going to be an attrition deal. I think these guys are go, all going so fast that it's going to be the guy that, that just that doesn't have a problem. Yeah. yeah, and that's one thing about off-road. We talked about skill level. Bob could preach to this, but a lot of off-road is about luck. Yeah. They, there are those ghost flats. There's that rock under the silt that nobody knows about that, you know, three guys go over and Especially you're the one guy that runs over it, you know, and, and gets a flat. You know, there, there's little gremlins that pop up. There's the piece of fender that you didn't know exists that goes and whacks a line somewhere on the car. You know, it, there's there's so much luck involved. You, what you have to do as a good off-road racer is put yourself in a position to win, and hopefully that day luck is in your favor. Yes. Well, Harold, if you had something to say to the fans and friends and everybody else at the Mint 400, how would you, how would you say goodnight to them? Well, I would just say thank you guys. I mean, thank you. I, I walk up on the on the start line there, and I, I personally try to thank every BF Good driver um, before the race, and and I mean it. I, I thank them for their loyalty, for their trust in our brand, and and so I would say to everybody that's watching, thank you guys for for loving the BF Goodrich brand that is now 150 years old, and and that's for a reason. So, um, thanks for trusting um, our 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 tires and look forward to another 150 years well thanks for being there for us in the community it matters well thanks for having me on it it's you know i i know the fans want to watch and listen to their race but thanks for an opportunity to say a couple words no no i th thank you for your support it, it goes way 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 back and uh it what's what's been awesome about the brand is that they it's like mine has kept it going um that you know that that it, it's not oh we're going into golf oh we're going yeah. in we're going to sponsor basketball backboards and stuff yeah. like that that you guys have stayed true to your colors um and, 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 and racing has been your core so thank you and thank everybody over there in, in south carolina no thank you guys all righty let's go racing. as we get back let's watch some more racing as we're watching another one of these trucks work their way through thumpers jim beavers you can see and and this is and jim called this it's really rough at the bottom but then trying to get up on top is difficult and you can see they're going on both sides because if you have to sit in the dust or go to the rougher line you take the rougher line jim well that's the thing that you know it's supposedly the faster line that we're, we're seeing on the left the, the dirt with the wind is actually blowing to the left so if you want to try and get around somebody you can take that right line that's rougher but it's dust free so uh you know if you want to commit to it you know there's a chance you can make a pass in thumpers well and that but also that's the difference between a spec this is thor uh, i think this is thor or ej i'm not exactly sure but that's definitely one of the herbs trucks um it's harder to get up on top because you need that horsepower even though it's kind of spinning as you go across the top you got to try to get that speed and start start uh start skimming the tops well and it's as we saw ryan arciero go through here you looked at that truck and it just looked level like it was floating yep. across the top of it. you see these spec trucks and it's not that the suspension isn't as good it's just they don't have the power to get up on top so you see them bouncing a little this is troy grabowski as he works in the, the fox proving ground once again now that that fender's off we saw that he got a flat and i think the tires started to come apart and rip that fender off we can see that wing a little bit more this is twisted monkey as they work their way through thumpers this is one of the original camber trucks yep this is alex wacker here and uh Looking like he's uh, having a pretty good run going. Uh, relatively clean lap one, it seemed like. And, uh, you know, he's continuing to push there through thumpers, uh, trying to factor into play, as we said, uh, you know, attrition. I think this is this is going to be a battle. I think we're going to get about midway through lap three, and you're really going to see everybody start pouring it on. Yep. And that lap four, I think you're just going to see hammer down to the finish. Yep. And here as we're watching Jason Coleman as he works his way looking into the Fox Proving Ground, he has made up. So he's in the dust. So who is he catching? Is he catching one of the, one of the unlimited trucks? Is he catching one of the unlimited buggies? Or is he actually catching up 
as we're watching coming out there. This could be our race leader in, yes it is. This is Kyle Jurgensen in unlimited spec. So look, trying to do the math on where they are on track. It looks like Jason is a little bit behind on corrected time, but physically sitting in second. So uh, Kyle Jurgensen has to make sure that he does not stub his toe because it looks like uh, Jason is about, I'm gonna say about three minutes behind him. Back, in, back to the booth, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning in or you've been here a while, I'm going to say it one more time. Welcome to the BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. Um, I'm Ricky Johnson along with Jim Beavers and Jim Marsden. You're back. You had a great lunch. Uh, don't want to hear about that, but did you hear anything about the race while you were gone? Uh, no, just trying to catch up with a few people out there and see what's going on, but I think you've had all the fun and games in here from what I've been hearing. <laughs> uh, Ricky and I always have fun. We just make it <laughs> I'll give you one chance to rephrase that. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, this... This could be our fastest qualifier, which I think it is. Yep, this is our number 18, Nick uh, Weston. Westone um, is still running very, very strong. So he's in a great position, still in the top five. If you look up there um, on, the, on on corrected time, he, they have him down a little ways, but he has got a good pace. He should be coming in to Gonzo Pitt very shortly. So right now he's at right about race mile 50, and Gonzo Pitt is at 58. So um, great job by him. He's obviously very comfortable in that uh, Geyser Brothers G6 as well as the, they got that Duke and Big Block in there, and he's also running that Fortin five-speed, So, um, which typically a lot of people say, including myself, has said that the, the, the manual transmission is not as fast in qualifying, but he made a liar out of everybody. And what was great to hear, and I've said this before, but Rob Mack and Ryan here were like, where did he do it? And they looked at it, and it was his speed down the back straightaways. I find it fantastic that they're able to access that information and be able to find out where it is he's a little bit quicker. But these cars are running absolutely at the limit of all their capabilities. And so you've got to look at those tiny things that make big differences. And let's be honest, the time difference between Ryan Arciero and Nick Whetstone, it was nearly 10 seconds. Yeah, That's huge on a short course. Then that was, and, and you saw Rob back, he's like, how did he do it? But then he confirmed where it was and, and Nick kept it to the floor. And that's where that Dugan big block just really was digging. So, um, once again, we've been talking about it, but congratulations to him. This looks like Maddox. Uh, hold on, I'm come yeah, I think that. that. I think you're right. That is Bailey Maddox. Yes. Well, we got Where's Ryan Arciero, who is our first driver into sector three on the second lap. So uh, we're going to get a real true time split here as soon as uh, Adam Householder and or uh, Pat Dean in the Herb Sentry. Uh, clips that uh, that's uh, into the third sector. Yeah, we got some really great racing going on out here at the moment with Mario Fuentes, of course, leading in class one, currently sitting in fifth overall. So a fantastic run from Mario. And of course, Conlon McMillan in that class one. Now we saw him having that great battle with BJ Baldwin. That was awesome. Find a certain entry on, the, on there. But it's amazing. Jim Beavers, how different the desert is here from the north side to the south side. Oh, it's a complete different world. And like we talked about, you know, the north end uh, didn't get quite the rain the south end got. So we're seeing a lot less dust uh, in that wash heading back in and uh, out through the Joshua Tree Highway. And then you get up here on the uh, north end of the course. And, man, there's dust everywhere. It looks like a, a traditional desert race. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of different uh, terrain changes, uh, you know, here at the mid 400. A uh, mix of uh, sit, uh, rocks, washes, uh, dry lake beds. I mean, you've got that uh, beer bottle pass. It uh, reminds me of uh, some of the stuff you see down in Baja. Uh, just, a, just a great mix here of this 95-mile course. Well, and a lot of people complained about certain things like Tony Wash and this and that down in Baja until they did a King of the Hammers race. <laughs> then once you experience that, you never complain. You're like, this is nothing. Go ahead, Jim. Got some news. I'm just showing here that the number 19's truck is stationary. Yeah, you're right. We got the stationary Pat Dean. Hopefully that's just a flat. I'd like to see him get back into this uh, this fight. Maybe yeah, we've small. seen a few cars parked in that same area. So Cole Potts not parked from there far away. We also saw, now Pat Dean's got his helmet off. No. That's not good. No, not no. good at all. 
Pat Dean with the helmet off isn't uh, isn't a good thing. That means they're planning on being there for a while. Yeah, I'm just a tough, tough break. Now it looks like he's showing. He, looks like he's showing he's, that he's still in first gear. So this is Jason Coleman. Working now, he's working his way to the to, to the gravel pit. Um, he is currently sitting second. We're back with Pat Dean. A tough, tough break for him and Tim Herbst. You can see Pat disgusted. Um, obviously did nothing wrong, just once again, things break. Like we said, uh, mid 400 winning is a lot of luck in, in between a, a lot of everything else. When you know that all these guys, everybody from Rob Mack, who broke early, now Dean, that there's no, there's nothing spared. You know what I mean? They, they put all the work, hard work, and did everything right. But just sometimes you, you have those you have those DNFs. Yeah, so a tough break there for uh, Pat Dean and Tim Hurst, but that's part of racing. That's part of desert racing. This is going to be Terry House over yep. here, uh, going up through Thumpers. You watch him get through the rough stuff, and then you'll probably see Terry to get up on top. Now, do we see? Um, have we seen Adam Householder stop for tires yet? Uh, no, we have not. Uh, we have not. But he, I think he did the right thing on not stopping. Yeah, he put the pressure back onto the Herbst car. Exactly, and that, and who knows, it could be a bent drive shaft, it could be uh, if a rock spins up, hits the rear end, that puts stress on that, then the rear rear gear goes, it could be anything. I did notice that one of the car was stationary, it was still showing that it was in first gear, ah. which is unusual because normally you'd lock it down into park or... Well, I think it's neutral. a manual transmission, so... Is it? Yeah. Right. But uh, I did see all the dash lights flashing and everything else green. So, uh, it, it, you know, I think that, it, you know, if the engine wasn't running, they just had everything left on. And yeah. I'm assuming well, they're going to be there for a while. But Dean hadn't got out of the truck yet either. So uh, there's a possibility there's something that can be fixed. Yeah, look at all this, all these people out there. They've got their gazebos up, picnic tables out, and enjoying the spectacle that is the BF Goodrich 2024 Mint 400. All right, Jims, I'm going to leave you guys to the thing. I'm going to run and grab a bite really quick as we're watching the HRC of Ethan Ebert um, as he works his way through the sand whoops and getting ready to come break, make his way into Gonzo Pit. So I will be right back. But I got to give this uh, Honda program and Ethan Ebert credit. This young kid, he is driving really strong today, Jim. Yeah, he is indeed. And we were talking about this earlier. And what I really love about this program is they're just collecting data. They're just making things work, getting things there. They're playing for the long game. Honda don't just walk into motorsport and walk back out again. They've got such a rich history from so many generations. I can't wait to see what the future is for, the, uh, for young Ethan and that car. Well, and, you know, and Honda, you know, they've been involved in desert racing for the last, uh, what, maybe five years with the 7200 program. And uh, Jeff Proctor, the owner of the program, um, you know, he's, he's uh, allowed Ethan Ebert to kind of carry the torch in this new truck. Uh, but, you know, Jeff, uh, you know, they won, I don't know how many championships. I mean, they won in Baja, they won the Mint, they won uh, in various other series, uh, you know, and, and to the point where Honda goes, we have nothing left to prove in this class. We need to step up because we've won everything we could possibly win. But isn't that but isn't that brilliant? And, uh, and I love the way that uh, you know manufacturers are coming into this now. And we saw that with the EV classes as well. And uh, and I got to celebrate the uh, the manufacturers who are turning out and uh, putting out and, and showing us what they can do here in the desert. So as we continue the action here at the B of Goodridge 2024 Mint 400. We're going to swing out to some billboards and we will be back with the action real soon. The 2024 Beef Goodridge Mint 400 is brought to you by Fox, the Fox Proven Ground Sponsor. 50 years of pushing potential further. Heatwave Visual, the official sunglasses of the Mint 400. Makers of highly visual eyewear to keep you covered in the shop, in the street and everywhere in between. Raceline wheels, go everywhere. Republic services, sustainability in action. Rockford Fosgate, car audio for fanatics. Shreddy Life, for shredders, by shredders. A brand built and based off and any and all types of shred. Site Solar, your leading source for sustainable solar energy. All the time, every time. Twenty twenty four BF Goodrich Mint four hundred. We are 
here just outside of Sin City, Las Vegas, in Prim Valley, Nevada. And what a day it's been so far, Jim Beaver. Oh, it has been one heck of a day out here, and uh, we're not even halfway through yet. That's what's exciting. That's the amazing thing, isn't it? <laughs> and we've had so many storylines already. I mean, uh, you know, Nick Whetstone had a phenomenal first lap. Ended up having some problems. Ryan Arciero, he's putting in the work. He's had a great run. Uh, we saw, you know, uh, Pat Dean and Tim Herbst now. They're parked on the side of the road. Uh, we, we've just seen so many different storylines. Rob McCaffrey, torque converter issue. He was knocked out. Uh, you know, it's it's a complete crapshoot, and we're not even halfway through. I'm really excited to see uh, how things go. You've got guys like Householder, who's just been putting in some great lap time. Same with, thing with Christian Serapis, who has also been putting in great time. So a lot of guys playing the long game here, and I think some of those guys that have kind of laid up and they're just putting in the work, I think they're going to have a lot of truck left to make that charge that lap four. Well, now, this is very interesting indeed. I'm just looking at the third section of this uh, second lap, and Adam Householder is absolutely laying it down. 40 minutes and 24 seconds uh, versus 42 minutes and 10 seconds for Ryan Arciero. So in that sector, he has taken two minutes out of Ryan Arciero. That is massive. That is tremendous. You know, and, and Ricky had talked about it. Adam Householder, you know, he won. He got that big breakthrough win here at the Mid 400 two years ago. And ever since then, you know, this guy, his racecraft, he's been doing the homework. He's been working on his fitness, working on his nutrition. You know, he's one of those guys who went from a, kind of an afterthought to, hey, man, he's a gamer. He's one of the top guys in the sport. Oh, look at this. We got contact in the infield here. So this is two of our unlimited spec cars. Getting into it there yeah. in the infield. Oh, oh and up on that. the side. Look at how deep those ruts are getting, Jim. And he yeah. just, uh, you know, he just uh, caught a rut and uh, put it up on its side. He'll be able to push that truck over and get her going again. But, uh, yeah, they'll be talking about now. He doesn't receive a penalty this. This is a course car. So his t penalty is the time taken to recover him back up onto his wheels. But he's got the negatives about now the fluids are going into the places that you don't want fluids to be going. So he'll just have to settle the car down before he restarts it. Yeah, not a fun position. That, it's in front of the grandstands and all these amazing <laughs> fans out here at the mid-400. Well, so, you, you know, know what they say. Spectacular failure is better than dismal success. As we cut back now, is this EJ or is this Thor? Trying to get a number on this truck. But uh, they're going through thumpers there. Man, that left-hand line is the hot ticket today. Everybody's running that left-hand line. Yeah, it's amazing how it changes, isn't it? Yeah, years past, we've seen everybody run that right-hand line, and nobody was over on the left. But years gone by, we've had the dust has been dominating that area. And, and oh, look at that. I think that's Bill Apgood, isn't it? Yep, it looks like out good there. Working his way through the quarry. And here is that shot of the uh, Herbs. Now we've got yeah, Pat Dean out of the truck as well. So uh, Dave may be done for that Herbs entry. It's a disappointment uh, for them. I mean, they put in so much prep to come here and do well. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, was it last year, Tim had a great run and ended up uh, close, but just not there. And kind of like Ryan Arciero, you keep waiting for them <laughs> to break through and get that big victory out here at the Mint, but uh, not going to happen for the hometown boys. Well, no, it's really unfortunate because Tim Hurst has been massive, and Pat Dean have been massively consistent in the last couple of years. They put down some really big podium finishes, and uh, they've never been quite there with the win, but they have been banging on the door every single time and pushing people hard. So... Real tough break for these guys, and just goes to show how difficult it is when you see. I mean, if <laughs> if you don't follow One Nine Racing or the Herbs Trucks, follow them on social media. Their their workshops are incredible. As we watch our current race leader, this is Ryan Arciero. And Ryan Arciero, you know, he's he's got out front. That's what we talked about. Ryan, we know he likes to control the race. He wanted to get out front, and uh, he's just running a beautiful race. I mean, hitting his marks. Uh, almost to perfection out here at the Mint. And, uh, you know, he's going to be really strong. And, you know, when he's got that light air, and obviously you saw we you saw Adam Householder take two minutes out of Ryan. I wonder if Ryan maybe is backing off just a little, goes, you know, I physically have the lead. I can speed up what I need to. Yeah. But I'm going to make the guys behind mm -hmm. me do the work, and I'm going to save my truck for that, you know, that sprint race, the end of lap three, end of lap four. So. Yeah, I mean, even backing down, just even a couple of tenths can make all of the difference for the, for the tire 
tires and saving them and looking after your rig. But you can't go too slow. If you go too slow, the car doesn't work properly and what you end up doing is doing more harm to the car. So he knows his race pace, he knows where he needs to be at, and he also knows that he can make, uh, he can pick and choose as to what point he wants to put the hammer down and put Householder under pressure. Well, that's one thing I've always said about the two-wheel drives. One of the advantages over a two-wheel drive versus a four-wheel drive truck is a two-wheel drive, you can back it down 5% and the truck still works well. When you go to those all-wheel drive trucks, you've got to drive them at 100%. If you don't drive an all-wheel drive truck at 100%, they don't actually work well. Oh, look at this. Two lines racing. This is coming down through thumpers. Like we said, when you want to run that right-hand line, it's, it seems like it's a little bit rougher today, but the wind is in your favor, so you don't have to worry about the dust from the driver beside you. So if you feel like you can push your truck to the limit, you may actually be able to make a pass through here, as now we've got the driver swapping over lines because he was in the dust of the guy on the right. So the driver on the right did get past the driver on the left. It started dusting out, so you saw the guy that got past now move into the line that was worse because the wind's going to be in his favor now. Yeah, absolutely. Just trying to see that. Looks like one of the Brenthal cars there. Yeah, couldn't see who was uh, in that uh, in the second spot or, or the spot behind with the dust. See him hugging that far right line because trying to get uh, two of the wheels out of uh, out of the rough. Yeah, and these whoops just get so massive as the race goes on. Can't quite see a number on that one. Yeah, that's one of the spectator areas that I think always sells out in a hurry. It's one of the first <laughs> spectator areas that sells out because it's such a good show there with that uh, whoop section through thumpers. And it's the pace they come through. If you ever see any of the videos of those cars coming through there on social media, it's unreal. It's like watching Formula One cars as we watch Ethan Eberts coming on through Gonzo. Now, for a lot of drivers, this it will be an emergency pit. They will just be stopping here. Yeah, if they need to re-rack, they certainly won't be on most people's fuel strategy, that's for sure. It's a speed zone here through, uh, through Gonzo Pit. You're going to get to the end there. They're going to give you the green flag. And then you're going to immediately jump into some technical sand washes for about 10, 15, 20 miles. Really rocky. They're actually very quick. Uh, but you get out of the line, you got a chance to cut a tire, but uh, really technical washes that he's going to run for about 10 or 15 miles. Yeah, and I can tell you now that Christian Serapis has made his way up into third position overall. So a fantastic run there for Christian Serapis. And we're not even halfway through this race yet. That's the bit that oh, I find incredible. Christian Serapis had his big breakthrough unlimited truck win a few years ago at uh, one of the races at Laughlin. Uh, so he has won an unlimited truck race before. It's been a while, but uh, he had a big win there, and then he came and uh, ran the Parker 400, won in the UTV division, now stepping back into the unlimited truck. So uh, the Serapis family knows how to win. Now, if I'm right in thinking, they did have an all-wheel drive for a time, didn't they? Yes, they did have an all-wheel drive. They ran it here at the Mint, I believe, three years ago, four years ago. Um, and I think talking with uh, his dad, Steve, uh, just the cost of running that all-wheel drive truck they just, they, they couldn't financially make sense of it, so they're back to the traditional two-wheel drive truck. Yeah, absolutely. So as we continue with the action here, we've got our technical expert, Brian Little from AGM, and he's down in the pits and he's got some info for us. So Brian, what do you got? Some people lump exhaust into accessory categories like with mirrors and tint, and there's so much more than that. A properly designed and tuned exhaust system can help increase volumetric efficiency, which really, it's just a fancy way of saying it can help your engine breathe better, increase horsepower, and improve torque. So who better to talk to about that than MagnaFlow? They've been building performance exhaust systems for over 40 years. We're here with Jerry, who's new to the MagnaFlow family, to talk a little bit about the system. Jerry, you had said earlier that you guys have systems out on race vehicles today. Can you tell me kind of what goes into specifically like the improvements that MagnaFlow is looking for and then where the biggest gains are? Yeah, so out here in the desert, um, we want a lot of torque. And we're also stringing these engines out at top RPMs, or over 7,000 RPM. So we're looking for power very broad across the power band, right? So we have a muffler design. It's like you could literally look straight through it, and it's all perforated inside, and it's got really good packing. So it's really important in off-road racing is sound, because you're inside that thing, and it's loud, and you're racing for, you know... We need to bring the volume down, and we don't want to sacrifice performance. So 
from the tubing design, the materials we use. Um, now we're getting into like on street vehicles like XMOD systems. So we have a lot of different uh, applications out there, especially with these modern exhausts with valves in the exhaust that are going through smaller tubes and bigger tubes depending on how much the engine needs to exhaust, right? And then in desert racing from the class one cars, you'd look at the, uh, the unlimited buggies, right? Um, V8s in the back, headers, and just dumping straight out. And I'm seeing a lot of Magnaflow mufflers out here. And it's something like, you know, Magnaflow has been a sponsor to Camberg for years. And for the people out there who don't know, Magnaflow acquired Camberg in uh, the end of 22. And so uh, now that I'm on the Magnaflow side of things as well, seeing everything out here, you know, you got McMullen. The guy who's winning races in an unlimited car, running Magnaflow mufflers. You got Dan Myers from Toyota Escondido, Magnaflow mufflers, and you start hearing stories of people like, oh, "I've been running Magnaflow for years," you know. And this company was started in 1981, so I mean, we're over 40 years old. Now, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but I kind of want to go back to it. So I'm at home, I'm watching this. I want to make some performance improvements to my car. What what can Magnaflow do to help me? Yeah, so Magnaflow makes a ton of exhaust systems. They have from the Overland series, which you and I would really like because it just dumps real quickly. It's not all long going out the back. They have dual tip, single tip. Um, but really, there's a lot of weight savings in a lot of their applications. Sound is huge, a huge improvement in sound, especially like Raptors, right? Like everyone kind of that V6 sound. This really like deepens it up. And then on the XMOD systems, like I said, with those valves, how it opens and closes on the bigger and the smaller tubes makes a really big difference. Um, they also have a system with V-band clamps. So, you know, you can put in a smaller muffler, or you can have the resonators. Yeah, or you can straight, you take the muffler out and put it in, which is really cool on vehicles, <clears throat> um, you know, when you want it to be louder, you know, and you still have the valves, but now you take out the resonators and some of the other cool stuff. So, so what I'm hearing is there's a big catalog. The parts are made in the U.S., right? Correct. You guys are out here supporting racing, and the product can withstand the harsh Mint 400 terrain. So, I mean, Magnaflow is checking all the boxes for me. So I would say if you're looking to make some improvements, some horsepower gains with your engine, you should check out Magnaflow. Back to you guys. Thank you, Brian. Always good to hear from you and to hear what's going on out there. Oh, no. Oh. Now, who's that? That's another Herbst. Yeah, they're ru they're rushing there. That's one of the, uh, that is one of the... Uh... Yes, that's EJ, or is that Thor? That is the 219. All right, now he's pulling the hood off. So is this going to be a yeah, belt 219 issue? 219 is Thor. Yeah, he's saying wiggle the wheels. So he's just having a look now. Okay. So we've got uh, got him charging through the rough. Just gonna see what happens here. Just exit stage left there. Yeah. Parked it. He was almost, I mean, he was out of the truck in a hurry. You see how fast he releases the hood there? I was wondering if he's, there's something going on and he wanted to be checked out. Got the hood off now. Still, the driver's still sitting in the car. So that's always good news when the driver's still sitting in the car. When the driver takes off his helmet or gets out of the car, then you know it's a major problem because you never like to see the driver. Oh, no, no, here we go. And now, now we've got a problem. When you got the driver that gets out, that means they're going to be there for a while. And not a good uh, last 30 minutes for the Herbsts. No, not at all. The Herbsts, of course, got three cars out there. We saw Tim Herbst in the unlimited car being driven by Pat Dean pull over earlier, and they are looking like they are out of the race for definite. And now we have got Thor Herbst, who's running in one of the unlimited spec trucks. And you can see some smoke there. Yeah, a little bit of smoke But it could be smoke, steam. it could be steam, it could it be anything. could be a cooling issue, maybe. You can see him moving his hands around like it might be a steering issue. No, he said you know, cut the engine and the helmet's yeah. coming off. They're going to be there for for a bit. But steam, yeah, that could be a cooling. That's an engine issue. Yep. Usually in the cooling packs for these vehicles are in the back of the vehicle. But obviously they have pipe work that gets it to things. 
Uh, oh, he's power he's steering. steering. Power steering. So that makes sense. They were going through that technical section back and forth, bailed off in a hurry. Sometimes that's when you lose steering or things are locked up. But yeah, um, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess that they've done a steering hose. Yeah. Now the interesting thing is the co-driver has got back into the car, and the driver is out of the car with the helmet off. Co-driver could ah, be. I know what co-driver's doing. Co-driver's got back in. He's put his helmet back on so he can hit the comms. Yeah. So he's now speaking back to the pits. Uh, we're hearing it's uh, possibly a power steering servo. So good news is something like this can possibly be patched up, get to the next pit. Uh, the bad news is is this you know pretty much takes them out of the running for, for a win here. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, but and seconds count in every race, but this one particularly. Uh, I can tell you now that we have got a breakaway group at the front of this race with Adam Householder, Ryan Arciero, Nick Whetstone, and Christian Serapis. That's what you love to see, though, is a four-horse race. You, know, you don't like to see one driver go away with it if you're a fan at home or you're even a commentator sitting here in the booth. No, Ryan Arcier would disagree with us and go, I love running away with this. But uh, for the fans at home, man, we got a four, we're got four. we almost at the halfway point with four trucks in this. Uh, looks like B.J. Baldwin, that is uh, going to be at That's the Gonzo. Uh, Gonzo pit. You know, he's had some issues off and on. When we've seen the truck on on course, he's been really fast. He's just had a couple of small issues that he's been dealing with and little gremlins today that's kind of uh, taken him out of out of the, out of contention. Well, he's, the, the body language is pretty negative here. These guys don't seem to be rushing. They just sort of seem to be walking around. And we've seen him parked on the side of the road more than once. Uh, BJ's running in about sixth position at the moment. So this is a uh, very unfortunate. But I can tell you who's making a charge up the field, and that's Mario Fuentes. Keep an eye on that class one. Yeah, we thought it was going to be Connor McMullen, but uh, Mario Fuentes. Is no, that's Pat Dean. Yeah, Pat Dean. It looks like they're just uh, trying to get their way out of the desert. Yeah. And with knowing the knowing Pat and the Herb family, this is an access road. They wouldn't be having their you know helmets off and no, just no, cruising no. down race course. So you're getting a, a glimpse here at an access road, and they're just trying to get the truck out of the desert. But uh, yeah, um, yeah they they got the truck drivable, and they're just going to try and get it uh, get it out somewhere so that they uh, can get it towed in. And uh, oh, look at that little oh, bump! Look at that. That's Ryan Arciero saying to one of the Ultra Four guys, "Hey, guy, this is desert racing. Move." <laughs> Yeah, Ryan Arciero there just uh, put a little bumper on things. Yeah, I think that might have been um, a Mike Spindler that he just caught there. You know, I've been watching this rear tire in the in the back of the rack there with Ryan Arciero, and it's just bouncing around loose. Um, that's not good. You don't like that because, you know, when you get that much weight, it's 150 pounds bouncing up and down. Um, you know, that's when you start to have cracks and stuff like that, you know, in the back of the chassis yep. and things like that. So it's one of those. He doesn't want to pull into a pit and risk any time with that four four horse race they've got. But at some point, that's going to be looked at because you get that much weight with bouncing around and that's when you start to, you know, have problems. Yeah, but that's one of those interesting situations. So Carl Washington's alongside him in the helicopter. He'll be watching that and keeping an eye on it, guaranteed. Also, you can bet your life that his pits are watching this because <laughs> if you want to know what's happening in the race watch the live feed because you're never going to get anywhere better that's for sure uh, I think that might be Brett Kamensky there I'm not sure it's quite, quite an individual look to the vehicle if it is Brett is currently our highest placed all wheel drive vehicle It looks like he's just picking his way through the rough there. And he's lying in around about seven position. If it is, I'm not sure that it is actually. No, that's not. You know, all that moisture we had in the desert yesterday. I think that's Trey Gibbs actually. Just trying to get a number. Oh, there we go. I think it's Michael Halliburton. Uh, Michael Halliburton. 
Sometimes it's just best to lay back when you're not sure. Yeah, well, this <laughs> this actually looks here like it could be Trey Gibbs, the blue and the white. Yeah, absolutely. And Trey Gibbs, like I said, he's he's a guy who uh, you know short course racer, but uh, used to uh, you know run buggies in uh, in the you know in in the short course series, and now he's running. Uh, uh, unlimited spec truck. He's running a UTV in desert racing. He's also running a pro light in short course, a UTV in short course, and he's got a pro two be being built for short course. I mean, he's getting a ton of seat time in all kinds of facets of off road. I uh, got to give him a lot of credit. Uh, I'm joined back in the booth by uh, Ricky Johnson here. We've got a fan. Got the thumpers here. We got a uh, car working his way through. Hey, Ricky, how you doing? Fantastic. And as you can see, Jim Jim mentioned this earlier that it's a lot rougher down at the bottom on that left lane um, that we're looking at, right lane coming towards us. The jumps are bigger, but they're closer together, so it's harder to get up to speed. Here's the two lanes. Watching them, um, we're going backwards down the course. We should be coming up. We'll see that truck going on us right there. That is an unbelievable shot. But you can see how hard they it works the suspension yeah there was literally up on a big bicycle there well and that's where the co-drivers whoa 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 <laughs> i don't know what that note is but <laughs> now the, i think this is the vehicle we saw pulled over on the side of the road earlier having some work done to the front it looked like they were trying to uh, tighten down um one of the shock absorber canisters one of the reservoirs sorry yep well, as we're uh, joined back by Ricky, I think I'm going to bow out for uh, 15 minutes, go grab a bite to eat. No and, problem uh, at all. Go and check it out. We will see you guys here in a few minutes. I'll make sure Jim doesn't get too, the other Jim doesn't get too out of control. As we're this unbelievable <laughs> drone shot, I love watching this because you get to see in real time how fast these guys are going. But if you ever get a chance to come out here and you're driving into Las Vegas, you look off to the right, you see these giant orange stacked rocks. You see a dry lake bed in the background. This is right next to that. <clears throat> so unbelievable shot of those guys going through thumpers. Now we are up in the gravel pit. If you're looking on your course map, this is around mile marker 30. So you can see how they have to work their way up and down and around, and they do a lot of, of mining here. And so <clears throat> the guys have definitely have a defined track they want to stay on. Yeah, now I'm just looking at the live scoring here, Ricky, and we've got a few names that have fallen out in the last sort of uh, third of this lap. So we've seen that Tim Hurst being driven by Pat Dean. Yes. Um, he's got problems and is out of the race. I'm also looking here, Kevin Thompson, a.k.a. Kevin um, Harley Lettner. Um, he has not passed through the timing loop at the time we would have expected him to. So I'll keep an eye on that, see if we can find out where Harley Lettner is. Uh, then we've also got David Bernstein. He's also not passed through where we'd expect him to, or has Jason Coleman. So this race is really starting to string out now. And this is Ballistic B This is ballistic BJ Baldwin in the Gonzo pit. Not good. Everybody's out of the car. They're looking around, um, making some calls, but not a good sign for BJ. So uh, definitely not going to win another, you know, not going to win here at the mid 400. Yeah, it's tough. No one likes to see that. But we've been, he's been fighting problems all day. We've seen him pulled over on the side of the track for various yep. different things. And one of the things you pointed it out, and Jim Beaver was a huge fan, look at Connor McMullen. Oh, here we see Jason oh, Coleman Lord. out of the truck. This is what we're just You see the body language. Uh, look at that. Co-driver's out. Jason's pulling his helmet off. Disgusted. We don't know what that problem is. Yeah. Very, say, very he tough just, call. Yeah, he hadn't come through the, uh, the timing mark so i guess he must have an issue but we have definitively got a breakaway group now but we've got an awesome race going on oh right i can tell you i have got some news Connor mcmullen is actually stopped as well on track right now i, I, I don't want to mention anybody's name yeah I because <laughs> i feel like i'm the jinx because i was i watched connor and had worked his way up into i think sixth or fifth place uh but now you can see that the, the as you said the body attitude <clears throat> on Jason and his co-driver, not a good day. The iBox sponsored truck uh, was definitely in this to win it, um, but a tough break. Yeah, more no, that's action. a really tough luck indeed. More action coming into the sand wash, or the sand whoops, I should say. Did you see a number on that one? Yeah, 246. Uh, 
Oh, that is James Scully. I apologize for taking so much time. <laughs> I shouldn't worry. I'm still looking. <laughs> and that, I'm pretty sure, was Maddox. You can't find Maddox on the list. Let's try Gibbs. Maddox Bailey. Huh. Got to be there somewhere. We're in a lot more with EJ Herbs. Yeah, now EJ he does look like he is the one remaining Herbs truck out there at the moment. What you won't have seen, Ricky, just before you came back, is that we just saw Phil pulled up on the side of the track. It looks like he's got a power steering issue. Oh, tough, tough break. Well, no, and those are different power plants. So the, the unlimited spec obviously have the LS3, and then the, uh, this truck, which they they made it they made it back in. So they're, they're looking at what's going on. So it looks like with them jacked up maybe something as i said it could have been no, a dry they, shaft could have been a rear end we don't i can know. tell you that they are out because they made their way back to pit off course yeah but so. but i'm just curious it's still uh, you know still people would like to, to know, know yeah. what happened so there's the 263 that is ej That's ej herbs so the one remaining running car right now for the 19. Very calm, very collected, nice smooth hands, carrying a lot of speed. So, as I said, see him now that Jason Coleman is out, if you can do a little homework for us and tell us where Kyle Jurgensen is. Now, Jurgensen, I've just been watching him on our tracker. It looks like uh, Kyle Jurgensen is currently around about race mile 63 to 64 okay. on his second lap. So he's put it together a solid run. But uh, Mario Fuentes is also on a charge, uh, leading up and on the Class 1s right now. Cole Potts is also charging hard again. And in amongst all of that group, we've also got Brett Kamensky. But we're going to be seeing our lead car coming into complete lap 2 very shortly. Yeah, I reckon he's only a couple of miles outside of town. Well, and, and as we see, this, you know, these are the drivers that are up around race mile 60, where you're, you're further east. Here in there, we see our leader, Ryan Arciero. He's in the speed zone. He's making his way back off to the left. Obviously, the solar fields um, has to run, I think it's at 30 miles an hour, 32 miles an hour. So he'll have the uh, speed limiter set, and he'll, at this time, probably take on some nutrition, definitely some hydration, um, stretch his left leg out, put it out, let the body relax and they get ready for two more excruciating laps. <laughs> and that's what we keep saying. It's all about that housekeeping, doing all those little things, making sure that you're all good. Could be talking back to the pits right now, working on their strategy. He knows that he's got a householder breeding down his neck, but he's got time. That's the one thing that he has got right now is time. Yes. So he can make some cool decisions. But I'm just looking at the full lap in this race. In the top 10, we've had uh, that started lap two, we can see uh, Jason Coleman are out. David Bernstein has stopped moving. Kevin Thompson, aka Harley Lettner, stopped moving. And also we know that Tim Hurst is definitely out. So the attrition rate is starting to set here in here at the 2024 B of Goodridge Mint 400. Well, another look. one of the Brentville cars there working hard. Is that the Scully car again? No, Scully no, doesn't have the front, 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 front nose. Now, the Brentthals do offer an arrive and drive program. Yep, which uh, they, they've done a very good job. Got a lot of people. We saw a uh, button out here. Yeah, Jensen. I think that was 2018, 19. And what was funny is that here's a guy who's a Formula One world champion was like, oh, my God, Rob McCacker just passed me. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was all impressed with that. So listen to Jensen here, which was great. The guy that's done so much then listen to what he's talking about that. So now taking another look, this looks like Eisenhower. Um, he's got that wide car with the big front nose. Yep, that is the Eisenhower brothers. And I've got to say, speaking about the Eisenhower, have you noticed that the Grabowski car has lost its rear wings? Just well, saying. The whole wing. No, not the rear wing, no. not the bit that sits in the middle. Yeah, yeah. The rear fenders have yeah, just yeah. Act seemingly have accidentally fallen off again. Well, I'm not saying that they do it on purpose, but. <laughs> No, 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 but you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, not, let's not bull crap the people here. I think this is Brent Fox as he works his way through. 
Brent Knopf's also missing quite a bit of body panels, front and rear. Both rears and both and the front hood is gone as well. But I think with the Grabowskis, I, I, I'm pretty sure they got a flat and then the one got ripped off and then who knows, slight altercation into a bush and away goes the other one. But, exactly. But if they can keep that wing doing what it's supposed to be doing, which uh, well, I do, ask wonder, them, I, I, I do have a theory that if they lose their rear fenders, that their central rear wing works better. Really? We say. Okay. Well, I do wonder, because I haven't seen them actually ever finish a race with their rear fenders on. Now, I'm open to people changing my mind on that. Well, we, we did have a situation one time in stadium racing where we went out, no practice, nothing was so muddy. We went out and uh, I think the Walker Evans team tied tied everybody in. All righty, so, anyways, so we, when he finished that, he, I think the title on the dental floss. They fell off as soon as they hit that, so they made sure that they wanted to stay on. Right now, we're going to jump out to Brian Little. We're going to check out the guys from Richard. Brian? Finishers are expected to take the checkered flag before dark tonight, but the last pit doesn't close until 10 p.m. That means lighting will play a factor in today's race. Now, I'm here at the Rigid Industries booth to talk to Damon about how they're helping racers keep pace tonight. Damon, tell me, what specific lights will racers be using to help themselves navigate the mid-400 course tonight? So a lot of the guys tonight will be running like our 50-inch light bar, maybe some of our 360 pods, the spot stuff so for the long distance. And then, obviously, you know, it's going to get dusty out there. I mean, the wind's great right now, but it won't be that way all the day. So then they'll start using our new Amber Series setup so they get cut through that dust. Got it, got it. And I'm seeing some other lights here. It looks like maybe some road stuff. Can you tell me what you guys are most excited about in your uh, your lineup here? Some of the most stuff we we're excited about, we're getting ready to launch our new laser series, which is going to be a, a beam that's just 1.3 miles ahead of you. Um, but we have the ADAPT system here, which is uh, has a GPS on it. The faster you go, the slower you go. That light speeds up, slows down, so you got plenty of light. Racers don't have to start playing with their lights too much. You know what I mean? It just helps out. We have all SAE and DOT equipment, too, for, you know, the side-by-sides, the, your, your vehicle set, type setup. That's super interesting. Now, I'm at home. I'm watching this. I'm liking what you're saying. I'm wanting a set of rigid lights, but I'm not a fabricator or a lighting expert. Do you guys offer, like, vehicle-specific kits for, for UTVs or trucks? We actually do. We uh, So right now we are official, the official light of Ford, so we manufacture for Ford. They're Raptor series, the trimmers. So they actually come out factory. So does Toyota. We do a lot with Toyota Tundras, Tacomas, etc. Um, and we're weak with Polaris. So we have a lot of SAE DOT stuff where you can go on our website and literally buy the kit that just bolts onto your truck, plug and play with what you have and go for it. That is amazing. Thank you, Damon. So if you're looking, if you're racing out here at the Mint 400 or you want to upgrade your toy or you're just looking for some lights for your street vehicle, it sounds like Rigid has all your bases covered. So go ahead and give them a check out. Back to you guys. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Great to hear from you and great to hear from Rigid Industries. Now, Ricky, who's this? We are watching Ryan Arciero. Thank you for that double box. It was great to hear from the guys from uh, Rugged. Rigid, I'm sorry. Rugged radios, <laughs> rigid lighting. you got to get that straight. So here we're seeing Ryan Arciero as he comes in. Are they taking the hood off? No, everything's... Oh, yes, they are. They They're taking are the hood off. So what are they doing? Are they adding fluids? What is the situation? So this is not a great thing to see, but they are right on time. But this will give the guys changing the tires and fuel a little extra time um, once the hood is off. But Bob Bauer, we're bringing you back into the fray. What do we got going on? What's your opinion of what's happening here? It's, it's sadness. When I watched both of the... When nine industry trucks go down, bang, like that, I'm starting to worry about Ryan now because they're an identical truck. Ah, except shush, for don't jinx him. So, well, you got to call it ace and ace. All, Albert Arciero is going to come punch you in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and I think that he knows he's got a lead. He knows he can take maybe an extra moment to, to look, look the truck over. I hope they're not diagnosing. I hope they're just in, analyzing. Well, they're not on the belt up front. They're towards the back. It could be power steering. It could be something. But, Jim Marsden, what's your thoughts? Well, just looking at this, and I'm also looking at the times. So we can see that Ryan Arciero was running two minutes slower than Adam Householder on the last sector of that lap. So that's a significant difference. Well, and 
Okay, we, we've been told that they're changing an alternator. So this could take a little bit of time. So so right right now they're 90 seconds into this pit. It's going to be a, a, a few minute change. Now this is really interesting because most of these vehicles run two alternators. Yes, but um, it, both of them, you know, yeah, poop the bed so to speak. <laughs> um, it's happened to me where we had to, where we had to do. It. I was running down there, um, and ironically, Rob Mack and I were, were first and second on on course. My alternator was taking a dive. They didn't have one. I took back off, and his alternator, he changed it, and he ended up going on and winning that Baja 1000. So um, it happens. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we're going to step away for just a moment while Ron Arciero, your leader of the 2024 Bia Goodrich Tires Mint 400, is leading it, but he is in the pit. We will be right back. BestOffRoad.com, offering the best off-road brands, best customer experience, best prices. Experience off-road retail re-engineered by BestOffRoad.com. Stop by our booth in the Midway. Off-road advice is always free. BestOffRoad.com can help you create your ultimate off-road vehicle. Over 25 years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 2024 B of Goodrich Tires Mint 400. Oh my word, there is action absolutely everywhere. That is, or was, should I say, our race leader, Ryan Arciero. He is in the main pits back at Prim. But what's been happening, Ricky? Well, moments ago, Adam Householder came through the pit. Now we see Adam through the pit. Now remember, he did not stop for tires. He's probably stopping at the Gene Hurst pit, but this is your new leader physically and on corrected time, Adam Householder. So he knows what it takes. He was second place last year, done a lot with his fitness, feeling very strong, and also they have done a great job. He's been very fast, very consistent, as well as he's going for this championship. Yeah, absolutely. You can't blink. If you do anything at this race, you miss the action. Incredible stuff. Well, it's been it's been awesome to get all the coverage to see where everything is at. Obviously, with a 100-mile course, it's hard to hit everything. But as we're watching Adam Householder as he works his way through, notice he's driving fast but not stressing the vehicle out, not landing hard. We saw Ryan Arciero in the pit. The report is that they're changing an alternator. So that is obviously something that if they just let it rely on the battery, next thing you know, the battery dies, and then, then you're stuck somewhere that you can't do anything about it. So you hate to, to stop in the middle of a race like that, but it's what he has to do, and they still have 200 miles to go. Absolutely, it can all change so fast here. Now, most of these vehicles have two alternators, so he will have the double bubble effect, but if you were to lose that second one, it's the same with running two spare wheels. Yep. If you, if you lose one, you have to be, you can still attack because you have the second spare, but once you lose that second one, you're absolutely in the dead zone. So, so Bob, if you had two horses back in the day and one died, did you keep racing with the, with the horse? <laughs> yeah, but you raced in a circle. <laughs> All righty, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in there really quick. I love giving Bob a hard time. This is Christian Serapis, so now he is physically second. So we don't know where um, where uh, Westhead is, uh, Westone, I'm sorry, Nick Westone is because he hasn't come through yet. So right now, Christian Serapis is the man on the move. We have to look at where he's at corrected time, but he is definitely up in the mix, and that puts him in a great position and a very, very tough position for Ryan Arciero. So now he has to pass both of these drivers and then put time back on them again. So that's one of those things. If you can get by while somebody's in a pit, it makes a big difference because in racing time, it's really hard to pass. Yeah, so that is our current second place vehicle. Now, Christian Serapis started literally alongside Adam Householder or within 30 seconds of yep. him. So Adam Householder is our race leader right now here at the 2024 Beer of Goodridge Mint 400. Now when Christian Serapis started the last lap, he was in seventh position. Just goes to show how fast it can all change. All right, and here we go. The our pole sitter, Nick uh, Westone, is still running very strong. Now he did lose a couple spots to the, to that, so he's third on the course and third overall at this point. So he's got some work to do if he wants to try to win this. So he's, he's got hope for that. But it looks like he's still running a very strong pace. Yeah, it looks like the car was in great shape there as he makes his way through, and he is the third vehicle to make his way out onto the third lap. Bob. You enjoying this? I, I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just like amazing that any one little blip, and it's and it's going to change the race. I took it. You guys gave me a break to go buy some lunch, and I had it. And then I'm watching. I'm watching them start drop like flies on the starting stream. Both of the Herbst entries, both of the 19 industry trucks out. Looks like it's a similar problem. Steering. Well, well but but we're saying alternator. That's what they're saying on Ryan Arciero is, is ultimately, but you, you, did you hear that it's steering? What I did is I read the co-driver's uh, message to the helicopter, and he was doing this. Okay. He was, he was now you saw moving his arms yeah, like he's steering. Talking, Bob's talking about the Herbs trucks. You're talking about Arciero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Different things. Oh. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. Okay, now, who's that? This, it looks like Jurgensen. Or is this Serapa still making his no, way that, through? No, that's still Christian Serapa. Yeah, that's yeah. number six. He's working. They both have Beast on the side. That's a great new uh, thing that they got going on there. So still, Ryan Arciero still in the pits. This has got to be so frustrating and just nerve-wracking for Ryan at this point. Um, but it's, it's a fixable problem, but he is losing valuable time. Now, the problem with all of this is that engine isn't cold. That engine's at full race temperature. So to get in there and actually change an alternator is not easy. Very spicy. It you're is trying, You're trying to pull muffins out of the oven with no gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's something we practice back home, but uh, we only run a single alternator, so it's a slightly different kettle of fish. 
A kettle of fish. A kettle of fish. A kettle of fish. Okay, got it. Um, I had to translate for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go keep. Now, we need to be keeping an eye open also for our first of the class ones, which should be Mario Ferentes, who has absolutely been putting down a storm out there. But that's one of the 4400s. I think that's Mike Spindler there. That is the 4497. Yeah, that's Mike Spindler. Now, he's a, check this out, 100 miles down yeah. on our race leaders. <laughs> that, if you think about that, this is not 100 miles down the freeway. This is 100 miles around the most brutal desert in the world. Hello. So, um, still running a great pace, pushing up and over the berm a little bit there, but he is still moving along. So, um, yeah, so this is a 4400 Ultra 4 car. It's got an IFS front end and it has a solid axle rear end. And that is still Ryan Arciero. Man, it just, it, it, uh, it just, uh, multiple years that he's had problems and, and doing nothing wrong as a driver. Well, I'm going to turn to be Pollyanna. I'm going to say, listen, it's lap two. You know, we've got, we've got, we've got what, maybe three and a half, four hours left of usable time. Other people can have a problem. I'm still sticking with, with Jim Morrison's choice who's going to win this race. It's going to be Ryan here. How's that? Yeah, well, there you there's go. only three. There's three cars in front of him. Yep. Well, and, and, but anything can happen. I mean, this is happening to them who we know that their prep and everything is impeccable. They do the best, you know, some of the best work out there. So once again, it's a part. Things happen. Yeah, things happen. But if, if there is good news, it's happening while he's still got time to do something about it. Yep, and this is coming back at race mile 49, right there through the to the sand whoops as they work their way through. I come up over the top of here, then it's a big long left hand sweeper with an off camber to the left. Um, just got to try to stay up on those bumps as good as possible. Nicely controlled truck, it's just nice and easy. Yep, yep. Back to Ryan, still everybody up there working. Very now, the positive to this for me is that Ryan hasn't got out of the truck yet. Right. Well, so the, the fact that he is still inside the car says to me that they are confident that they can fix this problem. Yeah. But it, but they're not in the shop. Everything is on. When you when you do that kind of kind of stuff, you well, something tells me that it's not the alternator because they're not working on the front of the motor. The That's where they the have it mounted. Well, but they, how, they did have one on the drive shaft and they had one. Understand what they've done. It's gone to two in the motor area. Well, they're grabbing the hood, so this is good news. Whatever yeah. they, whatever they've done, they've gotten it fixed. Now the race is back on. So everybody's going to see something. Yeah, everybody, everybody has. Everyone's going to have a little bit of bad luck. Now Ryan has had his. Let's get that out of the way and get him back on track. Well, I don't tell you. I don't think he's going to go out there and just whip it to try and catch those guys. I think he's going to get up to speed and start trying to put pressure minute for minute for minute and close the vice. Well. It, I mean, he's a professional. He, yeah. he's, he knows what he's doing. What he's going to do is drive as fast as he can. That, that, that's all you can do. Um, and, and, but they'll let him know as, as he starts to go into this third lap. He's got 100 miles to kind of check himself against them. Right. Then once he looks at the time, then he says, okay, now i got to start once again, knock off a second, a corner, not try to make up 10 seconds in one straightaway, Jim. Yeah, what I love about this, you can see how professional and how much respect he has for his crew. He didn't roost anybody. He didn't tear up his tarpaulin where he pulled, pulled, he pulled away. Great work there from Ryan Arciero. If you want to get into racing, watch this man. He is the business. <laughs> Here we go. This is fantastic. I love to see this. He's coming up to race time now, or coming up to race speed again now. What are we going to see? Now, last time he came around here, he put a huge jump in as he came yeah. through that start-finish arch. Well, it's going to be hard not to to do that because <laughs> he's trying to make up time, but he's, he's got to slow it down and got not it. tear up that vehicle. So watch. Don't. I imagine he's going to brake pretty hard. Yep. yep. Perfect. Nicely right done. down the Nicely backside. done. Now, gentlemen, we have a race on our hands. Yes, we do. Well, we watched him. He didn't qualify that far back, but he was able to get into the lead and, and do everything cleanly. But he lost a lot of time uh, with that ultimate. But the crew hats off to the 1-9 racing crew for getting him back on track. And so now he's going he's gonna to be in full kill mode. 
let's have a quick recap. If you're just joining us, this is the 2024 BF Goodrich Mint 400. This morning we saw Nick Whetstone heading off the line in first position. Then in second off the line was Eric Hardin alongside Ryan Arciero. Ryan Arciero managed to get past Eric and head off out into the desert. Nick Whetstone was leading the race until about three quarters of the way around. Somewhere near Gonzo, he, we can only surmise that he must have had a flat tire or something yeah. happened. And then Ryan stepped up and took the lead. That was a lead that he had up until the end of lap two, where we saw him come in and stop for an alternator. In that time, we've also seen BJ Baldwin succumb to the desert, also Rob McCachran, Tim Hurst being driven by Pat Dean. And this is Carl right now with Ryan Arciero, our current fourth place on track, hunting down our race leader, Ryan, uh, sorry, Adam Terry, <laughs> Adam Householder. <laughs> I'll spit my words out in a minute. Adam Householder. <laughs> And just behind him, Christian Serapis and Nick Whetstone. Well, I just got word from uh, Dustin Grabowski that Jack Grabowski is in the truck now. So they are, they, uh, Troy has done his stint. And now uh, as we're watching Ryan Arciero, as he works his way through the short course and getting back on track. That truck looks very balanced. Um, obviously he put on new tires, everything ready to go, full of fuel as he works that cutting brake a little bit. So, um, Let's see if he does the same on the right corner. Does he push or does he pull? Come on. Oh, pull. on. So, so, it so it's, to me, it looks like a traditional, um, just a rear brake. Yeah, but I, how does that actually work if he's running a spool in the you rear? You let off. When you let off and you grab yeah, it, I it, suppose, it yeah. it's, it's like an emergency brake. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what it does is it helps you rotate. Or in his case, he's not using it that hard. He'll just drag a little bit, and that will throw a little bit more uh, pressure towards the front. the front. You can, yeah. you can use your foot brake when you're doing that, but sometimes that slows you down more than you really want. Yeah. Now, will they bias the brakes? On I suppose that, yes. On the two-wheel drives, they'll definitely be biasing the brakes. Yeah, it's going to throw it back. But uh, the thing is, is that you got to make sure when you're doing that that you don't put too much rear in because you wear the rear brakes out. Yes. You know, I've done that. I did that with Gus Vladosla. Um, we. It was my mistake when we did our shakedown. I didn't check the brakes right, and we had too much to the rear, and I wore the rear brakes out. We had to pump them, and it, it almost cost us the race, but, but Gus did a great job figuring that out. Double pumping is becoming the course. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got to be careful. In fact, that's a problem that lots of people have in, in factory vehicles that they use off-road. What they, they don't realize is when they actually lock the central differential or they put it into four-wheel drive, they, you're then locking the brakes together. And usually a factory vehicle will have smaller calipers on the back with yeah. smaller pads. Yeah. So they wear out their rear pads much faster than they wear out their fronts for well, exactly that the, reason. Same with the motorcycle. If you look at them, they got one small disc, rear, uh, disc in the rear and two giant ones in the front because more of the braking power is there. Yeah. But when you're in dirt, you got to rotate. I did just get a, a, an unfortunate message from Jason Coleman with a thumbs down and a disgusted look on his face said, broken wheel studs. So oh. tough, tough deal. That's one of those things. That, and that's where we talked about, you know, the, the Fox proving ground and stuff. It's so square edge right there. There's no give. Even with a 40 inch tire, it's it just brutal on the vehicles. Yeah. Now, usually a broken wheel stud, bro wheel studs don't break unless they come actually loose. Well, there's something. So if this is a class one car, this is going to be Mario Fuentes. Fasteners don't just back off. No, exactly. So, no, 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 no. They're no. probably in a hurry in the pit. He said broken wheel studs, so anything could happen. You know, like, what do you think, they over torqued them? Well, either under that or under torqued them is oh, the under usual They one. got loose and then it's sure. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's the normal one. Okay. Either way, really bad news. Yeah, either way, end of day. Yeah. And the trouble is you think you feel it. But I mean, quite often you don't. That's the strange thing. Well, here's the thing: you're out when you're out there racing these trucks or or buggies or whatever the case may be. There's so many times you go through a corner, you pack the wheel full of dirt, mm. and then you go down the straightaway, and all of a sudden you feel it. Yeah, both Bob and I are doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It feels like it wants to jerk the wheel out of your hand. You go, oh, I got a flat, I got a flat. And I've done that with Lucas Cassidy, where we thought he had a flat because he he sidewalled us so hard, we bicycled, and sure enough, I get out the wheels just packed full of dirt. Yeah. So that happens quite a bit and that, that catches guys. But but as we're watching, we're going back to Adam Householder who is out front and actually running a very, very clean clean run. It's going to be interesting. Will he stop at, because uh, he should be coming into the time yeah, yeah, so he's going to be coming into the Gene Hurst pit or coming past the Gene Hurst pit very soon. Now, we're trying to talk about strategy. Now, earlier today, he was saying to you that he's going to stop on every single lap for tires and for fuel. 
Now, we called his bluff a little bit. He was obviously working on the fly when he was racing with Tim Herbst. Which is cool. I love that. I love the fact that they were flexible with their pitting. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what you have to do. Yeah. Because yeah. track position, track position, track position. If you're in front, it's definitely... And, and we don't know what happened. Um, I'd did, rather... I, I have to be honest. I'd rather have clear air and two older tires than be running with new tires and not seeing where I'm going. Clear, <laughs> clear air all day long. That's why everyone tries so hard to qualify. You say, well, I'm going to sit back. You never want to do that, not in this kind of racing, because if you notice, it's one track. If you're chasing somebody and you're even faster than them, it's hard to get by them. As we see Ethan Ebert work his way in, so that Honda entry is still running very strong. Well, actually, we've got some changes going on here. We've got lots of things going on. <laughs> you're going to love this. On adjusted time, Mario Fuentes goes into second overall in that the Class 1. That is awesome. One. That is awesome. And the plot thickens. Absolutely, <laughs> but we've also got some other news as well. Cole Potts makes his way up into fifth overall and first in the unlimited truck four-wheel drives, which actually puts him ahead of Ryan Arciero. And then just behind them is Ethan Eberts, who's having an absolute stormer in fifth place in unlimited truck and seventh overall. But this is great to see. Cole Potts doing a great job, obviously shrugging off what happened yesterday. He was qualifying, had a burner of a lap going, came in a little bit hot. Bicycle got up on two wheels and went over on his side. That's why he started without that hood this morning. But he's been on tear all day long. He did lose lose a tire, went back a ways, but now he's back on track. But Cole but, Potts know, is fast. I mean, we all know he's as fast as that. Well, and he runs everything. He runs in the Robbie Gordon Stadium Super Trucks. I mean, you put there, you know, as they say, there's no I in team, but there is a driver. And he is definitely a driver and definitely gets with us. So here we're seeing. And there's no current. substitute for seat time. No, zero, zero. So we're looking at our current leader, um, Adam Householder. And on the right, we see Cole Potts in the all-wheel drive. So um, two different trucks, two different classes, but both shooting for the same car. Potts is a four-wheel. Yep. Yep. Potts is a four-wheel. Well, he's got the Heisman car that used to belong to Bryce Menzies. Exactly. That is awesome to see Fuentes in second, doing so good. But also, let's keep an eye on Christian Serapis, who has done very very good and he was back quite you know back a little ways because he has to make time well didn't he start right next to or right very close to householder uh yeah literally within 30 seconds so he is actually sitting second physically so now he just has to bridge that gap and hope for a problem out of adam householder but as i said adam has stepped his program up across the board from prep to body prep to driving to everything he's been on a tear him and andrew uh, Myers did a great job. They had a, a multi-guy uh, team last year. I think Eric Carden as well for the Bond 1000. So very, very strong. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, that's Brett Kamensky yep. coming across the line there. That is the that no. is. So, yeah, th yes, it is. It is. Yes. Brett Kamensky, number 34, the Aussie, uh, getting it out there. But Cole Potts worked his way back up, and then Cole fell back, and then passed Kamensky. So um, Kamensky doing good and still solid, still running. But Cole Potts is out in front in the all-wheel drive, unlimited all-wheel drive. Yeah, so this is second place in the all-wheel drives right now. Only three entries in all-wheel drive. One of those being Jonathan Brenthal, who we haven't seen much of yet. Back to Adam Householder out front. Now, Adam Householder, I'm just looking here at his fastest lap. His fastest lap was a 138.34, which he got in the second lap in astonishing time. But uh, Ryan Arciero, though, is holding the fastest lap at the moment, which was his first lap with a 138.04. Well, it's anybody's guess when you start doing this. It looks like we're getting, we're starting to head our way up thumpers towards Gene Hurst because you can see how big those are. I mean, these are trophy truck. So do the math, people. That's yeah. a 40-inch tire, and look, it's, it looks small in, in those bumps, and this is where the driver does... Ooh, just filled the cab full a little bit, a little bit yeah. hard there, mistimed a little bit. But now notice he gets off to the right, trying to get up as, as high as he can. Once he gets going, now we're taking another look at Adam Householder. But he's taking the right lane, not the left lane. Now, this is interesting because this isn't just attrition on the car. This is attrition on the driver. It's really difficult to hold your concentration at this point. Well, and, and you're taking a beating, and you know that you still have, uh, he still has uh, 180 miles to go. But once again, I got to compliment him because I was talking to him before the thing. I said, you're looking good, buddy. And he says, 
down 40 pounds, feeling light, feeling strong. So um, he's definitely physically he's, he's in this because he's ran some races earlier this year. So he knows where he's at and he's doing all the right things. Yeah, absolutely. And he's got a young gun behind him who is super fit in himself, which is Christian Serapis. Did you know that Christian Serapis was on the USC track team? One of the fastest guys on the track team. Really? Yes. He was before that. It was in Portland. Yep. But just uh, it's pretty amazing. We're playing golf and having fun and he outran me. I tried to run him over <laughs> and he <laughs> ran away from me in my golf cart. Um, that was shortly before I got kicked out of the Fish Districts Golf Tournament for running over Todd from SDG. <laughs> but uh, we'll talk about that at another time. Back to how much of an athlete Christian Serapis is. <laughs> <laughs> The middle name is Gazelle. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, All righty, as we're watching these. That's Mike this Spindler. Ultra yeah, wa this Ultra Four as it works its way across the desert. We are going to step away to a billboard. You are watching the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. We'll be right back. The 2024 Mint 400 is brought to you by BF Goodrich Tires, title sponsor of the Mint 400. Find yourself off road and explore the BF Goodrich family of tires. Magnaflow, your source for everything exhaust. Camberg, number one in off road suspension. Rugged Radios, the official communications of the Mint 400. Stay connected and go further. Sylvania Off-Road, built for any adventure. Belching Beaver, the official craft beer of the Mint 400. The Belching Be Beaver Brewery brings damn good times. Okay, and welcome back to the 2024 Beer of Goodridge Mint 400 here in Prim Valley, Nevada, just outside of Sin City, Las Vegas. I'm Jim Marsden, and joining us in the booth is none other than Bob Bauer and, of course, Ricky Johnson. Guys, what a day of racing, and we're not, well, we're just over halfway. And we're watching uh, EJ Herbst as he works his way through Beer Bottle Pass. That is roughly uh, mile 73, 74, so you got to work your way through. This course is so diverse, Bob, is that you go from 100 and 150 yeah. miles across the dry lake bed to probably 35 to 20 in some of these corners. And this Beer Bottle Pass has cliffs. Yep. Ricky, I can't help but look out the window and say, I don't think I like this. Yeah, that's and where it's the marbly, too. That's where the co-driver has that, what you call it? Pucker factor. No, sphincter clinch. Sphincter clinch. Yeah, sphincter. <laughs> That's an official off-road racing phenomenon. There we go. And you can fold what we call it. Folding a dime. Yes. So, do you yeah, ever play butt darts? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm you not wanna? To, no, I do not. <laughs> so let's get back to EJ Herbst as he works his way through, through beer bottle pass. And now you can notice these 180s. You've got to be careful that you don't push out. You don't want to overdrive the entry. You want to keep it in the groove and just work your way through. You do, this is where you don't want to lose time, but you do not want to focus on trying to make time because too many bad things could happen. And a slippy slidey when you're going downhill. Slippy I never slide. Slippy slidey. We don't like that. You're going to write that one down? Yeah. Slippy slidey's good. We slippy like slippy slidey. slidey. <laughs> it's very good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, let's not go there, Bob. All right. All right. All right. Okay, as we continue with the action here, this is our current race leader. Now, he is the first person to go through the second split on the third lap. And here we have Kyle Jurgensen, your, your leader and also your pole sitter in the unlimited spec. So Kyle won this race two years ago in the unlimited class, and, and he was, there was so much that he had to do with, when it came to changing tires, then he had another problem um, that, that he had to work through. But obviously you can see that he's found the skid plate a little bit, knocked the front balance off the truck, but everything else looks really good. Really happy for him and all the guys at Camber. Yeah, absolutely. Now Carl Jurgensen has made his way up into first overall in unlimited truck spec as we expected but he is fifth overall on track right now on adjusted time so an amazing run here from kyle well and we talked about that that uh, the unlimited spec is a little bit softer on the rear gear a little bit easier on tires um but but kyle's one of those drivers as i said the way whatever it is he'll drive it and he'll figure it out and that's what i noticed is that he he takes it right to the edge he's probably the king 
at running 98.5 percent yeah that's the 4497 of mike spindler there one of the ultra four entries uh, entered under the uh, class one unlimited i believe they are here so guys notice that you see the little silk pockets those little ditches right there and those little soft pockets they get worse and worse as it goes because it has a hard edge and then it has a little silk pocket that gets blown away the last lap each one of those, I'm not joking, knocked the wind out of the driver and the co-driver. I, I literally had, when I was racing for Clyde Stacy, a co-driver crying, saying, please, please stop. And the thing is about those, those holes get deeper and deeper and deeper, and the side, the sky gets darker and darker exactly. and darker. You can't tell how deep it is when you're coming up to it. Yep, and here we have EJ Herbst as he works his way through Joshua Tree. You can see that the landscape is different. Now, if, we're, if you notice which way he's going, he's heading southwest, so he's going to be working his way around. But... Um, Kyle Jurgensen has a pretty hefty lead on him right now. So something's going to have to happen there for EJ to catch him. But EJ running very smooth, very fast, and doing, it, doing the job absolutely perfect. Okay, I've got some news here, gentlemen. Uh, Nick Whetstone has actually just gone through as the second car to get into the second segment um, out on track. Now, I thought that Nick Whetstone was behind Christian Sarapis. So that would suggest to me that he's managed to get past Christian Sarapis somewhere on track. Well, we have to see when you look on the tracker, has it updated yet? Here once again, we're watching EJ Herbs from the helicopter. So these are these are live shots put through the Starlink system. So we see go from in car, out of the car to the helicopter and all the other stuff, making off-road racing, I think as enjoyable for the fans as it is for the drivers. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, now I'm wondering, and now I'm just going to surmise here. I Go. think that uh, we saw Christian Serapis make his way through the main pit. I'm wondering if he's actually stopped at the uh, Gene Hurst pit to take on fuel, and that's where Nick Whetstone has made the move. Yeah, very well. I mean, it, we don't know. We saw Ryan Arciero stop there for quite a while, changing an alternator, and that's the report that we have. Now, here we see the Grabowskis. Now, Jack Grabowski is in. Troy has done his section. Now, Jack is in to, to run the second half of the race. Dustin Grabowski is there just in case he needs to get in, but I'm just going to tell you, you know, all these boys are very tough, very strong, very fast. And so, um, he, but the tough thing for Jack, he's just seeing this course for the first time. Ooh, that's a big ask. But physically, he's feeling great and obviously doing very well. Yeah, I mean, this car is one of the cars. I mean, he's literally only a few moments behind Carl Jurgensen. So it's a fantastic drive there. Yeah, I can tell you now that Troy Kowalski is actually in second place and sitting in sixth place overall right now and second in unlimited truck spec behind Carl Jurgensen, which is exactly where we expected him to be. And he's actually, he put down a faster lap than Carl Jurgensen on that last lap. Well, it's going to be it's going to be tight to see where they're at because when, it, when we talk about qualifying, yeah, it looks like Troy Grabowski at the moment is actually lapping faster than Carl Jurgensen, so that's very interesting indeed. Well, we want to clarify, Jack Grabowski, Troy's brother, is in the car right now, so um, he's going to be uh, fresher, a little bit younger, and yep. but he does not know where all the holes are. Um, so I don't know if they changed their co-driver. I'll reach out to Dustin and ask him if the co-driver has been the same. That way he can let them know what's coming up and where, the, where they marked everything. Yeah, so this is the Fox Proving Gas. Now, is that Christian Serap as we see there? I think that might well be. Hard to see. Well, we see a helicopter, so very well could be. Just that this angle makes it a little difficult. Yeah. Well, it's not Nick Whetstone, so it's got to be Christian Sar Yeah, that is Christian Serapis. Yep. Now, look at the dust in front of him. Now, Christian Serapis has actually just managed to go through, and he is ahead of Nick Whetstone on adjusted time. So it looks like Nick Whetstone has got past Christian Serapis, but Christian is still ahead of him on adjusted time. Well, the track positions everything when you're coming into the dust with all of this with all those uh, hazards off to the left to the right we want to welcome back into the booth Jim Beaver who went and had a quick lunch break um, but back to on as far as Christian Serapis and Whetstone um, position is everything you could be faster but when you get to the dust it's going to hold you back and then also all those rocks that are exposed uh, become they could be race enders 
And they don't care who they hit. No, they're, they're not biased to that. No, not at all. <laughs> no. But, but we do want to talk about uh, Mario, very Mario Fuentes, who's done a great job. And now with corrected time, sitting second overall, he's first in class one. Well, but maybe that wasn't Nick Firestone. That was a lapper. So we talked about that. Um, yeah, I think that might have been uh, Cole Johnson there in one of the other 4,400 unlimited entries. I think I just called Whetstone Firestone. <laughs> Curious soliciting sponsorship. I'm just, no, I just, throw, I just throw out whatever comes into my mind. Here we are Please. watching Ryan Arcier as he works his way to Thumpers. Now, is he going to stay in the left lane or the right lane? And this is I keep saying. This is where Jim Beaver says it's a lot rougher over there. As you can see, oh, wow, how hard he's got to work. But then once you get through there, so I, I'm going to say they're going to start timing him, try to time him like uh, like stadium jumps. And then once you get going, then you can get on top. But trying to just blitz them, there's such a big gap. But Ryan Arciero just hammered down. Yeah, if there was a guy that you, you were going to pick to take you through these, Ryan Arciero would be right at the top of that list. Truck very balanced, very smooth. You see how much more the, those rear wheels drop out from the front. Um, about double the travel. But you can certainly see the course getting tougher and tougher and rougher and rougher. Yes. Well, we saw Ryan Arciero on that first lap just charge through here. Yeah. And I got to tell you, he's not going quite as fast as he did on the first no. lap. No. And we, and we mentioned that, that the, the course gets so rough and it, it beats up the truck, the, the shaft speed on the shocks, everything, and just the little cups. What happens is where it's soft, it keeps breaking away, and where it's hard, it keeps it holds on tight. So that makes it a very, very rough ride for the drivers. Yeah, I'm just loving these in-car shots, though. Absolutely fantastic. And as you say, Ricky, his hands, they just look nice and soft and gentle on the wheel. He's not overworking everything. Well, you got to avoid the temptation to look right down in front of your truck. you got to keep your eyes all the way up top, like you're looking through a, like, like you're through a gun sight and look way out into the distance to keep yourself safe or straight so that uh, you can imagine right here's a couple of G-outs coming in. Fade to the right, and then he will be at the GNR's pit in about two minutes. It's one of those things where you have to use your peripheral vision to do your early, to do the foreground, but you're using your vision to actually look in and planning your moves far ahead, which is one of the reasons motorcycle riders make such great fast off road truck drivers because they have to look so far. Well, well and to, and to time, chime in what Ricky and Jim are talking about, you're going so fast that if there's a rock or something you got to make an adjustment for in the truck, if you're looking out in front of the truck, it's too late when you see it. You, yeah. You're looking on the horizon for yeah. just small, subtle differences that you can pick up, and then you can adjust the truck and the trajectory to, mi to, to miss it. Yeah, that's why it's so difficult to come into this sport and in um, only a short period of time learn to be fast. You might turn up in this sport and be fast for short periods of time, but to be consistent and then to get to the front, it takes, and I'm going to say, it takes years to learn your craft. I think that part of the reason that happens to folks is, is that they think they have to go fast. And I believe the way you win these desert races is actually not by going trying to go faster, it's by that less slow. Yeah, to a point. To a point. I mean, you want to go as slow as you, only as slow as you have to. And well, so, that, so that, that's the thing. So let's go back. We're watching Christian Serapis, who's in a position he's chasing, trying to chase down Adam Householder because when they started, they were very close together. So if it finished the way it is right now, which it's a long way from the finish, Adam Householder is going to be a winner with uh, uh, Christian Serapis in second. But we still have about 150 miles to go. Yeah, there's still a lot of racing to do here, that is for sure. And Christian Serapis, he's looking really good here right now, that's for sure. But we've got our tech expert, and he's back down in the pits, and that man is Brian Little. So let's check out and see what Brian's got for us. Brian, take it away. When I think reliable horsepower, I immediately think Chevy and their LS series of engines. We've used that power plant in Jeep, buggy, and classic truck builds. And it happens to also be the same engine that's being used in all the spec trucks racing today in the Mint 400. The difference is those racers will spend up to $20,000 or more having a reliable built LS engine made. So we are here with Jeff at Chevrolet Performance to talk to them about the engine package they just designed specifically for the brutal demands of off-road racing here at the Mint 400. Jeff, tell us a little bit about what you've created here. Well, we knew that, that a lot of this, the spec truck guys were using our LS3 525-based engine. It was initially a production-based engine, production parts, pistons, rods, rod bolts, that type of thing. Um, the engine builders over the years have, have 
developed some better pieces for those for this application. What we did at Chevrolet or what I did just recently in the last year is I took some other LS3 525 technology that we had from the circle track market that we've spent the last 10 years developing to be much more durable. We weren't after more horsepower, more torque, just that durability. So the engine builders have been doing that on their end, buying production and building from there. My idea was to come up with a sealed version of an upgraded engine with forged pistons, better rod bolts, a pinned SFI approved harmonic balancer, the upgraded timing dampener because they were having problems. That's just, I, I had it, there was a litany of issues with the stock stuff and we developed that upgraded on our circle track side. So I took that technology, moved it over to the off-road application, shopped it to the sanctioning bodies. Many of them called me and said, where the heck have you been all our lives? And, and now we're starting to sell it. It took eight months to get it to a production point, and now we have them readily available through our Chevrolet Performance Dealership Network. Nice. So, and, and like you talked about, we got better internals. I see forged pistons. You've changed the timing t chain guides. Tell me a little bit about the specs of this motor. So, so this motor is, again, it's a 376 cubic inch, 6.2 liter. It's still based on our LS3 430 horse base motor. The upgrades we've done, the biggest change to that was the ASA camshaft that we've had for years and years and years that we used in our Circle Track 525 and our LS376 525 hot rod crate motor. Um, we found that these pieces made a huge difference in durability, especially, like I said, on the circle track side. And we've sold thousands of these motors on the circle track side with no problems. Interesting. And then we were talking earlier, and you had mentioned that at some of the Chevrolet performance dealers and, and some of the partners that they're working with, there's actually a break-in procedure that are, that's offered for these engines before the customer ever gets the package. Can you talk about why you guys do that? Sure. So, so the engine itself is considered a race motor. General Motors has a hard time. We can't, I can't say we have a guarantee on it because that implies a lot. What we do have is a promise that this motor out of the crate will start up, will have good oil pressure, and not overheat. My recommendation to anybody that buys this motor, and I don't care where you buy it. I do have preferred people that I've worked with and helped develop this, but you can buy this engine anywhere. Any engine builder can buy from their existing dealer. I'm not trying to push it to any individual dealers. But those engine builders need to have a break-in procedure on an engine stand dyno. Putting it in a truck and trying to break it in on, on a, a chassis dyno, there's too many variables. So putting it on a, a stand dyno, running it in for at least an hour, computerized program so it goes through all the parameters, then that engine builder puts the intake on, seals the valve covers, seals the intake, changes the oil, checks the things that they need to check, gives it to the racer, the racer has it, ready to go racing. The whole idea there is if that motor fails, if there's a problem, if a rod bolt's loose or something's not right, that engine's going to fail on the dyno in that first hour. And, and I can then stand behind it. Once it's in the truck and running on the course, if something happens, chances are it was okay from my standpoint, from the build. Yeah, there's just no way to know at that point. I can't guarantee a tune, or I can't guarantee an application. I can tell them that, that we'll stand behind it to a certain point. That's really cool. So we know about the engine. I really like the break-in idea. The question that I know we all want to ask now is, how much does this package cost? So this engine... As you see, as a long block, sealed long block, MSRP is $10,400. There is a part number for this engine that, again, any Chevrolet performance dealer can order and sell. The going rate is a little less. MSRP is just that. The dyno prep should be, I mean, it could be anywhere from $500 to $1,000 is a reasonable number. But your baseline is, is just over $10,000 for this package. So a fraction of what some guys are paying right now. $10,000 pretty much 
that covers it. That, that is awesome. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you very much. So, and, and the one part that I really like being a racer is this, this engine is in stock. It's on the shelf. So you can contact your local Chevrolet performance dealer, order this engine, and get it right away, which is a huge advantage in between races when the timeline is tight. Now, if you're not out here racing the Mint 400 and you're in another series, like Jeff had said earlier, this is approved by all the major series. But I would recommend racing out here because one of the cool things about racing in the Unlimited Off-Road Series is that Chevrolet Performance is giving one of these engines away to the winner of the spec class at each one of the events this year. Now, if you are not a racer, don't worry. Chevrolet Performance sells versions of all of these engines that anybody that wants reliable, affordable horsepower can purchase. So if you are interested, visit your local Chevrolet Performance dealer to learn more. Back to you guys. Need a little help? We got help. Need some advice? We got advice. No matter what you need, we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it. Exceptional customer service. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. I got that right turn, we're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. I turn four. Oh, that's a good one, dude! Yeah, for sure, dog! Good, little driver, straight on through. Okay, welcome back to the 2024 Be of Goodridge Mint 400. Wow, what a day of racing it's been so far. We're just over halfway in the unlimited race, and what a day of racing it has been so far. 
Our current race leader is Adam Householder, and in second place in the Class 1s right now is Mario Fuentes. But I'm Jim Marsden, and sitting next to me is none other than Bob Bauer, Jim Beaver, and Brian Little. Gentlemen, how are we? Well, we're good. We are happy good. Well, I am uh, I'm excited, man. We've got an awesome race shaping up, uh, you know, what, uh, over the halfway point now, and uh, it's the big three. I had a nice lunch, no nap, and I'm back in a race. Uh, hey, well, <laughs> well, let me tell you about uh, having a nice lunch too. I had the opportunity yeah. to uh, walk out around uh, uh, around the festivities here in the yeah, festival, yeah. and this is packed. You talked about Fremont Street being packed. I think yeah. this is the biggest Mint 400 I've ever seen from a spectator standpoint out here at Prim. It's insane. It's like a village out here. And it's a smiling village. I saw happy, happy people everywhere we went. You know, in the crowd, you don't see people. Some people are kind of a little tense. Yeah. Oh. Well, as we continue here, we've got so much action going on on there. Now, we've got Brian Little, who's our technical expert, sitting in here. But, Brian, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Grabowskis, because we've got lots of driver changes going on and things like that. Now, we've seen uh, Troy was out there racing earlier, but now they put Jack into the car, but they've kept the same co-driver. How significant is that? Yeah, I mean, this was a really good move. The, the co-driver's been out for the first few laps. He's been there as the course degrades, and he understands where the things are changing. So as you bring that new driver in, he can immediately bring that guy up to speed so that they don't get in any danger. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the Grabowskis are sitting in second place at the moment in unlimited spec, right behind Carl Jurgerson, who is our current race leader in unlimited spec. So is, would you say that they now have the advantage, the Grabowskis, because they've got fresh flesh in that seat and they're going to be going at it hard? Or is Carl Jurgerson going to be having the advantage because he, let's be honest, he's the salty old sea dog of this world, isn't he? I mean, he's been there, seen it and done it. But will, the, you know, attrition be taking his toll on Carl? I mean, attrition always plays a factor. The, the thing Kyle's got on his side is, like you said, it's experience. He's tough. He knows what to do. So I would never count him out. But man, in, in long races, brutal races like this, it never hurts to have some fresh people in the car and, uh, and, and really have that energy to push for those last few laps. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I'm just going to quickly run through our top 10 as we're currently seeing it at the moment. In 10th position, uh, we've got Brett Kaminsky from out of Australia. In 9th, we've got Ethan Eberts. In 8th, we've got Ryan Arciero. Now, Ryan was our race leader for over a lap and a half, uh, but we saw him coming in with alternator problems. Cole Potts is now sitting in first position in the unlimited four-wheel drive and seventh overall. In sixth position overall is Troy Grabowski, who we're just talking about, who was in, actually in uh, second in unlimited spec in fifth overall and first in unlimited spec is Carl Jurgensen. then our pole sitter in fourth overall is Nick Whetstone and then just above him in third overall is Christian Serrapas second overall but first in class one is Mario Fuentes and our current race leader is a man who's been here before and that's Adam Householder Bob what are you thinking I'm thinking that uh, Householder is not thinking about the guys behind him. He's only looking forward, saying, "I'm going to hold my pace. If I don't mess it us, uh, if I don't mess this up, they can't get past me." Yeah, that is Adam Householder right now on screen. Yeah, and he's been in this position before. I think I think the big thing for him is he knows the pace. Yeah. But he's got to really watch the truck because this has bitten him before, where he's been in the lead like this, and it's just to get to the finish. But man, I. Well, you know, it's, there's it's that, that cloud that's hanging over every, everyone in this race. They know along about when the sun starts getting a little low, then the course turns even more wicked than it is. And nasty things happen, and they don't happen slowly. Yeah, this is Grabowski. So this is now going to be Jack Grabowski who's driving. It's almost like they're at the Mint 400 the last few years. There's been a dark cloud over being in that number one spot. Boy, yeah. yeah at it, this it, point it, in the race. Yeah, yep, yeah yep. it just feels like there's this dark cloud yeah. looming over that number one spot. Nobody wants to be there because it's just, it seems like it's its not if and the when there's going to be a problem. Yeah. I don't want to be as close as I am. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is really interesting for me. This is Mike Spindler. This is in one of the 4400 class cars. This is what we know as an Ultra 4 car. This is uh, here. It's an unlimited class one because it is a four-wheel drive vehicle but it's the pace difference that I find absolutely remarkable between these vehicles which we know are so oh so capable and the difference between these and the unlimited trucks and just look at the difference here as a car's coming up behind him right now well you know it looked to me like he wasn't racing it looked like he was surviving in that thing because those things are faster than what we just saw yeah no, I agree with that that looks like that is the uh, Camberg entry there yeah that yeah. is Jurgensen right now now he is currently leading in the unlimited spec, Carl Jurgensen made the move back to Camberg. 
and he's one of those drivers you were just saying a minute ago he has been there seen it and done it and just look how he reels in this 4400 class car now bob is it going to be a cooperative pass yes no. a little up top. well eventually they cooperate that was a very nice <laughs> yeah. i was going to say he did a really he did a really good job there with that yeah. much weight and that big of a truck you yeah. can uh, you that can do some damage that was a finesse he, tap. he didn't he didn't smash him he got up and touched him and then just accelerate a little bit so they know you're there and that, that was proper a race a etiquette. That, that's a veteran move right there. No, class Bad. act. Class act. It's kind of good to see, you know, yeah. because we tell people it happens. Nobody believes us. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's a, this is very dangerous. And uh, you have to be very respectful and very careful. And he just absolutely nailed that. So great work by Mike Spindler getting out of the way. But also amazing driving there from Carl Jurgensen. A cooperative pass. Well, it was in the end. It was in the end. They all <laughs> ended up being that way. <laughs> yeah, he was voluntold yeah, at that point. Nasty little whoop section here, and he is just pinned. Just short, choppy, choppy, sharp-edged whoops here all the way to the quarry. And you see that truck just dancing over him. Yeah, I'm just looking here at the adjusted time between Kyle Jurgensen and Troy Grabowski. And little moments of time like that, although it didn't look like much, but that would have cost Carl around about 10 seconds. Okay, now yeah. put that in perspective that Carl and Troy have been racing, or now Jack in the Grabowski car, have been racing for over 200 miles and there is literally less than a minute between them. So that 10 seconds is a massive amount of time. 10% of the distance. Indeed. Whoa. And that's what we always say in desert racing. You cannot give away those seconds. You've got to chase down absolutely every moment in time. And that's so true. So, so true. Beautiful. So beautiful this is coming shot. out across the lake bed. Now, Jim, what sort of speeds are they hitting across that lake bed? I mean, these unlimited trucks are capable of hitting over 150, aren't they? Yeah, you know, I know uh, Ricky had said he'd been in Ryan Arciero's truck at well over 150 miles an hour and was still climbing. Um, you know, most of the trucks now, you got to think later in the day, most of the good lines have been taken away. It's getting really loose. Uh, it's, you know, it's tougher to get those speeds, but you're still seeing an excess of 130 miles an hour. Wow. That's absolutely amazing, isn't it? But the other thing that I find remarkable is we've got near perfect race conditions. Yes, we've got dust, but nothing like the dust that we've seen in previous Mint 400s. If the wind stops, though, we're going to have a weird, weird looking sunset. <laughs> well, let's hope that the wind doesn't stop. and Let's hope this racing continues to be just as good as it is yeah. right now. Yeah, the section we're looking at right now is one of the roughest sections of the whole course you come off that dry lake bed and there's uh, all the way up to I think they call it chokers possibly but there's an absolute just deep nasty whoop section and you know Jimmy it's been my experience that everyone thinks it's the vehicle that takes the beating in those it's not it's the mental side of the driver it beats you down it beats you down there's that section there like i said you come off the dry lake and you take that left all the way to chokers and it is rough it's nasty it's one of those where it takes about five minutes to get through it maybe less but you just you strap in and you know this is going to be abusive on the body for the next four or five minutes and you just take a deep breath and you just get through it and you know there's there's it's in the it's southern nevada this place is notorious for buried big square rocks square edges you can't yeah. find them anywhere until you hit your tires and it's different than a mexico course you know mexico is high speed and logistics here you've got to survive some nasty stuff yeah as we're watching down through here just trying to stay honest now I have got some news. I'm showing Christian Serapis at zero mile an hour. Oh, oh, that's not good. And the hits keep on coming. Yeah, so it looks like Ron Arciero is going to be winding in Christian Serapis. Now, what's happened to Christian Serapis? Has he got a flat tire? We'll keep an eye on that. And I can also see that we have uh, Nick Whetstone stopped on track as well, just after the quarry section. So it's all change at the top once again. This is what wears me out, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> the tension, the anxiety of it all. I, and frankly, you know, you know who we are. This is the hard thing for us at this table. It's not rooting for someone you really care about because you care about every one of them. These are all friends, and it's almost like a puppy drive. Somebody has to lose. 
Well, and that's why at the beginning, you know, pick your winner. Well, I can give you about ten different guys yeah. I'd love to see win. It's it's yeah. tough, you know. Uh, it really is. And, and you know, these guys are their big, each other's biggest fans. They all want to win, but after the race, you know, win or lose, you're stoked to see your buddy excited. Oh, yeah. And that's when you start, you know, the, the real competition starts then is who tells their story first. <laughs> Now, this is our Sierra. Now, this is the man we need to keep an eye on. Now, this is Moynan Bob's favorite to win the race the first thing this morning. And this guy is not out of it. Now, we saw him stop for an alternator change. But we think he's going to be coming up on Christian Serapis. Now, we're in car. Now, this is live. Get your head around that. I've absolutely, I'm amazed by the technology that we're able to bring to bear here on this race. To Ryan R. Sierra. He'll be working hard here. You see, that was like some uh, spectators on the side of the track there. Well, you know, and Ryan, we talked about it. Uh, the storyline heading into this, you know, the, the one-off guys versus the guys chasing the points. Adam Householder, he's chasing this points championship. Yeah. You know, Ryan Arciero, he's he's here and he's he's in a one-off. He wants to win the mid 400. You know, Adam ha and and Ryan's in a position now. He's in second. He doesn't care about a podium finish. Ryan wants to win. He's going to drive this truck at 110 percent for the next lap and a half, trying to catch up to Adam Householder. Adam has one little issue. Ryan's going to pounce. He's gone. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to go at it. Check the records. I'm, I can tell you now though that uh, Adam Householder is pulling out some time on Ryan. Uh, Adam Householder is really on a charge right now. Well, he needs to, Jim. He, he needs to because if there is any little niggling problem, that's the only buffer he has. And with Serapis paused for a second, it sounds like he's also gaining a little bit over second there, and too. So we'll see. Down to, the, yeah. you know, down to the last laps where there's less time to, to re respond and do, be able to respond, be able to do anything about yeah, it. There's, a, there's an awful lot going on here right now. I mean, at the moment, Ryan Sierra is sitting in fourth position in Unlimited in eighth overall. So Ryan has really got to do some hard work here. He lost a lot of time. I'm just looking here. So Ryan Arciero's last lap was a 153, uh, whereas Adam Householder's was a 138. So he lost around about 15 minutes, and that's a lot of time to find on this course. Boy, oh boy, you're so great. I mean, that's still a lightning fast alternator change or whatever it was they well, did. I'm absolutely impressed at how quick they changed an alternator. Yeah, and it's not like it was cold and it was in the shop. They're no, in the no. desert. That thing's a million degrees. There's got to be some barbecued arms <laughs> in that pit by now. Yeah. yeah, and I can tell you that uh, I am showing Ryan Arciero having passed Christian Serapis on the tracker. Well, that's good. The camera didn't catch him, but the time here did. Yeah, I'm looking at that tracker, and that tracker is showing him is definitively passed. Yep. But Nick Whetstone is still stationary, so tough break there for Nick Whetstone. And it does look, just seeing, no, Christian Serapis is also still stationary. You're almost pleading the, uh, the tracker to uh, start moving again. Yeah, now, I believe our race leader is actually going through the Gonzo pit right now which is Adam Householder, which would put him at around about race mile 58 on this third lap. That's so 140 miles to go. Yeah, 58 of 95 mile lap. As we watch Ryan Arciero. And look at the crowds, Bob. So oh, many third people out there right now. And you have to book a spot for this. You can't just turn up and hold it down because it's so popular out there that you have to book your spot and make sure you can get out there so that you can spectate on this incredible race. There are so many fans, whether it be out on the racetrack, whether it be in Prim and in Fremont Street earlier this week. Incredible. Uh -huh. It did my heart good, you know, because it, it just said vitality, it said excitement, it said, it said life. That's Christian Serapis, and that means he's up and running again. What great news. Yeah, so Christian Serapis is uh, around about the race mile 43, and he'll be in hot pursuit now, so I'm guessing that it was a flat tire. Yeah, he looks like he's on pace, so it's definitely not a drivetrain issue at the moment. There's a, there's a, uh, a kiss of death, if ever I heard one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm knocking on wood. <laughs> I'm knocking on wood. <laughs> no, that is Ryan Arciero making his way down through there, through the whoop section. Just look at the pace. Ryan has a driving style that is just unmistakable, isn't it? Quick. Yes. 
quick, 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 quick. Uh, he's not an overly exuberant driver either. That's the thing. He's just I know. Very, Watch very the steering wheel right now. I mean, there's a ton of car control. He's not sawing on the thing. That's right. Total control. But, you know, here's a guy, and, uh, you know, I've said it before, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't realize. I mean, he, you know, his family obviously was involved with IndyCar. Ryan tested Toyota Atlantic IndyCars. Uh, you know, he went and did a lot of uh, stock car racing in the truck series. I think John Nelson had a truck series That's that uh, series. Ryan was uh, involved in for a long time. He's gone and, gone and done Dakar. He's driven a lot of different race vehicles, so he brings a different skill set to desert racing. He, he brings the genes, the RCRO genes to desert racing. I mean, you know, his his grandfather gave some drivers you might remember a little bit of a start. Guys named like Dan Gurney, guys like Mario Andretti. So if you want to understand about the Arcero family, you understand it's DNA. Well, Adam Householder is the first of our lead vehicles to break into sector three. Wow. Or sector four, should I say, as he makes his way around this third lap. Can I show a little more love to Ryan Arcero? <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. He, he not only drives well, but he is one of the greatest ambassadors of our yeah. sport for everybody, you know, and particularly for kids. He has an ability to take the time and make every one of them feel special and still get his job done. It's wonderful to watch. Well, and one thing I'll say about Ryan, and you know, obviously, we all highly, highly respect him, and I think yes. Ryan's a future off-road Hall of Famer. Yes. Um, but, you know, the way he carries himself, always in a collared shirt, he's dressed nice, he makes appearances, he does things the right way to present our sport in a way you know, that, that it needs to be presented to bring in non-endemic sponsors and different eyeballs. And that's one thing I've always appreciated is he's always aware of the optics of what he's bringing. To the An ambassador. Thing. Yeah. Professional. There he is. He's also a dad. <laughs> oh, look at this. Just look at the pace. Look at the, there was a moment there. I, I, I don't know if you even didn't notice it. The car just stepped out. He didn't do anything big. Just brought it back in again. And if you look at the GPS, he's doing all that at like 90 miles an hour. Yeah. And higher. But, and, you know, and I think there's two things here. You know, Brian had said, look at how he's driving. It's such a finesse. Light hands, not big movements. One, he has a driving style that's phenomenal. But two, this is a very well handling truck. Yeah, very well set up. Look at Travis in the seat next to him. His hands are just laying down there. You know, there's other times, ladies and gentlemen, when you see that co-driver's arms are all over the place doing balance things and <laughs> trying to stay in the seat. Life. Yeah, yeah. So really. That's, that's a bad day really as a navigator when that's happening. What this, I'm really enjoying about this is you can see that he's in third gear, and you can also watch the revs as well. And you're seeing what he's doing. Oh, that's awesome to watch. Right, this is EJ Hurst. And you can see the pace difference between those spec cars and the unlimited cars. Obviously a different part of the course. So he's pushing hard. You can see that the hood is still missing off of that car. We saw it stopped earlier. That spare tire still is jumping around in there. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about that. It, it, it's crazy. It's that been... ain't right. <laughs> well, well, it was actually Ryan Arcieros that we were watching earlier. But I think it's part of the design of these uh, particular vehicles. Yeah, it's kind of nice. That hoop gives you a little bit of room. It's just a soft drop that holds it in place. So as a navigator, you can pull that tire out really fast if things go wrong. And you can re-rack quickly yes. as well. Yes, yeah. But uh, so many of these vehicles, they'll actually be running uh, tire monitoring gauges. So they'll be at the, so if they start to get a flat tire, they will actually get a warning, an audible or a visual warning inside the cab. It's amazing how the technology has changed in these vehicles over the years. And that aspect really helps the strategy too, because you're looking at, okay, when's the next pit? You know what, I think we can run this to that. You save the few minutes from the tire change and you just let the pit crew take care of it. Yeah, absolutely. And let's give this man some love. This is Alex Wacker from Twisted Monkey Racing. As Ricky keeps saying, the man with really fantastic koozies. <laughs> he turned out King of Hammers, I must have been seven, eight years ago. And he had magnetic fridge koozies. He was handing them out like confetti. I think I still got at least two at home. Uh, you know, the one thing I learned is, is it doesn't take much to impress Ricky Johnson. <laughs> Magnet in a koozie, saying, and he'll well, talk you, about it for a decade. You tell me how, because I can't impress him. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a shot here at Thumpers. Uh, you got a drag race going. Looks like Trey Gibbs there in uh, the blue truck. Didn't get a glimpse of the other truck, but. Uh, 
it's almost a drag race there to the end, and they kind of Y back in together. So you want to be the guy that's got the uh, got the edge going into the Y. You don't want to be the one to get on the binders and get dusted out, just as we saw there. Man yeah, there's nothing. Angle. There is nothing worse than when you're working that hard and you're the guy that has to give right at the end. And that is Nick Eisenhower. We haven't heard much from Nick today. Obviously, no. he's uh, always a front runner here at the Mint, but. Just looking to see where he's at. Uh, I think he's a little bit off pace at the moment. We'll just see if I can find him. That looks like top 20. Nick Eisenhower is running 12th in class and 20th overall. Great guess there. You know, that's what's funny. There's so many of these unlimited spec trucks. You go, oh, 12th. Ah, oh, he's having a bad day. He's having a great day. That's there's 40 trucks in this class. I mean, I mean, let's let's just talk about that for a moment. In unlimited spec right now, we've got Carl Jurgensen leading now. Then in second position, we have got Jack Grabowski. Then in uh, third position, we've got Pat Gailey. Fourth is James Scully. Fifth is Adam Castaneda. Then in sixth is Trey Gibbs. In seventh is Thomas St. Peter. Then in eighth is E.J. Hurst. And ninth is Jordan Brentford. So, I mean, there's some real good stuff going on here right now. Some very, very good racing indeed. And Nick Eisenhower, we just saw, he is in 12th currently in class. So I'd suggest that he probably has had some issues out there, as I would normally expect him to be a little bit higher up. But, uh, and it does look like Conor McMullen has had a problem out on track as well. But uh, looks like the young man is probably his race is finished for the day. So tough break there for Conor McMullen. Shot there, Cole Potts, the all-wheel drive truck, or uh, unlimited all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive leader. Well, this is great. Uh, this is RJ. I'm back in the booth. Welcome back, Ricky. Thank you, thank How you, doing, Ricky. To put Brian on his way as we see the guys coming up to thumpers, we can see. Off to the right, carrying a little bit lower pace, but the guy on the left having to work really, really hard. Our right, his left, we're working much, much harder trying to get trying to get back up to back up to pace and get on it. That looks like one of the Brenthal, either Jordan or Jonathan, as we're going to see another. I see a pass here in just a moment. Yeah, that Brenthal truck looked like it was working really well. Yeah, I think that might be Jonathan Brenthal. Yeah, yeah. all-wheel drive. Yeah. And just look at the pace difference. Well, that's that's another thing where if you have the truck flat, like if you see, I'm pretty sure that's Jonathan, is that if those front wheels can bite on the top of each bump, that's definitely going to help them out. Which I think that's Jordan. I think that's Jordan in the in the spec truck. Yeah, it could work. Now, while you've been out, we've had yes. a bit of action, Ricky. Yes. Uh, we've seen Christian Serapis pull over onto the side of the track. Looks like he's had a flat tire, but he is back up and running again. And Nick Whetstone is also stationary on track. Still. I'm just trying to find out right now. No, he is back up and running again, so. Yeah, Nick Whetstone is back up and running, but he has given over some spaces, that's for sure. He's been passed by the Grabowskis, uh, by the uh, Carl Jurgensen as well. And Brett, his uh, fellow Australian, has managed to get by him. Now, do you reckon he flew him the bird out the window as he went by? <laughs> no, 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 no. What you're doing is, but this is great. Ryan Arciero has a has a good pace. He's relaxed. He's waving, and he realized the race is far from over. He he's at race mile um, 58, so he's about uh, two thirds of the way through the, this this uh, second lap. So he's got still got two more la a lap and a half to go. So a lot more racing, and as I said, the phys the physicality is going to definitely come into play. And so the guy that's done his homework and also doing the work during the day with the nutrition, hydration, is going to be very important. Yeah, and if you're just tuning in at home and wondering what's happened to the Ultra 4 cars that were entered, uh, particularly Casey Curry. Unfortunately uh, for him, he was broken on the side of the track at the beginning of lap one. And we've just got confirmation that Shannon Campbell is also out. He's had some suspension issues. So tough break there for the three-time king, Shannon Campbell. Yep, as well. All right, as we're watching uh, Ryan Arciero, who is now sitting, I think, fourth or fifth overall as he just gets his, works his way out of Gonzo Pit. We are going to step away for just a moment, but you are watching the 2024 Bia Goodrich Tires Mint 400. We'll be right back.
The BF Goodridge 2024 Mint 400 is brought to you by Monster Energy, unleash the beast. Rigid Industries, own the night. Vision Wheels, built to conquer. Cageworks, top quality UTV roll cages and accessories. Ibac Springs, springs, shocks and suspension, made in the USA and engineered to win. Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame for the off-road industry. Join today, legends live at ORMHOF.com. Welcome back to the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. As we are watching, I think that is Thor or EJ. I can't. I think. I think EJ is the only one left. Yeah, EJ is the uh, the lone, lone Herb standing. So that is EJ Herbs. He works his way up thumpers. We're headed back towards the Gene Hurst pit. Um, a lot has happened in the while I was away, but right now we want to focus on um, Adam Householder. He has done a great job. He, he made some made some calls. Looks like he had a flat early on. But other than that, it's been pretty much uh, business as usual for uh, for Adam. Yeah, he's definitely uh, Adam's just been on uh, kill mode. I mean, you know, relatively uh, clean race so far for Adam, and uh, you know, he's been the guy that uh, has somehow avoided uh, the major issues that the other guys have had, or you know, even the small issues. You know, we've had some uh, flat tires here and there, and Adam just continuing to charge and, and put time on the field, and uh, you know, that's what it takes at the mint, just to have clean lap after clean lap after clean lap, and not necessarily be the fastest guy, but be the guy that has the uh, you know the unoffend uneventful run yeah you know well, boring is good yeah <laughs> we're, we're, because you always you when you tell people uh, it's you know if you win it's the shortest story so jim how did you do the race i won yeah. but if it starts off with well i was leading and then i was da 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 then the next you know this the story gets longer and longer yeah, generally, uh, generally the winners don't have the crazy photos and things like that that happen after the race. Looks like we're gonna load a couple of a load of guests in here along with uh, Mr. Bob Bauer. All righty. Get them mic'd up here in a second. A uh, little uh, resident celebrity in the house, I think. Yep. So as we're watching the buggies work their way through. Um, once again, if you are just tuning into us, which we've been going at it all day long, this is the 2024 B of Goodrich Tires Mid 400. We are watching them through Joshua Tree, uh, mile marker 65. Um, but right now we want to bring in somebody who, is, who did something quite spectacular this year. Um, I was proud to say that I know her. I was proud that I'm American. But we have Sarah Price. Thank you, Bob Bauer, for bringing uh, this superstar in. Sarah, congratulations on the card. That was quite a feat. Um, how, did, how did that feel? Man, that car is something um, I really can't even describe it. It's just a whole nother animal. And you're over there in this, you know, Saudi Arabia. It's different country, different terrain. And you know, different rules, FIA, you know, is a very technical um, association we're racing with. And to get there is really expensive and not easy. And it takes a lot of work because obviously we're racing in a different way than we do here in America. We're using a road book. We're using, um, you know, cars that have all these restrictions on them. And it's just a different game, but it's a dream come true for me. Well, let me ask you a question. How much did, obviously you and Ricky are very close. Um, how much did his knowledge of that being a past winner there and everything were you guys able to work together to for you to learn to steepen up your learning curve oh most definitely and uh, you know that's something that actually was a, a great help because you know i'm close with johnny campbell and yep. that's a big mentor of uh ricky's and then we have the same trainer which is jimmy lewis and um without jimmy lewis and you know probably johnny's mentorship for me he kind of took me under his wing as well I would not be where I'm at, you know. I have access to a lot more than um, someone who's just starting up and doesn't know anyone. 
and to have Jimmy's expertise and do the training and put in the time, like I was out there in the middle of nowhere in the deserts, just trying to get lost to do whatever I can to be prepared for whatever I was going to get thrown at in Saudi at that car, because I had no idea. I was walking in the <laughs> unknown there. <laughs> well, you know, Sarah, the uh, the obvious is that you're the first American woman to win a stage at Dakar, and that's what everybody knows about, and because that's the news, and they've read it, and they've seen it, and you've posted it and everything else. There's a deeper story that I want to come out here. You set a goal for yourself long time before you achieved it, and you kept after it. And it wasn't easy because you are not a rich person. Yep. You had to earn every nickel, strategize every move. So would you tell us a little bit about what that journey entailed? Yeah, so I wanted to get to Dakar ever since 2015. And it took me this long to figure out how to do it, how to fund it. And honestly, when it came down to it, I had amazing partners in my corner but it also required a tremendous amount of funding that maybe partners couldn't completely cover for me, especially the first year. And, you know, I have to give a big shout out to BF Goodrich. They were my first big sponsor that came on and really believed in me and gave me that step to actually make this happen because I still funded half of it. And it was all my money that I worked hard over my lifetime to have. And I put towards it to take that risk on myself. Well. And I made sure. I did every single thing I could have done to be prepared to make use of that money that I put towards this. But it was a dream of mine and it was my top bucket list item is to get to Dakar. And now I added another thing. Now I want to go back and win Dakar. <laughs> well, at least you know where you're going. You can't hit a target you can't see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen to the U.S. Navy and maybe they can do some of that stuff. Yeah. I, I'm really proud of you. You know, everybody's talking about women in racing. And uh, I have this personal philosophy, and I think that you are exhibiting exactly what that is. People think our off-road racing is rough and tough and nasty, and we get our beat up, and yeah, we may get a little sore, but to win is mental. Yeah. And to survive and finish is mental. I've raced with a lot of women. I've run with St. Lynn St. James, we ran a mid 400 together, and a gal named Charlotte Corral who's passing sin. You know what my determination was? It takes brains to win races. Yep. Gender does not have brains. <laughs> Gender does not have brains. I wow. have to say. I don't even know. How to, <laughs> wow. All right, let me let me take a break here. We're watching. Let me let me step away from the gender uh, topic right now. We are watching the winner, the the guy leading the uh, men 400 right now, Adam Householder, as he works his way through Beer Bottle Pass. I do want to hear more about this, Bob. But <laughs> um, is it, let's talk. Let's take Sarah and put her in our suit as as a as a racer. You, you've been through this. You've seen all the, this area. What would it be like in a trophy truck to navigate your way through Beer Bottle Pass? Uh, in a trophy truck, I have to say it's tight, it's technical, and you don't want to make a mistake there because you are not getting out. Um, so I think it's it definitely have to have your smarts about you. And wheel placement, I think that's important. And also, I heard yesterday there was a huge bottleneck there. So yeah. in that sense, you know, you don't want to be in that situation. So maybe prepare a little bit ahead of time. But um yeah, beer bottle pass is not something you want to make a mistake on. Right there, we were also watching uh, Nick Whetstone as we see Adam Householder leading the race right now. He is out of beer bottle pass and back up to speed. So he is at race mile 75, working his way around. As Jim Beaver talks about, he's going to be going, he's going to be pacing right now. He's heading south, going around the mountains. He looks like he's catching some lap drivers. Um, and he'll work his way around this mountain back to the main pit. Um, sir. A driver at this point he's gone 300 miles the sun is starting to set a little bit and you know you still have 100 miles to go through what are you doing and what is your co-driver telling you and where are you at emotionally and physically right now if you're Adam's householder if you're Adam householder you know for me I honestly don't there's sometimes you know you get to a point where you get that little bit of a down fatigue but it's just a mental little like block and then you get back through it you know it's just those little moments where you're like oh man am I a little bit fatigued I don't know you got to kind of like check yourself but I think right now the course is also getting rougher yes and so that's something where he's probably just crossing his fingers and he's hoping nothing stupid happens like a lot of us are doing yeah. in that last lap and also paying attention to everything he possibly can to make sure no no mistakes happen. Well, and then, because I know for myself, I just have to constantly pull myself back. Like, I literally go, I, t I, I literally say, see every rock, see every turn, see every bump, every, see everything. Because I start what I call counting my money. You mean like, yeah. okay, well, I got to thank this person on the podium, and I, <laughs> I can't wait. I'm going to have this money. I can buy this, blah, blah, blah. So not that it goes that deep into it, but you're, 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 
counting your victory that's not there yet. And so I have to constantly keep pulling myself back. Now, you had a week to do that. Yeah. No, I had 15 days. No, I, but I'm, but I'm, but <laughs> it's 15 days. Right. <laughs> so, so how do you stay motivated for 15 days? Because especially they're wearing you, you, y'all down. You know, they got you up early, long transitions to get to your, you know, to get to the next starting point. So you're not. It's more than just an off-road race. And and for for you, getting up every morning mm-hmm. and going, okay, got to get up, got to put my face on, got to got to get out there and just take that beating. How hard was that? Um, you know, for me, the motivation was not a problem. I was very motivated every single day. Um, I think what they throw at you, they try to beat you down, but I was prepared to kind of go with the flow of that because I knew that was going to be the case. And was there days that were harder than other days? A hundred percent. And I think that is the tough thing about Dakar is that they are throwing these things at you and you have to be on point from the strategic part of it to the driver part of it. And you have to think about that while you're driving and also navigating and doing all these things. And, you know, I think when it comes down to it, it's you got to get through every day. You got to be consistent and you can't you are as good as you are on your worst day. And that is something um, Sean Beerman and actually Casey Curry, who's out there right now, um, shared advice with me before we went. And that's exactly true, because you have 14 days of racing and they say it's equivalent to a Baja 500 every single day. Exactly. Here's as we're watching Christian Serapis navigate his way back down. Um, He's headed towards um, I think he's already out of beer bottle pass and and heading down. But for you, you have a unique scenario. You and your guy are both there. And so I know that you want to be happy for him or concerned about him. And he wants to be concerned about you. How hard was that navigating you guys in a relationship? And you're both trying, you both have goals. You know, it's actually everyone, it's funny because they're like, oh, did you guys see each other much? I was like, we did not go to Dakar to hang out as a couple. No, no, I, <laughs> I, no, I, get, I get that. And I totally understand. You, you don't get to hang out as a couple. But in your mind, you, you don't you go, how'd Ricky do today? And oh, he's like, every how day. Did so, so you have that yeah. emotional stress on top of it because you're like, he was out in the front, and then you're coming back, and then yeah. you're hoping you, that you see him at the bivouac, and blah, 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 back yeah. and forth, and he's looking for you to come in. But obviously, you guys both navigated it very well, and however you balance that out, yeah. because you, you went in the stage, him winning overall, it, yeah. was, it had to be just unbelievable for both of you. Yeah, so when we came into it, we knew we were probably going to be on completely different schedules, so the bikes take off at, like, sometimes... 3 a.m. Yep. And then by the time they're getting in, like I might have not even started my special stage yet. Yeah. And so I'm getting in away later. So usually he's going to bed by the time I even come in. But actually on stage 10 um, is uh, the stage we both won together. The stage I won was yeah. the day he won too. So oh. that was pretty cool. So we guaranteed saw each other that day for the award ceremony to get our medal that night. But yeah, usually it's the first thing we both do is when we get done with our day doing our side of the racing is, you know, you check the stats and you want to know how each other did. Right. And I think, honestly, it was uh, it was pretty cool because it was comforting for both of us to know we're both there going through the same thing. And it was actually really cool because he opened a lot of the days because he was doing so good that yeah. the cars follow the bike lines. Right. And so then I would be asking him, I'm like, OK, so when you're going to the dune section, the heading was going to the right through him. And he goes, yeah, I didn't want to go through him. You see how many dunes there was? I went left. Yeah. And he completely just booked it left through like a valley and then came back on the heading. And I'm just like. So how did you even know? He goes, oh, I didn't totally know. And uh. I was like, well, we all follow you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Wait, you're, the, you're leading this train. So hopefully, and it's we've seen it happen where the lead bike gets everybody. You see them cruising around in, what do they call the, the camel grass or whatever? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Know, what, what, they're stuck in there going, we got to find our way out of here. Yeah. So that, that definitely can happen because everyone trusts that lead guy. Yeah. Yeah. And totally. And the bikes have it hard because they have to open and navigate. They have zero lines. But then we also have a different, um, you know, something else we're battling and that's the lines and the lines yeah. can get you more lost too. So everyone's like, you know, you probably don't need to know navigation because you can follow the lines. <laughs> yeah, you're like, right. uh, no, because <laughs> they can get you real lost too if you don't know what you're doing. Because everybody tries to outsmart the leader. Um, that was Christian Serapis. We were, we're taking a look from the helicopter cam at race mile 65. So they are going to start working their way back towards um, back towards the main pit with the final lap. Jim Beaver, uh, before I go back to Sarah, um, 
Jim, right now, it, it looks at this point kind of like a two-man race. Yeah. Oh, it definitely looks like a two-man race. Uh, you know, and I, I, as we've seen in the Mint 400 before, there's still a lot of racing left. We may be approaching the uh, three-quarter mark, but anything can happen at the Mint 400, especially on that last lap. We okay. haven't seen lap four yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a patient man, but so, I'm not that patient. No. Well, well but, I got a question let's for Let's talk you. about that class one car. The, What's the, that? There's still up there. Well, um, uh, Mario. Mario Fuentes is, is is sitting in, in third overall, but oh. he is running very, very strong in, in that class one car. Well, he hasn't had any issues um, that we know, know of. That we know of, but he's definitely been running strong. And I think, you know, I, I posed a question at the beginning of the day, and obviously we were talking about Connor McMullen. We weren't even talking about Mario. Yeah. But can a class one car overall the mid 400? And everybody was unanimous. We don't think so. Even Matt Martelli, we, I don't think so. And here we go. And uh, one going into lap number th four is possibly a factor. And you know, Rafael Navarro let us know that uh, this Jimco he's running in has all the latest, newest upgrades that they <laughs> have. He wanted to make sure we understood that. But it's showing itself. You can't fool the finish line. This young man seems to be doing just fine. Absolutely. Yeah, and watch David Bernstein as he navigates his way through the sand. Whoops, at race mile 49. Uh, still running very strong, but um, Christian Stropis has a great pace going, but Jim, I think you got a couple questions for Sarah. Well, I, I definitely want to talk. I, I mean, I've known Sarah for, a, I think, a decade now and probably one of my closest friends in the industry. We, it's one of those where we talk maybe once every couple <laughs> months, but when we do, it's just a binge talk. But mental toughness, I want to talk about mental toughness because you are a person, I know Bob kind of alluded to it too, but you, over the course of your career, going back to, I would say even like the Gazelles Rally, I mean, you bet on yourself. I don't know how many times. Mm -hmm. And you've put money up to bet on yourself because I'm going to bet on myself and I think it's going to pay me back double. And I've seen you do it there with Stadium Super Trucks. I mean, and it's always led to a bigger opportunity because you bet on yourself. Yeah. You know, and even this Dakar thing, I mean, how has that been? Because you are one of the most mentally tough race car drivers I've ever met. And you believe in yourself to such a high level that I've never seen before, and it just continues to pay off for you. Yeah, I know. I think it, when it comes to like mental toughness, I think it's just a matter of putting it in your head. You know, I remember actually I had this conversation um, with a racer, and he called me, and it was a big name racer, and he was like, "Hey, like, what do you think to do the Baja 1000 and do the Ironman?" I'm like, "What do you mean? Like, what do you do for training? What do you do for the diet and all this stuff?" And I was kind of like, "Just do it." Like, put it in your head, you're going to do it. And I call it a switch of the flip, but or the switch is flipped. And I just switch it, and it's just like, nothing's going to stop me. My arm could be falling off, but I'm going to finish, and I'm going to make it happen. And if you aren't willing to bet on yourself and put in that hard work to have the confidence to bet on yourself, why would anyone else? Wow. Wow, Sarah. <laughs> Mic drop right there. Yeah, <laughs> Mic drop. We're well, just like it. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's a message that we sure want to send out. That if you believe you can, you can. You don't have to start with a huge thing. You just have to have a huge dream and a huge heart. And that's exactly what Sarah that's Price has shown them. The whole uh, world. This, this started out as a Razor 900 in the Lucas Regional. 800. 800 with <laughs> her wrenching on her own thing. So to think she started out at some elite level, it didn't happen. Yeah, no. Well, we're proud to know her. She's shown us the way. <laughs> Ricky? All righty, sir, we want to thank you for coming by. Right now, we're going to step out to Brian Little, another great piece produced by him. Brian, take it away. I think tires are some of the most underrated and overlooked parts of a race car build, and that's because the BFG technology is so good that we just expect that they're going to last hundreds of miles in this brutal terrain, all while helping us corner, accelerate, and brake, and generally give the control that you would, you would only think is possible in a road car. So... I'm here with Jason, the motorsports director, to talk a little bit about that tech. Jason, tell us a little bit about the race tire, the technology, and kind of what you guys are doing out here this weekend. Yeah, For BF Goodrich, motorsports is critically important to, to the business. Uh, for us, we race in the desert to prove out technology and innovation. It is truly a test lab for us. It, what better way to prove out technology in the most grueling of domains, like the, the, the desert here in Las, outside of Las Vegas? Exactly, exactly. It is grueling. Uh, I and mean, we put these tires through the paces. So from the compound, the construction, we're learning here in the desert to translate that technology into our, our light truck tires that you can buy. Yeah, exactly. So, so like you're saying, I mean, these things are more than just rubber. There's a ton of tech going into the race tires. Now, how does what you guys do out here and what you learn out here translate to your passenger car uh, and truck tires like the new KO3? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we use the racing to 
learn and develop and innovate. So, for example, uh, we we use a core guard technology on our KR3 race tire, and that is the sidewall rubber technology, and that that translates directly to the KO3. We use that same KR3 technology in the sidewall of the KO3 to give you that confidence and that robustness and that toughness that the consumer wants out of a light truck tire. No, and it's an amazing product. And, and if I understand, it's not only good for off-road, but it's got a severe snow rating. Um, it's made for in a bunch of different sizes and really can handle any application. Does that sound about right? Yes, exactly. For, for the KO3, BF Goodrich improved the, the wear life, the traction of this uh, in, in snow and in mud, so it gives a consumer confidence amongst all the different terrains it may encounter. Yeah, and I mean, it looks pretty cool. So if you're looking for an off-road tire, you got to check out BFG, and this is just one more way how racing is affecting the automotive industry as a whole in a positive way. Back to you guys. All righty, well, welcome back. You're watching the BF Goodrich uh, Tires Mint 400. You're watching our leader, um, Adam Householder, as he navigates his way through the desert, um, having a great run so far. He should be coming down that sand watch that you talked about, Jim Beaver. If you notice, slightly downhill, nowhere near as choppy as going the other direction. No, I've been up that as you have, and I'll uh, tell you what, going up that sand wash for about 10 miles is uh, absolutely brutal on the drivetrain. And so we should be seeing him. He's about, he's already through Joshua Tree, and he's down around 85, so he should be coming up to the junction, and that is Christian Serapis, and we want to welcome back to the to the booth is Jim Marsden. Um, Jim, right now we're watching Christian Serapis, who has had a great run all day. Yeah, he has indeed. Now, we saw him stopped on track earlier on, but it looks like he's right back up on pace again and pushing hard. So great stuff from the young man. Well, another driver that's running that, that Geyser platform, and, that, and these trucks, they've ran so many between Abdali Lopez, Rob Mack, the list goes on and on. Bryce Menzies won the championship. And these trucks, I, I got to say, are probably some of the toughest that have ever come off the jig. Yeah, they're incredible things, and the history just goes back years and years. And the fact that you see people like Rob Mack, who is still using a platform, and how old is Rob's platform? It's over 15 years old now, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> got to be easily. Way, way older than that. Probably so, huh? Hey, right, mate, I was so, I was so hey, nappies. Rob Mack was able to text me yesterday. If you're listening to the show, tell me how old your truck is. <laughs> <laughs> your geyser truck. Now, this is Ryan Arciero. Easily identifiable. And I love these in-car shots. They're absolutely fantastic. Now, so come on then, Ricky. You're Ryan Arciero. What are you going to do? You, you, it's, it's everything right now. You can see that he's in that spot. He's not that far behind Householder because um, you can tell by the desert. This is Joshua Tree where he's working his way around that. He's heading south. You can see the shadows coming from the west and is off to the right and those unique Joshua Trees. So he has got to work his way and he's got to stay, stay strong, but he has to put pressure on Householder because remember, he, was started, he started in front of them. So he has to pass Arciero and Householder and then put time on them as well. So he has to just not make a mistake and then let the cards fall where they fall. And he has to have a truck that finishes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we're, I mean, we're still got a long ways oh. to go, 100 miles. And you could just see that chatter, how hard that is on these vehicles, just back and forth, how the drivers are just getting the crud beat out of them, and lap after lap. And it's going to get worse with the last lap coming in. And the last lap, we've seen lead changes all the way down to four miles from the finish. Well, we saw Rob Mack and his teammate get into a scuffle about two miles from the finish. So anything can happen. The race is far from over, but uh, th th this course is getting rougher and rougher. But it's it's been a great racetrack all day long. Got well, we need to keep our eyes wide open because I think we're going to see Adam Householder in town any minute now. I'm seeing, you know, guys, I'm seeing the dust hanging now. This may be that sunset time where it just stays. All of a sudden, he's Bob Sprinkles. He's, he's the weatherman. He's going to tell us what's going on. <laughs> oh, Bob, you. you're such a great you're such a great host to be with. I just I love it. I, you make it you make it easy. Whether or not. You yeah. know. All yeah. right. This is EJ Herbst. As you can see, the in car they have the they have the hood off, so they did some work on that, and that's where they said, well, if we have to go back under the hood, sometimes it's best to just leave it off. Get it over with. All right, as we're watching EJ Herbst as he navigates his way through onto that, um, we have a little bit of time on that. So what, as we're watching EJ as he navigates his way back towards Beer Bottle Pass, he's back away from the overall leaders. 
But uh, we are going to be stepping away to a commercial break. You are watching the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. We will be right back. Bestoffroad.com. Offering the best off-road brands, best customer experience, best prices. Experience off-road retail re-engineered by bestoffroad.com. Stop by our booth in the Midway. Off-road advice is always free. Bestoffroad.com can help you create your ultimate off-road vehicle. Over 25 years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. Okay, we are back. This is the 2024 Beer of Goodrich Tires Mint 400. And that, Mr. Bob Bauer and Mr. Jim Beaver, is our current race leader. That is Terry, uh, sorry, Adam Householder. Sorry, Terry is his dad and is driving a spec class car. Not <laughs> the unlimited beast that we see in front of us. That is also, that's a 1-9 uh, Industries truck built by the Earth people. So uh, they're doing pretty good here. and. He's an identical truck in a lot of ways to the truck that's trying to beat him, which is Ryan Arciero. Yeah. 
He's just been in the air. If you're just joining us and you're just watching and you're wondering why is he not racing? <laughs> this is a speed control zone. They have to make their way down at a fixed speed through the pit lane. Now, is he going to stop and take on fuel? Is he going to stop and take on tires? What do you think he should do? Let's well, let's, let's let's fantasize. Well, here. I mean, he's got ten miles over the rest. He's going to do it, there. It may take a little longer than normal on this pit stop. They're going to do rear tires. They're going to do full fuel, and they're going to look every inch Everything. of this truck over because they have the extra time to spare. This is the Mint 400. He's got a 10 mile lead. They're going to take an extra 15 seconds to make sure the truck's on point because they want no issues on Interesting. Now they've just taken the front grill off. That would expose his lights, which I'm intrigued by there. Well, I think that's good planning. You're not coming back in the day in the daylight. We still got it'll be close. Yeah, it's going to be well, he's it's, got another hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, they're doing an hour 40. We may uh, now, just watching this, this, this is, is good. There's stuff going on in the back of the car, I think. Oh, they're, yeah, they're, they're all clear. They're looking so he's everything two over. Tier, two tires. He's stepping back now, stepping back. Okay, good. He's oh, yeah, no, that's a good stop. Good, clean stop. It's a good stop. They pulled, you know, like I said, they, I don't think it was going to set the world on fire, but they have the time to give. That's yeah. the smart thing. Uh, did you know the one thing I love about that was the body language of the pit crew? They weren't hurried. They weren't, you know, being stupid, making mistakes. They were just doing their job properly. Great stop there. And this is Mario Fuentes, I believe. Yep. Who's having a phenomenal race. Yeah, he's actually got, he's gone back down just a little bit. He's dropped back down to, uh, that is, oh no, that's the triple one car. But that is not Mario. That is Jay Reichert. Yeah, that's Jay Reichert. So uh, oh. yeah, no, Jay's a little bit further back on the pace. But uh, still doing nice. He's not quitting. And I'm looking at that road, guys, and I was, you know, that was pretty smooth yesterday. Here we go. So uh, this is Adam Householder. He is going to be crossing the line now to start his fourth and final lap here at the BF Goodridge 2024 yeah. Mint 400. Very easy off that jump. Yeah. He doesn't want any problems. 95 and one half mile left. <laughs> so what's he doing with this mile? He's being careful is what he's doing. <laughs> well, let's have a look at this now. This is a very interesting. That last lap was a one hour and 43 minutes, which is approximately, uh, that is five minutes slower than his fastest lap, which was his lap two. But he didn't I, I need to, I, but he didn't need to go and set the world alight. What he had to do was what he, exactly what he did, which is cross the line in first place with clear air in front of him. It's this is great interesting. Work here. Yeah, he's putting in a, a, a phenomenal race, and this lap four is going to be interesting. I mean, he's got a lot of time on second place. Um, Ten miles in desert racing is a lot. So, oh, it's, but it's, it's, I, I, I wonder. I don't think he's going to push the pace, but I wonder if he's going to kick it back a notch. I really don't know what his approach angle is going to be here, you know, because, you know, I guess the armchair quarterback in me says back it off. You just bring it home. But, you know, but you, you never car, know. You, 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 Jimmy, you've had, had this happen where someone says back it off and you do and then you're out of rhythm and then all of a sudden wham, yep. pow, yeah. something goes crazy. So staying in the rhythm, got you know, stick yeah. with what got you there. Yeah, and that, that's kind of where I'm going. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I know he's not going to take any chances for sure this lap, but it's not a qualifying lap. No, it most certainly is not a qualifying lap. And as we watch Adam Householder just making his way around, and he'll just be keeping it safe. I did like that when they undid the front grill just to expose those lights so they're not taking chances. They're not saying, hey, we're going to be back inside the light. They're, they're like, no, 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 we've got the firepower. Let's use it. And that's experience. Well, and the other thing is, is even when the sun isn't set, when you're on the back side of that mountain on the Joshua Tree, uh, Joshua it's, Tree it's Highway, dark. the shadows because of the mountain so tall, you're going to be in the dark before it's actually dark out because of the shadows. So even it, in beer bottle. Going yeah, down. even in bar, beer bottle pass. So there oh. might be the end of that last lap where he's in the light, but because of where the track is and that mountain, he may have to flip them on just to be safe. So 
We've got the vehicles coming up through Thumpers now, and joining us back in the booth is none other than Mr. Ricky Johnson. Hey, Ricky, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. We're going to be looking at a motorcycle piece in just a little bit as we watch this driver work his way through the Fox Proving Ground. But you were talking about lights, and to, to be honest, I hate it when the sun when the the sun is down, the sky is light, and the dark the ground is dark. I, it's really hard to navigate that, and with these shadows as deep as they are, and and and, and knowing. I remember there's a couple bad rocks here from the lab before. It, it, it looks, I mean, there's your chupacabra right there. He's coming out to get you. <laughs> so it makes it very difficult. So I agree, you know, they want to stay light. They want to do all that. But having that extra light, put some pop on that ground can definitely help you out. Yeah, and also, let's not forget, you've got the dust to play with. Yeah. What tends to happen as we get into these uh, longer evenings or as the evening draws on, yeah. the wind tends to die down, and that means the dust hangs heavy. And what does that mean? It means the light comes back at you. So it, that's a horrible situation. All righty, we're going to take a look right now at what happened throughout the day. A very special victory. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But we had motorcycles as well. This, they started at 7 o'clock this morning. You can see everybody's all bundled up. It's nice and cold. And the motorcycles started two, started the first two as two by two. This is they're going through the, the section where you're trying to not get a, a speeding penalty. But if you can get close enough to that other rider and make a pass as soon as they go back, they had to navigate their own course. They ran some of the truck course when they started out but as you notice the ruts are nowhere near as deep because it's a completely different this is a combination of what they ran yesterday and the sportsmen as well but we had all different kinds of motorcycles today jim beaver we had the guy we had the guy open pros we also had vintage and we also had a couple special vehicles out there yeah, I know we had uh, what some of the Harley uh, hooligans, right? Hooligans? Oh, the hooligans. Man. Yeah, it was uh, it was quite uh, quite a fun uh, fun. I don't know if you got to see. I got to see some of those bikes on uh, on Fremont Street, man, and they are a good time. Well, how can anything named hooligan be boring? <laughs> <laughs> it, it is never boring. But we had racers from all different walks of life, including some unbelievable champions that we're going to see in just a moment. But if you notice, it's more old school, Bob. This is what it was like when you were racing desert back when it was low travel, smaller tires, and not, I mean, they Farnelli Jones always had horsepower, but the, yeah. the courses down in Baja and the Mint weren't as rough as they are today, and that's what this motorcycle course was like. It's, the, you know, they were so rough back then that that extra inch and a half in the sidewall of squish, yep. that was suspension travel. And there you go. <laughs> Every little bit counts. As you can see, the different riders as they, as they navigated their way through, they were out there of a total just, you know, they weren't. They were just under 400 miles, but they were out there for over seven hours. And the team that put it together, go ahead, uh, Jim. Yeah, I was just looking at the classes. I mean, just for uh -oh. those sitting at home. So we had the pro. I was with the open pro motorcycle, the uh -oh. 200 to 300 pro motorcycle. That guy's uh, 200 we had the ladies pro pounds. motorcycle. Pardon? Look on the screen, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> check these out. I mean, that's yeah. a monkey bike, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's a little, that's a little Briggs and Strat with some some lights on the front. He's making it work. So definitely, he had his work cut out for him. He's having a good time. I don't know what he. I think he's got his lunch in that backpack. I, I was thinking <laughs> sleeping bag. I, if it was me, I would have had a six pack of beer. <laughs> could be, could be. As we said, as we had all ages, and we had the hooligans out there. That looks like one of the Harleys that is out and out on to, uh, to the right. So, but it was the. But it was the two, uh, the, the group of my neighbor, the guy that I give haircuts to, they were able to put it together. And that is Preston Camel on the left with a glorious mullet. That is his father and proud dad, Johnny Camel. I want to congratulate Faye Campbell, uh, Preston's mom as well. But you know that guy next to him putting that rock under there? That's Ricky Brabeck. So those two, <laughs> what a great moment. Ricky, Ricky won that. And then earlier, or just recently, Tiffany caught up with both of them. Thanks, guys. Down here with Ricky and Preston. Now, we're still figuring out everything. What we're going to try to do is make sure that you guys know exactly where you're at. But I do want to talk to you about both of your days. Of course, Ricky, you just brought the bike in. Walk me through your day. Yeah, you know, um, I don't even know him. But right after Dakar, uh, Preston asked me if I wanted to team up with him on the bike. And I, you know, yeah, said yeah. So here we are. We split up the duty today on the JCR Honda. And um, everything went well. You know, we did three laps and three laps. Uh, the fir my first lap, which would be the second lap of the Mint 400, was probably the smoothest lap. Uh, you know, the last lap I just did, I think the the whoops and holes multiplied in, in size and depth. But, uh, yeah, you know, I'm glad to get to the finish line. And, you know, Preston did a great job. So, you know, now we're going to sit around and see what the results do. But I think I think we did a good day. 
Awesome. And Preston, talking to you, we first saw you California 300 last year. You raced that. It was great to see everything. Now you're here, Mint 400. You and Ricky are teaming up. You took the first lap out there into the desert. The sun was rising. It was freezing this morning. Now you walk me through your day. Yeah, uh, the morning was a little cold, but not too bad. Had to fight the shadows a little bit, but the course was uh, more smooth. Um, yeah, the, the fifth lap was uh, way rougher than... Um, than the first one so yeah ricky had an even rougher course on the last one but yeah the jcr honda worked really well today and uh thank you to pro circuit for setting up a bike for uh that worked for both me and ricky so uh thank you very much and yeah it was good awesome well like i said we're still figuring out everything just want to say though big congratulations to the both of you crossing first finishing the min 400 on two wheels is a feat in itself and ricky you were here the first time we brought bikes back it's probably got to feel great to be back here and of course with a great teammate back up to you guys okay right well thank you very much tiffany now we always like to see the motorcycles here that's for sure but this is big news that is christian serapis and Serapis has, or it looks like he's taken fuel. He's almost certainly will have taken on a couple of tires as well. And he's currently sitting in second place behind Adam Householder. Well, and that, you can see that he's got the new clean tires on there, got fuel, so he is ready to take it all the way to the finish. I do want to finish with a couple words about Preston Campbell that, I, that I've been so impressed with. I mean, this young man t took a huge injury about a year ago, or actually a year and a half ago, that was uh, really, really scary for the whole family. He was... He was uh, really took him down for a while but he's fought his way back johnny johnny campbell is one of those uh, as a father that said if you want to do it you got to work on your own bikes as we're watching i'm going to jump back here to him in a moment but this is ryan arciero as he's in the pit which i see them looking are they going to take the hood back off if so that is not a good sign but they, uh, they could just be there. Back to back to Christian Serapis as he works his way through. But once again, I want to congratulate Ricky Brabeck and Preston Campbell for an unbelievable feat. Also want to congratulate Johnny Campbell and Faye Campbell for uh, for their son who did so well today. So awesome. And I also want to throw it out there to his sister, Paris. There we go. That's all I got to say about that motorcycle. Those motorcycle guys, they are studs. <laughs> so here we go. This is Christian Serapis. Oh, look at this. We've got some action here. Somebody wants to get around. Go a little ahead. bumping go and ahead. banging there. There we go. Yeah. Two toots, two taps, wow. two we tons. Have a, and oh. we have a jackrabbit, ladies jack and gentlemen. Rabbit. Oh, oh, man, this. watch this. This yes. is going to be wicked. Now, here comes Christian as he crosses the line. We're going to see a little flames. Poofy. Pop. No nope, flames. one more lap to go. No fire, just for the leader. So right now he is sitting physically second and on corrected time second. So he just has to put his best lap together, stay in his own head, and then whatever happens, happens. But whatever whatever does happen, he can be very proud of himself. So can Steve. They've done a great job all day long. Right, I'm just showing this. Uh, Ryan Arciero has just crossed the line as well. Uh, Ryan is now sitting in third position. Now, just put this in perspective. The last lap for Christian Serapis was a 148. The last lap for Ryan Arciero was a 141, which is actually a minute or a minute 10 seconds faster than Adam Householder's last lap. Well, but now he has to navigate his way around Christian, and then he has to also catch Adam and then put time on him as well. So um, Ryan just has to stay in his own head drive his own race and then let the cars fall where they may um and all these all three of these guys and everybody else out there have, have done a great job navigating this this course and you heard ricky brabeck who is i think one of the toughest human beings out there winner from dakar just saying how much rougher it got each lap yeah absolutely and well this course we know it's tough this year it's washed out as well there's been a lot of rain out here that's exposed a lot of the rocks so now you're Ryan Arciero, Bob. What are you going to do? How are you going to put this together? You know you've got to try and fight 10 minutes in 100 miles. Is it possible? You can put on your short course mentality and drive with your desert savvy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think uh, Ryan, he looks like he's about 20 seconds back, 20, 30 seconds back at Christian Serapis. So uh, he's, like we said, he's, he's got to deal with Christian Serapis first. And Christian's, he's bringing his A game today, no, too. So yeah. it's not going to be an easy task for Ryan to get around Christian. Well, first he has to catch him. Then he's got to get close enough to bump him. And then as we're watching Adam Householder as he enters onto the tri lake bed, and this is where he's got that Gibbs motor. He's going to be breaching 150 miles an hour-ish. 
Okay, so I don't want to get beat up too much, but yes, these trucks run that hard. And you can see how hard the, the, the dry lake bed is, so his top mile an hour is going to be way up there. The interesting thing for me about this is the dust he's putting up, and there doesn't seem to be the wind taking it away right now. No, but it's there is so much going on in a driver's head at this point. All the gremlins <laughs> and everything that's going on, and so he just has to stay focused. But the good news for Adam Householder is he's been he's already done a couple races this year. Also finished very strong last year with Andrew Myers in in the in the Baja in the Baja 1000. So EJ Herbst? Yeah, this is EJ. Oh, no, this is Tim Herbst. This is Pat Dean, correct? Is this car 19 again? Yes, it is. So so evidently, okay. whatever the problem was, if there was a rear end or something like that, they made that change, and he is back on track. Okay, There's now a whole this lot is... of never quitting those guys. Mm. This is great. Now, I, uh, should I say it? I'm going to say it. Go uh, ahead. Uh, they didn't follow course to get back to the pit. Well, just saying. I don't know how that sits with things, but good point. Well, this could just be a testing a exercise. A, now, rally, rally finish. Grand Prix, you mean? Grand Prix finish. Ah, uh, fair point. So, and there's a good chance that if he legally got the truck back there, that if he keeps going, that. Uh, but they might, I don't know that. that that's going to be an official, Rick, official Ricky, call. Ricky, explain to our viewers what you meant by, by that. Because there's, there's a lot that you just said that right. is, is real. So people, like what Jim was insinuating or, or saying, <laughs> that, he, that he trailered back to this point, then getting back on there. But if he got cleared and towed off by, by an official vehicle, and then they put him on the trailer and did that. No, we, so saw, we actually saw him drive back, but off course. He yeah. drove into so, the Gonzo pit, but he went off course to get there. So, access road. so my question is, though, if he took the access road, went back to the pit, fixed it, went back on the same access road, got back on the track, yeah. and came around, That's, he's okay. He he's might be a lap down. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. gold doing that. So you're, you're fine if you actually do that. We don't know because he's been off the grid for quite a while. Yeah, that's very true. So. But the, the great news is that he's back running. And, yes. I, and, I, and, they're, and they're ready to go. While they fix whatever they fix, they said, put the lights on. We're going to be finishing yeah. in the dark. We're going to need some lights. <laughs> So and, that, and this is what I, this is what I love about the the Herbs family, is that a lot of people would just be like a spoiled kid. They yeah. take their ball. I'm going home. Yeah. But not Tim Herbs. You know, he's like, get that thing ready to go, and then we're gonna. You know, I'm I'm just gonna keep so, driving. So here's a here's a question, and I'm posing it because I don't know. Yeah. All right. But. Um, you know, obviously the truck, they don't have a shot at a win. They're not running for a points championship. Thor is out of the race. Would Tim have put his son in the truck to get experience in an unlimited truck? What? Well, I'm waiting for my phone to blow up. But some, that, that's what I'm going, because to me this doesn't make sense for them unless they're putting Thor in there to go and get experience in an unlimited truck. That's yeah. a good point. You know, you know they're using the time for some benefit. Yeah, I mean, and it's so not accidental. To me, yeah. you know, race conditions, put the kid in there for a lap. Let him see what he can do. Yeah. Dude, okay, does everyone remember what Casey Curry said? That I was trying to get 1,000 miles out of my out of my car. So what may, maybe what they're trying to do is is also run over 1,000 miles on a motor to check and do testing. So yeah. why, why not why not go out there and put laps in? Or yeah. maybe yep. it's a third driver that's in there. I mean, we're only speculating, yeah. so I guarantee we're getting yelled at by everybody <laughs> on the Internet because they, they know and we don't as we watch Ethan Ebert as he works his way back off. But once again, a great drive by this young driver. Oh, yeah. Indeed. And I've got some more news. Mario Fuentes is stopped on course. Oh, oh. So, uh, so, yeah, the car 179, he stopped at um, race mile 74, approximately. So I'll bring that's you more a, on that's that a as tough, I find out. tough one for him. Uh, Had a phenomenal run going. Got quite a lot of traffic coming into town now. Man, look at how deep the berms are. That's the roost <laughs> off the front tire. And this course is getting brutal. And as, we, as you remember last year when we saw... Adam Householder and uh, Eric Harden. I mean, they were just noodles as you pulled them out of the truck. <laughs> and I don't think that's going to be any different today. Even though, you know, we've been talking and praising Adam Householder on his fitness and what he's doing, this is a long time to stay in the game mentally and physically. 
That's a long time to stay watching, never mind driving. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> driving. Congratulations, everybody at home. You're doing great. Driving <laughs> is easy. This sitting in the booth, man, it's tough <laughs> I, stuff. I think that's Cole Johnson uh, we just saw there in a, one of the 4400 class cars. And look at how he's how he's pounding through and how the, the, the skid plate is grabbing and that that's with 40 inch tires back to Ethan Ebert as he works his way around that uh, on his missing a rear tire a rear fender but uh, two uh, rear fenders now he wanted to uh, I'm not make sure he's even either side I'm not casting any stones because <laughs> I I've ripped off plenty of body work. <laughs> yeah. well, if, you, if you're an off road racer and you haven't ripped off plenty of body work yeah you're probably not an off road racer. Yeah. How many bodies do you go through in a short course weekend, Ricky? Ooh, typically two. <laughs> There's two races, so I, I, I go through two. One per race? Yeah. If it's it's a good day, if you if you use up more front fenders than back fenders, that means you're you're the one, you're the hammer, not the nail. But racing with guys like Johnny Greaves and Robin Cackren and those guys, a lot of times your back fenders are a little bit bumped up. <laughs> All right, this is the driver just leaving the Gonzo pits. He's gonna. And uh, this is obviously race mile 57.5. You can see that sign. up there. there this is by Eisenhower. Belching Beaver. It is. The Eisenhower brothers. Oh, that man. high revving 180 degree header sounds so great. If you get a chance, check out their YouTube channel because their dialogue back and forth between the co-driver and, and the driver is unbelievably funny. It's a scream. Well, if you're just joining us at home, welcome. This is the 2024 BF Goodrid Mid 400. We are just outside of Sin City, Las Vegas, at Prim Valley, Nevada. And what a day of racing it's been so far. Yesterday, we had the limited class races, which was won by none other than Ronnie Anderson. But today, it's all about the unlimited races as we watch Ethan Eberts making his way into the main pit. He's just coming in, and this will be to complete his third lap. He just keeps clicking. Oh, look at this! The There's Cole right Potts. Behind Potts, dude. This is good. Yep. Yeah. So this is Cole Potts. Now Cole Potts is our highest-placed all-wheel-drive vehicle, driving the Heisman chassis. Now you might be wondering why he's missing the hood, or the bonnet, as we like to call it at home. <laughs> That's because, unfortunately, he had a rollover during qualifying yesterday, put him right at the back of the grid in the unlimited class. But I gotta be honest, this is great for Cole as a driver. Even though he made the mistake yesterday and overdrove that corner and went on his lid, um, today he stayed within his means, driving good. And that's what a driver needs when you keep having, I keep, I'm snake bit, I have trouble yeah. all the time. Now he's pushing it through. For him to see this finish line, I think it's gonna evolve him as a driver. Yes. It's yes. that mental game. You gotta get through the funk, you know, and it's you immediately get yourself down and you gotta just continue to push through. And speaking of pushing, this is Ryan Arciero, and look at the pace, gentlemen. This is charge mode. I mean, Ryan is charging right now. <laughs> well, he has to. Yeah, I mean, that's where I think Bob said it best, have short course, what would you say, short course? Short course mentality. With a desert savvy. With a desert, desert savvy. savvy. There you go. See, I remembered Bob, even if he didn't. I I'm glad you did. You're, you're not as old as I am, so I, I got <laughs> you know, It's interesting to watch Ryan. You know, the co-driver's got the uh, sun visor down. Ryan had it down going into the sun. Then he's flipping it up when he goes around a corner uh, when he's not facing the sun. And uh, it's just amazing to watch the way he works inside the cab. Yeah, what? he'll be pushing his eyes wide open now. Well, and, and trying the to reason get everything. And the, uh, sorry to interrupt, Jim, but no, the reason that, that he's doing that is so that he can see further out. Because when he goes down through the dips and stuff like that, you're looking up really high, as far out as you possibly can. And that gives you some comfort as we're watching Cole Potts starting his fourth lap. So great job for Cole Potts. Um, as we said, he lost that hood in a rollover yesterday. But the truck seems to be in great condition as he charges off. Yes, yeah, so Cole Potts is fourth overall right now and first in the all-wheel drive class. Now, the interesting thing about this is we haven't seen that many all-wheel drive cars ever finish this race. Yeah, that's a fact, huh? No, it, it's because it's rough in a different way. It's fast and rough. Which King of the Hammers is kind of a slow and rough. Bigger rocks, bigger bigger this, bigger that. But we saw what happened to Shannon Campbell shocks. Um, obviously, a very tried and true machine. 
But here, you're hitting it at such velocity and so much speed, and there's no give. Well, I mean, that's it's not a, sand. Yeah, that's actually a new machine for Shannon that yeah. was uh, launched at uh, Hammers. So this is a this is a shakedown for him. But he was shaking it down there, so it's already <laughs> been through a race, but we saw us ripping the, ripping the shocks apart as we watch um, Adam Householder as he works his way back to Thumper. So on a, on a tear right now. Yeah, now, just imagine how dug out this is as they make their way through. But I've got to say, the car looks good as it comes through here. Uh, oh, sorry, Adam, I should never have said that. <laughs> yeah. I'll What's take it back. This banana? thing looks terrible. Uh, I'm just going to leave the booth now. Uh, <laughs> go check for a butt dial. He's continuing to stick with that left-hand lane up through thumpers. Well, and, and this drone shot is unbelievable, Jim Beavers. And you said he's just he outrunning it. He, he took his time. He got through the first section, and then he picked up his pace. So right now, Adam Houseworth is connected. That that car, he's wearing it like a like a tight pair of shoes. Yeah, and this is Ethan Ebert. Now, what a run this young man's having, running the only V6 in the field. And right now, he's sitting in fourth in unlimited truck and fifth overall. Now, if you told him that first thing this morning, I think he'd have taken that for sure. So this is the Honda HRC car. So it has a V6 with twin turbo setup. Now what transmission is this car running? I'm I pretty it's sure. A gearbox. Yeah, I, I think it's a Fortin, but I could be wrong. I, I'm pretty sure he's got a five or six speed so that you can keep the RPMs really close. I, I know that he doesn't have uh, uh, Turbo 400, but I'm not sure what brand of uh, sequential he has yeah. in, in that vehicle. And that'll be a fluid clutch again using a uh, now, if you watch, watch how much it, it bottoms down. So, so the back shocks, he's got a full fuel load, and as that burns off, it's going to be a little bit lighter. That thing is, it looks like it's a little bit tired in the back. Watch, watch how quick. See how the, see how the bottom? It's almost slapping. It's slapping the bottom down. So um, if I were them, if we're only going 100 miles, I don't know if I would do a full load of fuel. So it looks like uh, Ethan's having to work really hard, but as he lands, it's going straight through the travel, which understandably i mean how much has that thing have taken a beating all day long but that looks like something that he's having to work extra hard because it is uh, pushing quite a bit yeah it looks like he's spraying our drone there as well <laughs> <laughs> Put all camera guys to work well as, we, as we're watching this I want to throw a couple shout outs to sponsors with bf goodrich tires fox shocks rugged radios rigid industries ibox springs king shocks Dirty Life Wheels, Race Line Wheels, as well as Recup Republic Services, Shreddy Life, also the City of Las Vegas, Dofo Winery. I want to thank those guys and also Fremont Street East. Yeah, so that's someone having a tough day at the office. Is that one of the Brentwood cars? I think it is. Looks like it. Yeah. Not sure if that's Jonathan or Jordan. No, that's a different truck because it's, it's, it's got the bright uh, yellow wheels. We can't quite see who that is. But as you can see, you're out there. You feel like you're on the on the face of the moon. And you're like, is anybody ever going to come help me? And then the next thing you know, here you go. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Look at the holes. Is he, he bit deep here? Mr. Fox? That was Mike, that was Mike Fry. Fry that was on the side of the course. This looks like, yes, it is. Hold on. No, I, I took it back. I thought that was no, Carl Jurgensen. No, that is Sid Matilla. So we saw him stationary earlier on. So great to see yeah. Sid back up and running again. Now he qualified really well. Yeah, he had a really strong run in qualifying. Now that sun is getting bright in the dust. It's, getting, it's falling down on the west side. So it, this is going to be the difficult. Here we see Jack Grabowski as he pulls in his way into the main pit. Probably going to take on uh, some fuel, possibly tires, and then back on route. So we have a great race going between him and Kyle Jurgensen. We'll have to catch up with where Kyle is on the track at this moment. But uh, the Grabowski, the brothers, do an awesome job right now. Yeah, here comes the Grabowskis. So there's a certain person in the booth that thinks that they intentionally lose their back tires so the wing works better, which <laughs> it could be. I, I don't know that to be true. Well, I just, I'm just saying that their rear fenders <laughs> seem to fall off an awful well, lot. That's all I'm saying. I, I mean, I used to know of a, a guy that uh, was from Hawaii who ran a uh, 
unlimited truck, and yep. uh, he used to purposely lose the front clip about two miles into the so race he so he could see, see better. Yep. So change the sport. <laughs> yeah, well, amazing. there ended up being rules put into place because of it, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, off-road racers uh, always like to push the envelope. It means uh, losing body panels they have no problem with. And they get some amazing things done one time. Look at our Sierras and look at uh, yeah, what, with what Miller. Don Tevy did with that fueling routine in, in Trinidad. All righty, as we are watching, this looks like Kyle Jurgensen, the leader of our un limited spec truck so we saw Grabowski coming into the pits and this is Kyle Jurgensen so he is not that far out in front so we're going to step away to a billboard as you're watching the leader of the mint 400 in the unlimited spec class Kyle Jurgensen we will be right back the four BF Goodridge mint 400 is brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts, your professional parts people. The Beast Unleashed, flavors you know, brewed hard at 6.0 yeah percent. King Shocks, the leader in off-road shock technology. Best off-road, best customer experience, best off-road brands, best prices. Experienced off-road retail, re-engineered by bestoffroad.com. Dirty Life. Dirty Life Race Wheels, conquer the dirt. VP Racing Fuels, the official fuel provider of the Mint 400. VP Racing, the brand that you can trust for performance race fuels, lubricants, coolants, additives, and so much more. Amsoil, engineered for what you drive. Order now at amsoil.com. Alrighty, as we are watching, I think this is EJ Herbst as he navigates his way through Beer Bottle Pass. Very tight, now even more technical, Jim Beaver, as these shadows get long. I think that's Tim Herbst. Oh. Because this is up in Beer Bottle, we've seen going through our main pit earlier. And I don't think we've seen EJ come back through main. So I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you off there and say that this no. is Tim. So, right. so if it is but Tim... there's no hood. In that case, I eat my shorts. <laughs> Ah, God. another W, <laughs> top qualifier under, under under four minutes. But no, but that, I just figured when we looked at when Tim left the main pit that uh, he had his hood on and the light bar. So I was yeah, cheating and I noticed that from, from a distance. I thank my I'll optometrist just, for I'll making my prescription very, here. very nicely. But once again, <laughs> this is EJ Herbst as he navigates his way back towards that. So after beer bottle pass, that is roughly uh, mile 75, so he's on his way back towards the main pit. Okay, got some news here as well. Carl yep. Jurgensen has crossed the line to complete his third lap and has made his way out. And he has moved up into third overall. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Huh. But what's even more incredible is just behind him is Jack Grabowski, who's in second place and fourth overall. Right, so neither of those drivers can, can flinch right now. But look at him. Top, top third and fourth overall is unbelievable. But we talked about attrition is, is important, but they are driving the wheels off that. They are, are probably uh, completely flat the majority of the time. Yeah, just looking at their times right now. So Carl Jurgensen's uh, last lap was a 1.44, and, and Jack Grabowski's was a 1.43. Um, so about a minute splitting them at the moment. And just to give you some ideas, so Carl Jerkinson's fastest lap is a 142.57 um, against Adam Householder, who was running a 138.34. So about two and a half minute difference there. Yeah, but that's not that much with as much horsepower <laughs> as, as Householder Exactly. Has. And also he was in clear air a lot, where you saw Kyle Jerkinson have to work his way through because they started further back. So... Uh, also remember, Kyle Jurgensen has won this race in the open class, so he he knows his way around. And knows yeah. how to win. Yes. And we were talking about this earlier. This race is mostly run at between sort of 60 and 70 mile an hour. Yeah, very, very fast. And, and as I said, I think now is the toughest time of the day, uh, trying to navigate the shadows and the dust. Yeah, I was a driver either liked to light or I liked it dark, but that yeah. in between, I didn't like it all. No, I don't know if anybody's a big fan of that. Like some, some guys say it. Then they would rather race at night. 
I disagree. Now, if I have clean, you know, clean air, no dust and stuff like that, it doesn't bother me. But if you have even the slightest bit of wind and dust, that light hits that sand speckles and it gets all over. It's all the place. I'm one of those guys that likes it at night, Ricky. Yes. Yeah, I'm a weirdo as well. I like it at night. This looks like it. This is Christian Serapis as he works his way through thumpers. We, we saw Adam Householder go through. Or, yeah, pretty sure. Well, one thing is for certain, he's yeah. definitely not Mr. RCA, right? No. Interesting light configuration here. That's like old school. Put it over the driver's face. Well, and a lot of times they'll put that out there so that you can identify with, with Gus and, and Tavo and stuff. We yeah. have a, I have a red and a green so that coming into the pit, they know which, which one that is. Got. Yeah, so that's not a, it's not a, we need the red or green light to see, but for the people to see us. It makes it easy. Which is very important for them to identify, oh, this is, the, you know, this is that car, or, you know, or whichever one it is. All right, guys, we got to stay motivated. We, we've we well, been in stay here. Motivated, stay motivated, stay <laughs> motivated. No <laughs> problem there, sir. Let's keep ourselves We've got some up. fantastic desert racing going on here. And if you're just joining us, this is the 2024 BF Goodrich oh. Tires Min 400, and that There's is Ryan, Ryan Arciero. Yeah. And look at that, he's in heavy dust. He is catching Christian Serapis, but once again, we said it's one thing to catch him, it's another thing to pass him. So as he's as he's going right now, he's like, oh, I could I could be going five mile an hour faster. But notice he's on the right lane oh, trying to make close. up time. So he is that close to Christian Serapis. And then you'll probably see Ryan's helicopter go up there and buzz, you know, buzz Christian exactly. to let him know he's there. But then you might have Christian's helicopter buzz him. So we gotta make we gotta make sure as we see um, Ryan Arciero up the right side, but now he's going to jump into the dust, and we are going into the Gene Hurst pit in roughly, the, you know, two miles. Yeah, I can also tell you that Brett Comiskey has just crossed the line as well, so we now have two all-wheel drive trucks on lap four. This is awesome. I'd love to see two trucks finish this race because we haven't seen it in the past. And this is what we were talking about, watching Ryan Arciero as he looks into the sun, into that dust, makes it very, very difficult. You know, it's really visible when you realize the in-car camera just before it showed every detail in that cockpit, and now it's all backlit, you can't see a thing. Yeah, yeah. when you've got that dust and you're heading right into the sun, it's yeah. just blinding. And it's the same for the driver's eyes. That's what you're talking about, Ricky, is you can't see the features because they're just not dark, it's not light, it's in between. Well, and, and for Ryan, it's gotta be, you know, he's gotta be thinking, trying not to be thinking too far ahead like oh i gotta get by him then i gotta get by adam i got he's got to just stay focused so so now he's going to be right up on him he'll see he'll see him as he goes through gene Hurst pit nice and slow they're gonna uh he'll probably take a drink of water and he's waving at some people yeah he's yeah. like nah, nah I'm good. i don't need i don't need no sticking rag we're see good ya. yeah we're fine he knows what he's got to do okay bye see ya <laughs> it's in that speed zone and uh well, I can tell you now, just looking here, so Christian Serapis on that last zone. In fact, let's just talk about the zones entirely. So we have got there, Christian Serapis on the first zone of lap four was at 23 minutes, 33 seconds, and Ryan Arcira is slightly slower at 20 minutes, three minutes and 39 seconds. However, in the second zone, Christian Serapis was 35 minutes and uh, 19 seconds, and Ryan Arciero took a minute and 20 out of him. Yeah, so um, Ryan's smelling the dust. <laughs> <laughs> he sees that he sees what he wants to do and he's going after him here we're watching ej herbs as he works his way through joshua tree around the back side but you can see he has to navigate through some dust and sometimes these aren't your competitors they're a guy that is struggling in but still making dust no yep. nonetheless and this swoopy stuff they're in like that this is really easy to rail it up and bicycle it and get it get out of shape in a heartbeat and yeah, let's ask cold pots yeah buddy yeah but it. there's also look at the the other thing is there's nowhere to pass anyone no so this is the difficult for Ryan Arciero. Where is he going to find a place to make a pass? Well, e EJ doing a great job as he, as he navigates his way through. Those, those ruts are so, so deep. So Ryan's going to leave the pit here. It actually gets into a really, really choppy rough section right after this hard right. Lots of rollover spin in here. Looks like he's, unless they run him a different way. 
Now we're going to see some spectacular driving because this is going into the Fox Proving Ground. It, I think it's the roughest section of the course and so brutal because it's the, the dirt is so hard. This used to be, I think, the original Highway 395 that, that brought you up into Vegas. And now it's got just like little pieces of, of asphalt left, but unbelievably harsh dirt. So he's got to navigate his way through the dust and try to catch up to Christian Saramas. So we're looking now at probably 80 miles to the finish line. Yes. Yep, yep, we're at 22 just past there. So well, we're looking at about uh, what are we almost to 30, 31 for uh, Adam Householder. So he's he's 60 miles from the finish. Tick tock, tick tock, <laughs> tick tock, tick tock. Yeah, Adam Householder is showing us already through the quarry. So Adam is pushing on hard, and it's been it's been a difficult it's been a difficult day as we're watching uh, Ryan Arciero trying to make up time as he as he's catching. You can see right in front of him is Christian Serapis, but that dust is just hanging. In the afternoon, you talked about that with Bob, where the dust was blowing earlier. It's not going much much going out right there. No, and even in the production go. tent that we're in here, you used to you know we could look at the edges of the tent and see, see where it. there was a little wind. There's nothing. It's dead right now. Yeah. The tent is not moving. But I'll tell you who is, and that's Ryan Arciero. Look at the pace of this man. Yeah, so somewhere the, right up at the top of the screen, up under that BFG banner is Christian Serapis. Oh, these and right spectators now, are getting an absolute wonderful display here. And this is them going through the Fox Proving Ground. Unbelievably, it, they're not quite as big as Thumpers. But they're more square and they're, they're harsher, I think more harsh on the truck than anything else. Yeah, and this is just an e-ticket ride, straight as an arrow, as fast as you can go through the whoops all the way to the quarry. Oh, so we're oh, spectators he's, again. He's he oh, that's the helicopter. I saw this body in this machine <laughs> next to him. That he can't possibly have gotten up that, that fast. That guy in the quad is going really fast. <laughs> yeah. That thing handles so well. It's not even going Dude. up and down. But, you know, and Ryan, this has got to be tough for Ryan because he's just fighting through this never-ending dust of Christian Serapis right now. You, you, you know, when you get to the quarry, it's all going to be lingering in there. So Christian's going to have to fight the same dust as Ryan. Do you think Ryan's going to, you know, push it, push it in the quarry and try and make up some seconds? I don't he, think he's, he's going to back it anywhere. off at all. He's yeah. going to push it everywhere he can. Yeah, everywhere he, he's going to be hanging out because he what, has what, to. What are you going to do? Oh, well, I just submitted and, and finished third. That That is not Ryan Arciero. Uh, it wasn't Butch Arciero style, uh, Awesome Albert style, none of them. These guys, the, the Arciero family, you go back to Grandpa, the way he, he attacked winning Indy 500s and everything else, they are, it's not checkers or records, let's let's be honest. Uh, but at this time, Ryan knows that he needs to go and he's in great shape. He said he's, he, his leg is feeling good after he broke his, hurt his uh, knee. Um, so one thing he go. won't do is he won't lose heart at the last. No. You know? No, he also knows that this race is not over until the very last mile. We've seen so much drama in the past. Oh, we yes. saw Rob Mack lose a transmission four miles out. We saw Rob Mack and Luke McMillan have that tumble only a few years ago. So it really does go right to the wire. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of breeze, so that is helping. You can see it's push. It, we yeah. got the breeze from the west pushing it that way a little bit, but sometimes. Now, once he goes, once he starts heading east, that dust is going to travel with him. So you're yeah. trying to get that that wind to blow a different direction. The breeze giveth, and the breeze <laughs> taketh. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Back on board with Ryan here. He's going to be entering the quarry. Now, you've also got to talk about Christian Serapis. Is he going to be pushing for the win, or is he just going to say, you know, and hope that Adam makes a mistake, or has he got something for Adam? Oh no, he's he's going for it, but he's he's got to make a lot of ground, and and I think did they not start? They didn't start on the same minute. Uh, no, so at the moment uh, we've got Adam Actually, Householder um, started. Well, yeah, they literally did. they were on the same minute. So yes, yeah. they did. Yeah. So whoever crosses the line first between them wins the race. Yes. If it comes down to the two of them, we. Let's not count out Ryan Arciero. This Ryan race is, is yeah, not Ryan over yet. Ryan um, needs to get a minute ahead of them. So that that's going to be a tough call unless they have a problem, which anybody can have a problem here. Yeah, now we've seen a lot of flat tires out along this back. Christian Serapis was stopped out here last lap. 
Well, and Householder's already passed all this. He went through here a, a, probably about quite, six quite minutes ago. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking where he's at. He's already down to around race mile 34. Was oh, was yeah, that 36. correct? 36. Yep. So he he's got a and he's in the good part of the desert, I would say. Right now we got Christian and Ryan, which is in probably the roughest when it comes to tires and potential flats. Well, just looking ahead and just seeing what kind of lap traffic that Adam might be uh, facing. And to be honest, he's uh, yep. That's Christian Sarapis in second place, number six. Um, he's Adam's got. Yeah, sorry, go Ricky. No, no, go ahead, finish. I was just going to say, uh, it, looking at the moment, it's it really is Adams. He's got at least seven or eight clean miles before him and any lap traffic. So yeah, he's in a good spot now. Some of, obviously, some of those guys are going to break and come back on and stuff. But right there, see how the shadows you can't see around. So what happens is your eyes dilate to the lightest part, and that's where all of us agreed that when this when this uh, the light is up, twilight. The sun is down, the sky is, is lit, but the, the, the ground is dark, and the, the, these shadows makes it very difficult. Things change, look at that. The dirt is brown, the dust is gray. Yep. What is that telling you? That's right. And, they, and it's dark, in those little valleys, it's dark, so you can't see those rocks inside of there. So very, very tough time. And this is the thing about off-road racing that's, that's unique. If you go to Le Mans, stuff like that, you deal with rain, you deal with situations like that but not dust. I yep. mean, the, the it, course different... is always constant. Yes. Here, the course is always changing, especially here. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Le Mans does not have takeoffs and landings. Yeah, yeah there well, are. There's, there's, there's a, good, a couple of them. I've seen a couple of them take off. <laughs> they don't land too well, but they yeah, definitely those, some those places. Those last landings. Yeah, when they're like 200 miles an hour, and they decide to fly. Mm -hmm. Not touch and go. You know, when I'm looking on the tracker up where uh, where Adam the Householder is, he's up past a shooting range, and he's uh, in it. There's some really rocky washes uh, pretty technical stuff up uh, in that northernmost part of the course where uh, Adam Householder is right now so definitely potentials for flats up there well if you watch it how much the truck is jumping around on Christian Serapis that that's those chatter bumps that are, that are just want to break take every bolt apart it wants to break any kind of weld it just is so difficult on things as well as tires and driver and you can feel every one of those when you uh, go through them i mean they really go through your spine at this stage of the at this yes. stage of the race yes even though he's a young unbelievable athlete he's still taking a, it's you're still getting punched in the kidneys all day long well that hurts. chatter bumps especially oh, look a, look there's serapis yep. and there is osiero he is half the distance well but now but see Remember I said about the dust? It is hanging right in the trail. Yep. That is going to be so difficult so, for Ryan Arciero. So here's, here's a question, Ricky. We've yes. got that asphalt section. Yep. You can drive one of these trucks as absolutely fast as you can. Ryan's going to have a, a one to two mile window where he has no dust. He, does he have that much more horsepower than Christian Serapis? He has to be within 10 seconds of it if to, to make that to make that ground because as soon as Christian touches that asphalt, boom, he's up to speed. Yeah. So let's say he's, he's definitely got a motor in there. It might not be a Gibbs motor, but I'm going to say he's probably going to be going 130 down there. So 20 miles an hour is going to make a big difference. Jim? So I'm going to ask this question. How much of a play does the helicopter have at this point? Are they able to say to him, yeah, hold it in and no. obviously he's watching his GPS. I know in no, no, Baja they, they you hear that they that. drive on the GPS. Uh, there, there's code and this and that, but, but really what the helicopter is there for is and here we see Christian Serapis. Now, this is the time must be time because he's going very slow. Yep. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's on the time zone. Oh, he stopped. Christian has he stopped. stopped. He oh, stopped. No. Unbelievable. And here comes Ryan Arciero to. Oh, unbelievable. Christian Serapis has stopped. Oh, Ryan. And that put so. Ryan in second place. Tough, tough break for Christian Serapis. Oh, wow. You got to hope nothing major is going on there. That's a tough break. He's driven a phenomenal race. Okay, Ryan, don't, don't, yeah, check in the speedo. Watch the speedo on the right. He's up to 120, 100, 124, 127. 130. 130. <laughs> wow. I told you that thing has some legs 37, on 37, 38. <laughs> I saw 138 on there before we cut away. So he's got he's got about 60 miles to make up 10 minutes. 138, 139. Now slowing down to hit the dirt, and they're like, Whew. but how <laughs> happy is Ryan RCR right now? Still 90 over 100, uh, just under 100 miles an hour as he enters the dirt. He wow. loves his truck. Well, he's but, loving uh, it. But I've been in that situation where you're following somebody, and you. 
I'll be honest with you, you're praying for something to happen to them. You don't want them to get hurt, but you're like, man, I really wish you would break yeah, and go away. And here we see Christian Serapis, um, that they're looking around the truck. It looks like it could be a potential rear end. It yeah. could be a, a rear diff. <clears throat> but we see Christian out looking up under the truck. So I think it, I, I'm going to bet rear gear. Yeah. Well, yeah. Here's, opinion. here's the thing. He went through that quarry. There's a lot of big boulders that are yep. loose, and one of those can jump up, hit the third member, and yes. knock you out. So it could be drive shaft, could be could be rear gear, but they're running around looking like well, there's potentially something they could do. If they did, as you said, ding a drive shaft, they always carry a spare. So you see uh, Christian is still in the truck, and typically right under the door, under the passenger door is where they where they carry that extra deal. So if they are going to jack it up, I see Christian taking his gloves off. So they might have to jack the truck up, change the rear, change that. It definitely looked like he was reaching for the tool bag. That's for sure. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is this is what Ryan needed. Ryan has clean air now. And he's got a fresh truck, so we're going to see what Ryan Arciera can do. This is, if he was going to have anything for Householder, now we're going to see. And, you know, he sent the helicopter back to watch over Serapis to see what's going on with that truck. We need to know if they're going to get a quick fix, or is it, are they all standing around? Well, and we, we, we were talking about how Rob Mack is such a fanatic about knowing front door front and back door, door, back door yeah. and where the, where the guys are and this and that. Right now, for Adam Householder, Ryan Arciera is not a threat. No. No, so he needs to slow down, drive his race, and then Ryan has to catch him, pass him, and then put, I think it's over a minute uh, yeah. for him to, to get in front. So he's got to put a minute on him. Right, so he's got he's got to make up another minute. So right now, Adam just needs to just drive nice and smooth and consistent, and then also listen to what everybody's telling him. But you notice what he didn't have? He's a helicopter. So as we're watching Ryan Arciero navigate his way, he is now sitting physically second and also corrected time second. We are going to see some of the other racers as they come up in a little bit because we have an unbelievable race between uh, Jack Grabowski as well as uh, Kyle Jurgensen. But we are going to step away from the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400 to our commercial. We'll be right back. a little help we got help need some advice we got advice no matter what you need we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it exceptional customer service just one part that makes o'reilly stand apart the professional parts people oh 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 o'reilly auto parts
Yeah, I got that right turn. We're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. That's turn four. Good little driver, straight on through. That's right. Okay, and welcome back to the 2024 B of Goodridge Tires Mint 400. And look at this. This is our current race leader. This is Adam Householder, and he's on an absolute charge. I'm Jim Marsden. Joining me in the booth is none other than Bob Bauer, Jim Beaver, and of course, Ricky Johnson. Well, let, let's take a look at what he's got going on here. He is at race mile 50, so he only ha he's over halfway on the last lap. He has about a 10-mile lead. So Adam has done everything right all day long. And if you look at his truck, it wasn't white. That's just the sand blasting off the front tires, and that's not a four-wheel drive truck. So that's how much sand and rocks are flying out here at the Mint 400. So Adam has everything to gain right now, but you know what he doesn't have is a helicopter. So one of the things that RC Aero can do is send his copter off to see what's happening with Adam back and forth. But with Adam having this big of a lead, in my opinion, I think he just should just cruise because if if Ryan does catch him, which he's got a long ways to go to catch him, he still has to put a minute on him. So you want to save your vehicle as much as you can. So every gremlin, every little thing, Adam is hearing that in his truck right now. Yeah, absolutely. No. <laughs> It's the cliche, but it's Adam's race to lose right at this moment in time. Now, Bob, you've been out there in the front of these races many times in the past. What's going through his mind? Well, what's going through his mind right now is, is well, whose mind are you talking about? <laughs> well, let's start with Adam Householder, who we were looking at. This is actually Ryan Arciero, who's currently in second at the moment. But what are you thinking if you're Adam Householder right now? I'm thinking Arciero. And you know what I'm thinking if I'm Arciero? I'm thinking Householder. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I care about right now. Fair boy. Fair boy. All right, oh, this no, is our current leader. This is Kyle Jurgensen as he's pulling over. So we have a race for this unlimited spec class now. right now. So this is where you see that when they pull the tire off, they have to change it. Both, uh, both driver and co-driver get out here. So this could be very, very close between him and Grabowski. Jim? Keep watching that track because Grabowski was not very far behind him at all. This could be a very pivotal moment in the race. Now they've got to get in. They've got to get the harnesses back on, and that takes time. Yeah, they're going to move without their harnesses on. Obviously. Yeah, so he's having some trouble with no, the, dri the driver always gets himself buckled in. So you've seen that uh, Kyle got in there, get himself strapped in. We've seen it to where he's left his window net down, but he makes sure and up. He's getting the window net up, yep. and then he's going to start, and his co-driver will buckle in as he goes. So the typical rule is get in, put your window net up first. That way, if there's a problem, you stay contained in the vehicle. Then you get your lap belts, and then you, you cruise along, and then you let them know. So the good news is, is that for uh, Jurgensen, he did not lose the lead to Grabowski because he's got about a 30... He, remember, remember, he started ahead of him. He was the first yes. one to start. That, that was a tough one. That So that was right into the Fox Proving Ground. Yes. So that means he had... It must have happened between the pit and Fox yes. Proving Ground. There's a, uh, like a two-mile two, two mile window there. So Well, the interesting thing for me there was that Grabowski didn't appear. So where is Grabowski? Because they were that closely placed together. They were only a minute or so apart. So where is Grabowski? Has yeah, he also had a problem on track? Well, and did he come in and get gas at, uh, you know, at, at Gene Hurst Pit? So we don't know that. Um, so right now we are six hours of racing in, in in five seconds. So unbelievable how long these guys have been going. And now you see how the, how the course is different for um, for Adam Householder. And we see Ryan Arciero as he's trying to chase him down. And Ryan is definitely on blast right now. He is full, you know, 100%. Yeah, I'm seeing Gr uh, Grabowski has just left the Gene Hurst pit. 
So it does look like Carl Jurgensen is still ahead of Grabowski. Well, and but this could work into the advantage of if if Kyle doesn't get word that he's having a problem, because you can see him looking back with a slight panic. Um, not that I mean he's a very talented driver, but but still, when you don't want that stress, you know, no, you don't. because he knows that he's got to be within 30 or uh, 30 seconds ahead of Grabowski at the finish line. But right. we, we, it could be something. It could be fluid. Could be steering. Could be belt. Could be anything with oh, Grabowski. No, no, no. Grabowski isn't stopped. Grabowski is still running, but he's definitely behind him and just gone through. That's what I'm saying. Did, yeah. did he stop and, and do work on something? Gotcha. I, this is all speculation. Well, and I want to chime in, you know, on something Ricky was talking about, Adam Householder not having a helicopter, Ryan Arciero having a helicopter. So I want to clarify what the helicopters can and cannot do in Thank desert you. racing. Yes. Thank you. So, Important to say. Yeah, because so Adam doesn't have a helicopter. What that helicopter of Ryan Arciero is doing, it can't have direct communication with the truck. So they'll have an offline frequency that they can radio information to the pit. The pit can then turn around, switch frequencies, and radio that to Ryan. It's also there for media purposes and most importantly, medical purposes. Safety. And, and the rule is, is if there is a problem in desert racing and there's an accident, the organization can pull that helicopter, dispatch it to yes. an accident, regardless of who it is. Yeah. Well, and when we're racing down in Mexico, a lot of times they're letting us know that motorcycles were coming up on them. Because if they're oh. going slower, they're crawling along, and we're, we're coming along in a 6,000-pound you know, sledgehammer, uh, we've got to make sure that we protect those bike riders. What a dangerous situation. Leading, leading trophy truck coming up on a back marker bike guy? No, I've, I've been that back marker bike guy. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at what Ryan's having to put up with here. That sunshine coming through. You can see the sun visor's right down. Now, Ricky, you would have had this situation. Your sun visor is a set size, but sometimes it doesn't actually come down low enough when you're coming up on those peaks. But you can't move your head because you're locked into the chair. So you try to do everything you can. Push your head down to try and get as much blockage out. Oh, it's oh. a bat marker. We're going to see how quick Ryan can get. Uh... Here comes the love tap. Oh, there, there it is. It is. All right. Oh, no, he doesn't need a jackrabbit. Not now. And this is when you're a driver. So uh, now if we stay on this, Ryan gave him the love tap. Let him know he was there. <laughs> the driver jackrabbit. Now you're going to see Ryan. Oh, there he goes. Goes. There there the, the next hit doesn't come as pleasant. No, no. <laughs> well, and we were talking yesterday. Wes Miller came out with a, new, with, a, with a visor that sticks to your shield so that you can dip your head to... to uh, to block the sun if you need to because a lot of times you're driving with one hand and your other hand up block of the sun when the sun gets right on that edge that makes it really difficult yeah this is about worst situation right now but adam householder also had to drive through it as well here's a replay here's a replay on the pass as you see the driver gets out of the way and lets ryan go by stuff there. I thought we were going to have a jackrabbit for a moment, but uh, it was all working out. We have somebody's throttle stuck somewhere. <laughs> I, think the, I think the motorcycles, they finish have been doing burnouts on the stage. That is a long burnout. Whatever, whatever the case may be, I don't know what, what that noise is, but it is definitely someone's running hard. All right, enough about us. Let's talk about Ryan <laughs> Arciero having to fight the sun. Um, was running an absolute perfect race today, but then lost an alternator. Even though they do have a backup alternator, that's what they're saying. Could be steering, could be something. We're, we're Once again, we're speculating because we're spectators as well. But Ryan has done a great job all day long. I don't think he's gotten one flat. He's been driving hard, and now he's just trying to work his way back towards Adam Householder, who has a pretty uh, demanding lead at this point. Well, and it's looking like now Christian Serapis is back going. So whatever problem they did have, uh, good news is Christian Serapis is still back going so I'm gonna bet it was a drive shaft that, that going to the gravel pit they pitched a rock up and it dinged the drive shaft and, because when he was going down that he really noticed it when he went down that asphalt yeah. because when it's smooth and all of a sudden it feels like it's gonna, yeah it's gonna pull it's gonna pull the uh, pull, pull the drive pull the drive shaft apart and you try and drive through it you know maybe there's no vibration yeah. if I get past it is there dirt in my wheel, whatever the case may be? Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden, it's, no, we got problems. Now, nah, when you have a bent twi drive shaft or a twisted drive shaft, it all comes apart very, very quickly. So it's a wise decision to pull over and make the change. And this looks like Kyle Jurgensen, the leader of our unlimited spec. He is, looks like he's made his way out of the gravel pit, so he is up towards the top of the track, which puts him at about mile race mile 30 as he works his way down. 
uh, down towards the shooting range where he's got to come down and back around. Now, here is Adam Householder as he works his way to the Sand Whoops. Or, no, I'm sorry, no, this is Ryan Arciero. Arciero. Uh, my bad. That's okay, but look at the pace of Ryan Arciero. Now, we just saw Adam Householder coming through here. And it's safe to say that Arciero is certainly faster through this section. But that's fine, because Adam Householder <laughs> has got time on his side. Yeah, exactly. is he fast enough? Who knows? Well, and... Clock is ticking, Bob. Yes. Well, and, the, and you know, for for the R zero, the number 32, that, that W is getting smaller. It is. Uh, you, you've got to give Adam Householder a lot of credit. You bet, you he, bet. he has driven a phenomenal race to this point. I mean, he's driving a phenomenal race. Yeah, that's, that's the whole thing, isn't yeah. it? Now, Adam Householder has just passed into the fourth sector of this lap, and he's just come into there in with a 44 minutes and eight seconds. I'm just looking down there. So we'll get a split on Ryan Arciero here in probably uh, uh, nine, ten minutes. We'll see if he put any time on uh, on Mr. Householder. Yeah, you see, I think that Ryan might have had a problem on the previous lap in this area because I I thought he got past Christian Serapis and then Christian Serapis was back with him again. I stepped out the booth, came back, and, and it all didn't quite work out. Now I'm looking at. Ryan split for the last lap for this last section. It was 56 minutes, whereas everybody else was around that sort of 43, 44. So I am going to surmise that he did have a problem there at that point. Alrighty, this is Adam Householder as he works his way through Gonzo Pit. So that puts him at race mile 58. We saw yep. Ryan Arciero is still back. Probably, I'm going to say he's about. Uh, Close to still close to 10 miles behind, so Ryan's got a lot of work to do and not a lot of time. Well, inside Adam's truck, we're hearing noises. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're feeling we're feeling little thumps and clicks and clanks. Oh, you're smelling things, oh, hearing things. Oh man, and and uh, then you look over to your co-driver and say, "You smell that?" No, no, I, I would always lie to my driver. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would just to lie. It's flat. It's green. Go. Yeah. Right now, here, look at this, though. Lap traffic. Adam Householder has to work his way around that, navigate, and not get pulled into a race into the dust that he doesn't need right now. And he's in a good spot because he's getting to Joshua Tree. So as he works through there, he's got to work his way up around, back through Beer Bottle Pass. And, and actually, so he's not in Joshua Tree yet. I apologize for that. He's still got to get down to the dog leg and then up around race mile 75. And that is Beer Bottle Pass. So still a lot of racing to go. Yeah, so he's through the Gonzo pit, so he is into the last quarter of this race. If you're just joining us, this is the tail end of the 2024 B of Goodrich Tires Mint 400. Just outside of Sin City, Las Vegas, here at Prim Valley, Nevada. And what a race it has been so far today. Nick Whetstone left the line in first place and was having a dominating race until about three quarters of the way through the first lap. Then we had some of the major favourites dropping out. Cars like Rob McCachron. At uh, BJ Baldwin, Kevin Thompson, all succumbing to problems. As well as Tim Herbst, but now we've seen Tim Herbst recuperate and get back on the ground. So as we continue with the action here, we've got our technical expert, Brian Little, who's been out and working things out. Brian, what have you got for us? We're back here with Jerry Zayden from Camberg, and if you guys don't know, Camberg is a really cool story about two guys that had a passion for off-road that turned that love into a business of building high-quality suspension parts, so we are here to talk about exactly that. Jerry, tell me a little bit about the development of your kinetic series of race trucks, specifically the number 222 that Kyle Jorgensen is driving today. Yeah, so... Back in 07, 08, we got this bright idea to kind of revolutionize the way race trucks are built, just like we did with our suspension kits, utilizing the lasers and press brakes and all these high-end tools that we have out there, as well as CAD. So we CAD designed this full truck, did the full fixture table, all the jigs, and got out racing. Well, from our racing in the 7200 trucks and racing the kind of stock Ford Rangers with all our bolt-on kits, we wanted to go to the top level and be in an unlimited truck. And by doing that, testing out new products that we build and translate those products backwards and go down to what we sell to our customers. And that's where these long travel kits with bump stop technology, coilover bypass, why we use uniball pivots on the inside and hind pivots on the uppers, 
type of uniballs we use. Like, not all uniballs are the same. Like, the way they're made and pressed, like, has a lot to do with how tight the steering is or the squeaking and all that. That's why we don't have a lot of those problems because of what we're testing out in the desert for long. And that's exactly what I was going to ask is, is how the, the stuff that you learn out here in the desert directly translates to the kits that you build for off-road and overland vehicles like the one you see here. So maybe you can kind of run us through real quickly of, of what separates Camberg and kind of what makes the tech behind this so cool. Yeah, so what's really cool here is we're the first to do these billet aluminum upper control arms to the general public and our kids. Uh, we did these on the long travel Ford Rangers, Silverados, and F-150s back in the late 90s. Um, we did these box, full box construction lower control arms with the uniball pivots. And what's nice about those when you align your vehicle, as you know, when you use a bushing, you just have a straight tube through the center of that bushing and it's clamped in the frame. So when you got to adjust caster and have one pivot out and one in, it's trying to turn it. Well, the uniball, the bolt's straight, but it can pivot. That's why we do the uniball. A uh, lot of longevity there. And that, like I said, goes back into the racing is we're actually really learning when we're out there racing. And when you're competing on suspension, you find all the problems very quickly. So racing coming into this, the quality of components, the quality of the hardware, the type of material we use, everything from the, the design all the way through the end product. Really? So it sounds like all of your retail customers get to benefit from everything you learn out here in the desert. That's, that's really, really cool. So whether you're looking for a full custom built race truck, you're a DIY guy looking for parts to build your vehicle, or you just want to lift your daily ride, check out Camberg.com. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Always good to hear there from Jerry Zazine. As we watch now, that is Tim Herbst in the car 19. Yep. So good to see him back on track again. They got that light bar and the hood um, as we're watching on the inside. So I, I'm going to make an observation here from the inside camera. That's a different, oh, no, no, I think we had Tim Herbst and now we jumped yeah, in with, to EJ. Well, I was looking at the helmets going, that, that's yeah. a different helmet than we saw in the driver's seat previously, yeah. so, uh, but yeah, we went from Tim Herbst to uh, to EJ, I believe, so. Okay, who we got here? It looks like this is EJ, and he's caught, looks like Chad Hall, um, so he's put a, put a lap on him, so we're gonna come up there and kiss those big tires in the back to let him know, ready, one, two, three, boom, right there, hey, I'm here. And then Chad is one of those guys, he'll, yeah, do, he'll do his best to get out of the way. And there he goes. That was a, we've seen a lot of polite passes today. <laughs> Maybe the boys are growing up. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, okay. <laughs> all right, <that's> <laughs> well, and, and a lot of times when you when you hit somebody the first time, you're, you're trying to just, you're trying to nudge them and the next thing you know, they, they hit the brakes, going into a hole and you oh. smash them hard. You're like, oops, sorry. Well, the thing and is, then you is, get the blame. Yeah, well, the, the thing is, is, as a racer, I never want to hit anybody too hard because we all run lights up front, things like that. It knocks them out yeah, of adjustment. Yeah. So it's, you really don't want to lay pipe to somebody unless you have to. Well, but that was good about with Chad, the tires are in the back. So it's just like a nice little bumper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, had a guy, I had a guy in Portugal this year, Jack Rabbit, was really terrible. I, I punched him, Did you? hit him, and then I, then he still wouldn't do it. So I go to him, oh, I really had to get up and on him. Hit him so hard, I sent him off the track. And he stepped with the trouble is I watered myself out in the dust. He's come back on the track in front of me and carried on again. I'm like, dude, you just really don't get this. Uh, <laughs> look at We at had how, a chat at right, the end. I, a little fellowship. Yes. Now, watching out of house, or look at how rough it is. I mean, it is brutal. Bang, bang, These are 40-inch tires, so, so those whoops are like three to four foot, you know, three to four foot deep. And so these sections, like when you get a little breather like that, we're, we're going to hear this a lot about how rough this track is getting. But you know what Terry is going to be thinking right now, don't you? Sorry, Adam, as he's making his way through. Every one of those that he goes through, he knows that Ryan Arciero can't go faster than him through those. Right. Well, so. this is where you, you know in your vehicle. And I think it's great that Terry's driving so much. Adam. I you mean, get, Adam, you're doing the same now as you me. did the same thing that I did <laughs> because the reason is um, Terry uh, <coughs> blew a drive shaft, blew an axle. They changed it and they got uh, guys back in there. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, so starting this lap, Ryan Arciero was 10 minutes and 39 seconds behind Adam Householder. Now, after sector two, he is eight minutes and 24 seconds behind. So Ryan's taken a two minutes and 10 seconds out of Adam this lap. I just don't know yeah, yeah. that he's going to be able to. I don't think there's enough lap. No. Nope. Well, but, but if he gets a flat, if he goes, anything can happen with this sun. You get off to the left, to the right, and you get off the trail. 
it's going to rip your truck apart. But now, we just kind of, you can kind of do the math. You can see that uh, Ryan Arciero is going through the Gonzo pit, and so he's still got a lot of racing to go. They both of them have to navigate beer bottle pass, but look at how rough it is for Householder trying to get up on top of those. And, and really nothing you can do is just take the beating. Well, here's an interesting stat for you as well. Just looking at the fastest lap for these guys. So the fastest lap for uh, Ron Arciero was his first lap with a 138.04, whereas Adams was his second lap with a 138.34. So there's only 30 seconds separating them on their th fastest laps. So they're very similar pace. Well, same chassis, same motors. And the only thing different is the nut behind the wheel. Yeah. It's a true statement. I mean, with that, <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> it is. And we're all a little nuts as off-road drivers. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But also, you got to remember, it's, the, it's still it's the better quick, than golf. It's the quickest thing to change on a race car. You don't have to unbolt anything. You just pull it out and put another one in. All right, that is our leader, Adam Householder, and you can see way off of the dust in the background, that is Ryan Arciero. But right now, it is this man that has been doing everything right all day, but you can see how rough this course is. I know we've been redundant, we've said it a bunch of times, but Adam, it just has to navigate and watch those rocks. So he should be coming down around if once he's heading, so now it looks like he's heading north so in between mile race miles 65 and 70. i think he might be down here or not that not that far now we've still got a lot of racing going on behind we've got carl jurgerson and troy Gr or it's jack grabowski i believe who's now driving on the grabowski car and then just behind them they've got cole potts and ethan eberts ebert ebert there is an Eberts as well, but yeah. this one is an Ebert. That's I, I had to I had to ask Ricky <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Speaking of Dale, who is uh, an amazing uh, class one driver. Oh, the whole family. Yeah. All right, here we have Christian Serapis. Must have changed the drive shaft and back rolling. This is through the sand whoops at race mile uh, four, right before 50. So he is back underway, but lost a lot of valuable time. What do you reckon? 15 minutes? At least. Got to be, isn't it? I mean, we've been in this booth for about four months, so <laughs> it seems like 15 minutes. Yeah. Good news. You know, you, you hate to say the consolation prize is a podium at the Mint 400, but uh, yeah, Christian's put game. himself in a good spot to, to earn a podium finish here. Yeah, no, absolutely. And when you consider he hasn't done that much racing in recent times. Well, he's been running other vehicles, but he hasn't been in, the, in this trophy truck. So back with Ryan Arciero as he works his way down towards the dog leg, and then he's got to head himself back north so you can see he's still heading south he's got the sun on the right so he has not quite made that turn down towards dog lake yet and ryan i mean I, I can appreciate the fact that he's driving at such an elite level this deep into the race i mean he's full kill mode yeah uh, you know the the physical fitness of ryan arciero right now to be able to drive that truck at a hundred percent this deep into the mid 400 man that's something physical fitness and mental fitness he's going to be exhausted at the end of this thing yeah, you have that adrenaline dump when you get at the finish you bet, line. You yeah. And then he won't be able to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> All right, here we're watching Cole Potts as he works his way around through the sand. Whoops. At race mile 49, as he makes this left turn at the end, he'll, that'll be race mile 50. But uh, Cole Potts having a great day. Really, really proud of him as a fellow driver after having a tough day yesterday, a tough break, tip it on his side, and then keeping this truck rolling the whole time. So I think this is going to really help him and his team, give them a lot of confidence. So keep that thing moving forward, guy. So this is back to our leader. This is Adam Householder. Adam's taken some significant victories in recent years. King of the Hammers. And last year, he was second here. Will it, be, will it be a W this year as we watch Ryan Arciero? Now, Ryan has got to get past him. He's got to put a minute on him. And he's looking, as you said, Bob, that W is getting smaller and smaller with each mile. Yeah. I, you know, I don't care who's in second. I hate it for him. <laughs> well, you know. But you got to be proud of yourself. When, when you finish yeah. a race, it, it, it's... I mean, this is a lot. Yeah, you want to win. You always want to win. But 
you know what? If you did your job, and that's exactly what Brian Arciero has done. You know, a broken part is a broken part. That happens. Um, so it, you don't want to say, good job, man, you know, because it's kind of a slap in the face because uh, you yeah. know he wants to win. But he's got to be proud of himself and everybody around him as well. That's a good point, Ricky. He didn't leave anything on the table. Nope. Yeah, no, and we're still only right now around about race mile 68 to 69. So there's still a good 30 miles of racing at least. Five miles left. Ooh so if you're looking, he's going to come up here. He's going to venture around the mountain. Then he's got to go south on the west side. So if you look, he's heading towards the sun. And then he's got to go around this mountain range, then down south. And he has to go through Beer Bottle Pass. So we should be seeing... Um, Adam Householder getting to Beer Bottle Pass pretty quick. Well, and I think that's going to be interesting because once he gets to Beer Bottle Pass and he goes around the backside of the mountain, it's going to get dark on him. Yeah. And Ryan Arciero is going to have to face the same thing, but that's when things are going to change because you're going to see all of a sudden via the helicopter just the big change in the, you know, and, and the amount of light that these drivers have. And all it would take would be one little mental error is not not seeing it but in time to, to avoid it or straddle it or whatever you have to do and it could take either ryan or a uh, householder out yeah yeah it can happen so easy and so fast oh yeah but at the moment it is adam householder and ryan arcero who are charging away from the rest of the pack so as the action continues here that is our current race leader, Adam Householder. All right, as we're watching the desert, you see the shadows are very, very long. We are going to take a quick break, but we will be right back to the BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. We'll be right back. The 2024 BF Goodrich Mint 400 is brought to you by Fox, the Fox Proving Ground Sponsor. 50 years of pushing potential further. Heatwave Visual, the official sunglasses of the MIMP 400. Makers of highly visual eyewear to keep you covered in the shop, in the street, and everywhere in between. Raceline Wheels, go everywhere. Republic Services, sustainability in action. Rockford Fosgate, car audio for fanatics. Shreddy Life, four shredders, by Shredders, a brand built and based off and any and all types of shred. Site Solar, your leading source for sustainable solar energy, all the time, every time. Okay, and welcome back to the 2024 Beer of Goodrich Tires Mint 400. We are here just outside of Sin City, Las Vegas in Prim Valley, Nevada. Wow, what a day of racing it's been. I'm Jim Marsden. Joining me is none other than Bob Bauer, Jim Beaver, and of course, Ricky Johnson. Gentlemen. We are watching Adam Householder. He's made the turn. He's heading towards Beer Bottle Pass. He's got to work. He's got to navigate his way through the mountains. Then he'll jump up in there. Very, very tight technical section. And as Jim Beaver said, the sun, you can see the shadows. There's really not much shadows left because the sun is behind the mountains now. And Adam's got enough experience where he knows I just need to be tidy in here. I just need to be careful. Tidy, tidy, tidy. And don't, not change much what he's doing. Yeah, don't no. cut a tire. Be don't, smart. Yep. Just uh, avoid the big rocks. Stay relaxed. That's easy to say. <laughs> it is indeed. a fender hanging off this one. All right, this is your leader of the unlimited spec. That is Kyle Jurgensen as he works his way through race mile 50. You can see that the bodies hang off a little bit. He's been running that camber truck hard all day long. Um, I, I really, um, I hate to use it, but he is in total beast mode. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, something that's been been overused in Supercross, <laughs> but this unlimited spec is, is the. Un I'm sorry, but this is the unlimited spec leader right now. Yeah. Now we saw him pulled over earlier. He had to change a flat tire. Yes, he did do that, but we didn't see Grabowski catch him. No, we did not. So where is Grabowski at the moment? So if you want to keep up with the action, pop on over to the mint400.com and you will be able to find live racing action there. Be able to see live timing and also the tracker. But look at that sun coming in down across there. These shadows are going to get deep and dark now, 
And this is what we talked about. When that sunlight, the sunlight now entering beer bottle pass, that is your race leader in unlimited uh, truck. And that is Adam Householder. That is roughly race mile 75 once he gets to the other side. But this is a very treacherous. We had Sarah Price in here, and she said, you know, doing it in a side-by-side -side is one thing, but in a big uh, unlimited truck, you just want to be nice and smooth. Here you can see he's got to ask to climb those, those chatter bumps to get it to try to keep himself moving forward. Yeah, he hadn't turned his lights on either yet. Figured uh, through this and around the backside of the mountain, you might, you might see him flip on, but he hasn't yet. I bet he doesn't even realize it. You know, it is that time of night where your eyes are still adjusting. And until he gets something flashing him in the eye, you're not going to experience well, you do what get, Ricky talked about. You do get to a situation, actually, where you don't want your lights on because you're so focused on what you're at at that moment in time that you bring your lights in and you get white pockets. Right. Well, well your eyes are going to adjust to the light, to the whatever is the brightest. And if you throw Ooh. those little flashes in there, then all of a sudden you're it's depending on the lights. And, and the problem is is that your eyes are adjusted to the top. So you got to try to keep that bright sky. But he's in a good spot. He's headed east right now. So the sun is behind him and the, and the bright sky is behind him. Yeah, absolutely. If I was Adam, I'll be leaving those lights off for as long as possible on this section. And here we see Ryan Arciero as he's working himself into the sun. So you can see the difference that uh, the shadows are still very long. And as he's coming around, he's got his sun visor up because there's no uh, anytime there's dust, you want to make sure that you keep your, your eyes focused down. But right now, Ryan's got everything up and open so he can see as much as possible. Yeah, you can see he's in third gear there and pushing hard. He is in full kill mode. Well, now, does this put... Yeah, now Looks I'll like just Ryan has made a bunch more time because I think this is getting into Beer Bottle Pass. It is, yeah. yes. Ryan's so continuing to push. Yes. No, 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 no. He hasn't made the left turn yet, so he is still headed south right now. He's going, so he's uh, actually kind of heading west. He's got to do a hard left down at race mile 70, then down and do another hard left to turn into Beer Bottle Pass. I'm glad we sorted that yeah. out because I thought we were about to be watching the biggest comeback you ever saw. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like he's still yeah, about 65, 10 miles 67, back. 80 miles an hour. So he is definitely running on full kill. Yep, he's yeah, like, oh, that sun's that killing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I can also tell you that there is lap traffic between these two vehicles now. There's at least two cars between them, and they might have their part to play as this drama plays out here. But as we're watching, and we're sitting, you know, watching it on TV, notice how black the ground is and how bright that sun is. It makes it, and he's got to navigate his way and keep himself on the trail, try to avoid rocks at the same time. So this, as a driver, he is beyond multitasking. He's on the edge. All yeah, he's wrong? absolutely on the edge right now. It's all to play for. Going one of those phrases, it is all checkers or wreckers. It's time to go hard. Well, yes. and you know, we mentioned that Ryan is in, and he's not in the championship hunt, so he doesn't have anything to really save or lose. So and let's be honest, if you can just get, if Adam has a flat tire, if anything happens, if he can pounce. just get there close enough to be able to make that pounce. Yep. I think Adam is safe even if he gets a flat, but look so at the pace of Adam here. Yeah. Householder has made it through has been through beer bottle pass and now he's back up to speed so i'm gonna give i'm gonna say he's probably got about eight or eight or nine minutes on uh, on ryan so he's in a, he's in a very comfortable spot and as he works his way around these mountains that's going to be that final stretch so right now he's about race miles 78 or so but once he wants he gets down there towards race mile 80 he's going to really really start to see some stuff as he goes through joshua tree now the interesting thing is sitting here looking at the tracker right now is that i can see there is no traffic between adam householder and all the way through uh, joshua tree highway he's got to be stoked about that he's gonna have that clean air and uh, you want clean air when the shadows are long like this you can start getting that dirty air with the shadows it can wreak havoc on a driver so uh adams uh, put himself in a really good position here to seal the deal yep well, what I'd like to see is that how now that the temperature's come back down, the dust isn't so bad, but we're back to Ryan Arciero chasing and running very hard. OK, I can also tell you that uh, Cole Potts has made his way up into third position ahead of Christian Serapis. So Cole Potts is in third overall and is the first of our all-wheel drive trucks. That is awesome. Good job, Cole. Keep it up. I really want to see him get to the finish. 
Now, the interesting thing, I'm looking at my, my split times here, and I'm seeing Adam Householder on the third sector of this last lap with the 44 minutes. Brian R. Sierra, I'm seeing at 56, which just doesn't sit right with me. And I'm seeing Cole Potts with the 44 and Christian Serapis with an unbelievable 43 minutes, really coming back strong. Hasn't Ryan had a problem out of track that we haven't seen? I don't think he can have done. We've been watching him on the helicopter all the time. Yep. Um, but again, there's, I've got this bogey time here, sitting here of 56 minutes, which I'm not quite sure I understand. Okay, that was the sharp left. Now he's going to return. He's heading up, and that mountain range that you see in front of him is Beer Bottle Pass. So if you look at your map, he is right about race mile 72, 73. He's going to get, once he gets up in there, it's going to tighten up, and he's got to work his way to the other side of Beer Bottle Pass. As you can see, he's going to navigate uh, a couple a couple of turns before he gets himself in there. Yeah, there's still lots of action here. We've still got a great many cars out on the track. And there's a fantastic battle going on for the unlimited spec. With Carl Jurgensen currently leading Jack Grabowski. Then just behind them is EJ Hurst. James Scully is having an amazing race along with Trey Gribbs and Thomas Sempeter. Brett Komsky is currently sitting in 11th place and is our second place all-wheel drive truck. As we're watching uh, Ryan Arciero as he just gets to the beginning of your model pass. As you can see the little valley up above, that's what he's going to navigate his way through. Yeah, you can see he's changed down into second gear, making the most of that great big long lazy rev change. Everyone uses the word lazy. It's, just, it's a very long gear, isn't it? There we second. go. There yeah. we go. I was like, I drove that thing. There was nothing lazy about it. Oh, oh he's stopping. off to the side. Whoa. Uh, looks like watch? they got a flat. Flat tire. Oh. oh. Heartbreaker. When it rains. <laughs> okay, now Ryan's getting out as well. Oh, Ryan's loosening up his belts. Hate, hate this for anybody. Oh, right now, but in the they're both getting right out. now in the householder pit, they're watching the live feed and they're reaching for the radio to say, hey, dude, back it down. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I don't think it's a tire because he's taken his gloves, Glo gloves off, and, off and he's also unbuckling. So, And they pulled over really quick and he went through the bushes. So you wouldn't take a chance like that. Um, if you got a flat, you would yeah. you'd, you'd take a little bit more time. So something happened really uh, quick. Either as well. thinking motor. Yep, either motor lost the... the the belt, but notice that he just pulled off to the, the side immediately. It's a tough, tough break for Ryan Arcio. He's been through so much all day and just doing, once again, he did his job 100%. Yeah, absolutely. He's just in into the park position. Yeah. That's that P. And if you Which is look, P for a bit peeved off right now. Yeah, P for sure. But if you look um, on either side of those peaks, you see the green dots. That's saying that all four tires are full of air. Yep. Um, but man, tough, tough break. It is. And right now, it's all about Adam Householder, who is making his way towards the finish of this four lap race. So as we're looking, as the, these drivers are starting to head down, towards Beer Bottle Pass. They gotta go all the way down. They've done the, the left at the top of race mile 70. Now they're gonna go all the way down and do that almost 180, which we're looking at. I think this is Christian Serapis or Kyle Jurgensen. I'm not sure. Looks like Kyle Jurgensen. Now he's gonna go down here, make a hard left and head back up towards him when we will see him pass Ryan Arciero. So is it fair to say that we've got some beast on beast action? <laughs> <laughs> but I try. Okay. Yeah. I, need a, I need a drum set here. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it. I'm here all day, folks. That's right. Uh, Tip your waitress. <laughs> all right, so this is where they make the lazy turn. Now they're heading south. So that is Kyle Jurgensen, race mile 70. He's going to zigzag back and forth a little bit. And so householders out of bar, beer bottle pass by now. Yes, oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's way Joshua into, Tree Highway. Yeah. Joshua Tree Highway. I mean, I'm seeing him now around about race mile 82. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is Tim Herbst. We've been claiming that that was that, but you can see it's, it's obviously the, uh, got yeah. the lights and everything. That is Tim. Yeah, now the reason we're not picking him up on our tracker is because he's showing us a lap behind, which he is. So Tim, he's actually in uh, 
car 19 showing yep. green on your uh, on your tracker and he'll be making the turn to the right very shortly But now, what is this going to do for Christian Serapis if he's trying to catch him and he is stuck in his dust as well? So that's the thing with this multiple lap, you know, situation. Yeah. Anything can happen. But you know what? Tim is doing his race. He's not doing anything wrong. He, 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 they're putting time on the truck. They're getting more laps. They're getting more time. To be fair, so, if so I'm yeah. going to follow anyone, I, I wouldn't mind following Tim first. Uh, well, no. well, and, and the, the thing is, is his dust is moving very fast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's a good thing. Now this is EJ because we see no light bar and no hood. And EJ's run a, a pretty solid race today Very as well. Good. Nice and smooth with the hands. Very calm, collected. He is in some dust. We don't know exactly where he's at on the course, but if we look up, it says. Uh, what if this is Ryan Millen behind the wheel now? All speculation, but very well could be. Yeah, EJ and Thor, they really are learning their trade. Two young men. I know these guys got to be tired because I'm beat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see another car there uh, just ahead yep. of EJ. Just trying to find him on the tracker. I tell you who's beat is, is Ryan Arciero. Yeah, I'm getting a text broken. about it. They're speculating driveline. Speculating. Okay. Speculating. Really? Well, it, it, I could see that if they both got out, because then they got to work. They can work together. Yeah. Hold, hold each well, other. yeah, holding it, getting it in there, and stuff like that. But he wasn't in a tight spot, in a good spot. Now this is Grabowski. You can see with that big tail hanging out the back. Or no, I'm sorry. This is EJ. Yeah. Now I've got an interesting one. I think in front of him could actually be BJ Baldwin, looking on the tracker. BJ is definitely showing us moving. Oh my. Really? And showing in front of EJ. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm looking at uh, the tracker here for uh, Adam Householder. It's looked like he's uh, making oh, no, the turn around. Over. Over. What? Uh, EJ was, just pulled over. EJ just pulled over and stopped. Fast, too. Didn't didn't coast to a stop. Well, let's see what happens. The left side looks okay. No. Tire. It, it it definitely is a tire. A tire. Right well, which one? Uh, right, 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 right rear. rear. Yeah. So the, remember we were talking about the, with the new technology, so what happens is is that that it wasn't completely flat, but all of a sudden on your on your dash it goes yellow, lets you know that it's happening, so that you go okay, find a good place to pull over, and then now he has the automatic jacks, and so what they want to do is they want to make sure the hydraulic jacks is that they get the tire out before they start jacking it up because it makes it too high to grab at. So as soon as he started pulling off that tire, a lot of times they'll bang on the side of the truck, then pull it out, and then the, the co-driver will do do that. And then as soon as he gets on, he'll bang the side of the, the tire side of the truck again. He'll start to lower it as he re-racks that tire. So he pulls it off, throws it to the side. Now on these cars, on the hubs here, they have cones. Yes. The cones are to help you lift the tire on. Then you spin the tire. There it's a spin, pushes it on. Now the lug nuts will already be glued to the wheel. Yep. And then you've got quick starts on the studs. So those that were, so the nuts cannot become cross-threaded. So this is perfect. We get to see a whole tire change. He gets it done. And you know, call me an old co-driver, but it seems to me you could do it quicker if you had two of you at it. No. Uh, yeah, but now then no, you've you got to go, you've got to re-rack the harnesses. You've got to do all of that. Uh, I've got to say, this is a really good tire, a sw a tire swap. Yep. Very solid. Now he's going to pick around. up his gun on the way back yep. in. Yeah, He'll that'll grab go the straight gun, through the window. Throw it in. Take this. He's not doing watch. an orange head dive. Moving. Go. <laughs> very, very solid yeah, tire. That was yeah. very yeah. really good. That's that great. Textbook, actually. Of course, we have the super co-driver, Bob, that's like, eh, that's a little slow. I'm critical. <laughs> I'm critical, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but but for EJ, that was eternity. Oh, like, oh yeah. My God, what's taking so long? Yeah. If you look back at it, that that was about uh, uh, just under two minutes. Yeah. I was gonna say I I watched that and I couldn't find one mistake made no. by at all. I mean, like you said, textbook. No wasted motions. So it makes so you this is it makes you wonder how does Orin do it in just over a minute? 
He's a Beast. unicorn. <laughs> well, yeah, I and mean, you also just have to work. Now, this is what where Jim was talking about coming down that sand wash. Is if they scan back a little bit, you'll see Prim in the distance. So lights are on see, now. Yep, yeah, lights, lights are, are on. on. But as as he pulls back, you'll see Prim in the distance, and this is when you're going. Okay, man, do not yes. stub your toe right now. Keep keep it moving. Because you look down there, there's the solar fields, and then that is Prim in, in the distance. So he's on the home stretch for sure. He is but indeed. One of the big things to watch for is, you know, the, the race line, a lot of the rocks have kind of moved off, but you make a little mistake behind every single one of those grease woods. Seems like there's a big boulder. Something's going to reach out and grab you. And they're watching you, just waiting. Well, when they grade, when they clean that, when they clean that road up, they push them to the side. We're going to take a look at what's happening live with Ryan R. Sierra. So it looks like they are changing the drive shaft. That's a heartbreaker for Ryan. Been a long day for Ryan. Yeah, he's still not over yet, though. He is still no. currently sitting there in second position. But that's not the position he came to get. No, it's not. Uh, for none of us. But once again, we got to focus on finishing. Finish, you know. As they say, you can finish first, you finish with Spanish. Yeah, so. I'm just looking at uh, the, uh, the timing at the moment. So we're seeing Adam Householder is obviously our current race leader. Ryan Arciero, who we're looking at right now, is still in second place. Carl Jurgerson in the unlimited spec has made his way up into third place. But get this, but if he passes Ryan, obviously, which he could well do, there's about a seven or eight mile difference. Um, he will go into second place, which would be an astonishing. Unreal. EJ back on course. So EJ back up and running, and once again, unbelievable stop for them. So um, kudos to the co-driver, did, did an awesome job. You feel the temperature start to drop now, too. Yeah. You know, it's starting to get dark outside. Shadows are getting longer. Sun's starting to set. I can just feel the temperature drop now here at Prim, Nevada. Well, you know, it isn't an illusion. It's getting cold in where we are. Can you imagine what it's like where they are? Well, they got that, you know, 800 got horsepower some... heater sitting between them, so they're okay. <laughs> I've got some interesting facts and figures for you. Go. So that last segment, uh, we saw Adam Householder with a 44 minutes and 8 seconds. Carl Jurgensen, 43 minutes and 1 second. A minute faster than Adam Householder. But if you think that's impressive, Troy Grabowski, or Jack Grabowski, been 42-49, a minute <laughs> ahead again. Absolutely incredible. All right, as we're watching, this is Troy Herbst now. Troy, Tim Herbst, the, the wrong, wrong Herbst. But Tim Herbst, as he's getting back in, he's getting buckled up. So obviously they've made their changes. They're getting everything fixed and getting back on track. Um, so he'll make sure that the driver is in, buckled in, hooked up and ready to go. Got his lap belt, get his shoulders, and then here comes the co-driver. Watch this, you'll see he's got the big number two sitting on the dashboard. That means that he's in gear two at the moment. Get the net up. <laughs> and the tranny in gear, let's go. We're off. He's pulling away in second. Okay. Still doing some work there. Hmm. Oh, it looks to me like you making something secure. Is that the upper light bar? Yeah, I it's it's on that. You can see the lights flickering on the switches. We're back on track. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Now, Adam Householder, he <laughs> is in the speed control section, making his way back in towards town. Yeah, oh, can you imagine the conversation in that car right now? I'll be honest with oh. you. This is, the, this is the best part of the race for him right now. Because once he gets to the finish line, it's over. But right now, he's... Hey man, all we're gonna do is we're gonna go right there. That's all we gotta do. We just got a little bit, little bit to go. And, and that, that was Terry. funny. That was Terry. His father just went back the other, other direction. You and know, Terry's giving him a thumbs up, high five, virtually talking back and forth on the radio. Well, this is also the time when it's, I've seen other drivers dump it on the door on that last lap in the infield. Well, well that that is actually Johnny G, who's who's in because um, he sent me a thing that uh, Terry House would have broken axle, uh, and they replaced it in the road pit, and so. Johnny G is running that last little bit for him. So, but still, both householder vehicles out there. So, one's heading out, one's coming in. He's going to cross this bridge. He's yep. going to uh, bail off after he crosses the bridge back into the dirt. It's going to bring him to uh, the home stretch here. You know, when we were here the last couple of years, it was dark about the end of this race. Look how fast this race went. 
Yeah, they've been, lifetime. Time. they've been averaging around about 1 minute 43 uh, for an a hour. lap, which is an incredible oh, pace. An hour 43. But the one thing that I find, it, yeah, an hour 43, sorry, I do apologise. But the one thing I find amazing is that how the tyre technology is just keep improving. Yeah. We've seen fewer flats this year than we've seen in previous years. And yet we're chatting to Rob Mack, and he was saying yeah. there's more exposed rock than there's ever been before. Well, and that's where a lot of people, you know, like some of the guys tried the, the 42 inch tire and it was just a little too big and too cumbersome. But this 40 is the happy medium. It gives you the cushion that you need, the traction that you need. And uh, it, it's really a great performance tire. And as we're watching Adam House Holder work, navigate his way through. So we did see Rob Mack get into a situation <laughs> this late in the race, but right now he's not in a, in a, in a tight spot. So imagine these crews let him know he's well within radio contact they're just going hey all, all you're gonna do is bring it home buddy yeah yeah then what a fantastic sight here for adam householder you can't help but eat happy for that family you know yeah, absolutely Jeez. but the action started at 10 45 this morning when we saw the unlimited trucks leave the line and there's been so much action since then nick whetstone took off in first place after his incredible qualifying session, qualifying a full 10 seconds ahead of some of the biggest names in our sport. He led the race for three quarters of a lap before succumbing to a flat tire. So Bob Bauer, what are you telling your guy right now? Congratulations, don't screw it up. We only have 100 yards left. There we go. <laughs> Got a bit more than that. And that's EJ Hurst going back on track again. But Ricky, I am telling him that, actually, yeah. you know. Ooh. What do they say? Most car accidents are within a mile of your house. Yeah. Because you relax and you 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 give up. You get and, distracted. Right, and then you make a mistake. And as we and it wasn't a mistake by Rob Mack back you know a couple years ago, but he went to pass. You know he's in the dust because he he thought of Dolly was coming. and He doesn't know how quick he was, so yeah. he had to go for the pass on Luke. They connect, goes over. Rob's like, oh my god, what did I do to my teammate? Blah blah. blah. But he was doing what he's supposed to do, and and that. But right now. Adam is not in that uh, is not in that mind space. He he knows that he's got a big lead. He's well within radio contact. They're going just bring it home, and he's and he's doing such a phenomenal job. And he's feeling that car, and he knows he's got plenty of car in him. Oh yeah, you know it's it's a happy car right now. Tell you what, here in a couple of minutes, uh, I mean this is going to move him into some elite company as uh, drivers have won multiple mid 400s. Well, and it pu also puts him in a great position for the championship. Let's not let's not forget about that because. Races are important, absolutely. You want to win the mid 400, you want to win the Baja 1000, absolutely. But the championships seem to live forever. You know, yep. when we talk about that. But this is also going to this is also going to put him up into the names. You know, the list of people that we consider to be at the very top of our sport: the Justin Loftons, the Rob McCacrons, the Bryce Menzies, the Luke McMillans. He's going to be right up there amongst these guys. Well, and the other thing is, is he didn't do it as a little kid. <laughs> you know, he, he he's not a he's not a you know he's not a 14 year old kid out there, and everyone thinks that you have to do that. But in truck racing and in vehicles, you know, they say with age comes a cage. You can get better and better and better. Just like Larry Raglan was so fast, well into his 60s, and and was you know uh, was was pretty unbelievable. But right now, you are watching Adam Householder as he navigates his way back. He's cruising through the pits. He only has a little bit left to go. This is this is got, he's got to be so happy inside that truck right now. So yeah, we teach this? our charm schools. This, this is, is where, where we tell the standing, driver standing outside, giving yeah. the heads. Yeah, this is where we tell the driver it's okay now to start thinking about what you're going to say with your sponsors, who you're going to thank, how you're going to go about it. Tell, tell the real story, tell the real emotion. Was, we teach him this. Well, and, but as a driver, you're like, oh, my God, what did I just go through? Like, it's a flash. Like, that, that 400 miles is over, and it seems like in a heartbeat, but then again, it seems like a completely different life ago when you started this. And so uh, it, it's, it's such a great emotional feeling for a guy to work so hard. And then, once again, him and Ryan did everything right today. And this is the mint. Yeah. You know, this is not the XYZ 300. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know what I'm not calling my race? It's going to be called the XYZ 300. Damn it. I thought I was going to have, I thought I was going to have an iconic <laughs> event, but now you shot that to hell. You know, I mean, this, this is, this has done something. This is a, this is the thing that leaves a mark. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and the drivers know it. And for, for Adam to do it in the way he's done it, he, he hasn't faltered all day long. You know, for NASCAR, it's Daytona. For sporty cars, it's Le Mans. Yep. The Mint lives the, on that list. The Indy 500 and the Mint 400. 
Yes, Adam Householder will be coming around and coming and finishing the end of this speed control zone. And then he's only a few short bends away from crossing the line. Got the big jump, get the firework show. And he's got the big smile. I can see it from here. here. We can go. you see it? I can see it. Ladies and gentlemen, be upstanding. This is Adam Householder. He's making his way towards the end of the BFG 2024 Mint 400. Just look at this. He's throwing roost as he makes his way round. And here we go. Adam Householder takes the big win here at the 2024 B of Goodridge Mint 400. Wow. Unbelievable. What a race. Great race all day long. Congratulations to the whole Householder team. Not just the driver, Adam, but the father, Terry, as well as all the crew and everybody. They did a fantastic job. And he did it solo, all by himself, all day long. Yeah, absolutely incredible stuff there. So, you know, so Ricky, you brought up some great stuff here. So you know the team's been working on this truck and working on this race for months ahead. Yep. But so's he. You yep. talked about all the steps he took to change how his lifestyle went, what it meant for him in a race car. And it sure has paid off this afternoon. Yeah, it's the, the emotional jump. And, and, and Jim Beaver, you're sitting here and you're contemplating you've been there. You've, you've had that feeling, and in the emotional dump that we're doing right now, like you just won the, you know, the mid 400. What, what does that mean to a driver? Well, I mean, it means a lot, especially for him, because, you know, he won that one, and sometimes people go, oh, it was a fluke. He got lucky that one year, you know, whatever. And, you know, and there's no truth behind that, because no, you don't get zero. lucky into a race win. But now he's going, you know what? I just backed it up. I did it a second time. All right. Yep. I, you know, th this legitimizes me. This legitimizes my story, my team. You know, and to me, th this is him going, all right, I've arrived. You know, and, and because as a race car driver, even if after you get that first big win, you still question things. Yeah. And now there's no question at all. Adam Householder, this guy is legit. He's one of the top in our sport. As, as well as the crew. I mean, we t we're just talking about that. That truck has been finishing all those races. You know, Parker, he was right there. The other races, he's right there. So in every race, um, he's a threat mechanically, physically, speed-wise. He's the complete package right now. So we're not just saying that because he's won today, but as you said, Jim, he's won one more time. times. Yeah, so here comes Christian Serapis now. Now Christian Serapis is having an absolutely fantastic race. He's had his dramas out on track. We've seen him park, we've seen him changing tires. We saw him changing a drive line earlier as well. It looks like he's out there in the, is that the wash coming into? Uh, yeah, Joshua he's still Tree. got to come through the speed control area and make his way through the pits. I think he's still out on uh, Joshua Tree Highway. Yeah, possibly. he's just turning and starting to head down around. So he he's probably, um, up around race, I think that's race mile uh, 80, almost at race mile 80. So he's got to work uh, Joshua Tree Highway all the way down. You can see where the red dirt is, and so he's got that still to navigate. But kudos to him as well. He's had a great race. Yeah, I'm just looking on the tracker right now, and I can see the Ryan R. Sierra is still stationary. Mm. Not an easy place to get to if you're trying to, you're trying to no. get out. And also. Working on the truck in the dark and you know trying to see and what laying do. down on cold sand sucks the thermal temperature. <laughs> well, no, no, a, well it does suck, but it sucks the the temperature out of your body. Yeah, there's absolutely. a couple. There's one guy here we really need to pay attention to. He's going to be coming in very fast indeed, and that is Cole Potts. He was running in uh, first in his class, but fifth overall. But he has a bucket of adjusted time on his hands. Oh, well, let's take a look at Adam's face. I mean, he's tired, but he looks happy. I, I see mean, teeth. He does not look <laughs> does not look that beat up. Well, we saw like a couple years ago. Hey, Tiff, give her, give it to him. We're gonna have that interview in just a little bit, but um, great, great smile, but on his face, and he looks like he's pretty fresh. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he's a little bit tired, but right now, Tiffany's got our race winner, Adam Householder. Tiffany, take it away. Adam Householder, what an epic day. We're still calculating everything, but I just want to talk to you about this ride. Earlier today, you said you really wanted this. This was something that you wanted, especially coming off of Parker in this Unlimited series. Just tell me about today, how it's been for you. Six hours, 50 minutes in this truck. You know what? We had a flawless day. No issues, no nothing. Never had to get out. Um, had a fantastic day. Um, 
we just ran with everyone at the beginning and kind of see what their pace was doing and kind of set from there and everyone just kept dropping out like flies and we just uh, proceeded to go to the front. Well, we kept seeing fast times, fast times. Of course, you and your co-driver had to be calm, had to be collected. I know you have to think a bunch of people, but really, in one word, I kind of want to know, how do you sum up the Mint 400? Incredible. We won. <laughs> Incredible. Well, Adam Householder, nice job. First physical truck over the line here at the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. Back up to you guys. Wow. Incredible. I mean, that... and and. And of course, it's incredible when you win. But I love the the enthusiasm on his face. Yeah. He looks like he his what I we've talked about it all day. His fitness program looks right on point. He was smart all day. He said they started dropping like flies, but he wasn't just it wasn't just attrition. He was fast all day. Oh, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't poke along. No, he did his job. He did you a job bet. of work. I love the fact he said I was just working their pace out, finding out where I need to be, seeing what it was all about. He did everything right 120 percent you gotta remember that he was also holding back ryan arciero and ryan arciero would have been throwing down absolutely everything he had that shows you the pace of this man yeah. that shows you the ascendancy of adam householder well and how comfortable they are running that truck at that pace you know what i mean that's confidence in your equipment oh boy you know, and he's been spending more and more time in this truck the last few years. And when you uh, spend that much time in a truck, you get really comfortable with everything about that truck. And, you know, you've seen drivers where they switch on and off every year, different truck. Yep. Adam's so familiar with that truck. It's like, you know, it's like an old pair of socks. It's you an know, extension just, of himself. It's a, an extension of himself, and he knows how the truck's going to react in all different situations. And that's the recipe for success. It truly and, is. And then here we see Cole Potts starting down Joshua Tree Highway way great job by him he's been at it all day long um, as we talked earlier he lost that hood in a rollover yesterday but he did everything that he needed to do he worked his way up he i think we saw that he got a flat was stopped for a little bit but he's been on a tear and worked his way up now i think he's uh, physically third yeah he's running in third position right now but uh, I think he might just be behind uh, Carl Jurgensen and Troy Gr uh, or Jack Grabowski. Yep. Now that's going to be the big story for yes. me is uh, seeing where Carl Jurgensen comes in. Now Carl Jurgensen, of course, I'm just looking back here, and Carl Jurgensen started in 31st position, so he has a, a lot of adjusted time on his side. But I think if, it, if everything goes well for Carl, he, we could see him second overall here. Well, this is Kyle Jurgensen as he works his way back down uh, Joshua Tree Highway. Strong run for him, great run for Camberg. Yeah, he came in to do a job, and the job of work he is doing. This is that turn, so he's not too far behind Cole Potts. So this is the turn to head down Joshua Tree Highway. You can see the, the, the dirt, and then also the sun is off to um, right over the top of him, so he's heading south, and so that's, uh, that, that sun is behind that mountain. How close is EJ? Uh, EJ's a little e way back. EJ's quite a ways back. But it's going to be it's going to be Jack Grabowski that we're going to be looking for. So we should be seeing him sometime soon. But he has to make some time if he plans on beating uh, Kyle Jurgensen. So um, right now you can see the sun is down, it is dark, and lights are on. He's got a note about uh, EJ, and that is, is that uh, Ryan Millen is uh, in 263 with EJ right now. Okay, that's he's in the he's in the right seat, or he's he's driving. He just says he's in. Okay, okay that means the Ryan's driving. That's yep. kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Those of you who don't know who Ryan Millen in is, I mean, obviously the yes. uh, iconic uh, Millen family. Uh, Ryan's done a lot of stage rally stuff. I spent a lot of time with him in the stages, champion. Uh, had a factory Toyota ride for a while. New and, uh, Zealanders. Yeah, and he was doing some stage rally. Won a couple of national championships in stage rally. Uh, now he's, uh, you know, hired on with the Herps program and uh, been doing a great job running trucks with them. Well, I just got a little bit of information from Greg Adler, and he said that Josh Montoya is EJ's co-driver. So we really want to congratulate Josh Montoya on an unbelievable tire change. Great job yeah. in and out. Bob Bauer said you sucked. But other no, than that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. But I, we, all of us thought you were great and Flawless, <laughs> but the superstar co-driver saw a couple holes in your game. Here we go. Just gonna flush this thing I and gotta, send me down the pipe. I gotta bust your balls a little bit. <laughs> okay. 
Well, it's it not, has been an unbelievable day, Jim Marsden. I mean, we're not done yet. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. No, si we're I'm not, not even I'm not close signing to being out, done. But they are putting us on camera. Um, it, it's been everything that it should have been. I mean, Western honestly, 400. That's why we make this pilgrimage out here every <laughs> single year, and yeah. it is a pilgrimage, isn't it? it Let's is. be completely honest. But, uh, I mean, we started yesterday with the limited classes, which were absolutely astonishing. Yes. And we saw Ronnie Anderson coming in and bringing a UTV in first position. Yeah. Then, of course, today it's been all around about the unlimited classes, and it's been absolutely amazing. And it just check this out. It is the, all about this guy right now, and that is Adam Householder with his father Terry so they're going back and forth he's going well this is what happened to me I lost an axle I got Johnny G in there and doing this and doing that but son great job well well done keep it the householder name uh, going I tell you what this uh, puts him in a great shot to uh, to win some some back-to-back -back championships I think you know the off-road community does not have a lot of not not nice people but these two are some of the nicest nicest folks that we've got in our sport what i really love about adam is particularly when he comes out and races at king of the hammers you will always find him by the fire pit at night he's always hanging out he's that guy who's down there chatting to people and wanting to talk to people and tell them all about his program what he's up to and everything like that real humble guy real happy to yep. share his experiences well and he's a he's a driver too Okay, so we're going to see some highlights now from Adam Householder and his journey to the victory in the 2024 BF Goodrich Mint 400. Great start. He got right. He actually jumped Christian Seropis really well. They were going back and forth, but he had a great pace from the beginning, but not over jumping stuff too, too, too far. Yeah, kept it neat and tidy all through the day. And we saw this. Earlier on, little he and dice Pat with Dean got together. <laughs> little yep. dice with Pat Dean. Pat's like, damn it, yeah. stop by me. <laughs> but that's that's the kind of stuff that could have made or broke the race. You know, you want to get yourself in front so you're not eating that dust. As he turns, makes his way down Joshua Tree Highway early in the day. Now it's worth also saying about when he's. Uh, um, Adam, when he was actually chasing down Pat Dean, he actually made that decision on the fly not to take the pit stop that he was talking around yep. at the end of lap one. So some really intelligent driving here and well, great teamwork. Had to push his way through a little bit, so there was a little bit of bump and grind, but he had a pace going all day long. And once he got that lead, he never looked back, didn't make any mistakes, was very uh, smooth, consistent. As Sarah Price said, this was even tight in a side-by-side, -side, but now you can see the sun is going down, and he continues to, get, uh, to push his pace as he does the right-hand turn down into Joshua Tree Highway. Yeah, one of the things I love about this, there's not many cars you see finish with all their fenders on. The Adam Householder, he's finished with all his fenders on. A little less paint in areas, but he won't be minding that as he crosses the line to be the unofficial champion here at the 2024 Beer of Goodridge Ridge Tires Mint 400. Truck looks absolutely beautiful. Like, yeah. like Ricky said, he looks fresh. Yeah, he looks fresh. Yes. And now he's probably calling his wife or his kids or somebody that, hey, we did it, we did it, we did it. But um, unbelievable job. And once again, two-wheel drive is the king of the Mint 400. Yeah, now we don't see many four-wheel drives actually finish here. So can Cole Potts and Brett Kamitsky bring it home for the four-wheel drives? Well, and he's done a phenomenal job you know yet he, he's finishing what he said he was started yesterday but then he, he stubbed his toe a little bit which no harm no foul it happens um, happens to everybody but i love how he's bounced back and he didn't just oh screw it i screwed up so i'm just whatever he's fought all day long and i really hope to see him make it to the finish line he's not too far off we already saw him turn down go head down joshua tree highway so we should see him as well as the finish for the unlimited spec class as well that's a very tight race between grabowski and jurgensen it's yeah, really interesting absolutely. to see how the times compare when they finally get it done yeah yeah well and i think you know talking about that you know i i think jurgensen Man, he started so far deep, and especially Grabowski as well. I think they've got an opportunity to make a run at this. Uh, I, I don't want to say overall. I think Householder put together a really good program, but I think yeah. a top three overall at least. Oh, they, yeah. can't, they can't touch Adam, but what they can do is they can break into the top two and the top three. And I would not be at all surprised to see Carl Jurgensen and Troy Grabowski in second and third place overall. Yeah. 
congrats. I mean, not it's not done yet, but congratulations to both of those guys pushing those trucks so hard and back and forth and back and forth. And you get into the no man's land. Neither of them had to have have helicopters, and they wonder when they get out the other side. Did I make time or did I lose time? So, yeah. so it's a, a little more old school there. So, um, right now we are looking. You are looking at see that big first place on the B of Goodrich hat. That is something that people honor so much. But right now we're going to take a quick break. We will be back for the conclusion of the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400. We'll be right back. BestOffRoad.com, offering the best off-road brands, best customer experience, best prices. Experience off-road retail re-engineered by BestOffRoad.com. Stop by our booth in the Midway. Off-road advice is always free. BestOffRoad.com can help you create your ultimate off-road vehicle. Over 25 years of off-road racing dominance proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks, the leader in off-road shock technology. Adam Householder, holy smokes, man, what a nail biter. You guys were out there mashing, and there was there were trading places, trading places, trading places all day long. 
it, it's not easy out there. By the time you get that last lap, it is brutal. You're hitting curbs, you know, wall faces, and uh, just uh, I just try to keep the truck alive, and that's what we did. And that's what you did. You did an awesome job out there. Of course, the Navi giving you a good heads up and telling you where to slow down, where to speed up, where to dodge. Yeah, there's a lot of rocks out there, and so uh, he was on it, Trevor. I mean, did an incredible job all day telling me what to do, where to go, and we, we made it happen. That is fantastic. Sporting the BF Goodrich tires, of course. I know the tires held out fantastic. We got our BFG family out here. What an awesome job you did out there today. I tell you what, what a great start. You guys were banging on the doors all the way through the infield. How much fun is that? Uh, you know, when you go door to door, it's uh, pretty incredible. Um, I mean, we just had a good pace going. The truck's phenomenal. You know, no flats all day on my BFGs. And uh, it's awesome to have the confidence underneath of me. So it's uh, incredible. It's hard to believe you can go out there and go that fast. And we're watching video footage of you guys, the tires moving like three feet underneath of you and the truck just kind of bouncing around, sailing along and not a flat. Unbelievable, that says a lot about BFG. Anyway, we're gonna bring in, we're gonna bring in our social media and also our docs. We're gonna do a quick video drop on you, do a quick interview and then I'm gonna come back and then we're gonna do something with these things right here. Okay, if you're just joining us, this is the 2024 BF Goodrich Tires MIM 400, and that is Cole Potts making his way back hillwards to down right now. We've just seen Adam Householder crossing the line to lock out a prestigious victory here at Prim Valley, Nevada, just outside of Sin City, Las Vegas. As we get a glimpse of the sun going down, the sun setting out here at Prim. I'm a little old school. So I still refer to it as state line. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as you should. But a great drive for Cole Potts. You know, we, we, he had a situation yesterday where, you know, he stubbed his toe in qualifying, but he hung in there all day long. So the, I think this is going to be an unbelievable growing uh, situation for Cole because uh, he's never lacked speed. I mean, always charging, always going. But here he had to stay in and persevere all day long um, and make back the mistake that he made yesterday. And now he is going to finish the, the uh, number one spot in the unlimited all-wheel drive. Yeah, he started in 17th <laughs> position this morning. I, th I think this says a lot about Cole in general and the way he's grown, you yeah. know, because a lot of guys won after the qualifying mishap he had would have just been ah uh, you know in their head and then he came out and you know and ran a strong run and had a few issues and things like that but to persevere get here and uh you know be the second uh, official finisher across the line i mean that says a lot about uh, the growth he's had you know mentally and uh man this kid's you know one breakthrough went away from putting himself really on the map but the truck the truck i mean bryce Minzy had a hard time getting to the finish line and for him to finish the mint 400 as hard as he has he's driven all day long says a lot so they figured something out so whatever they did it might be drivetrain it could be who knows what it is but it's working now yeah absolutely and now how many all-wheel drive trucks have finished the mint 400 I'm, I, you, you that's got a me. difficult one isn't that's it that's a yeah. complete speculation on my part so <laughs> one more turn and cole potts is going to be the 2024 bf goodrich tires mint 400 champion in the unlimited all-wheel drive class he will indeed, and he's just coming around the corner now. He's got one more jump. The Flamers will shoot as Cole Potts makes his way around. 
and he will be first in class in the all-wheel drive unlimited trucks. Look at the size right. of that jump. <laughs> he, he didn't lay up like Adam Householder. That was a full <laughs> sin moment there. Hey, he can put it on the trailer in 10 minutes. He's not that fast. Look at this. He's super chuffed. He's got to be. I, I'm really, really happy for him because it... <coughs> To do to stub your toe like that yesterday and then come back, it, it says a lot for his fortitude that he, you know, is matured as a driver. And congratulations to him and the whole Potts family because it's it, it's a family effort. Obviously, we saw the buggy yesterday going upside down, getting back on its wheels. So, um, great, great day for the Potts family. You know, and Cole, he's driven a lot. You know, he's done some uh, some stadium super yep. truck racing. We've seen him in buggies. We've seen him in two wheel drive trucks, four wheel drive trucks. I mean, this kid's got a lot of wheel time. Yeah, and I'm also seeing here that uh, Christian Serapis has just come on in as yep. well. Now he's got a tire missing off the rack there. So Christian, so Christian Serapis has just had a fantastic race. He's currently sitting second in class in the unlimited trucks, and he is our third finisher. So Christian Serapis, he started this morning in seventh place alongside our race winner, Adam Householder. So we are speculating that he did ding a drive shaft in, in, the, in the gravel pit and, and had to change that. Yeah, and Armour would suggest also that he's had to change a tire out on track as well. Yeah. Because the last time we saw that car, it definitely had two in the rack. Well, we saw a great race between Christian and Ryan Arciero on that last lap until both of them had issues. They were just putting down a burner. That Some of the drivers still heading out for the last lap. Woo. I've yeah, been that guy before. I've Dude, been that guy you, before. You look over and you go, God, I really wish I was taking the checkered flag right now. <laughs> and Maybe I'll see that in about three hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can bet their pit crew are thinking the same. Oh, that, that's the thing. You know, the unsung oh. heroes of the sport of the pit crews, you know, <laughs> they just put in so many hours. But they're really happy now. Oh, yeah. They, you know. That's one thing I love about off-road is, is, you know, Adam Householder with the win. You know, and he'll, he'll be the first to tell you it's as much about his team as it is him. And that's one thing that's awesome when you get to share that moment with a bunch of guys that have been helping you out. It, well, we, that we, is a good feeling because you have to share it when you f mess up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we were talking about this earlier. You know, you don't just arrive at the Mint 400. It's months of preparation. It's months of hard work. And often it's years of hard work. And years of dreaming. Yeah. Oh, here we go. We've just got another finisher come across the line. We've just uh, missed it. Carl Jurgensen has just crossed the line. The second of the beast machines. This is the Camberg car, and you're going to love this one, Mr. Johnson. Carl Jurgensen is first across the line in unlimited spec, truck spec, but he is in second overall. Wow. wow. Unbelievable drive all day long for him. And now, if Grabowski comes in within the next 30 seconds, he could be that position, but I don't think Grabowski is that close. No, I don't think he is either, but he does look like, I mean, depending <coughs> on where Grabowski is, he could come in and steal that third position overall from Cole Potts. Let's see what happens. So Grabowski started just behind Carl Jurgensen. And it makes you wonder, you know, obviously these uh, these unlimited specs had to start behind a lot of traffic. You know, if they would have been able to, uh, you know, start a little bit sooner, I mean, they may have had to play at the overall. Well, and that's what, you know, some of the series do is that they qualify everybody and let them let, let the cards fall where they may. But it does, it makes it hard to score if, if somebody qualifies really well and, he, and he's five trucks, in, five trophy trucks in front of the next guy. Yeah. But in, in theory, they should all be moving at the same at the same speed. Um, so so you, you let the trophy truck legends start up there. So this is a this is an argument that people are going to go for it and against it. Just you know like down there and, and right there. There's the celebration. I don't want to take it away from that from those two. And there is our champion. That is Adam Householder. I love this so much. He's got a big bottle of champagne. Got the Magnum. So while we continue here, we've got our girl on the beat, Tiffany Stone, and she is down there right now with Cole Potts. 
Nicole Potts. Now we are figuring everything still out, but physical second over here at the Mint 400. We had a conversation earlier. Talk to me about your day. Yesterday wasn't what you wanted in qualifying, but that was yesterday. Today is today, and it's a new day, sir. How are you feeling? Yeah, for uh, for an eventful qualifying, I think uh, we're pretty happy in the position we're at right now. It wasn't uh, an easy race; it never is. Um, you know, and we did what we said we would, but uh, it's racing and things happen. You know, I had a couple flats, but uh, and lost brakes off the uh, pretty much off the start after our first flat, right? So. Um, just trying to drive smart and trying to get as close as we can, could to householder. But, hey, we're happy. Well, talk to me about driving in the dark. It's obviously a little bit different. You've got that sun setting into your eyes right there. Now you've got the dark. That's going to change things. Shadows start to come out. You start to see things that you didn't see before. How did you tackle that? Yeah, I think uh, the dark is fine. It's the transition that's the really tough part. You know, the last 30 miles was pretty brutal with the sun in our eyes and and the way the dust was settling and no wind. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely the hardest, and you really can't uh, set your lights up for that. You can get close, and that's why we're happy to have good partners like Baja Designs with us. Wonderful. Like I said, we're still figuring everything out. Great day today, especially like we talked about yesterday. Nice job. Cole Potts, back up to you guys. Thank you, Tiffany. Always good to hear from you and to also hear from Cole Potts. Now, Ricky, check this out. This is where it all started. Had a great run in qualifying. They came in just a little bit hot and then to flip them back, back over, you could see where the hood is messed up. Started without that, but then went to work, Jim Beaver. Oh, yeah, he went to work and, uh, you know, up in that first lap, he was just on fire, picking his way through traffic. He had to start a little bit farther back, but an absolute burner as we get a shot there of him going through the deep whoops. And he kept it consistently up there. You know, he, he wasn't really vying for the front, but he wouldn't let loose of them. He kept them tethered in. And yeah. comes across the line, second finisher after uh, qualifying, back a ways, um, had to start in the back and pass all those drivers, but did a great job all day long. Right now, we're going to take it down to Tiffany Stone with Brett, or I'm uh, sorry, Christian Serapis. I almost called him by his brother, Brett Serapis, but Christian Serapis had an unbelievable day and looked like a drive shaft at the end. Tiffany, take it away. Thanks, guys. Down here with Christian. Now, Christian, we saw you battle all day long. It was an incredible one. We did see you stop for a little bit. Can you explain exactly what happened? Yeah. Uh, the first time we stopped, we had a flat and had, uh, had a little bit longer than we liked to to change it just because um, our impact wasn't working right. And we also wanted to assess the truck because it was nasty out there. But the last lap, uh, we were running really good. Uh, we were ahead of our Sierra for a while, and a rock got brake line. So ran it till I couldn't stop the truck anymore. Pulled over. Uh, Evan hopped out, uh, patched it up, and we were able to limp our way to the finish with only front brakes. Which trying to stop a 6,000-pound truck with only front brakes is a task uh, in of itself. But super happy to be at the finish. Looks like we're back on the box again. Um, which is a testament to not only uh, our program, but everybody at Evan Weller Racing who puts this truck together and comes and supports us. Uh, never had a single DNF with an Evan Weller prep. So um, super happy that we can build off this. Awesome. And like we've always talked about, we do have corrected time. We're still figuring out everything. You are physical third right now at the Min 400. It's good to see you coming. And you're still watching the guys come in right now. It's awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of this. It's so great to talk to you every single year. Nice job, Christian. Back up to you guys. Uh, but, you, 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 but you look at it, man. That's, yeah. uh, uh, you, know, you go over that, well, coulda, shoulda, woulda, but he was right there. Okay, I've got some more news. Currently in our first place, we're just seeing him on stage now, is Adam Householder. Coming in second and first in unlimited spec is Carl Jurgensen. And in third place and in second in unlimited spec, it's only Troy Grabowski wow. with Jack Grabowski running. Incredible stuff there. So two unlimited truck specs in the top three. That is unbelievable. The Grabowski brothers got to be proud of that. They, they charged all day long into race. As we said, we've seen some history between Jurgensen and the Grabowskis, oh, yeah. and, uh, but they just didn't quite they didn't quite get it done today. So both of those guys had a great, great day. 
Yeah, it looks like we're going to see some Carl Jurgensen highlights here. Most of them are going to be him off the ground. <laughs> But, uh, but but before we do that, we better go and actually speak to Carl. So Tiffany's got Carl Jurgensen down there right now. So Tiffany, what do you got? Kyle, it's so good to see you down here right now. Physical fourth right now for the Mint 400. I know we're still figuring everything out. We're still doing corrected time. But I just want to talk to you about your day. Like you said about this new truck, you really wanted to show everybody what you could do as a driver, as a team, and as a truck. Well, our truck did most of the work today. Um, I mean, it feels the same as it left the start line today. So, you know, hats off to the team for for prepping and building such a strong truck. I mean, especially this last lap, we, we had to push and we beat the shit out of it. And it was all or nothing. It was it was winter wad, and uh, you know it won. You know, we got the, we got looks like uh, Garousi just showed up. We got the the spec truck uh, win, and I don't know where we're at overall, but what a good day for Team Camberg and all of our sponsors. Wonderful. And like we said, we're always going to look at corrected time, see where everything, but I know that you're happy. We did have that conversation that you really wanted to prove this and you wanted to show everybody. Great job, Kyle. Can't wait for everything. So good to have you here at the Min 400. Back up to you guys. You know something, Ricky? He said it at the very beginning of, on the, uh, the walk. It's my responsibility now. He says, now I got to do my part. He sure as heck did. He definitely did. And yeah, this is a highlight reel. You can see where they had to get off and change the tire. They both worked together. Now, not every driver does that, which I think they should, because yes. you made the mistake, so you should help. But they do a great job together. They get that tire changed back in there. He gets his window nut up and watch. As soon as the co-driver gets in, away they start rolling. But hits the seat, foot hits the floor. Yep, so this was going into the last lap. And he kept looking back, where is Grabowski? But uh, the, the Grabowski brothers were not close enough to make up that distance. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, do you remember when they launched this car at SEMA this year? And there was such a big buzz around it that the beast mode was there. And then they turned around and said, hey, we got Carl Jurgensen coming back to drive for us. And everyone just went, oh, yeah, come on, let's bring this. And that's why we love this so, so much. It's great to see Camberg right up on the top of the box again. And to see Carl Jurgensen just proving one more time why he is so good at this sport. Well, I love his term, win or wad. Yep. So that means checkers and records. He was he was going for it 100%. So congratulations to the whole Camberg team and Kyle Jurgensen as well. Look at that second overall in only 10 minutes or 11 minutes behind the winner. Um, what would have happened if he started up front? And well, absolutely. And let's not forget that Kyle Jurgensen was running literally half the horsepower yeah. of Adam Householder. But yeah great job for them really happy to see Cambridge back up in top and so here we go let them celebrate and win that you know that's a flavor of happy Ricky that's just really hard to describe to anybody. Kyle Jurgensen coming in second overall out of the monster energy Cambridge intense Kyle's getting his yeah, yeah, I'm sure you've been wearing that long enough. <laughs> Safety's not an issue anymore up here on stage. Go ahead and grab those medals, throw the medals around your neck. Oh, there it is. Unleashing the beast, you gotta be tickled about this, dude. First overall in class, or first overall in class, and then second overall from everybody. How freaking cool is that? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. We got one hell of a truck here. It just, it ate it up all day. You guys were sounding solid all the way off the start. You guys started deep in the pack and you had to make your way up through a lot of, a lot of fast cats. We, uh, we did. We had a lot of lap or slow traffic from the class one cars and the trophy trucks. You know, Sean and I were, were doing really good in the cab today. We were moving people out of the way. We busted our lights up. It was, it was not an easy day. But the truck ran flawless. We had no mechanical issues, just one flat that was deserved. That was deserved, you earn it. You earn it, yes. Right after pit one, I smacked something pretty big. That's right, you see it coming, you're like, oh darn it, I did that to myself. Yes, yes. Yeah, we're, we're excited, this thing ran so good today. I'm a little beat up, the course is, course is rough, but 
You know, I'm getting old for this, you know. <laughs> You're getting old. <laughs> Not a whole lot of gray hair, but I still see some poking through. That was, I think, I think that was like mile marker 58 or so that you got some of those. Anyway, congratulations, man. That's a huge deal. We're going to bring in our documentary. We're going to bring in Tiffany Stone here real quick. We're going to do our social media. She's going to do her drop on it. And then we're going to have documentary after that. Okay, well, that's fantastic to see Carl Jurgensen there. First in the unlimited spec and second overall, Ricky. Unbelievable. And I got to give it to the Grabowski brothers as well. They ran hard all day long, kept him honest. And, and when you have somebody like a Kyle Jurgensen says, it was winner wad. That means he was giving it 100%. So I want to congratulate the Grabowski brothers as well for a great job. Well, it's pretty remarkable how far and how fast uh, the technology in these uh, unlimited specs has become. I mean, I remember, you know, I don't want to say a few years back, but some years back, I mean, it was hour, two hours before the first unlimited spec finished yep. after the unlimited trucks. Now they're fighting for the overall. To me, that's just crazy, the progression. Well, I think it says an awful lot about having a balanced unit. You know, that uh, the... the the spec has everything except the horsepower and torque. And if a good driver can find a way to keep that moving forward all the time, he's got it. Well, and a lot of times in motocross, we saw that the 250s were faster than the 500s because you can drive them that much harder. Yeah. So unbelievable. Your top five and fifth, Christian Serapis. Fourth, Cole Potts. Um, third, Troy Grabowski. Kyle Jerks in second with Adam Householder. We will be right back with the conclusion of this year's um, mint 400. a little help we got help need some advice we got advice no matter what you need we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it exceptional customer service just one part that makes o'reilly stand apart the professional parts people oh 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 o'reilly auto parts I got that right turn, we're good. Just, uh, meet up at the compound group up. I turn four. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good little driver, straight on through.
And welcome back to the 2024 BF Goodridge Mint 400. What a day of racing it has been. Now, Ricky, Jim, we've got someone very special joining us in the booth right now. This is a man who probably needs no introduction to everyone at home, <laughs> but we'll do it anyway. It is our race winner, Adam Householder. Adam, welcome to the booth. Thank you, guys. Glad to be up here. Now, Ricky, uh -huh. I know you want to talk to this guy. What do we got? So, Adam, I talked to you right before the start of the race. I told you how good you're looking. You know, in a straight way, but you're looking <laughs> fit, you're looking good, and you didn't falter all day long. When I saw you last year, you were dead when you got out of the car. How much better does your physical condition help you in the truck? Oh, big time. You know, this uh, doesn't get any easier. The amount of energy you exert racing this stuff at running 100% the whole time. Um, so when I came into this year, it's year 24, my truck's 24. There so you go. I came into this, it's like, we're going to do it. So not only mentally, physically, everything, I was about it. I want to win races, and that's what my goal is. Well, and, and you did. And it, it's not a gimme. I mean, you raced hard all day long. You were clean. You made the right choices. You went when you got to go. We loved the short course race with you and Pat Dean, a little fender slapping back and forth. Oh, I love Pat. I, it was a good battle. You know, it was all in fun. And I think I was out the window giving him a thumbs up as we were banging fenders and right, let's so keep on going. Take a look at the screen. We're going to give you your highlights from the day. So you started off really clean. You, you jumped. You didn't jump the start, but you really left uh, Christian Serapis on the line. Yeah, these trucks have a lot of forward bite. You know, you step on the gas, they go. So how was the track first lap versus last lap? I know I'm, I'm supposed to spread the questions between yeah. my, my guys, but I have all these questions. Now, here, here here's the race. I saw him go wide. I'm like, I'm going to tuck in, and we're going to go, you know. We've been watching you doing short course, you know. <laughs> I know you can't pass them if you're following them. So, you know, I ducked to the inside and bumped a little fender, and away we went. Well, and I want to talk about, you know, going into, uh, you know, the, I guess the second half of lap three and then into lap four. You had a pretty good gap after, uh, you know, off Ryan Arciera, but you knew he was charging hard. I mean, how would you approach that, uh, you know, into third, into the fourth lap? Well, he started in front of me. So, you know, when he can get him behind me, if he had to win it, he had to pass me. And that's tough to do out here. So, you know, the last, the last lap, I was just keeping my nose clean. I was looking at every rock going around it. You know, I felt like I was going so slow, but... I just wanted to make it to the finish line. But so much stuff happens here on the last lap. So yeah. I, I didn't, want it, it didn't want it to happen to me. Well, and it looked so brutal at the end. Like, just watch you trying to get up to speed. You can't quite time it. You can't blitz on top. It just was the square edges looked like they were just beating the crap out of you. Yeah. No, it was uh, tough going up Night Ranch Road. And, you know, the truck just fall, falling into every hole. It's so squared off. You can't have the speed to get up on top. And you're just pogoing in and out, just trying to keep it. Keep it on all fours. So right here, you make the turn down Joshua Tree Highway. Is this when you start to realize, I can win this? Yeah. Um, you know, the whole last lap, you know, I was just keeping myself mentally, you know, focused, you know, and not making any mistakes and just keeping it nice and clean. And when you get on the backside of Macy Gray, the backside of that mountain, you know you're really close. So um, we know there was no way anyone was going to make it on time, and we just kept pushing forward. Well, you're and this puts you in some pretty elite company. I mean, you've got a couple of mid-400 wins now to your belt. I mean, how's that feel? Yeah, we won. Uh, I won in the spec truck. Uh, race under my dad's name in 2020, but never the overall. You know, last year I was really close, had a drive shaft issue, um, ended up finishing third place. Um, this year when I came into it, I wanted it bad, so we worked really hard for it. All right, so your co-driver, the guy who is with you, the Batman and Robin that's with you all day long. How, I mean, what do you got to say to him oh, so publicly? Trevor's incredible. Um, he's been with me for quite a few years now, and. He just calls the notes. He's perfect. He's dedicated, too. And, and you need that guy that wants to sit in that right seat, not scared, is, has full faith in me. Yep. And when, I call, when he calls out notes, I trust his notes, his, his callings. And you got to have that. And so we, we, we pair up really well. And then finally, your team. Because, you know, they say there's you know, no I in team. And these guys have been – your truck's getting faster and faster. You're getting more comfortable with it. So, but, so you got to really thank them for, for the truck they put underneath you. I have you. a quality team. You know, I, I have three full-time guys, Jonathan, Justin, Colby. You know, my father is the one that funds the whole deal. Um, I'm in there overlooking it, making sure the truck's proper. I do all the shock stuff, rebuilding all, you know, uh, underdrives and everything that we need. But we make sure these trucks go fast, and it's not getting any easier. So we have to work really hard and try to be smart about it. Well, I, I am just ecstatic for you because, as I said, you're doing all the right things. And what I love about this is that 
you're not a you're not a 20 year old kid that's just breaking onto the scene. You've gotten faster and faster over the years, and that says a lot to to a man. That, uh, not you're not old by any no. means, but you're you're getting better every year. Congratulations. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, now I'm going to ask you one question because we've seen your, and I'm going to call this, your ascendancy through the ranks. I mean, you really have, in the last few years, delivered yourself onto the top of this desert racing world. What's next for Adam Householder? Well, my guys have a little bit of work. We're leaving for San Felipe next Saturday to start pre-running. So not only does my 6100 truck have to be prepped after this so I can use it to pre-runner, the trophy truck has to be prepped to get ready to battle that next, uh, next week. Wow. Well, that's going to be fantastic. Well, we look forward to seeing you down there. But at the moment, we just want to congratulate you on a job well done and becoming the 2024 B of Goodridge Mint 400 champion. Congratulations, Adam Householder. Thank you guys for everything. Congratulations. All righty. We are going to take a quick step away for a break. But when we come back, it will be the conclusion of the 2024 B of Goodridge Tires Mint 400. We'll be right back. The 2024 Mint 400 is brought to you by B of Goodridge Tires, title sponsor of the Mint 400. Find yourself off-road and explore the B of Goodridge family of tires. Magnaflow, your source for everything exhaust. Camberg, number one in off-road suspension. Rugged Radios, the official communications of the Mint 400. Stay connected and go further. Sylvania Off-Road, built for any adventure. Belching Beaver, the official craft beer of the Mint 400. The Belching Be Beaver Brewery brings damn good times. Okay, and welcome back. This is the 2024 B of Goodridge Tires Mint 400, and what a day of racing. What a, an entire week of racing we've had. It started on Fremont Street, where we were running nearly 500 trucks down the strip in Vegas. Then we moved on to the, the, the Fremont Experience, where we had tech and contingency in the middle of Las Vegas. Then we moved out here to Prim Valley, Nevada, for some of the best racing I have ever seen. Gentlemen, how good has this Mint 400 been? Well, Claude Closing statement for me, it did not disappoint. I mean, from the limited race yesterday, we had racing all day long with our, uh, not RJ, but Randy <laughs> Anderson. I mean, not Randy, that's his dad, but Ronnie Anderson. Gosh, I'm going to call everybody's name off except his. <laughs> but Ronnie Anderson, doesn't have to call me Anderson. That's right. <laughs> but Ronnie Anderson pulled it together. And the big smile on his face as, as he says, well, I'm a short course guy, but he put it together. And he was phenomenal all day long. And then also on the bikes, you have Ricky Brabeck and Preston Campbell. Those two teaming up and putting together the motorcycle win. What what a cherry on the Sunday for Ricky Brabeck. He just won the Dakar Rally. Now he comes out here and wins with his with his boss's son, Preston Campbell, who's really maturing as a racer. And then now we see today in the unlimited spec truck, um, Kyle Jurgensen back on top, as well as Adam Householder. I'm try I hope I didn't take away too much from you guys, but I was I was blown away at the competition all day long, and it has been a blessing once again to work with you all. Well, and I, I think for me, it's, you know, the Mint 400, you can, you never know what to expect. Yep. I mean, this one had a special vibe. Uh, you know, we've been talking about it, you know, from yeah. Fremont all the way through race day, all the fans. But, you know, Ronnie Anderson, I wouldn't have called that one before the race. Tyler Mills, I wouldn't have called that one before the race. I mean, Adam Householder, I wouldn't have known to call that one. Yeah. You know, it's just, it, there's always surprises. There's always, uh, you know, you never know what to expect. And I love it. I love working with you guys. When I posted on Instagram, I said the best crew in the business. I mean that. Uh, you know, I love, you know, we've done this a few years now together and uh you know let's continue on for me it's short this is las vegas you call it sin city for two days in a row it's also the city where everybody gets a little bit of heartbroken somehow some way <laughs> and um ladies and gentlemen all these last two days we've seen some people break their hearts so uh, my heart's out to them and i want to thank all you guys who watch this stuff at, at home in your computers thanks for hanging with us good night 
right. Thank Jim? you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's been absolutely being incredible. This crew are amazing. We have Bob Bauer, we have Jim Beaver, and of course, Ricky Johnson. Let's not forget Tiffany Stone and yes. Brian Little as well, who've been incredible. Our wonderful production crew, and of course, the Martelli brothers for bringing us the Mint 400. We look forward to seeing you back next year for the 2025 BF Goodridge Mint 400. You can guarantee there'll be more epic stories. And we'll be looking back at this one with rose tinted glasses as we remember how incredibly wonderful the race action has been. So from everyone here, it's a good night and we'll see you all next year. BestOffRoad.com, offering the best off-road brands, best customer experience, best prices. Experience off-road retail re-engineered by BestOffRoad.com. Stop by our booth in the Midway. Off-road advice is always free. BestOffRoad.com can help you create your ultimate off-road vehicle. Over 25 years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology.
Do you want to get on top of the truck and do it? Yeah, you know, I'm a little sore. I might stand just right here, but just right, I'm sure you're pretty sore. Go ahead, fire up that shame. You guys, you guys already been around this a few times. I'm gonna stand out of the way. Winner in class, unlimited four wheel drive, Cole Potts. Congratulations, folks. Way to go. First overall in your four-wheel drive unlimited class. Coming up to the stage next, second place in unlimited two-wheel drive. Coming up second place, down to the stage. In two wheel drive, unlimited. Christian Serapas, come on out of that truck, buddy. Second place. Driving the nasty beast, coming in second. Almost had the spot, but you got to be pretty happy still with the finish coming in. I mean, I know there's another one to hold on to right there. Look at that. So anyway, coming in second place, that was a gnarly course out there, but still holding it together. Yeah, it was a eventful day. Had a really clean first lap. Lost the whole shot to Adam, so I knew he was going to set a really good pace and stayed with his dust. Uh, pretty much the whole lap and then lap two kind of started running into a little bit of brake fade and then was still in the hunt for for the most part um then uh probably about halfway through the last lap halfway through the last lap uh lost the brake pedal entirely so 
had to pull over and fix that and did the whole last lap with only front brakes. So trying to stop a 6,000 pound truck with only fronts is a, is a little bit uh, challenging, especially when you've been in a truck for seven hours and you're ready to get the hell out of it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just super happy to be here at the finish. Man, oh man, that was a tough break. I mean, having no brakes and, like you said, a 6,000 pound truck and a bunch of horsepower because you're pushing on the go pedal, pushing on the go pedal, and you're like, it doesn't blow up like it should. Anyway, man, bringing it back to the finish, who helps you out, man? Oh, well, first and foremost, I got to thank my parents. Um, they're my biggest supporters when it comes to the racing deal, so couldn't, couldn't do it without them. Nasty Beast coming on board. I, I know uh, the Beast uh, with Kyle Jurgensen got a big W in the uh, spec class, so... You know, they got to be pretty stoked. Dick Brion, uh, Ryan Hartsfield, uh, and everybody at the whole uh, whole team over there at uh, The Beast is super grateful to be a part of such a special up-and-coming brand. And uh, BF Goodrich Tires, KMC Wheels, Baja Design Lights, VP Racing Fuels, Fox Shocks, definitely, uh, definitely need to send them out uh, and get them serviced because we put them through absolute abuse and torture today. <laughs> so... I'm um, super excited, and obviously the guys at Evan Weller Racing who put their heart and soul into this truck, getting this thing ready. Uh, this whole clan right here, um, couldn't do it without them. Uh, really appreciate all the effort, and they don't just prep this truck. They have a bunch of other customers, too. So for them to squeeze me in, what I call a month before, saying, hey, we're racing the trophy truck. Uh, at the Mint, you guys can do it. And all they do is just smile and nod. I don't know what happens <laughs> behind the scenes, but uh, but they made it make it happen. So. Awesome job, man. We're going to bring in documentary. We're going to do some footage with you there. Have all the ladies squeeze in tight. Christian Serapis taking second place. In the unlimited two-wheel drive. In the nasty beast. Congratulations, Christian. Great job, man. Second place in the unlimited two-wheel drive. Any final words, man? You're going to come back hard at the California 300? Yeah, we'll see. Um, California 300 is obviously a great race. We test out there in Barstow all the time, so I don't know. It seems like a great event. Um, we'll see. We'll go back to the drawing board. Got to make some changes to this truck, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be back soon.
Love to hear it. Chris is Sarabas, second place on limited two wheel drive. Coming up next to the stage, unlimited truck spec. Running in the number three spot. Christian Sarab is taking the second place in the unlimited two-wheel drive. In that nasty beast. Unlimited truck spec coming out of the terrible Herbst monster energy rig right now. EJ Herbst, what a great run out Thank there, you. man. Uh, I'm actually Ryan Millen. EJ did the first half, <laughs> okay. and then he handed off to me in a wonderful position. And uh, we just, with Josh and I and the awesome, terrible Herbst uh, pits and the BFG tires and the King Shocks, we just put it down and, and ran to the finish as hard as we could. Awesome. I'm going to have this lovely lady put that finisher you know, you th third place, man. So unlimited truck spec, that is a m like crazy stack class with a ton of talent. And these things are basically all the way across the board, even like even Steven as far as it comes, as far as it goes equipment wise, correct? Yeah, it's such a fabulous class, to be honest with you. We all have the same engines, same transmissions, pretty similar, you know, uh, third members. So it's really a driver's class, you know, and, and you can see in the qualifying um, positions how close it was. And, you know, we have a lot of good players and we have really reliable trucks. So you got to push to try to get that last bit out of it. And as a driver, it's a phenomenal class, like keeps you honest and your equipment normally survives. So uh, you just push and have fun. And it, it's an incredible feeling. That's awesome, man. Who, who all would you like to thank? Uh, obviously, uh, Terrible Herps, the uh, Herps family, especially for having me. Um, it, it's such a treat to race with them and and. Um, Josh here for doing an amazing job riding the whole way. Uh, obviously, Monster Energy, BFG, King Shocks, um, you know, the whole, the whole team, the whole family. Everyone did such a wonderful job, and, and it's just a treat to be here. Congratulations. We're talking third place in limited truck spec. Give it up for him right there, part of the terrible Herbs crew.
Awesome job. <laughs> Couple more pictures and then we're off and running. <laughs> Love the Herbs family coming out here. Tons of talent. Second place, Four Wheel Drive Unlimited. Coming all the way from Australia with a gnarly end over end. If you look at the front of that truck right there, Brett Kaminsky coming in, finally pulling in a podium. I know you're banged up pretty good. We're going to leave you in the truck for right now. You have your finisher medals right there. Holy guacamole, you tore up the front of this truck pretty good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Didn't win, so I had to do something spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> you're like... I'm driving to, too good, so I need to take out the lights in the front of it, right? And the only way to do that is to go nose over teacup. Yeah, look, that was a wicked track. Like, the lap four was madness. So we were just talking as we went over the bridge. How cool is this? We've got all our panels on. We've got all our wheels on. <laughs> you spoke too soon. <laughs> fucking know that I did. Yeah, crazy. You know, 56-year-old, and I had a fucking 12-year-old brain. So not good. Anyway, I'll give Chris something to do in the fall while I'm, while I'm going back home, so. Break out the welder and the pipe bender and everything else and try to locate some lights to put them back on here. So I am a huge fan of this group. This whole crew right here, you see all about around the back of the truck. It is a tremendous effort. If you can imagine, say, going from, let's say, Oregon to Nevada, that's nothing compared to coming from Australia to Nevada. This is a big freaking deal, and this, these people have been here since day one. Started out eyeballs deep in the side-by-sides, and they said, screw it, let's go all the way to the top. And they did that, and they got themselves a second-place trophy, dude. That's, what, that's a huge, huge accomplishment. Yeah, look, I couldn't do it without these guys. Um, to come over here and have so many people help me is awesome, you know? Chris preps a truck. His brother, his neighbor, Jeff, his wife, Caitlin, you know, and my, my boys come over as well from Australia. We've got friends here. So yeah, I couldn't do it without it, man. You can't do this sort of shit by yourself. It's a team thing. So this, this one's for the team. This one's for the team. Dan McKenzie, you got a couple words to say too, my friend. Oh, yeah, it's just um, great to be part of this team. Like, this is a little family that we've got. You know, we've been coming over here racing since 2017. Um, we've actually won a couple of these races in the UTV. So Brett and I have been, you know, doing traveling the world, and it's uh, pretty special to be part of this. And, you know, Brett drove awesome today, had a, had a good time until that last jump. It, <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, it's, it, was, it was really good. I did the third lap out there today, and it was crazy rough. Um, so it was, it was good. We, we had a ball. And thanks, everyone, for coming and, yeah, supporting us Aussies. So I, I have to say I do this with these guys all the time, and it's part of the, part of the thing that's close to my heart. These guys make so much effort and so forth, and they're actually rocking a TPQ sticker. Thanks for not scratching that thing, you knucklehead. Anyway, I do this with these guys every time because it's so special to me. One, two, three. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Hell yeah, that's what we're talking about. Give it up for the Kaminsky team.
You guys go ahead, run up front. We need to have your pictures taken. Go ahead, run up in front of the truck. We're going to get Brett another uh, Belching Beaver beer and 17,000 Advil. <laughs> That's right. This is the true definition of putting your forehead into your belly button. <laughs> Walgreens, man. Walgreens. They're just going to clean the shelf off. <laughs> <laughs> cool. At least you won't get arrested if you steal a bunch of stuff. That's what I hear anyway. <laughs> See you next year, man. Take care. The nose of that thing is completely torn up. He hit the front end of that thing super gnarly. Coming up to the stage, unlimited two-wheel drive. Coming up third place. The brakes worked? The brakes worked, just barely. <laughs> I'm glad you came in a little light on me, too. That was fantastic. Go ahead and grab onto that. Your finisher medals. Don't forget, the big hardware is given out tomorrow. Out here in the VIP section, entry is free, free for it. All the big trophies, first, second, and third. Ethan, if you want to hop out, I'm sure there's going to be pictures being taken, too. Come on out here, buddy. Part of the HRC, this is a little bit similar to a Ridgeline, right? Yeah, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> I think the colors are close. Anyway, Ethan, great job out there, man. Keeping the truck fairly put together, but you brought her back home. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it was just a uh, battle to the finish, really. I mean, this course is, uh, you're basically battling the course more than you are battling the other trucks out there. So um, it was really rough out there, really good. But the uh, Max's DOT tires actually held up really good. You can put this on your car and, uh, or in your truck and just go driving down the street. So they held up great. And uh, they're actually helping us a lot. We pitted at their uh, semi. And yeah, they're actually uh, venturing into making a project tire, which is going to be really cool for us to see. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be a good time. Awesome, man. Who else helps you out for get you here to the finish line? This is a big deal. Oh, I, just mainly my mom and my dad. I mean, they've been supportive for me for my whole life, you know, ever since I was 10 years old when I started. So I can't thank them enough. And then everybody, every sponsor on this door, KMC Wheels, Max's Tires, Fluid Logic, Baja Designs Lights, Steel Coatings. Um, uh, there's a bunch of other people. <laughs> I'm probably forgetting them. They're probably on the website we have up there somewhere. But oh, Fox, yeah, Fox for sure, Fox. Um, they they put a, a make our corners work on this truck, so it's awesome. Uh, the live valve kicks ass out here, so I uh, can't thank them enough. Jeff Proctor for having such a great, being such a great team principal out there makes us look all official. You know when you're uh, surrounded by Honda because you can see all the factory apparel out there. Uh, Cole Mama just for putting in so many hours. I mean, being the main mechanic out there at the shop, uh, he kicks ass. So love that guy. And uh, yeah, just everybody else. Evan Weller for prepping this truck, letting us get here. And uh, the Martelli brothers for putting this show on. Give it up for him right there on the box. Unlimited two-wheel drive in the number nine. Crew, yeah, absolutely. Crew, jump up there. Make sure you're making a super hustle out of it. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Crowd the stage. Crowd the stage super fast.
Congratulations, pulling a podium for the Honda team. Coming over the finish line, a couple of our great finishers. James Scully taking the finish. And Baja Brian over in the passenger seat. You got to be happy about the finish, man. I know that was a rough one. And I know the sooner you get out of the truck, the better, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. we had a great day. Uh, we lost power steering at the end, so um, that set us back a bit. But other than that, it was great. Yeah, these things are very heavy, so I don't understand why you need the power steering in it. I wouldn't even want to shake your hand. Yeah, he, he was telling me that on the way in, like, stop being a pussy and suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you like to thank? Uh, uh, Ryan Mellon and all the guys that came out to help. Uh, Ryan for putting the prep in the truck and, and uh, Baha Brian for sitting here and, uh, and myself for listening to him all day. <laughs> Congratulations on the finish. We'll send you on down to tech. We'll get the, uh, all the scoring devices and so forth pulled off so you can get out of that truck. These guys started at 8 o'clock this morning and they're just now finishing. It is seven o'clock. <laughs> Give it up. It's Trey. Trey, congratulations. Put that around your neck, man. You got to finish up here. This is pretty legit. Go. There we go. Now you're set. Now you're legit. Anyway, man, getting the finish out here on the mid 400 is a pretty tough deal. You brought the truck back. You still got all the panels on it. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was the main goal for today. It was uh, first off, finish the race. Second off, finish with all the panels. And uh, this is my only my second race in this truck. I only have a couple times of uh, seat time in it. So um, it's looking like a fourth place uh, finish for today. So all these other boys better watch out. I'm just learning and uh, we're working up the ranks. So um, still lots to learn, still lots of uh, confidence to learn. And uh, we're, we're getting there. Right on, man. Who helps you out, buddy? You know, I just want to give it uh, to, to Maxis today. Uh, we're, uh, we're on a DOT tire compared to all these other guys on a full race spec tire. So uh, what we're doing already on these tires and um, working with them, wait till, uh, wait till they come out of the race tire. It's even game on. Um, but, you know, I want to give a huge thanks to them. They helped me out a bunch. Uh, Steal it, my dad, my whole crew. Um, you know, everyone, Moe's guys, they helped me in the pit today. Um, jeweler off-road prep. They... They got this truck in tip-top shape for me to go out there and beat the living hell out of it, and that's what this course did. And, uh, you know, here we are at the finish, and, uh, you know, hats off to those guys. They killed it, and uh, they gave me a truck to go out there and actually drive today. 
Um, you want to give a give a thanks to Steal It, my co-dog Trevor. He uh, he killed it all day. Didn't miss a didn't miss a beat. And uh, you know everyone else. Thank you guys. Give it up for Trey Gibbs right here, getting the finish, bringing the truck back in one piece. Coming in, another finisher. Okay, Jordan, Bra I, I wanted to make sure. I, I don't want to assume a, th a single thing just because the name's on a truck doesn't, doesn't mean that's the person I'm going to talk to. Jordan, great job, man, coming in for the finish. Multiple Brenthal trucks out here. you got to be pretty proud of that. Uh, always. We're always proud of all of our trucks that are out here and more than anything our crew because uh, we have a lot of guys and every day they bust their ass to get these trucks here to the race. We had three brand new trucks at Brenthal Industries finished this week for this race. Uh, I, I don't have any data, but I, that might be a record in the history of off-road as far as uh, building trucks and, uh, you know, just for a race in that amount of time. That's phenomenal, man. So I know last name has a big deal to do with on the on the name of the truck, but who else helps you out, man? Um, we, we have a lot of people. Like I said, everyone at the shop. Uh, Tyler, my navigator here, um, he's, he's here with me every race. And uh, Brent L Industries, Yokohama Tires were awesome. Uh, I didn't have any flats all day. Um, Abdali Lopez, he qualified to the first two laps, and I picked it up and did the second lap, uh, second two laps. So he did fantastic. Um, <clears throat> on top of that, we have Fox Shocks, Rigid Industries, Alcon Brakes, Method Wheels. Um, there are so many more that help us out, but uh, mainly Brent Dell Industries, the crew there, they're awesome. Give it up for him right there. Ladies are going to drop the, the medals around your neck right there. Driver and co-pilot. Fantastic job for the finishes. That's right. Isn't that cool? Check that out, the, the throwback colors on that. Cool. That it's awesome. Cool. I like it. And it's not some little cheap pin or anything. you got to put that around your neck, man. It, it's it. got some weight to it. That's right. Jordan Brenthal coming in for the finish. Copy that. Coming in for another finish. Coming up to the stage, the Twisted Monkey Racing. <laughs> so Alex, I'll talk to Alex. Anyway, great job, Alex. You guys brought her home to the finish line. That's a big deal. Of course, you guys stand, about, stand out amongst everybody else running the Twisted Monkey Racing logo here on the side. You gotta be tickled about it, bringing it home to the finish line. Uh, very tickled about it. We. We're not strong qualifiers, at least I'm not, but just fruition today, it was a long race. We knew a lot of people were gonna have trouble, so we just trying to keep an even pace. And now we're here, and I think we ended up fourth place. So, you know, in the points, I think we're still in second. So we've got Barstow yet, and just had a really good day. So we just had fun, and Jerry took over and did an awesome job, and so did Josh co-driving the whole thing. 
Talking about being consistent, you're going into the last round, man. You're going to like, you know what, Barstow, going to keep our stuff together. We're going to go in and kill it out at Barstow. Yeah, all we really got to do is try to figure out how to beat Householder, but right now he's kind of unstoppable, but congrats to him. I mean, he's a heck of a driver, so, I mean, if, if I have to lose to anybody, I don't mind losing to him, but I'm still going to try to come for him, so it'll be on in Barstow. Right on, man. Who else helps you out? Uh, we got a bunch of guys from Eric and all, uh, uh, some of the other guys that came down to help us out. Like I said, Josh was co-driving the whole thing. Jerry's my main guy that does all the fixing of the truck and you know now co-driving as well for me when I hurt myself like a knucklehead. My wife and my son are out here today, so obviously I want to thank them for coming out. Jeff and all the Harmonson Racing guys for coming and helping and stepping up. Thank you guys again. Uh, we try to help them out as much as we can, and they help us out. So it's kind of a big family dynamic. But BFG Tires, KMC Wheels, Fox Shocks, Baja Designs. Obviously, we needed them tonight, and their lights are the best out there. Uh, Magnaflow Exhaust, you guys rock. Thank you. You guys, We never have any issues with our truck anymore. KDM, yeah, KDM Shock Technologies, he tunes our shocks for us, and it, it runs so much better now. Camberger Kinetics, thank you guys for building an awesome truck. She's old, but she still runs, and I mean, we're up here now, aren't we? So. That's right, you're back up here at the finish line. Congratulations, man. Big deal, Alex Wagner with the Twisted Monkey Racing. What do we got, Maria? Coming to the stage, first place. Coming in on first place. Where's Mario? Mario Fuentes, go ahead and grab onto that. Come on over here in the center of the part of the car. Heck yeah, man, bringing it in first place. Hey, you got a finisher medal there too, buddy. You guys go ahead and bring it on in here. Mario, congratulations on taking the win. You got to be pretty daggone happy with that. Yes, we are. We're really happy. Man, tell me what it takes to get this whole crew down here, get them over here, and go out and finish the Mint 400. And the car still looks like it's in great shape. 
Well, to tell you the truth, to get him here to Las Vegas wasn't that difficult. <laughs> they, 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 but um, it takes a lot of uh, organization and a lot of a uh, uh, game plan and, and a lot of effort as a team. Um, so it's a lot of work that comes to, to get to this, this place and, and participate. That's right. Mario, who helps you out, sir? Oh, a lot of people. Uh, for my for my team, Lalo, Juan, and Christian, and then we got our crew chief, with it's Chris Ramy, and then we got all this crew down here: uh, Christian Mandaro, uh, my wife, uh, Christian, uh, his father, a lot of people down there: Omar, Ramon, a lot of my wife, my my mother-in-law, my father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> many many people it takes, and then that's fantastic. They're all down here, right here, in front of you. Are you ready to set off some champagne, my friend? Oh, yes. <laughs> Could you grab one more medal, please? Look at that. You even got fireworks going off for you. Yes, we do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right down there. Lovely Monster Energy gals here. We're going to have you set off this... Set off the champagne, set it off high in the air. The same champagne shower. Viva Mexico! Yeah. <laughs> Here you go, you want to hand me the bottle? I'll take that from you. The whole crew, come on up here. Aquí, rápido. Thank you. <laughs> Doing a big group photo. People of Mexico! Yeah. 
Coming up on this stage. The Harden team coming in here. Awesome job on the finish. Congratulations. That was a hard fought battle, was it not? Yeah, a little too much fighting with the, the people out there and the rocks out there. They'll get you. So we got to be smarter next time. But it, yeah, we we're ripping. You guys were ripping. How, how much fun was it jumping off the, off the start line, going two by two down through that infield? Yeah, that was, that was pretty legit. I was looking at him in the air. I was like, oh, no, got to land on the gas and I'll get him to the corner. So that was awesome. Great job getting to the finish line, man. Who would you like to thank? Um, all my, my parents, my mom and dad, my team, my uncle. He was ripping. Uh, this guy, Nick, everyone else at the race shop who helps us out. We couldn't do it without anyone who's not here. And they all work very hard, and they're all very fast at what they do, too. We had very fast pit stops. We gained a couple positions in the pits, which, which helped. And then uh, I got a flat, so sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, everyone, everyone was ripping, so it was a blast out there. Give it up for him right here, finishing the mid 400. True respect, get it to the finish line. Way to go, Cole.
Fox Construction, you're running her a little naked down here. Yeah, we uh, yeah had to lose a couple panels, I guess. <laughs> All that stuff is too heavy anyway, right? Just gets in the way. You know, if you need to hop out and look at something, you can do it really easy. Everything makes it so so fun. Anyway, man, you got her to the finish line, and that's that's like feat number one, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, it was just finishing as an accomplishment, and not the day we wanted, but in the end, it's it's racing. That it is. That's racing. If it was if it was called winning, everybody would do it, right? And it everybody like even the lazy people that like eat popcorn and watch football and stuff like that would come out and do it. But the true athletes are out here on the race course and you brought it home. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank first my wife for coming down and her family and my dad for letting me drive this fun toy and everyone that comes and helps us pit. Without you guys, we would still be at the pit. So I really appreciate it. Got her all put back together, brought it back to the finish line. Give it up here. Coming out of the Fox construction tent. Coming down for another finisher. Ryan Arciero, holy crap, man. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? We had you up front for quite some time. What the heck? You know, I don't know what it is about the Mint 400, but uh, it, uh, it kicks my ass every time. You know, we've been second, we've been third. We've been fourth, we've been second again, we've been third. Uh, we were le every time leading, leading again today, uh, and, ju and just cruising actually. We were, we were, once, we got, once we got the lead uh, from Nick, we, we, we kind of backed the pace down a little bit and just took it easy. Uh, main thing is to make sure we didn't get any flats, and, uh, and we didn't, be, you know, no flats all day today. Uh, and phenomenal on this course. Um, I, I don't know anybody else that has any other tire that could do that, but be of good urge. But um, uh, we ended up losing the alternators uh, going up beer bottle pass on the second lap. So we started turning all the accessories off. So all of our, all of our air systems, turned, everything we could turn off, we turn off just to see if we can get back to the start finish line. Got back, they changed it out, and then Householder got by, Serapis got by, and Nick got by. And, uh, and at that point, I knew, okay, let me go catch Nick. If I catch, get, get close to him, I'll get him on time. But Serapis and, and, uh, and Householder, I was going to have to catch and pass. Um, we passed. We we passed Nick. We passed uh, Serapis, um, and then tried to reel Householder in. And uh, unfortunately, going up Beer Bottle Pass for the last time, uh, uh, dinged a rock. Just an unlucky. S something weird happened and hit the drive line and broke the drive line. So, I know. Where's that come from? That's like a like you can't even buy a lottery ticket and get that kind of crap. I, I need to get this monkey off my back. I don't know what I need to do to do it. Uh, I don't know if I need some voodoo, some sage. I, I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. But uh, we'll we'll get it. I love this race. I love the fans out here. Uh, the Martellis put on a phenomenal event. That course is no joke. The last two laps, I mean, we're, we are in one of the baddest machines on the face of this planet with a trophy truck. And uh, those last two laps, man, it hurt inside for Travis and I. Travis did a phenomenal job with the notes and running right seat. But uh, it hurt our bodies uh, to, to get through that last lap and just to try to maintain speed. I mean, we were watching it on the clicker, watching it on the clicker. I'm like, holy crap, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Maybe I spoke out of turn. Holy crap. And then all of a sudden, we saw the name going down the clicker. It was like, ah, dag nabbit, Ryan. Anyway, we totally appreciate what you're running for 
all the graphics on the side. All of us business owners are pulling for that too. So, so make sure that all comes together. You know, it, you know. We obviously we have Trump 2024 on, on the side of this thing. Uh, obviously, we wanted to get a win, uh, and uh, we know Trump would have loved that. But uh, the biggest thing is, is and Trump knows this more than anybody. And all you know it is, you don't give up. Keep pushing. We're gonna make it happen. We're gonna get him back in, and we're going to the front. <laughs> That's right. Ryan Arciero getting the finish. Oh, I love that dude. Such a great interview that guys like. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Another. Nick Eisenhower in this heat wave truck. The most distinctive sounding truck on the planet. You could be like 10 miles out and we could hear rrr, rrr, somewhere else and we hear this, what? I'm like, Nick's coming. He's coming, dude. And phenomenal driving today, man. All the way through the infield, throwing it through. You were throwing it through like a motocross bike. That was the coolest crap to watch, Nick. Totally on the gas, totally on point, coming through, man. Give us a little rundown on the day. Yeah, you know, the day started off, we qualified mid-pack, so we kind of had to run hard to try and make up some ground. And uh, it was just tough. You know, those front runner guys, they just kind of checked out. And so we were kind of in that middle, like, twilight zone pack of just kind of can't make any ground. Uh, ran into a couple little hiccups, which put us back even further than that. So then at that point, we were just kind of running for a solid finish. Uh, this Everson Performance chassis really kicks butt and shines in the big holes like this. And like you're saying, in the corners and all that, you can drive this thing like it's a go-kart. I absolutely love this truck. But, um, but other than that, it's a great day. A beautiful Mint 400. Uh, we've been plagued with some DNF issues recently, and I think we've got a handle on all that. So this is a win for us. This is really it is huge. I, I mean, I get interviews with you prior to going out on the track and so forth, and then I never see you at the end. And then finally I get to, Nick. This is a huge this is a huge deal for me too, man. I'm a huge fan of you guys. You guys plugging through. Always a smile on your face. You're out here to have a good time, but then work hard too. And I'd love to see you guys up here on the finish line. I appreciate that. I had a great time. This is so much fun. Right on. Besides that, who helps you get up here? That's a big deal. Oh, man, you know, uh, big one, obviously, Heatway Visual, Yokohama Tire, Method Race Wheels, uh, Keith Marigold taking care of our shocks, Evan Weller on the diffs. Um, Colhane transmissions, uh, Camberg beautiful hubs, uh, Magnaflow mufflers providing that beautiful sound. Um, tons of other great people. There's th numerous people. You know, my brother and I do this, you know, kind of ourselves behind my dad's house. So it's like we need as much help as we can. So there's, I've got a laundry list, and I think all these people want to get out of the cold weather. But, yeah, it was a beautiful time. Our, our crew and everybody here to help us, my mom, my dad, our family, all that. Um, we wouldn't be able to do any of this without them. So that's a big one. So Great personality out here. I'm a huge Nick Eisenhower fan, we'll get that finisher medal on you. Yeah, give it up for him. You guys want to hear a rev or something? Hell yeah, dude. See you guys. No, no. Another finisher coming up over the finish line. Holy smokes, this thing had more stuff on it when I was interviewing up on top as top qualifier <laughs> out here today. Man, what a phenomenal day. You guys were running out front for quite some time. You went back a little bit, then got back out and out towards the front. Amazing day. 
But now you're back here. At least you got across the finish line. Give me a little play-by-play. -play. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, we've got the, the, the positive takeaway from the day as we finish. But, uh, man, it's been a wild ride today. We had uh, anything and everything uh, go wrong. So, um, you know, uh, that's kind of desert racing. You just got to suck it up and fix it on the next one. But, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a couple of flats, and unfortunately the jacks weren't working. And then some reason the belt started spitting off so the belt spat off three times on the last lap and a half and so just made it difficult for us but it's all good you're back here at the finish line i mean you, you had the panels off of it so you could find out where the issues are are that makes it easier i mean you don't have to dig in deep or anything like that but first and foremost we want a huge props top qualifier there was a bunch of people like there's no way he had a cut course or something. What was it? Nine seconds faster than the second qualifier? Yeah, nine seconds. Um, I don't know unless there was something we didn't know about, but no, we're we're all on course. It was all good. Oh no, everything was legit. We we looked through all the footage and stuff. It's like, no, you guys need to suck less because he was nine seconds faster than you, and it was a three mile course or something like that. Yeah, three mile course. So, look, we've been doing a lot of work and we're working on our program. Um, you know, guides the brothers and SDG and the whole and and you know Dugans and whatnot. We've we put a lot of work into the truck, so we got the speed now. We showed really good speed in qualifying. We showed really good speed today. We kind of got up, got ahead, got behind, caught back up, but just you know mechanical issues and and it, it is what it is. It's off road racing. Keep an eye on this cat right here coming in from Australia. Where this is badass. Give it up for him getting a finish. Yeah, yeah, that'll rearrange your head a little bit, that exhaust right there. Coming up first place in class. Climb on out of there. He's got his belching beaver beer in hand. Oh, yeah. There's the money shot. <laughs> Is it Robert? Jack. Jack. Jack, great job out there. Bringing it home, man, for the finish and the win. you got to be pretty proud of that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Robert Malone and Tim Cudge started the race, did the first 200 miles, and then Anthony Rasco and I took it from there and uh, had a good clean run. And anytime you finish the Mint 400, it's a, it's a win, right? That it is, and, but you guys finished at the top of the class. We got a great finisher medal here. Got our co-driver over here. What's your name, sir? Anthony. Anthony, you guys brought her home to the finish line. <laughs> Save me on this, all right? <laughs> we'll keep the top on it just for now. I'll let you blast it off in a minute. I got a couple hours left. <laughs> I don't want to finish off the night sticky. <laughs> anyway, man, great run out there. The truck still looks like it's in great shape. Great shape. You got to be pretty happy. Not don't have to tear it all down. No, absolutely. Like I said, anytime we finish, it's a, it's a win, right? And I need to thank uh, RSS Motorsports for the race prep for the on the truck, and then of course the entire Ranger Motorsports crew. I mean, these guys are all volunteers. They're friends. They're family, and they take time out of their schedule to come here and support us. And we really appreciate it. Anybody else you'd like to thank heading out before you blast off this champagne? No, absolutely. Obviously, first and foremost, our wives, right? Because. Um, and then today, I'm, it's, it's a, I'm a pretty lucky guy. My wife and both my daughters are here today, so that's pretty special. And then need to thank um, a few sponsors, BF Goodrich, King Shocks, Turtle Box Audio. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some here. Uh, but, but anyways, no, and, and all these guys over here, Robert Malone right there, he's the, he's the owner. And uh, like I said, he drove the first two laps and, and brought me a clean truck and made my life easy. Nice work. You ready to shoot off that champagne now? And I'm pretty confident I don't need to show you how to do that, right? No, I think I got it. <laughs> I 
I, do you guys want to get on top of the truck and shoot it off? I think that's a great idea. Heck yeah. Stay until the last one's finished, which will probably be about. Yeah. Uh, open. Open. Or no, excuse me. Let me get a. There's so much rubber down here on this thing. It is fantastic. From all the bikes earlier today. Oh yeah, I love that. All the bikes lighting it up. Coming down for the finish. What's your name, boss? Johnny Gould. Johnny Gould, great job bringing it back in. I know Terry started it out earlier today, correct? Yes, Terry did the uh, first two laps and uh, crushed it, but unfortunately had a axle, rear axle break. Uh, they changed that out at one of the remote pits. Um, his co-driver, Justin, stayed in for three laps, and thank him for staying in with me because it was a rough third lap. And then my buddy Luke hopped in there. He reds with me in the 10 car, and he did an amazing job and helped me stay cool the last lap and get to the finish line. Awesome. Who would you like to thank, man, besides Belching Beaver Beer? Besides Belching Beaver Beer, uh, Householder Motorsports, Householder Family, Terry, Adam, thank you guys very much. Uh, my dad, my mom, um, love you guys. Thank you for always supporting me, um, all my family and friends. 
Um, I know Luke over here wants to thank Fia, his wife. Um, thank you for coming out and supporting us, and and uh, thank the Martelli brothers. This is a great event. Happy to finish. That's what the thing is. It's just finishing, getting them back to the finish line. Oh, if this stage could talk. Another one of our finishers coming up to the stage. Paul Krause coming to the stage. Whew, that was like, whew. I mean, you literally just finished and pulled right up here to the finish line, man. I know you even had a, didn't even have a second to get your breath yet. Unbelievable track, right? It's the uh, most difficult uh, uh, course we ever run, whether it's Baja or anywhere else, by far, by far. Rough stuff. You guys brought her to the finish line, though. That's got to be pretty important to you. Yeah, we just want to finish. That's, that's the main thing, just finish and get through it, and we still have the body intact. <laughs> I was going to say, all the panels are on it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, all the panels are on This is the first time, though. <laughs> first time to achieve that. Who helps you out, man? Well, one of the, I want to mention a, a, a special uh, shout-out. I'm not going to mention any of the sponsors. Uh, the, the truck body here is, is artwork from our, our team member who passed away in January. And so this, we're dedicating the season by putting his artwork on the truck and racing for him because he's here with us in spirit. His name's Eric Hanveld. And, uh, but I do want to thank the uh, Dynamic Racing team, uh, Jason, uh, best co-driver I can have, and uh, the Martelli brothers, Mint 400, best race in uh, North America. Awesome, man. We got a finisher medal for you right here, too. And, of course, Harlan's going to get your photo. Of course he can get out. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to get out, hop on out.
I'll grab you a couple more. Scott, great job, man, bringing her home. Go ahead and put that finisher medal on. One for your co-dog, too, right there. Scott Whipple, you gotta be happy, man, bringing her home to the finish line. This, I know this has been a tough race for you for many years. Yeah, man, this has been a tough race for us. Just to finish, it's been great. You know, Pat kicked butt, had the truck up towards the front, and you know, unfortunately, Johnny and I got a flat, and then we blew out a drive shaft, and we had nothing but problems changing the drive shaft. We figured, man, we got to finish, so it was awesome just to come home. So thank you to my crew, man. Thank you, guys. Uh, thanks to Doug Sadler, Erosion Control, experts, man. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be out here. So thanks for everybody that gives us a hand and helps us out. Appreciate it very much. Congratulations. I'll grab you two more, and I'll hand it off to these guys. Cheers, you guys. Thank you.